Chapter 761 Material Transaction Put one more in. Serdak's voice was a little hoarse. And his body was covered with the dark brown bodily fluids of ghost-striped red ants. He was holding a blood-red crescent moon in his hand. He stood at the top of the city and exuded a sour smell. Staring at the people crawling over the rock wall. A swarm of ghostly red ants. The archer shot the ghost-striped worker ants one after another. Leaving only the ghost-striped soldier ant at the front. A huge body climbed up to the top of the city. The whole body was stronger than a bison. A pair of giant pincers grew out of the soldier ants' heads, which could easily bite through logs as thick as their legs. The forelimbs covered with bone spurs inserted into the stone cracks of the city wall, causing the stones on the city wall to loosen a little. Ten heavy armored infantrymen hid behind the wall, holding their breath waiting for the ghost-striped soldier ant to climb over the wall. The first two infantrymen held double-edged axes in their hands. The moment the ghost-striped soldier ant's forelimbs touched the wall, the two axes struck hard at the weak joints of the ghost-striped red ant's forelimbs, and the forelimbs were immediately torn apart, cut off. The ghost-patterned soldier ants let out a scream, and stabbed the heavy armored infantry with the giant pincers on their heads, trying to cut the heavy armored infantry in half. The heavy armored infantry holding the double-edged giant axe dropped the giant axe, rolled back, and hid behind the heavy armored infantry holding the tower shield. The ghost-patterned soldier ants hit the square tower shield with their giant pincers, and the four warriors behind them used their shoulders at the same time. Those who pressed against the shield were knocked out. The four heavy armored infantrymen holding spears behind them took the opportunity to thrust their spears into the bone seam connecting the ghost-patterned soldier ant's head and chest, causing it to get stuck at the top of the city. Then all the infantry soldiers quickly fled, and the ghost-marked soldier ants sprayed a large amount of acid from their mouth parts. Samira controlled the bed crossbow, aimed at the ghost-marked red ant, and shot a giant crossbow arrow. She was less than 10 meters away from the ghost-marked red ant. The giant crossbow arrow directly pinned the ghost-marked red ant to death on the city wall. No matter what it did. No matter how hard I struggled. I couldn't break free. The heavy-armored infantrymen held spears and stabbed the huge head of the ghost-marked soldier ant, making it unable to struggle. Two heavy-armored infantrymen took the opportunity to rush forward, picked up the double-edged giant axe that was thrown on the ground, and took the opportunity to chop off the heads of the soldier ants. This is already the sixth ghost pattern soldier ant. Although the strength of this kind of soldier ant is far inferior to that of other second level monsters. Its skull is the same as that of the second level monster. Each soldier ant's skull contains a magic core. It is not yet known whether the hard sh. ls on the ghostly pattern soldier ants are magic materials. After all, those carapace are too hard. Samira took out a smelly magic core from the sticky head. But her face was filled with joy. And she said proudly to Serdak. These big guys seem to be pretty good. Each one has a magic core. Serdak was close to the wall and looked at the dents and colonies under the city wall. He felt that although the ant colonies under the city wall were still crowded together, they seemed to have become more orderly. There were fast-moving military lanes among the ant colonies to facilitate those who were fighting. The large ghost-patterned soldier ants move. The corpses of the ghostly-patterned soldier ants at the foot of the city wall have been completely reduced to ashes but the oil refined from the bodies of the dead red ants is gathered in the oil tank under the city wall. And a wall of fire is still burning fiercely. The ghost-striped worker ants did not dare to get even half a step closer. They could only go around the side mountain walls. The corpses of ghost-striped worker ants were now piled on both sides of the mountain wall. The fire under the city wall spread to the mountain wall little by little. The corpses here it was not soaked in kerosene and could not be burned. But thick, choking smoke billowed out. There are often some ghost striped red ants falling on the steep rock walls. Slow down. Let's kill them one by one. Serdak said to Samira as he looked at the ghost marked red ants rushing out of the thick smoke. Serdak ordered the two squadron captains of the city defense guards to concentrate on the east and west sides of the city wall with the city defense guards equipped with continuous shooter crossbows. They mainly shot the ghost patterned soldier ants crawling over the rock wall. Archers. Pay attention to the mountains on both sides of the canyon. And be careful not to let the ghost strike red ants come in. Serdak ordered. Samira rolled over and climbed onto the bed. And said excitedly to the city guard beside her. Put in another one. This time the beast tide came a bit suddenly. But it was expected. The residents of Duodan town were waiting for the moment when the beast tide came. They saw thick smoke billowing from the city walls. And fires burning outside the city all night. They heard that it was so hot at the top of the city that no one could stand on it. And people used hanging towers all night. Transported buckets of clean water up 
and poured it directly on the city wall. The residents in the town are all discussing how many ghost striped red ants were killed in the fire last night. They heard that the big red ants were singled out and killed individually. Those red ants were piled behind the North City Wall. A group of leather workers. The waiter is peeling the skin off. Because the carapace is too hard. The skinning knife cannot cut through it at all. Currently, the hard armor is split open with a hand axe. The master of the leather shop said that this kind of hard armor leather was of no use. But it attracted many businessmen in the town to watch. However, no one would dare to take these ghost patterned red ants even if they were all rotten before getting the approval of the garrison commander. Baron Serdek. The merchants were quietly discussing in private how to purchase the hard armor of these ghost patterned soldier ants from Commander Serdek. They hoped that Commander Soldak would be as ignorant as the leather worker in the town and dispose of all the carapace as garbage. Then, they could just transport the hard armor to Wilkes without spending too much. The city can make a fortune. But it was heartbreaking to see the leather workers in the town almost completely smashing the hard carapace in order to split it. How can you hit this thing with an axe? There are two teams of mercenary members on the city wall. They have now joined in the hunt for ghost pattern soldier ants. And there was no danger at the end of the day. That big guy looks like a bull. If you don't have a crossbow, they can nail it to the stone wall on the side of the city wall. It will definitely take a lot of effort to defeat it head-on. For the members of the mercenary union. Currently they can only get a share of the pie in hunting Warcraft by assisting in defense on the northern city wall. A few days ago, under the mobilization of Serdek, some mercenaries volunteered to help defend the city wall. These mercenaries are all locals of Doden Town. They feel that since the beast tide is coming, it is their duty to guard Doden Town. There is no reason to refuse because of internal matters. Once Duodan cannot hold on, his home will be gone. There were also some mercenaries who couldn't stand Serdak's style of doing things. They didn't want to take orders from Serdak and didn't want to risk their lives on the city. So they chose to give up participating in the defense of the city. These people hide in their homes and occasionally get together, expecting the ghost striped red ants to teach the garrison commander who has an eccentric temper and likes to eat alone. Only in this way can he change his face. Come to the door in person and ask them to go to the city wall to help defend. While they were having afternoon tea, they even thought about how to scale the city wall and kill everyone. However, after a day and night of fierce fighting, the battle situation seemed to have stabilized. Those mercenaries who took the initiative to apply to help defend the city wall happily walked down the city wall. Everyone gained a lot. After all, these mercenaries were very strong personally and almost all of them were directly involved in hunting the ghost-marked red ants. Therefore, the rewards obtained are also very generous. The mercenary's harvest today was about three gold coins. Moreover, these mercenaries who take the initiative to apply for defense assistance will also be given priority when arranging dates for defending the city later. Those mercenaries who did not take the initiative to apply for assisting defense at the beginning, but now see the rich rewards for assisting defense. If they want to apply for assisting defense on the city, they can only join the reserve team and wait for the opportunity. I don't know how many people were regretting it for a while. While the merchants were discussing how to expand more trade and cooperation with the Doden town garrison, Ms. Selena, the resident's officer in charge of logistics affairs, convened the merchants in the town and held a meeting in front of the warehouse of the city defense brigade. Distributor conference. As soon as Serdak came down from the city wall, Selena pulled him here to participate in this dealer meeting. In front of the warehouse of the City Defense Brigade, there were more than 30 businessmen standing. Everyone was gathering together and whispering about the battle on the city wall today. No one expected that the garrison could so easily block the first wave of the beast tide. Once you get into a fighting rhythm, the next thing to do is to hold on. Moreover, on the first day of persistence, more than 20 ghost patterned soldier ants were hunted. With the current market price of Warcraft materials, this is also a big gain. Serdak did not expect that so many businessmen would come to the town during this period of time. He walked to the warehouse gate of the city defense brigade and stared at the businessmen on the field. When everyone saw Serdak, their voices became much quieter. Serdak stood at the door of the warehouse and asked the city defense guard to push open the door of the warehouse. The inside was almost filled with elementary warcraft leathers and a large wooden box was filled with magic cores. The businessmen shouted for a while. Everyone knows that the garrison has been hunting a large number of monsters recently. But they didn't expect that the number was so large. Serdak raised his hand to signal everyone to quiet down. And then said, I believe that many people here today are very concerned about the results of our military garrison on the city wall. 
and also want to know how many magical beasts we have hunted before. Most of the results of these days are in this warehouse. I think there will be more and more in the future. But the magic materials from the ghost pattern soldier ant will be available every day. I think it will continue until the beast tide ends. It's not difficult to get these Warcraft materials. Anyone who has arrows, kerosene, fine steel ingots, linen thread, feathers, finished arrow shafts, and a series of military supplies can be transported to Duodan Town and get them. Merchants who sell these military supplies can get these magic materials at a price that is 20% lower than the market price. Sorry. Gold coins and magic crystals are temporarily unavailable to buy these Warcraft materials in Duodan Town. Soldek glanced at Selena and said, I have to hold a meeting. And you are in charge of this. After saying that, he took several squadron captains from the cavalry battalion and quickly left the city defense brigade and returned to the garrison camp. As soon as Serdak left, the merchants immediately became imposing. Where are we going to find military supplies at this time? A businessman in the crowd shouted at the top of his lungs. Another businessman held up the money bag in his hand, shook it loudly, and protested to Selena. Gold coins are the trading currency circulated in the Green Empire, and bartering like this is a violation of the Green Empire's laws. We do not accept your commander's proposal. Yes, we can't accept it no matter what. The businessmen at the scene all said that they would not accept such a deal, and their voices were very neat. Selena had been standing in front of the warehouse door. Silent. She quietly listened to the protests from the merchants, asked the warehouse manager to lock the warehouse door, and then said, In this case, we won't force it. If you come to me next time, you won't get this preferential price. But you will get these magic materials at a price that is 10% lower than the market price. After speaking, she said calmly without even looking at these businessmen, You guys are thinking carefully. After saying that, he turned and left. Selena returned to the military camp. She also had a lot of things to deal with. The recently obtained supplies and supplies shipped by the logistics department had already been consumed in large quantities every day, and all the accounts were in chaos. She wanted to sort out the front part of these accounts. And for this, she did not even go to the city wall to take a look. Several scribes gathered around her, constantly reporting some data to Selena. Selena just sat down at the desk in the wooden house, ready to drink a cup of hot tea and take a breather. Just as she reached out to pick up the steaming teacup, she saw the clerk knocking on the door. Selena put down the teacup and looked at the clerk. The clerk immediately stood up straight and reported to Selena. Miss Selena, there is a businessman named Hoover who wants to talk to you in private. Selena said calmly. Invite him in. The clerk walked out quickly. Not long after, a shy businessman with a big belly walked in. His expression was a bit vulgar, and he tried to force a smile. But unfortunately, his smile was very forced. Miss Selena, I want to buy some leather from level 2 monsters. I happen to have some fine steel ingots in my hand. Selena shook her head and said, You can't exchange fine steel ingots for second level Warcraft leather. If you want this kind of high grade leather, you have to get kerosene. Then what can I get in exchange? Hoover wiped his forehead and asked, Elementary Warcraft leather and magic crystal are both fine. Selena said to the businessman Hoover, Opposite Selena, Hoover put a piece of paper on the table and said humbly, Then I want the Junior Warcraft leather, which can be traded tonight. But you must keep it a secret from me. I don't want them to knowing I broke my agreement with them. Dot. I know. The deal will be in front of the City Defense Brigade's warehouse before dawn tomorrow morning. Selena said to Hoover. Businessman Hoover took off his hat and bowed to Selena, revealing his bald and slightly funny head. As soon as businessman Hoover left, another businessman came to visit. They swore in front of others that they would never trade with the garrison camp, but they came to her door one after another, leaving Selena overwhelmed. However, the one that moved the fastest was Duodan Town Trading Company, because their trading company's warehouse had originally stored some military supplies, but now they were just taking them out for trading. So naturally they quickly discussed the transaction list with Selena. By the time Selena was done with all this, it was completely dark. Chapter 762 Moonlight in Duodan Town a crescent moon hung diagonally in the night sky. The night sky is very clean, with no clouds blocking it, and only a few stars sparsely dotted in the night sky. The fire on the North City Wall has not been extinguished yet. The fire has blocked thousands of ghost-striped red ants outside the city. The stone walls on both sides of the city wall are still flooded with large numbers of ghost-striped worker ants. These worker ants were shot and killed by the city guards. Most of the corpses fell outside the city 
and the corpses of many ghost striped worker ants gathered in piles. After the city defense guards kill some of the ghost striped worker ants that rush to the city, the corpses will be thrown into the fire wall outside the city. These oil rich ghost striped red ants will be roasted in the fire until all the moisture in their bodies has completely evaporated. The oil is squeezed out and turned into new fuel, becoming part of the fire wall. The guards on the city wall were fighting bravely. But the town was very quiet at night. There was soft light in the closet of the shop facing the street. Without the support of the garrison camp cavalry and city guards, the tavern in the town looked very deserted. The tavern owner was sitting on the guardrail outside the bar, holding a glass of ale and looking at the north city wall. He was drunk and muttering something to himself. Two night watchmen came from the east side of the town carrying lanterns, lighting the street lamps on the main street as they went. Opposite the tavern is a leather shop. Although this leather shop is still open, it does not accept any new orders because the owner of the leather shop and all the clerks in the shop have gone to the military camp to work as helpers. There, hundreds of fire wolves are peeled off every day. Leather, as well as some high-end warcraft leather. So much so that the owner of the leather shop has not had time to come to the tavern for a drink recently. The tavern and tannery shop are located at the busiest intersection in the town. There is also a very busy bakery in the other corner. Every afternoon, residents will line up in front of the bakery to buy bread. Every morning, a temporary free market forms at the intersection. Before 10 o'clock in the morning, this market will automatically disperse. In the center of the intersection is a circular flower bed, with a sculpture standing in the center. It is said that the sculpture is engraved with scenes of the hard work of the original town builders. Nika was wearing a floral dress and stood on the cement steps of the circular flower bed at the intersection. She had a money bag slung over her body, which was heavily filled with copper coins. She looked around from time to time, watching the children walking out of the alley around her. Two aboriginal children hurried out of an alley, each holding a bundle of sticks in their arms, and ran to Nika in no particular order. Their thin chests rose and fell violently. Their foreheads were covered with sweat, and their bronze arms held a bundle of sticks and handed them to Nika at the same time. Come one by one. As I said before, line up. Even if there are only two of them, Nika requires these aboriginal children to obey order. In the past few days, he had visited all the alleys in the slums of the town and established some prestige in the hearts of the aboriginal children. After she took a bundle of arrow shafts and opened the rope, she took out an inspection tool and inspected the arrows one by one. Rod. These arrow shafts are all cut from some hard miscellaneous wood in the woods outside the town. They are very hard and have some weight in the hand. She threw out an arrow shaft that couldn't fit into the slot of the inspection tool. Frowned and said, This one is unqualified. It's too thick. It can be sharpened again. It should be as thick as the one in my hand. The aboriginal boy's face turned slightly red and he nodded repeatedly. After picking two, I picked out another curved one. This time she raised her delicate eyebrows and said somewhat rudely, This one is a little bent. I asked you to just take the branches from the tree to make up the number? What I need is a standard arrow shaft. And each one must be exactly the same. Not this kind of fire stick that is only suitable for making fire. As she spoke, she threw the bent arrow shaft on the steps at her feet and asked with a questioning look on her face. Isn't your father a hunter? Have you ever hunted with him? Have you ever hunted? Are you fooling me with these sticks? Isn't making arrows a basic skill for a hunter? A series of questions left the aboriginal child speechless. The companion next to him saw Nika's somewhat harsh look and even wanted to shrink back on the spot. She works meticulously, holding inspection tools in her hands. Each arrow shaft must be as thick as a little finger, even and straight, and her fingers must be placed in the center of the arrow shaft. The arrow shaft must be in a balanced state, and the arrow shaft must be ground very smooth. Some that are not sharp enough will be thrown underfoot and used as firewood. Only those straight, and thin hardwood poles will be put into the box by Nika. At the beginning, Nika saw that local aboriginal children were unwilling to buy cheap bread from the town's bakery. She thought it was probably the aboriginal children who didn't know there was such a bakery in the town. So, she visited almost all the slums during that time, just to let the aborigines know that the bakery in the town was so cheap. She hopes that the indigenous children in the town can eat whole wheat bread and never go hungry again. But then she realized that things seemed to be a bit too simple. Although the price of whole wheat bread is quite low, these aboriginal children in the town still look at the bakery eagerly every day, just like wandering beggars, waiting for the rich to walk out of the bakery and get money from the paper bag. Give them a piece of alms. Sometimes, 
Those people would even throw the broken bread on the ground. Just like feeding stray dogs. And watch several children fighting for it at the same time. Which made the female companions around them laugh. Many wealthy people in the town regard this behavior as a kind act and think it is a kind of care for the plain world from the civilized world. The unabashed playfulness on their faces was like the jack of spades. After Nika learned about the situation, she realized that everyone was hungry because they had no money at all. Not even two copper coins in their hands. These days, Nika has been thinking about how to change the lives of local indigenous people. She asked Selena, who had been very busy every day, for advice. Selena smiled and pointed to her chest and said to her, The only ones who can change their lives are themselves. First of all, change must be mentioned here. She pointed to her head again. Nika thinks Selena's words mean to let the aborigines find their own opportunities. Hearing that there was a shortage of arrow shafts in the armament warehouse in the town, Nika thought this was a good opportunity. So she prepared to let the aboriginal children sharpen the arrow shafts. She was willing to buy these hardwoods at the price of one copper plate for every two arrow shafts. Of arrow shaft. The materials for making arrow shafts are everywhere in the woods at the foot of the mountains outside the town. The aboriginal children do not need to spend a penny. They only need a sharp hatchet. Many children from aboriginal families have fathers who are hunters and are good at making hardwood bows and arrows. With their ears and eyes used to it, it shouldn't be difficult for them to sharpen arrow shafts. However, she has some strict requirements for such arrow shafts, and each one must be made very finely. As long as four qualified arrow shafts can be whittled out in a day, you can get two copper plates and a complete whole wheat bread. Nika did not give the 36 copper coins to the two aboriginal children. She was worried that they would buy other children after getting the copper coins. She would directly lead the two aboriginal children across the street to the door of the bakery. The bakers here work until very late every day. And the bread consumed in the entire town every day is calculated in terms of wheat flour pockets. The waiter in the bakery knew Nika and knew that she lived with Miss Selena. He probably thought that she was Miss Selena's maid. So he respected her very much. Nika took out a handful of copper coins and exchanged them for two bags of whole wheat bread which the two aboriginal children received from each loaf. When they saw that they had earned so much bread, their eyes widened, and the two children cheered and hugged each other. Nika pulled their ears, dragged them out of the bakery, and said viciously to the two children, who were holding cloth bags and looking intoxicated, Tomorrow you call more people to sharpen arrow shafts for me. I want you to know each other. All my friends came to sharpen my arrow shafts. We will still be trading here tomorrow night. I know. See you tomorrow night. Nika. The aboriginal children were carrying cloth bags and slipped into the alley and were nowhere to be found. At night, in Selena's rented house, Signa was sitting next to the fireplace in the kitchen, holding a wooden spoon in her hand and constantly stirring the thick soup in the iron pot. Dozens of wontons wrapped in dough were rolling in the boiling soup pot. Soldak didn't like the oatmeal that smelled like wheat. He likes to make wontons with meat stuffing wrapped in dough and some onions, carrots, etc. are added to the meat stuffing. The soup is a thick soup made from the backbone of maned animals. And some rosemary is added to the broth. Incense and basil leaves. Signa wrinkled her little nose and scooped out some soup with a wooden spoon to test the saltiness. Chop the tomatoes on the chopping board and add them to the pot. Signa thought the broth tasted much better. She felt that Serdak had some requirements of one kind or another every day, especially regarding food and he didn't look like a wall villager who had everything to offer. Why doesn't the milk oatmeal taste good? You have to cook the noodles in broth and wrap them with some meat filling, which is really troublesome. Selena stayed up late all day. Recently, Nika also runs outside all day long. Otherwise, Nika is a good helper. Now, the task of cooking dinner fell on her, which made her a little dissatisfied, especially when faced with Serdak's pickiness. Signa even wanted to bring back some chestnuts and grains, cook him a pot of grain porridge, and let him seriously recall the days of Wall Village. Maybe his appetite will improve. There is also a magic notebook on the counter. Celia Cooper is in the pages of the book. Her thin cheeks have no flesh, and her withered hands are holding on to the railings. She looks out from time to time. She keeps giving Zygna some advice. However, for a space black magician, her cooking skills are not very good. Apart from boiling potatoes, her best thing is probably making tea. In comparison, Zygna's cooking skills are still very reliable. At least they won't produce any weird taste. However, in this pot of broth, Zygna still let herself go and showed off freely. Zygna tasted the sweet 
and sour soup and thought the tomatoes tasted really good. Signa, I think the last time Soldak proposed cooking this kind of wontons. He didn't mention adding tomatoes about the ingredients. I have some records here. The black magician Celia Cooper turned over the magic notes and said Zigna reminded. Listen to me. You're right. This soup is very sweet. Zigna looked very confident. She wiped her hands on her apron and looked at the night outside. When she got here, Selena hadn't come back yet. That's nothing. Celia Cooper also wanted to put forward some opinions of her own. Signa reached out and closed the magic note, pouting and said, I know he is a very picky person about food. The first one to come back was Nika. She dragged a large wooden box and moved it little by little from outside the yard into the yard. She didn't know what was in it. It looked very heavy. Selena recently gave Nika some pocket money. So Nika has to run outside every afternoon. This made Zigna very envious. Zigna was wearing a small apron and standing at the door of the room with a wooden spoon in her hand. She asked the aboriginal girl in the yard. Nika, what's in the box? Nika knocked on the wooden box and then said, Arrow shafts. I heard that a very large number of crossbow arrows are consumed every day on the North City Wall. The inventory in the warehouse at the military camp can't last for a few days. So I tried to find a way to get them from outside. Come back a little bit. Zygna said enviously. You really have a way. No. These arrow shafts were purchased from the aboriginal children in the town. I paid for them. Nika whispered. Do you need my help? Nika followed Zygna into the small building and asked as she walked. You can wash your face first and then take a rest. If you are hungry, there are baked wheat cakes on the table. Selena and Soldak haven't come back yet. So dinner will have to wait for a while. Zygna said to Nika. Said. Not long after. The carriage carrying Selena stopped at the door of the small building. Selena stood at the door, not forgetting to explain something to the two clerks. After a long time, she heard the sound of the carriage driving away. Then the courtyard door was pushed open. And when Selena walked into the courtyard, Zygna and Nika had been waiting at the door for a long time. Selena walked up, hugged Zygna and Nika to her side, and said, Sorry, the military camp has to deal with the bees tied in the canyon recently and there are many things waiting to be dealt with. You two should be careful these two days. There is no guarantee that there will be ghost strike red and entering the town from other places. When you encounter danger, you must first protect yourself. If you are able to help others, then help them. Selena warned Zygna and Nika. No matter how busy he is, Soldek always takes some time to come back to the small building every week. Everyone sat down to have dinner together. And after dinner, they paid attention to Zygna's recent study status. Then I'll work out with Selena. He felt that only in this way could this place look like a home. Chapter 763 Daughter of Darkness After dinner, Selena was busy preparing bath water. Serdak came down from the battlefield on the northern city wall, with a smell of blood and sourness all over his body. His leather armor was hanging on the wooden frame at the door, and he was only wearing a shirt that was wet and wet again, and bloomers, sitting on the sofa in the living room looking at a large wooden box that Nika carried over. It contains her whole day's harvest. And the hardwood arrow shafts are neatly packed in the box. A very nice hardwood arrow shaft, Serdak praised. A smile appeared on Nika's shy little face. And she whispered timidly, I guess there will be more tomorrow. Soldak picked up an arrow shaft, which seemed to be very finely sharpened, and said, Those aboriginal children usually spend the whole day doing nothing in the town. It is also a good thing to give them something to do now. Selena walked out of the bathroom, holding a pile of clean shirts and urging Soldak. The hot water is ready. Go take a shower. Serdak has been on the battlefield for almost the past two days, and his body is filled with a bad smell. The ghost striped red ants occupied Duodin Canyon and almost slaughtered all the monsters in the canyon. Now they are overwhelmingly rushing towards Duodin Town, but they are blocked by the North City Wall. Now the city defense guards are divided into three shifts to take turns guarding the North City Wall. There are currently five captains in the garrison camp, and Serdak requires that at least two captains must be on guard at the top of the city at any time to deal with emergencies on the city wall. The ghost-striped soldier ants below the city wall haven't had time to deal with them, and the corpses are piled up under the city wall. This kind of weather won't last long. The master leatherworker at the leatherworking shop in Duodan Town didn't seem to understand the hard skin of these ghost-marked soldier ants. He felt that this hard-to-handle hard skin was of little value. But Serdak felt that since almost every head of these ghost pattern soldier ants has a magic core, it must reach at least the level of a second level monster. 
he hadn't even had time to dissect a ghost-striped soldier ant. Selina wore a close-fitting nightgown and placed her clothes next to the bathtub. Serdak took off his clothes in a few seconds, jumped into the bathtub, and let the warm water wrap around his body. The pores in his body opened, and a wave of tiredness came over him. Although the blessed body could quickly restore physical strength, Serdak felt a little mentally exhausted, lying in the bathtub and falling asleep. The soft whisper of Tassimat, Tassimat, Tassimat sounded in my ears again. Bring those sacrifices to me, and I will grant you great power. Serdak felt his heart beating faster and faster. The blood all over his body began to boil, and the heart almost broke out of his chest. The sacred aura in his body surged out, forming a series of magnificent lines on the surface of his skin. Runes of light. The keel of his throat also became extremely hot, as if his throat wanted to let out some kind of low roar. The whispering in my ear slowly disappeared. Serdak was lying in the bathtub, completely awake from his half-asleep state, and he sat up from the bathtub. At this time, Selina just walked in from outside with a ball of loofah pulp, half kneeling next to the bathtub, scooping a spoonful of warm water with a wooden spoon and pouring it on Soldak's back, and gently wiped his back. She didn't seem to notice anything strange about Serdak just now, and said softly to Serdak, By the way, several businessmen asked me about the ghost-striped soldier ants today. It is said that if the acid in the stomach pouch is not disposed of as soon as possible, the ghost-striped soldier ants will be corrupted by the acid in their bodies soon after death. Those businessmen can't afford it early. They must be worried that we know something. Serdak poured water to wash his face and saw that all the light runes on the surface of his body had disappeared completely. But inside his body, the sacred aura is still surging. Serdak turned to Selina and asked, Has any businessman offered to buy the hard carapace of soldier ants? Not at all. Selina thought for a moment before saying, and then asked, do you want to deal with those hard sh? L.S.? Soldak shook his head and said, Let's wait. That thing should have some value. But we don't know yet. It is estimated that even if those hard sh. L.S. can be used to make leather armor. They are too hard and would be very unfriendly to leather workers. Got it. Selina whispered. She rolled up her sleeves, revealing a white lotus root-like arm, and rubbed Soldak's back. Although there is no secret about Serdak's body to her, Every time she sees the shocking burn scars on his body, it reminds her of the fire, and she doesn't know how he ended up in that conference. Those who survived had almost no intact skin on their bodies. Soldak never mentioned the fire, and Selina never asked. She hoped that one day he could untie the knot in his heart and tell her the story. After all, it had been so long. Selina put away the messy thoughts in her heart and said, Other mercenary groups in the town came to me. They hoped to participate in the guard battle. Serdak leaned back to make himself more comfortable and said to Selina, Now that the situation on the North City Wall has stabilized, we don't know what will happen next. We won't need them for the time being. At the beginning, I wanted to hide outside the town. But now I see that the people who fought bloody battles on the city are getting a share of the benefits. So I want to come over and share the benefits. The benefits here are not something you can just take. I plan to put them into reserve first. In short, I don't know how long this beast wave will last. It is estimated that there are still many battles to fight. What we have to do now is to maximize the benefits as much as possible. Selina added. How should I deal with the business group? Serdak rubbed his forehead in distress and said. Those merchants are still not very honest. Now that the Warcraft leather trade has been opened, I just want to exchange all the supplies they have stored in their hands. Now they are consumed on the North City Wall. The biggest one is arrows, followed by kerosene. These two supplies are crucial to us. The more we reserve, the better. I'll keep an eye on these deals. Talina said. They didn't tell me the value of the ghost pattern soldier and hard carapace. I think that thing should be useful. I'll go find the aborigines in the town tomorrow to find out. Saldak said. Okay. Hey. Let go. Zigna and Nika are still outside. The water in the bathtub suddenly overflowed and splashed onto the marble floor of the bathroom with a splash. Water dripped all over the ground. Zigna sat barefoot on the single bed in the room. Through the glass window, she could see the towering thorny mountains under the moonlight. She heard the sound of splashing water coming from downstairs. And then Selina screamed for half a sound. Then stopped abruptly. Like one boot dropped on the floor. It makes people want to drop the second boot altogether. And then sleep peacefully. Zigna really couldn't sleep. She didn't pay attention to what Celia Cooper was doing. She stepped on the floor with her bare feet took the magic notes on the desk to the bed, and opened the next page directly. 
Celia Cooper seemed to be writing some kind of notes inside. When she saw someone opening the notebook, she looked up. Celia, do you think they should restrain themselves? Cigna complained to Celia Cooper. Celia Cooper stared at Cigna angrily. She had no way to deal with this daughter of darkness. She could only say, Do you think you are used to it? Cigna is a timid, lonely and introverted little girl who doesn't want to contact the outside world. For a long time, she liked to hide under Selena's skirt. She could only hug Selena's thigh. It will make her feel safe. Selena is the apostle of the dark goddess. After Zygna was born, her body had a very high affinity to the dark elements. In fact, it can also be called a dark constitution. It was this unique constitution that made her frail and sickly since she was a child. And she also suffered a lot. But a girl with such a dark physique and a pure heart is the perfect carrier. The dark goddess often has a trace of her spiritual thoughts coming to her. Although the time is very short. Sometimes she will see if her apostle insists on bringing her will to this world. And sometimes it is just to take a breather. It happened that that night in Wall Village, Serdak brought the magic notebook but forgot to put it away. At that time, Cygna still lived in that dilapidated mud house. The room was very small, and Cygna slept on the top bunk. After Serdak fell asleep with Selena in his arms, Cygna woke up with a trace of the dark goddess's spiritual thoughts. She saw the magic notebook on the table at a glance. With the dark goddess's perception, she knew this magic notes are very special. He also used the power of the dark goddess to set up a cage on this magic notebook. The space inside the magic note was reinforced. And Celia Cooper was trapped inside. Perhaps her original intention was to trap her in the magic note. I'm just a crippled soul without five senses. When I become a black magician, I won't have those desires. I think we can talk about something else. Celia Cooper put down the goose feather in her hand that was condensed with thoughts. Pen asked, What do you think? How are you living here? Zygna leaned close to the magic notebook and asked in a low voice, How about what? Celia Cooper asked with a wary look. After she said those words, she immediately regretted them. She couldn't see through Cigna. Cigna didn't intend to pursue it further. After all, Celia Cooper was still of some use to her. She could occasionally say a few words to herself. And then said, I mean who created it in the magic notebook? From a subdimensional space? It's Cyrus Hickok, an old friend of mine. He is proficient in this type of space magic. Celia Cooper answered casually. I suddenly had an idea. Zygna's eyes became bright at this moment. But she only said half of her words. Her tone was a bit unlike her usual tone. Celia Cooper trembled for no reason. Forget it. It should be troublesome to do it now. So let's do this for now. After saying that, Zygna closed the magic note casually, threw the note on the bedside table, got into the quilt, closed her eyes, and fell into a deep sleep. The moonlight from the window shone in again and sprinkled on the floor in the room. Selina felt someone move her arm, and with sleepy eyes, she saw Soldak sitting up from the bed and putting on his linen shirt lightly. She glanced at the window and found that it was still dark. She lazily pulled the sheets and asked casually, Why are you leaving so early? When Soldak saw that he had woken up Selina, he apologetically leaned over and kissed her on the cheek, and said softly, there are still a lot of ghost-striped soldier ants waiting to be dealt with at the military camp. It is expected that there will be new harvests at the North City Wall this night. These resources cannot be wasted. Selina dragged her tired body, stretched out her arms from the bed, picked up the nightgown thrown on the floor, and said, I'll prepare breakfast for you. But Suldek hugged her, covered her with a blanket, and then said, No need to go to so much trouble. Just have something to eat in the canteen of the military camp later. You can sleep a little longer. After saying that, he opened the door and walked out of the bedroom, found the set of leather armor that had been wiped clean on the wooden shelf in the living room corridor, and quickly put it on. He mounted his war horse and hurriedly left the small building. Serdak was thinking about how to deal with those ghostly patterned soldier ants along the way. When he returned to the military camp, he discovered that the ogre Gilatum was grilling a ghost-striped red ant on a bonfire in the morning light. Seeing that he had cut open the abdomen of the ghost pattern red ant and cleaned up the acid inside, the entire ghost pattern red and was pierced on a log. At this time, the ogre had already cut several thick and large limbs of the ghost pattern soldier ant. The legs are eaten clean. The hard carapace cracked under the charcoal fire and the meat inside was completely bluish white. The abdomen is filled with some hot paste, which looks like a giant coconut crab. Saldak, would you like some? 
It tastes pretty good. The ogre warmly invited Serdak to share this big thing with him. In fact, he also invited Andrew just now. But the Nanai natives didn't seem to like the taste very much. They vomited after just a few bites. Soldak felt that he did not have such a strong stomach. So he quickly refused. Forget it. I can't enjoy this kind of delicious food. Gulitam didn't care. And immediately pulled off the last giant leg. Which was nearly two meters long and covered with barbs. And knocked it with a bone crushing stick. The hard sh. Ls that became brittle under the charcoal fire immediately it cracked open. Revealing the steaming tender meat inside. When Soldak saw Andrew walking out of the canteen. Followed by several squadron leaders. He asked. Why so early? Andrew did not say that he was forcibly woken up by the ogre to a barbecue together. I can't sleep a little bit. I want to go to the North City Wall and advance to take a look. Andrew said in a muffled voice. Soldak said to Andrew. Wait for me. After saying that, he went to the canteen of the garrison camp, took a toasted wheat cake, walked out, and rushed to the North City Wall with Andrew. In the early morning light, we could see someone standing at the top of the city fighting two ghost pattern soldier ants from a distance. Soon the battle subsided, and the huge ghost pattern soldier ants were pushed down the inner city wall. Chapter 760 for the secret of ghost pattern soldier ants. In the early morning, heavy fog appeared in the Doden Canyon. The entire northern city wall was shrouded in heavy fog. The flames under the city wall caused the fog to surge upwards. The archers at the top of the city could not see the ghost marked red ants in the distance. They could only wait until these ghost marked red ants crawled nearby. Shoot him. A large number of ghost patterned red and swarmed up from both sides of the mountain wall and started hand to hand combat with the heavy armored infantry on top of the city. The guards on the city wall were locked in a bitter fight. The archers immediately retreated to the archery tower and fired arrows continuously, suppressing the ghost marked red ants on the city wall. However, in the thick fog, there were too many ghost marked red ants coming up from the mountain wall. The corpses of ghost marked red ants were piled up at the top of the city almost stacking on top of each other. There were still a large number of ghost marked red ants coming up. The city defense men, who controlled the bed crossbows, kept Serdak's instructions in mind, and kept a close eye on the giant soldier ants mixed in the ant colony. The giant crossbow arrows are basically used to kill the ghost pattern soldier ants that have just emerged from the city head. As long as the soldier ants appear, they will be nailed to the mountain near the city head by the giant crossbow arrows. Throughout the morning, more than a hundred ghost-striped soldier ants were nailed to the left mountain wall. Each soldier ant was as big as an adult one-horned bison. And they were densely nailed to the mountain wall. Some soldier ants broke free from the giant crossbow arrows. And their bodies were broken into two pieces. The bodies of some soldier ants fell to the bottom of the city. While others with their heads attached insisted on climbing up the city. Trying to spit out acid. It's just that the abdomens of these soldier ants have been severed long ago. And they can only linger and attacked the heavy armored infantry on the city with huge pincers. Some heavy armored infantry armed with spears will work together to knock these soldier ants off the city. There were about 200 heavy armored infantry on duty at night, as well as nearly 150 city defense guards and 20 mercenaries. At this time, 150 city defense soldiers, holding continuous shooter crossbows, desperately guarded the 35 bed crossbows at the top of the city. The heavy armored infantry, led by Adams and Gallatin, forced the ghost-striped worker ants to the east and west sides of the city wall to squeeze the space for activity of the ghost-striped worker ants, hoping to force the ghost-striped worker ants on the top of the city back to the mountain wall. Serdak and Andrew climbed the northern wall. We happened to see Adams in silver armor standing at the front of the team, holding a tower shield. There were some mercenaries and veterans of the infantry regiment gathered around him. These people formed a human wall, waving the heavy swords in their hands and were struggling to clean up the incoming waves. The ghostly patterned worker, ants at the top of the city. Adam stood on a high pile of corpses piled up by ghost-striped worker ants. And a group of worker ants surrounded him. Adams, who was standing at the front of the team, swung out the long sword in his hand. And a white bolt flashed past with the sword's edge. Several ghost-patterned worker ants' heads were cut off by the long sword at the same time. However, Adams was also in a very embarrassed state at this time. His leg armor and mithril battle skirt were stained with acid and dark brown body fluids spitted by ghost-striped worker ants. There were already traces of severe corrosion on them. And there were several scratches on his body. Hurt. The heavy armored infantry and mercenaries around him were also injured. Several veterans held shields to protect the sides of Adam's body to resist the attacks of the worker ants. 
Neither Soldak nor Andrew expected that the ghost-striped red ants would take advantage of the morning fog to attack the northern city wall in large numbers. By the time they climbed onto the north city wall, the corpses of ghost-striped worker ants had piled up on both sides of the city wall. The city defense guards following Andrew immediately held repeating crossbows and fired a hail of arrows at these hard sh. Lead worker ants. The fine steel arrows broke through the armor of the ghostly patterned worker ants and penetrated into their bodies causing light brown blood to splash everywhere. When the worker ants at the front were injured, they let out a hissing scream and tried to hide behind them. But they were surrounded by ghost-striped soldier ants that came up from behind and surged forward like a wave. When Andrew saw the scene, he immediately took big steps and jumped onto the city wall. He pulled out the butcher's axe from his back, and a layer of flame burst out of his hands, like a meat grinder being rolled into an ant colony. And some stumps and broken legs flew out from Andrew's side. The momentum of the ghost-striped worker, ants that surged up, was finally stopped. Serdak also followed closely behind Andrew, with a halo of power emerging under his feet. He rushed to the top of the city and stood with Adams. Adams and the surrounding heavy armored infantry suddenly felt a force pouring out from under their feet like spring water. Adams and Serdak rushed into the ant colony almost at the same time. Andrew was also followed by a team of fresh troops. Everyone stood on the several meter wide city wall and forced the ghost-patterned worker, ants that were coming up little by little down the north city wall. The battle situation at the top of the city slowly stabilized. The ghost-patterned worker, ants coming from both sides of the mountain wall were suppressed by crossbow arrows again. The corpses of worker, ants under the mountain walls on both sides burned. A large amount of thick smoke dispersed the dense fog. And the burning assembly once again. The attack of worker ants was blocked. The newly arrived city defense troops threw the corpses of worker, Ants piled on the city wall into the wall of fire under the city wall, and then cleaned the city wall again. Only some sour liquid and light brown blood remained on the city wall, exuding a disgusting stench. Buckets of water were poured on it, and sewage mixed with acid, worker ant bodily fluids, and blood flowed down from the top of the city. The heavy fog also began to dissipate in the morning light. Some of the ghost striped worker ants that crossed the northern city wall became training targets for the town's reserve corps. These ghost-striped worker ants were extremely aggressive, fearless of death, and did not know how to hide. They were quickly wiped out by the reserve forces in the city. When the ghost-striped red ants rushed up the city wall, almost all the bed crossbows on the city wall were killing the ghost-striped soldier ants. Giant crossbow arrows were shot out one after another, containing huge impact. At such a close distance, almost as long as the ghost-striped soldier ants are shot, they will be taken flying out and pinned to the side of the mountain. After the fog cleared, more than a hundred giant crossbow arrows were stuck on the mountain wall. Some ghost-patterned soldier ants were nailed to the mountain wall and could not break free. At this time, they were still struggling and squirming among the giant crossbows densely covered on the mountain wall. These ghost-patterned soldier ants were basically held up by long ropes by the city guards. Climb the ladder and use the scythe to cut off the dark red head. After the city defense guards executed these ghostly-patterned soldier ants, they dared to approach the mountain wall and began to collect the giant crossbow arrows that were shot into the mountain wall. Ordinary arrows are difficult to recover when shot. In just two days, more than 100,000 arrows were fired by the Doden Town garrison and city defense troops. This quantity accounts for almost half of the arrows in the city defense brigade's warehouse. These arrows are almost all materials shipped by the Wilkes Military Logistics Department in the past three times. However, there are still a large number of fine steel arrows in the warehouse. Clusters, as long as the arrow shaft and tail feathers are attached, can be made into a brand new arrow. Although the consumption of ordinary arrows is huge, there are at least ways to raise them. The trading houses and some merchants in the town have arrows in their hands. But the situation with giant crossbows is different. If they can be recycled, they still need to be recycled as much as possible. The arrow tip of each giant crossbow is thicker than a spear and the tip of each giant crossbow arrow is mixed with some magic metal to enhance the hardness and sharpness. This kind of giant crossbow arrowhead is a military-controlled material, and it is almost difficult to replace it if it is lost. Serdak hoped that in the fourth batch of supplies that the logistics department would soon deliver, it would be best to bring enough supplies such as kerosene, giant crossbow arrows, and fine steel arrows. In this early morning guard battle, almost all the guards on the city wall suffered some injuries. If the acidic liquid sprayed by red ants is not cleaned in time, the wound will continue to worsen. When applied to the skin, the skin will soon become red, swollen, 
itchy and produce blisters, which will then burst, causing severe pain and further corroding the subcutaneous texture. These pickling liquids need to be cleaned with light salt water in time. Fortunately, the station has already prepared them. The city guards and heavy armored infantry, who were on duty at night withdrew from the city wall. Even if they were slightly injured, they had to take a shower at the military camp as soon as possible. Compared to Adams, Gallatin's injuries were more serious. He fought almost to the point of exhaustion on the city wall, unable to lift his shield with his hands. When he was withdrawn from the city, his body was covered with acid, and one arm was stabbed in half by a ghost-striped worker and with giant pincers. When Adams first saw the wound, he thought Gallatin's arm was broken. The triangular puncture and laceration wound took up almost the entire right forearm. His body was a little exhausted, and he sat on the wooden platform outside the small building. Two cronies from the cavalry battalion were treating other wounds on Gallatin's body. Every time the wounds were touched, he screamed in pain. Adams walked up to Gallatin took out a bottle of light red healing potion and gave it to him. Gallatin waved his hand and did not take the bottle of healing potion. He endured the pain and said to Adams, Since you are back alive, you don't need this. It will be more useful to keep this thing. Adams was soaked all over. After such a battle, his face was not tired, but full of energy. Even the wounds on his body were quickly scabbing. Gallatin hesitated for a moment, then asked softly, Is the effect of that magic pattern really that good? Adams did not answer directly, but asked, Are you a little regretful? Gallatin smiled bitterly and said, Regret? Even if I want to regret it, I still can't get the money. At this time, two cavalrymen ran over and said to Gallatin, Captain Gallatin, your injury is serious. It's your turn to receive treatment. I have been waiting here for a long time. How is the condition of the injured this time? Gallatin stood up with the help of his confidants and asked the cavalry as he walked. A cavalryman said, Twelve soldiers were killed on the spot on the city wall, and three seriously wounded soldiers were not rescued. The other seriously wounded soldiers will need more than ten days to recover, and there are many soldiers who were slightly injured. Adams and Gallatin looked at each other. Neither of them expected such a tragic battle, and the casualties were not high. Moreover, soldiers with minor injuries are expected to recover quickly. Soldak was busy in the clinic that was transformed from a guest room in the small building for another whole morning and then he put away the holy light torch standing beside the bed. Almost all the sacred aura in his body was consumed, and at the same time, more than seventy sacrifices of moon blade fire wolf heads were wasted. After all, it is a time of war, and the garrison must maintain its strongest combat effectiveness as much as possible. The only way to make these injured warriors recover as quickly as possible is for all injured warriors to receive the blessing of God from the blessed body. Anyway, I have accumulated hundreds of boxes of those moon blade fire wolf heads, and I don't feel bad about using some now. Serdak walked out of the small building, resisting dizziness, and stood for a while holding on to the wooden railing with his eyes closed before he felt somewhat refreshed. Commander Serdak, the corpses of the ghost striped soldier ants piled outside the military camp are already smelly. What should we do with them? Should we throw them into the wall of fire outside the city and burn them? A center guard of the city defense army said the captain came over and saluted Serdak before asking. Serdak slapped his forehead and then remembered that the beast wave had been going on for two days, and he had not had time to deal with the corpses of these ghostly patterned soldier ants. Let's go together. It just so happens that I've always wanted to go and have a look, Soldak said to the captain of the city defense squadron. The squadron leader was slightly startled, then immediately led the way, walking out of the military camp. The place where the corpses of ghost patterned soldier ants were piled up was not far from the North City Wall. Although the number of ghost pattern soldier ants was not large when they attacked the city, after two days of accumulation, the corpses of these ghost pattern soldier ants were almost gone, filled the pit. A sour smell filled the surroundings of the pit. In order to prevent the acid in the corpse from flowing everywhere, Serdak had a large pit more than 10 meters in diameter dug in the open space behind the northern city wall. The ghost pattern soldier ants thrown from the city wall will first be carried to the leather worker, whose head will be cut off and the magic core inside will be taken out. And then the corpse of the soldier ant will be thrown here. At this moment, it is filled with the corpses of ghost-marked soldier ants. What Serdak didn't expect was that a large amount of acid emerged from the corpses of the ghost-marked soldier ants. The acid may have dissolved the flesh and blood in the ghost-marked soldier ants, diluting more acid with an extremely foul smell. And almost all the ghost-striped soldier ants were soaked in blood. The acid has completely dissolved the protein in the soldier ants' bodies. 
and it is estimated that these ghost-striped soldier ants can no longer become delicious food. Serdak covered his mouth and nose with a handkerchief, stood on the edge of the pit, resisting the feeling of vomiting, and used a wooden stick to poke the corpse of the ghost-marked soldier ant in the acid. It was strongly corroded by the acid. Below, many ghost-striped soldier ants seemed to have only some hard sh. L.S. left, soaking in the pit. Originally, he wanted to skin it himself, but now it seems that he doesn't need to, pulling the city defense squadron leader further away. I happened to see a temporary workshed set up under the city wall. The town's leatherworker and four young men were working together to cut off the head of a ghost pattern soldier ant. Serdak walked over with the captain of the city defense army. Serdak asked the leatherworker named Marin. Boss Marin, do you think the hard skin of those ghost striped soldier ants over there can still be used? Further cooking? The leatherworker named Mullen stopped the hand axe in his hand, bowed to Serdak, lowered his head and said respectfully, reporting to Commander Serdak. The hard skin of those ghost-striped soldier ants has been after being soaked in acid. It gradually melted away. And even if it still has some use value, it is not very valuable anymore. It is estimated that only some businessmen who make saddle covers are willing to buy some. The owner of the leather shop, Mullen, lowered his head and said, when he spoke, he never looked at Soldak. It made Soldak feel a little strange. Chapter 765 New Queen Ant Seeing Soldak leave, a shop assistant carrying a rusty single-edged axe immediately approached the leatherworker boss Mullen and asked him in a low voice, Brother-in-law, have you reached an agreement with Commander Soldak? Has he relented? The expression on his face showed no respect for the boss. Boss Mullen didn't seem to care about this at all, and muttered in a gloomy voice, No, Commander Serdak seems to be very interested in those hard armors. I don't think we should hide this matter. How can we hide this kind of thing? He will know sooner or later. The store clerk chuckled, with a cunning look in his eyes, and said to Boss Mullen, Brother-in-law, as long as this thing is successful, you can take your whole family and leave this ghost place in advance. The other side is already in Wilcox. Find a good relationship with the Noxian Leather Shop in Wilk City. In addition to getting a considerable amount of gold coins, you can also work in the largest leather shop in Wilk City. It is better than opening your own leather shop. It's better to be strong even if you can't make any money all day long. The hard skin of the ghost-striped soldier ants has been soaked in the acid pool for a long time. If it is dragged down, the hard skin will really melt away. Boss Malin touched the hard skin on the chopping board in his hand, said with some worry, I think this business will really go to waste by then. The shop assistant's face suddenly became a little ugly. He immediately wiped his hands, nailed the one-handed axe to a wooden stake nearby, and said decisively, I will go find my friends in the city defense brigade. Boss Malin hesitated to speak. After leaving the workshed, Serdak originally planned to patrol the city wall, but he always felt that something was wrong. So he put on the cotton mask used in the deserted land to prevent inhalation of volcanic ash, and walked back to the place where the ghost-striped soldier ants were piled. Pit. Not too far away from here, a group of migrant workers were digging a second large pit. After the first pit is filled, the ghost-striped soldier ants transported from the workshed will be thrown into the second pit. Serdak saw many aborigines among the migrant workers. Aung San was also among them. It seemed that he should be the small foreman in charge of communication. He was holding a pickaxe in his hand and was circling the area of digging the hole. Standing at the edge of the pit, the few soldiers following Serdak all covered their mouths and noses. No one could stand the pungent stench. Serdak picked up a two-meter-long wooden stick next to the pit and poked the ghost-striped soldier and floating in the acid pool. Some viscous liquid dripped out of the ghost-striped soldier ant's hard sh. L. Like some melted cream. Very disgusting. He stood silently next to the pit, and the soldiers behind him did not dare to leave without permission. On the young road not far away, soldiers kept throwing the headless corpses of ghost-striped soldier ants into the pit. Some bubbles emerged from the central part of the pit. In viscous liquids, when these bubbles emerge, they will form a large semicircle until the semicircular bubble bursts emitting a series of wave sounds. Some bubbles actually lifted up the hard carapace of the ghost-striped red and floating in the center of the pit, and they were constantly opening and closing on the surface of the pool. Serdak discovered something that he had not noticed before. The hard sh. Alas of the ghost-patterned soldier ants in the center of the pit that had been soaked in the acid pool for too long had actually become soft and limp. The wooden stick in his hand could not reach the hard armor of the ghost-patterned soldier ants in the center of the pit. The ghost-patterned soldier ants at the edge were all thrown in not long ago. He poked hard, 
except that the flesh and blood in the SH. L melted. The carapace covered with spikes is still very hard. He asked the soldiers around him to find a five meter long night spear and then picked up a soft and soft carapace of a ghost pattern soldier ant in the center of the pit filled with acidic rot. The ghost pattern soldier ant carapace hangs on the tip of the spear like a dark green kelp dripping with sea water. After the soldiers picked the carapace out of the pit, Serdak had two buckets of water brought over to wash away the acidic liquid on it. He planned to use his true eyes to see what changes had taken place in the hard carapace of this ghost pattern soldier ant. But it looks pretty bad now, because the soldier holding the knight's spear has poked a big hole in the hard armor of the ghost pattern soldier ants. This hard armor should have lost its original toughness. Serdak was about to further study the hard armor when he saw two businessmen with thick scarves on their heads and several followers walking to the pit from a distance and carefully examining the ground. The situation inside the pit. He put down the wooden stick in his hand, stepped on the slightly soft carapace of the ghost pattern soldier ants, and walked towards the businessmen. You want to buy these ghost pattern soldier and hard armor skins? Serdak stared at the two businessmen. The two businessmen hid their faces in scarves and shook their heads repeatedly. One of the businessmen explained to Soldak, This kind of hard armor has no sales. It is better to acquire some magic cores. We are not prepared to acquire them. Seeing the two businessmen denying it, Soldak did not continue to ask further questions. He nodded and then said, There is a big gap in arrows and kerosene on the garrison side now. So you merchants need to raise more arrows from the towns around Wilk City. Of course. If you can find kerosene and fire scale bombs, that's even better. The garrison can use the Warcraft materials in the warehouse to exchange for arrows. And we guarantee that you will have enough profit margin. When the businessman heard what Serdak said, he immediately promised, We will try our best to mobilize some urgently needed military supplies. There are more than a dozen large and small workshops around Wilk City that specialize in making arrows. Now we have sent people to purchase large quantities. Before the businessman finished speaking, he saw a city defense guard running over, giving a military salute to Serdak, and said hurriedly, Sir Commander, Captain Andrew has made new discoveries on the city wall. If you have time, you'd better go there. Serdak looked up at the city wall and found that there was no melee on the city. He felt a little more relaxed and responded, I'll be there right away. The two businessmen wanted to continue talking with Serdak, but unexpectedly Serdak had already hurriedly climbed to the top of the city. They couldn't help but look at each other, and they both saw a hint of helplessness in the other's eyes. The two businessmen and several followers walked out of the pit of acid rot and came to the gate of the city defense brigade. Nearly ten businessmen gathered at the entrance of the brigade, and everyone got into a magic caravan. All the merchants' eyes fell on the two merchants. One of them, a merchant with a gray beard, asked with a worried look, Have you seen Commander Serdak? The two businessmen nodded silently, and the atmosphere in the carriage was a bit dull. The gray-bearded businessman asked the two businessmen, Have you reached an agreement? One of the businessmen shook his head in frustration and said helplessly, Before we could discuss it further, we went to the city to handle matters. Another businessman also asked, President, is there any progress on Miss Selena's side? The gray-bearded businessman sighed and said, we simply stopped the negotiations with the ghost pattern soldier ants and are only selling the low-level Warcraft leather in the warehouse. And they don't have heads yet. Other businessmen sitting in the magic caravan also began to discuss. This business is really tortuous. If you ask me, it's better to tell it directly. If we keep it secret like this, even if we make this big deal, we will just take a piece of meat from someone's mouth. In the end, we will completely offend the commander. That's right. I heard that this commander's background is not simple. I guess Commander Cernak must have noticed it. So he decisively stopped the trade of ghost pattern soldier ants here. There should be no problem. Baron Josh Golding of the Trading House has a very deep conflict with the commander. We have already communicated with him in advance. And he should not tell this matter. Isn't it the same when there's a beast wave? Hey, you haven't seen how many headless ghost pattern soldier ants are in the pit. As long as we make this order we can take the business group to the southern town to do business. We only need to wait four days here. Once the defense changes, this town will have a new batch of military and political officials. Serdak climbed the city wall. Andrew stood behind the wall, enduring the heat wave steaming under the city, looking at the open space between the canyons outside the city, scraping the stubble on his face with his fingers, his face a little solemn. The outside of the north city wall is almost crowded with ghost-patterned red ants. If a catapult throws a flint, 
A large number of ghost pattern worker ants will be killed. Countless ghost pattern worker ants were still swarming up on both sides of the city wall. The heavy armored infantry on the city wall held tower shields. And behind them was a row of heavy armored infantry holding Paglio spears. They thrust out the spears in their hands through the shields. The main attacker will pierce the chin of the ghost marked soldier ants and seal the mouths of the ghost marked soldier ants to prevent them from spitting. The remaining spearmen will thrust their spears into the ghost marked soldiers that have just emerged on the city wall. The soldier ant was stuck in the gap between its head and chest. And then an axe hand would behead it. The main spearmen and axe men are veterans with first level strength in the team. Only they can pierce the hard armor of the ghostly patterned soldier ants cleanly. And those large numbers of ghost patterned worker ants were shot down from the mountain wall by the guards on the city wall with repeating crossbows before they even climbed to the top of the city. He fell to the pile of corpses with thick smoke at the foot of the mountain. The heavy armored infantry and city guards have become very skilled in this kind of city defense battle. Even if there are some mistakes in a certain link, they all know how to make up for it later. Another wave of attacks by the ghost striped red ants was repelled. Serdak endured the heat wave, stood next to Andrew, and looked outside between the gaps in the wall. Andrew pointed his finger into the canyon. In midair nearly 700 to 800 meters away from the north city wall, there was a huge red ant covered in red blood. Visual inspection showed that this red ant with wings was about the size of an adult ice-horned rhinoceros. Big. Just below its body. Hundreds of red ants with ghost stripes are clustered. These red ants with ghost stripes are several times taller than other red ants with stripes of ghost stripes. Even one ant leg is as long as the body of the worker ant. They look like tanks. Surrounding the queen ant. Many ghost striped soldier ants are surrounding the left and right. And the outermost circle is the ghost striped worker ants. At a glance, you can tell that they are clearly ranked. Andrew licked his lips and said, This big fly was discovered this morning. It has been suspended in midair in the valley. Do you feel it? Is it the sense of oppression on the high level Warcraft? Soldek said. Well, I estimate that the monsters that can oppress us should be at least level 3 monsters. Andrew said, his eyes fixed on the big fly. Serdak leaned against the wall, avoiding the heat wave coming from under the city wall, and said, This big fly with wings should be their new queen. And it is also the kind of queen that has not completed mating. How do you know it's an unmated queen? Andrew asked in surprise. Serdak chuckled and said, When the new ant queen finds a safe habitat, builds a brand new ant nest, and completes mating, its wings will fall off on its own. Really? Andrew asked even more surprised. Of course, those under it should be a group of ghost-striped male ants. They are probably the bodyguards of this new queen. Soldak said firmly. Look at how brightly red its body is. After Soldak finished speaking, Andrew actually stuck his head out and took a look again. After it arrived at Duodan Canyon, the ghost-striped red ants here became much more orderly. Even though both sides of the city wall are so stable now, I guess they are paralyzing us. After Andrew finished speaking, he led Soldak to the corpse of a huge ghost pattern soldier ant that was more than four meters long. This ghost pattern soldier ant was larger than those ordinary ghost pattern soldier ants, and the color of its body patterns was also different. Deeper, there are some raised stripes with different concavities and convexities on the carapace, and the sharpest points of these stripes have a series of blunt spines. The dark red carapace on his body also appeared harder. There were three giant crossbow arrows stuck on his back and one on his head. A total of eight bed crossbows hit it at that time. Four of the giant crossbow arrows hit it, but were blocked by the armor. Look here. 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 And here. Andrew pointed out the cracks on the body of the ghost patterned soldier ants. Pointed out to Serdek. The giant crossbow arrows in these places failed to penetrate the armor. But cracked the armor. Andrew pulled out the four giant crossbow arrows inserted into the body of the ghost marked soldier ants. Raised his head and asked Soldek. The strength of this ghost patterned soldier ant has reached the level of a second level monster. Do you want to see what's inside its skull? Serdak nodded. Without saying a word, he used the butcher's axe in his hand to split open the dark red head of the ghost patterned soldier ant with its huge pincers. Suddenly, juice splashed across the city, and a demon the size of a baby's fist was buried in the light green brain. Nuclear. Andrew held the magic core in his hand and waited before saying, With such a big magic core, it is definitely a second level monster. This kind of ghost pattern soldier ants are much stronger than ordinary soldier ants. It seems that we have to be careful. It's okay during the day. Once crawled by this kind of soldier ants at night, come up. It will probably be very troublesome. 
Adams, and the others, who are on duty at night will have to bear even greater pressure. We need to make those go striped red ants in the city be more honest. After saying that, Serdak turned to Samira, who was standing on the crossbow control console and shouted, Samira, what is the maximum range of these bed crossbows? Samira replied casually, It can shoot out 800 meters on the city wall. Can you shoot that big fly? Serdak asked, pointing to the queen ant suspended in the air in the distance. Samira stood on the bed crossbow control platform, stretched out her hand and gestured to the queen ant, and then said, It's too far. We have to get closer to make it possible. Chapter 766 Hard Armor Soldek lowered his head and thought for a moment, then said to Andrew, Get ready to try the fire scale bullet. Throw some out before changing defense in the afternoon to test the effect. If the effect is good, let the city wall guards, who are on duty at night throw a few balls at the cliffs on both sides every hour. I guess this should make it easier for the city wall guards on duty at night. Andrew nodded and said, I know. I'll get someone ready. Serdak never thought that those fire scale bombs would be used so early. There were several boxes in the warehouse of the city defense brigade, but there were only a few boxes. However, Serdak's personal collection of fire scale bombs was enough for a truckload. This time, he was stationed in Doden Town on the Belan Plain. When he heard that a beast wave was about to break out, Serdak took all the fire scale bombs with him. Coming, Samira stood on the crossbow control table with a cold and arrogant expression her light red eyes falling behind Soldak. Serdak turned around just in time to see Ansan walking up the city wall and stopping at a distance. He greeted Serdak respectfully. Lord Commander! Soldak thought about the problem of the hard armor of ghost pattern soldier ants. So he waved to Ansan and said, Ansan! It just so happens that I've planned to find you. What do you want to see me for? Ansan hurriedly stepped forward and said, Sir Commander, a second pit for soldier ants is being dug under the city wall. I think it is best to build a circle of stones around the edge of the pit, although it is a bit troublesome. But if this the planting pit can be used repeatedly, and it is worth spending some stones to build it. In fact, regarding such a small matter as reinforcing the pit, Serdak did not need to make a decision at all. However, seeing that Aung San had come to him in person, Soldak said casually, That's no problem. Later you go to the warehouse manager of the city defense brigade and ask him to move some square stones for the city wall. I know what's under the city wall. There are still some reserves. Aung San wiped his itchy nose and reminded in a low voice with some embarrassment. There is no need for the kind of refractory stone used in city construction. It is estimated that these will be used for the maintenance of the outer city wall in the future. The pit is built just to avoid the edge of the pit. To collapse. An ordinary foundation stone from a quarry will do. Serdak did not expect that the tattered gray stone strips stacked at the edge of the city wall were actually refractory stones. Moreover, it was specially used to reinforce the walls outside the city. It seems that in the past, fire walls were used to block the red ants to resist the beast tide. No wonder most of the supplies left in the warehouse were kerosene. In addition to a large number of arrows, the supplies shipped by the military logistics department, these three times were mostly barrels of kerosene. Soldak asked a team leader from the city defense army, who was responsible for transporting supplies to the city wall to lead two four-wheeled carriages to transport some stones back to the quarry outside the town. The quarry outside the town is now making flint and rolling stones day and night. And the rubble in the quarry has already piled up like a mountain. Usually these gravels are used to pave the bumpy road from Doden Town to the quarry. Soldak is the military and political officer of Doden Town. He wants to load two large carts of stones to build a pit. But the owner of the quarry dares to say anything. Aung San, how did you deal with the hard armor of these ghostly patterned soldier ants last time? Serdek stopped Aung San and asked. Aung San thought for a while, and then said, It should be sold to those businessmen. I was still very young at the time, and I had been digging stones in the quarry during that time. Serdek nodded and told Aung San, and the captain of the city defense army. Okay, got it. Go get ready. Aung San took two steps out, and seemed to remember something. He stopped and said to Serdek, Oh, by the way, Commander, I was digging stones in the quarry and built a stone platform for processing hard armor for a leather worker. The leather worker came to Doden with the caravan. Damn, listen to him. The hard leather armor of the ghost pattern soldier ants is the material used to make the armor of the cavalry war horse. Serdak saw the hard armor that had been soaked in acid and rotten liquid and felt that he must have overlooked something. He walked down the city wall and returned to the pit 
that was full of sour and rotten smell. He saw the soft hard armor that had just been picked up from the center of the pit. After being washed by clean water, he passed by the pit. After drying, it magically becomes much firmer. He tried to pick up the hard armor and pulled it hard twice with both hands. The hard armor of the ghost pattern soldier, ants, actually became very tough. The hard thorns protruding from the hard armor have also become very soft and full of toughness. Spoldek held this large piece of hard armor obtained from the ghost pattern soldier ant in his hand. And surprisingly, he could still see the rough outline of the ghost pattern soldier ant's life. He quickly walked up to the city wall and hung the hard armor on the city wall. The heat wave coming up from under the city wall quickly dried the hard armor. This hard armor, which became very soft after being soaked in acid, actually hardened at a speed visible to the naked eye. And the thorns on the hard armor also became very sharp. This thing can be shaped at will when soaked in acid. After drying, it becomes an extremely tough hard armor. It is indeed an excellent material for making war horse armor. Serdak took the hard armor and said said to Andrew beside him. Andrew was confused. And it took him a while to figure out what Soldak was talking about. He asked Serdak in confusion. Are you saying that the hard armor of ghost patterned soldier ants is very useful? Soldak stood at the top of the city. Threw the hard armor in his hand on the ground. And asked Andrew. What is the biggest problem facing the heavy cavalry of our cavalry battalion at present? Speaking of this, Andrew said with familiarity, The ancient bolai horse is not the standard equipment of heavy cavalry at all. The biggest problem is naturally that the war horse is overwhelmed and it is difficult to reach the maximum speed when charging. He chased after Serdak and continued, In addition to carrying a knight weighing more than 200 pounds, a war horse also needs to carry a full heavy armor, a knight's lance, a flail, a sword and a knight's light shield, as well as the armor covering the body of the war horse. With so much weight on the ancient Bolai horses, it shouldn't be a problem for them to carry them for long distances. But once they go to the battlefield, this is a very dangerous thing. Although we have asked the indigenous herdsmen to carefully condition the ancient Bolai horses, we still cannot change the upper limit of their physical fitness. Therefore, when we recently dispatched heavy cavalry, when it came to the selection of weapons, we would streamline it to the extreme. Serdak was also aware of these ills. It's just that those blue-scaled horses with high physical strength and high explosive power are difficult to buy. The ranches that raise green-scaled horses are all within the control of the Green Empire. Only some constructed knights are equipped with green-scaled horses. As for the higher-quality black-scale horses, they are rare war horses. Currently, only the royal constructed knights, South Wind Knights, North Wind Knights, and a few elite knights can equip such war horses. Serdak then said, So I say that the hard armor of these ghost pattern soldier ants is very useful. It is tough and strong. Has strong impact resistance. Is light in texture and has strong plasticity. It can be used as armor for war horses. It should be pretty good. Then he added, The hard armor on the ghostly pattern soldier ants should be able to make hard leather armor. Mullen, the owner of the leather shop who had been dealing with ghost pattern soldier ants in the work shed, saw Soldak carrying a piece of tough hard armor leather to the top of the city, and knew that this matter must have revealed something. Hard armor leather the secret should have been discovered by Serdak. He picked up the axe in his hand, and struck hard between the skull and chest of the ghost pattern soldier ant. This time, the cut was a little off, and almost cut off a waiter's hand. Sweat dripped down his forehead, panting heavily. He walked down from the desk, sat on a bench nearby, and poured the cold water from the bar into his stomach. His legs were a little weak, and his heart was beating very fast. He was worried that Commander Soldak would bring a group of infantry to settle the score with him. He even foresaw the closure of his leather shop. Boss Mullen wiped the sweat from his forehead, and quietly winked at Ben Ada, who was carrying a ghost-striped red ant. One after another, the two of them found an excuse and left the shed. Marin ran all the way back to the leather shop in the town. After returning home, he immediately closed the leather shop. With a cry of despair. Mullen said to his brother-in-law Benita, I think this matter is unreliable. What now? As I expected, Commander Serdak must have discovered he knew the purpose of the ghost pattern soldier ant's hard armor. Otherwise, he would never have carried it up the city wall to dry the hard armor. Why are you panicking? Brother-in-law, the worst we can do is leave here. He is stationed in the Belan Plain. He cannot leave Doden Town at all while he is stationed. As long as we hide in Wilk City, he will not be able to do anything to us. The man called Banada's guy said to Mullen, You said we can escape to Wilk City. I still have some savings and can live there for a while. As long as we can find work there, 
We will be able to support ourselves. Mullen the boss was running around in circles in the leather shop. Benita glanced at Mullen speechlessly and reminded him. Now that the plan has failed, these rewards will naturally be in vain. Then what should we do? Boss Mullen shouted anxiously. What else can we do? Of course we must get out of here as soon as possible. Benita was not afraid of his brother-in-law at all. He put his head on his head and yelled. The quarrel between the two attracted Mullen's wife, who lived in the backyard. She walked into the tannery shop and saw her husband and brother glaring at each other, almost starting to fight. She immediately rushed to stop her husband. Leatherworker Mallon also knew that this was not the time for a dispute. And of course, he did not dare to stay in Doden Town for a long time. So he packed up his gifts overnight, took his wife, children, and the whole family, took a merchant carriage from Doden Town to Wilk City, and left Doden Town overnight. Recently, merchants have been purchasing Warcraft materials in Doden Town. There are always carriages going to Wilk City. And there are also carriages coming from there. Serdak only found out at night that the owner of the leather shop, Mullen, was missing. He heard from people in the town that the Mullen family left Doden Town with a salute. And even the leather shop was locked. It seems that someone really bribed the owner of the leather shop. It is not difficult to guess who is behind the scenes. If Serdak was completely unaware of this matter, these hard armors would probably be sold to merchants in Doden Town at extremely low prices. So these outside merchants would be the biggest beneficiaries. The three shopkeepers of the leather shop, who were abandoned by the leather worker Mullen in the shed, heard the news that Mullen was absconding in fear of crime. They also stood in the shed with axes in bewilderment and felt at a loss. Obviously they were still working in the work shed last night. But now there is a shortage of manpower in the work shed. The three shop assistants dare not leave. And they are also worried that the boss will abscond in fear of crime. And Commander Serdak will anger them. The three of them huddled together and communicated with each other with eyes even when discussing countermeasures. This incident did cause some trouble for Serdak. The biggest problem was that no one was going to deal with the ghost striped soldier ants for the time being. So the hunted ghost striped soldier ants piled up like mountains. Serdak could only temporarily select some hunters with experience in skinning from the cavalry battalion. Their job was also very simple. They only needed to chop off the heads of the ghostly patterned soldier ants with an axe, dig out the magic core from inside, and remove the soldiers. Just wrap the ant head with a layer of quicklime and put it in a wooden box. The remaining ghost-marked soldier ant corpses were thrown directly into the pit. The hard armor of the soldier ants floating in the center of pit number one has been soaked in acid and has become soft. Serdak asked people to fish out the hard armor of these ghostly patterned soldier ants. Pieces of hard armor were fished out from the pit clean with clean water, and spread flat on the grass to dry. Obviously, soft hard armor is more convenient for storage and transportation. When they heard that Mullen, the owner of the leather shop, had fled Doden Town, the businessmen knew that their plan had been revealed. Commander Serdak must be very familiar with these hard armors, and he is destined not to sell them at a low price. So this group of businessmen came to buy the hard armors of ghost patterned soldier ants, but all applications were rejected by Soldak. Serdak was going to transport these hard armors back to Helanza City. Because the batch of military supplies he asked Carl to buy in Helanza City should have arrived at Pussy Mountain by now. And he needed to transfer those supplies to I came from Duodan Town. So these hard armors also had to be transported back. He wanted to ask the leatherworking master in the city of Helanza to use these hard armor leathers to transform them into the armor of ancient Boli horses. It is obviously more reliable to leave this kind of matter to the leatherworking master in Helanza City. No matter what the reason, Serdak did not intend to sell these hard armor skins. Therefore, after many twists and turns, the merchants in Doden Town still could not buy the hard armor skins. The merchants became more honest and began to look forward to exchanging military supplies for Warcraft materials. Some businessmen even planned to get some kerosene, and then let Commander Serdak feel what it was like to be ridiculed and made things difficult for him when he came to visit. When the city wall was on duty that night, the city defense guards threw nearly 20 fire-scale bombs directly on both sides of the mountain wall. High-inflammation fire-scale bombs exploded between the mountain walls. And suddenly a large number of ghost-marked soldier ants fell from the mountain walls onto the pile of corpses. The effect of those fire-scale bombs was indeed very good. Chapter 767 Israel's Injury While Mullen, the owner of the leather shop, was planning his family's escape from the town of Doden, Soldak was still standing on the city wall testing the specific destructive power of the fire-scale bullets produced by the Constantinople Firearms Workshop. In fact, 
This kind of fire scale bullet with fire magic patterns engraved on its surface is very reliable. Andrew threw a fire scale bomb nearly 60 meters away. The fire scale bomb landed on the dense egg colony on the mountain wall and exploded like fireworks. Suddenly, nearly a dozen ghost striped soldier ants huddled together on the mountain wall were blown off the cliff. Their stumps and broken legs were splashed with acid liquid. Although the scope of the explosion was less than three meters away, the ghost striped worker ants were after all. There were too many, and in order to avoid the wall of fire burning at the foot of the mountain, they had to detour through a very limited area on the upper part of the mountain wall. The location where Andrew threw happened to be where the concentration of ghost striped worker ants was highest. Serdak felt that a fire scale bullet could not stop the offensive momentum of the ghost marked worker ants. He just wanted to give it a try. However, the explosion frightened the ghost striped worker ants that were following behind and hesitated. Their survival instinct made the worker ants feel some fear in their hearts. The ghost striped worker ants behind them surged up and had no room to retreat. So they could only continue to rush forward. The sphere at the core of the fire scale bomb contained a can of kerosene. The moment it exploded on the mountain wall, the viscous kerosene also splashed on the mountain wall. Suddenly a ball of flames burned against the mountain wall. And the dancing flames some ghost striped worker, ants that were forced to climb on the mountain wall quickly escaped. There were not many areas that could bypass the fire wall under the city wall. But this flame blocked the mountain wall, causing a commotion among the attacking ghost striped worker ants. Some hard-headed ghost striped worker ants rushed into the flames. Once their eight legs were ignited by kerosene, they would gradually lose their ability to climb and fall from the mountain wall one after another. Only a few ghost patterned soldier ants with hard sh. LS and huge bodies were not afraid of the flames on the mountain wall and climbed up step by step. Even the flying arrows seemed to deliberately avoid these ghost patterned soldier ants, waiting for them to climb up. The moment they reached the top of the city, there will be soldiers from the heavy armored infantry regiment and bed crossbows on the city wall to entertain them. Serdek felt that the hard skin armor of the cavalry battalion's horses would be funded by these ghost patterned soldier ants. At 10 o'clock in the evening, Andrew watched the fire scale bullets he threw burning on the wall, and shouted excitedly, So that's how this thing is used! Serdak glanced at the rows of fire scale bombs in the wooden box at his feet, and ordered the city defense guards next to him. Try to throw a few more bullets! Fire scale bullets scattered on the cliff. More than a dozen burning spots on the mountain wall became new obstacles for the ghost patterned worker ants. The flames illuminated a large area of the cliff at the same time. Many ghost patterned worker ants were burned in the fire. It screamed strangely. The vision of the city guard standing on the city wall became clearer, and rows of crossbow arrows were shot out, shooting down the ghostly patterned worker ants that bypassed the flames. With these dozen burning points, the pressure on the guards on the city wall was suddenly relieved a lot. It seems to be working well, Soldek said. Adams ascended the city wall with three squadrons of heavy infantry, and he was responsible for guarding the city wall at night. Since Gallatin was injured and unable to participate in the battle, Soldek asked the Ogre Gilidum to cooperate with Adams and guard the city wall at night. The young ghost striped ant queen in the canyon in the distance was very cautious. It did not rashly lead its bodyguards to attack the North City Wall. After nightfall, the light in the canyon dimmed, and the ghost striped ant queen disappeared into the darkness. Middle. The city defense guards, who had just climbed onto the city wall, saw more than a dozen fire spots ignited on the mountain wall. The ghost striped worker ants were shot with arrows in the fire and fell to the bottom of the cliff. They suddenly cheered. When they were guarding the city wall last night, they did not have such an easy time. If they could not completely clear away the ghost-striped worker ants on the mountain wall, the heavy armored infantry guarding both sides of the city wall would be under great pressure. This pressure will also be passed on to the bed crossbow operators on the city wall, who need to control the bed crossbows and advance to hunt down some ghost-patterned soldier ants to reduce the battle pressure on the city wall. Despite this, Ghost striped worker ants took advantage of the morning fog to rush up the city wall this morning. Adams and Gallatin also suffered heavy casualties and waited until reinforcements arrived before forcing back the ghost marked red ants that had rushed up the city wall. If we had taken out these good things last night, there wouldn't have been so many casualties this morning. Adams sighed as he took out a fire scale bullet with magic patterns engraved on the surface from the wooden box. Soldat kicked the two wooden boxes under his feet and said to Adams, it's not too late to take it out now. But the inventory of this thing is very limited. So you have to use it sparingly. Adams weighed the fire scale bullet in his hand and said hurriedly, I know. Soldek warned Adams and Gulitum. 
During the day, we found a ghost striped queen ant in the canyon. Be careful at night and call us if necessary. With the fire scale bullets, Adams immediately became more confident and promised Soldek. Don't worry. If it hadn't been for the heavy fog this morning, it would have been impossible for the ghost striped worker ants to rush up. As the soldiers brought by Adams gradually took up their positions, Andrew led the city defense guards. Heavy armored infantry and archers stationed on the city wall during the day in a queue and walked down the city wall. Serdak led Adams to the corpse of the giant ghost patterned soldier ant with a tough and tough skin and took a standard Paglio spear from the heavy armored infantry and stabbed the giant ghost patterned soldier hard on the ant's carapace. The spear tip could not penetrate the hard carapace and it made a continuous pop sound. There is also a new type of ghost patterned soldier ant. The hard skin on its body is so tough that it is difficult for a crossbow to penetrate it. However, you can still kill it by aiming at the weak part of its carapace. Be careful when you encounter it. If you hunt that big guy again, remember to send someone to call me. After speaking, Serdak returned the Paglio spear to the heavy armored infantryman. Then he said to Adams, I'll go to the shed to have a look. After that, he walked down the city wall. From a distance, I heard Gulitam shouting, Send another soldier and over. And this time, I will smash its head. Serdak did not expect that Malin, the owner of the leather shop, would abandon the industry he had worked so hard to build in Doden Town and run away with his family overnight. He may indeed have caused huge losses to himself by concealing the information about the hard armor on the ghost pattern soldier ants. But whether he said it or not was the right of a citizen of the Green Empire. If he didn't want to say it, it would only make him feel dissatisfied at most. Speaking of which, it was probably the conflict between the nobles and the common people that made him worry about the serious consequences of deceiving a noble. There were only three leather shop clerks with bitter faces left in the work shed. Looking at their cautious looks, you could tell that they were also scared to death. There were still nearly ten corpses of ghost patterned soldier ants waiting to be processed outside the work shed. Two hunters were temporarily transferred from the cavalry battalion, wearing leather pants commonly worn by butchers and carrying single-edged axes. With the cooperation of the three leather shop clerks, carefully handle the ghost pattern soldier ant heads. Therefore, the treatment of ghost marked soldier ants has not been affected much. Aung San and several indigenous people from Doden Town were still building the second pit overnight. Several aborigines were holding long hooks and fishing out the carapace of the ghost striped soldier ants in the center of the pit. They transported it to the river for cleaning and then placed it on the grass to dry. In order to prevent thieves, there are also cavalry patrolling the area. Serdak returned to Pussy Mountain with a batch of hard carapace of ghost patterned soldier ants that had not yet completely dried. After stepping through the void gate, before the magic halo underfoot completely dissipated, Aphrodite had already come forward to greet him. Seeing Serdak's tired face, she asked him, Recently, I am busy. Serdak walked to the place where the red crystals were stored, put a bag of red crystals in, and said, The tide of beasts has begun. After speaking, he took out a pile of hard carapace of ghost pattern soldier ants from his magic belt bag and placed it in the lava cave. Although these hard carapaces are pressed flat, they still retain their most original appearance, which can fully reflect the ghost pattern soldier ants former form. Arola stretched out her slender fingers and touched the hard armor of the ghost pattern soldier ants and said with surprise, It's actually this kind of ant tribe. There are also this kind of ant tribe in H. L. The taste is not bad. Right. The demons like to hunt them. And they are pretty good food in the H. L. world. She squatted down and rubbed the soldier ant's hard skin. When squatting, the black robe perfectly outlines the outline of the plump body. Aphrodite leaned over and smelled it. She didn't seem to mind the faint sour smell on the hard armor and continued to introduce. They are very fertile and hardy. So they are good food. Aphrodite patted the hard armor, carefully distinguished the magic patterns on it, and revealed to Serdak. Some slaves even keep these red ants in captivity. Just like you raise them in animal pens. They are similar to cattle and sheep. But these red ants are easy to raise. They will eat almost anything and are never picky about their food. If they weren't good at building their nests underground and rarely come to the ground. I guess all the red ants would have been killed by the demon hunters long ago. Serdak did not expect that these ghost marked red ants were actually monsters from H. L. At this time, Aphrodite had already moved close to Serdak hugged one of his arms, rested her pointed chin on his broad shoulder, breathed softly into his ear, and said, Boss, I want to go to the Belen Plain to see the beast tied there. What do you think? 
Aphrodite looked very interested, and her charming eyes made Serdak a little unbearable even if the two signed an equal magic contract. Serdak looked at Aphrodite in astonishment and said with some embarrassment, How to get there? Are you planning to run to Alinsa? Then take the magic airship to Benna City. Enter Wilk City through the portal. And ride from Wilk City to Doden Town? At least you can still it takes seven days. Now the teleportation gates in Belan's plane are controlled by the military. It is not easy to get a teleportation pass. Your current identity is so special. How confident do you think you are that when passing through the checkpoint? Without being discovered by the guards? Aphrodite rubbed her forehead with her fingers. Moved closer to Serdak. Narrowed her eyes and said, By the way, haven't you always wanted to learn the summoning magic circle? If I teach you the summoning magic circle, then you can summon me there. Serdak did not expect that Aphrodite would share the summoning magic circle so easily and hurriedly said to Aphrodite, Well, okay, if you are willing to teach me, I can learn it. Then he asked the succubus Aphrodite, Has the batch of supplies from Helanza arrived? Aphrodite walked back to the hard carapace of the ghost-marked red ants, picked up a piece of hard carapace, looked at it and said, We arrived yesterday. Luke is still waiting for you at the work shed at Camp Sulphur. Serdak raised his pocket filled with red crystals and said, I'll go see Yisl first, and then I'll see Luke when I come back. When Serdak walked into the treasure chamber, he found the red dragon eyes resting his head on the platform, with his eyes closed as if he was sleeping. However, after taking two steps, Serdak realized that something seemed wrong. A few dragon scales fell off the neck of the red dragon eyeser and there were two not too deep scratches on the exposed dragon's skin. Although the wound has almost healed, you can still imagine that it must have gone through a hard battle. Serdak climbed the steps. As if feeling Soldak's breath, Israel opened a pair of huge eyes, showing a little grievance, and lay there motionless. Serdak sat on the ground in front of the red dragon, then took out the cloth bag in the magic waste bag, pulled out a piece of red crystal, and stuffed it into Israel's mouth. What happened? Serdak asked. Israel shook the dragon's head excitedly and let out a low dragon roar, causing the entire treasure chamber to shake. After a while, it calmed down. He laid down in front of Serdak again and told him, I flew a little further this time. After crossing a mountain range, I saw a red continent. Then I flew over a sea. It was a small island that was not too big. There is a tree of life growing on the island. I wanted to go to the tree of life and drink a few sips of magic spring water but unexpectedly a group of dragon eagles flew out from the cliff opposite the jungle. Israel's eyes showed unwillingness and resentment. I was so scared that I ran away quickly. I ran through the clouds and flew as high as possible, hoping to get rid of them. Unexpectedly, these dragon eagles kept chasing me. During the narration, it seemed to want to spread its wings. Unfortunately, the body below the neck was on the other side of the stone wall. Normally, Serdak could only see the part above the neck. Israel continued, they chased me all the way. I flew with all my strength and got rid of almost all the dragon eagles. Only the biggest one couldn't get rid of it. A pair of huge eyes showed anger. It showed the scars on its neck and showed it to Serdek. These injuries were all caused when fighting it. I didn't even want to duel with it. But it was aggressive and pursued me closely. It was better than me. It flew so fast that it was like brown candy and couldn't be shaken off. Finally, it flew over the sea and came to the sky above the red continent. I couldn't fly back to the nest directly, so I just circled with it in that sky. Serdak used holy light to heal the red dragon Iser, but it was of little use. Chapter 768, Life Magic Pattern Soldier Ant. Soldak asked Iser, Then how did you get rid of it? Israel said helplessly, I have never been able to get rid of it, so I brought it here. After speaking, it raised its head, and saw a piece of colorful feathers pressed under the huge dragon head. The ends of these colorful feathers were red like flames. The middle was orange, and the roots were light yellow. Each colorful feather was almost two feet long. A strong magical aura flows on it, and the colorful feathers are very messy. The dragon eagle's head was a little shriveled, and its body seemed to have been torn apart by the red dragon eyeser. Only some colorful feathers with skin left were pressed by the red dragon. Israel's eyes fell on those colorful feathers and said to Soldak, This is the dragon eagle. Serdak went over to take a look and felt the violent magic fluctuations on Sayu. The magic aura was constantly evaporating, and he could still feel the chilling pressure. Did you eat it? Serdak asked. The red dragon Iser said very proudly, Yes, I could never defeat it before, so I never dared. 
because I have seen the same kind. And now that I have learned dragon language, I can still survive the situation in a standard. Better. After saying that, the red dragon eyes are said a little embarrassedly. Oh, by the way, these are left for you. Serdak took out a magic sealing box and put the feathers containing powerful magic power into the box from the ground. The dragon eagle's head was not that big, including its beak. It was only bigger than the head of an adult one-horned bison. Little by little, Serdak also dug out a magic core as big as a coconut from the back of the skull, with quite a lot of feathers. Feathers? Magic core? Head? These things are really good, Serdak said with satisfaction. Sorry, I originally left a piece of meat for you, but I was just a little hungry, so I ate the last piece of meat. Finally, the red dragon eyes are said a little embarrassedly. Of course, Serdak wouldn't mind although he didn't know what level of monster the dragon eagle was. But based on the magic power contained in these feathers, and the scars on the red dragon eyeser, Serdak guessed that it was at least five levels. Level monster. I hope Lance can know the specific value of these magic materials. Luke brought back a large amount of supplies from Aranza City. These supplies were all military supplies that Carl bought from the military supplies and logistics department of Aranza City through connections. These include 100,000 fine steel arrows. 1,000 giant crossbow arrows, 200 tower shields, 300 bronze helmets with visors, and 500 pairs of acid-resistant leather boots. Fire oil and fire scale bullets are all part of the war effort. Due to controlled supplies, Carl was unable to buy fire scale bombs and kerosene from the military supplies and logistics department of Helensa City. In addition, this time Luke also brought back 10 sets of ice-horned rhinoceros leather armor and 50 crusader knives with sharp magic. Serdak threw ten hard carapaces of ghost pattern soldier ants to Luke and asked him to take these hard carapaces to the city of Alinsa and bring it to the leatherworking master in the city and ask him to make the size of the horse according to Gubwa. Make several sets of war horse protective gear similar to war horse armor. He even brought a bottle of foul smelling acid wrought to the master leatherworker so that he could study the properties of this hard sh. L. At the same time, he also brought a dragon eagle feather and a letter to Lance hoping that he could identify the true value of this magical beast feather. Later, Aphrodite also wanted Serdak to learn how to summon the magic circle as soon as possible. Unfortunately, time did not allow, and she could only let Serdak pass through the void gate and return to Doden Town. At night, five large ghost pattern soldier ants rushed up to the city wall one after another. However, because the nighttime city defense guards on the city wall were well prepared, the guards operating the crossbows also realized that the most vulnerable part of this large ghost pattern soldier ant was the legs and the jaw joint. So Adams and the Ogre Gulitum successfully killed five giant ghost striped red ants. Now five giant ghost pattern soldier ants are placed outside the work shed. This huge soldier ant, nearly four meters long, is considered the most powerful monster in this beast wave. However, their attack method is still very simple. In addition to relying on the giant pincers on their heads, they can only spit out highly corrosive acid. Serdak returned to the small building in the military camp. He didn't even have time to sleep for a while when he was called out by the soldiers on duty. Of course, this was also specifically ordered by Soldak. Once you find a giant ghost-striped soldier ant, you must wake him up. The front of the small building was filled with an unpleasant sour smell. Soldak opened the door and saw four torches illuminating the open space in front of the small building. The corpses of five ghost-striped soldier ants were placed intact in the open space. The fatal wounds on several ghost-striped soldier ants were caused by a spear piercing the skull from the lower jaw. Serdak walked around the ghostly patterned soldier ants, then returned to the small building to set up a sacrificial altar, sacrificed a fire wolf head as a sacrifice, and received the blessing of God from the Eye of Truth. After walking out of the small building, I looked at the corpses of these giant ghost patterned soldier ants, and found that these giant ghost patterned soldier Ants had a faint aura of magic flowing on them. Those magic patterns are all concentrated on the legs of the giant ghost pattern soldier ants. They are on each leg of the giant ghost pattern soldier ants. And there is a breath of life magic flowing on each leg. Serdak quickly strode over. He found that this magic pattern of life was completely covered on the six legs. However, some of the magic patterns of life were complete and some were incomplete. After careful inspection, he finally figured it out. Among the 30 legs of the 5 ghost pattern soldier ants, the life magic patterns on 11 of the legs are complete. And they are still the same magic patterns. Worried about the loss of the magical aura on it. Serdak peeled off all these complete life magic patterns from the ghost pattern soldier ants. 
This job is very difficult. The body of the ghost-striped soldier ants is covered with a hard carapace that cannot be cut with a skinning knife. The entire leg can only be removed with a single-edged axe. As for how to remove these later the magic pattern of life was peeled off from the legs. And he hadn't thought about it yet. The magical atmosphere revealed by this magic pattern is strength and tenacity. With such slender legs able to support a body weighing more than a thousand pounds. The magic pattern of strength is naturally indispensable. Serdak just dismantled these eleven legs and it took until dawn. Feeling dizzy and almost exhausted. Soldak put these legs into the magic ceiling box before returning to the small building and threw himself on the wooden bed and fell asleep. In the past few days, there have been high-intensity battles on the city wall. And they have been using Warcraft fresh meat for half a month. While the physical fitness of some veterans in the cavalry camp has increased. Some people have been successfully promoted. Even the number of veterans who have broken through the first rank has exceeded 20 people. This situation is very rare in other military camps. Adams, who had been guarding the city wall all night, saw two more cavalrymen fighting. And suddenly the shadow of a big sword appeared behind him. And he knew that two more cavalrymen had broken through. The close confidant beside him muttered in a low voice. What the H? L? Why does it seem like everything has become so casual now that I have made a breakthrough? Adams looked at the confidant and ordered. Okay, go quickly and count the number of city guards. Prepare to change the defense. Please inform us that everyone does not need to watch the night tonight. We will gather tomorrow morning and we will start guarding during the day. Gulitam stood at the top of the city a little regretfully. After the morning fog cleared, the ghost-striped ant queen in the canyon was still surrounded by a group of personal guards, moving slowly among the ants. All the ghost-striped worker ants approached in an orderly manner, as if they were worshipping their king. The new ant queen is quite cautious and has never stepped even half a step into the range of the bed crossbow. Samira, wearing a hood on her head, jumped from the bed crossbow console to the city wall. Standing on the ogre, he looks particularly petite next to him. Would you like to leave? I'm going to see those big ghost pattern soldier ants. Maybe the meat is more delicious. Gulitam put the bone crushing stick on his shoulder. That night, I didn't know how many ghost pattern soldier ants I knocked on their heads. Although this was something that was expressly prohibited by Serdek. It was really refreshing to do so. Samira walked in front first. Her voice a little hoarse. Let's go. I also want to sleep for a while. Gulitam. How do you think I can become stronger? Gulitam followed Samira. Walking up the steps step by step. If he hadn't been taking care of Samira. He would have chosen to jump directly to the jogging platform. So that he only needed to turn back four times to stand firmly under the city wall. Now he could only follow the half-elf archer and walk step by step. The ogre thought seriously for a while and then said, If you are also of the ogre family, it's very simple. Just keep eating. He shrugged his shoulders and touched the cracks in the city wall with his thick fingers. This wall was built very solidly. He continued, The elves' words are simpler. They live longer. They hide in the tree of life and enjoy themselves all day long. If they live for a long time, they have seen everything. They have superb combat skills and drink some sap from the tree of life every day. It's difficult even if you don't want to advance. Then the ogre sighed again. But you are a half-elf. You may need to explore the specific path you want to take. Samira stopped in front of the jogging platform on the steps of the city wall. She lowered her head and stared at her slender and round calves wearing salamander leather boots. A small figure suddenly appeared around the boots with light yellow patterns. The wind circle. She asked Gulitam. Like this? The ogre looked at Samira in surprise and said with a look of disbelief. So you are already feeling angry. I heard that this is half a foot into the world of the second level strongman. Samira shook her head and whispered. It feels a little bit worse. I don't know what is missing. The ogre chuckled and said. It doesn't matter. Killing a few more ghost mark soldier ants may give you some inspiration. This is the fourth day that ghost strike red ants have gathered under the northern city wall. Andrew feels that today has been an extremely long day. The ant colony under the city stopped attacking for the first time. Faint black flames appeared on the mountain walls on both sides. At the foot of the mountain faced a pile of worker ant corpses that was nearly two stories high. The fire below was not too big. All the worker ant corpses were burned. Under the smoke and fire, it became new fuel. The wall of fire on the front of the northern city wall had been extinguished in the morning. Without the combustion support of kerosene and the corpses of ghost-striped worker ants, the fire wall cannot continue to burn. The ghost-patterned worker ants outside the city once again pressed toward the city wall in dense numbers. 
The ten catapults on the inside of the city wall are still throwing flints into the canyon. But for hundreds of ghost-patterned worker ants, the lethality of the small catapults is really limited. And the gaps created by the rolling stones will be instantly filled by other ants. Ghostly worker ants fill in. Serdak was not in a hurry to continue pouring kerosene into the oil tank. The kerosene in the warehouse could be used for two fires at most. Before the next batch of kerosene arrived in Doden Town, the corpse kerosene needed to be used sparingly. This time the ant colony has a king and has been able to form a simple queue. Eleven giant ghost patterned soldier ants stand at the front of the ant colony, followed by countless ghost patterned worker ants and ghost patterned soldier ants huddled together, step by step towards the ant colony. Approaching under the city wall, ordinary arrows on the top of the city have no effect at all on the giant ghost patterned soldier ants. 200 archers and 200 city guards stood guard on the top of the city, holding long bows and repeating crossbows. But no arrows were fired. A row of rolling stones at the head of the city had already been prepared, just waiting for the ants to rush onto the city wall and be pushed down by the guards. This time, the ant colony did not rush forward blindly. They put the giant ghost pattern soldier ants at the front and began to approach the wall of fire. The ghost striped worker ants beside them began to spit acid into the embers. Although the distance they spit acid was not too far, they could still spit out the edge of the embers. A foul-smelling white smoke rose from the embers, which began to die out rapidly. The ant colony under the city began to move rapidly. Worker ants rushed to the front, sprayed out all the acid in their stomachs, and then quickly retreated. Worker ants from behind continued to surge up, like a rolling wave. Wave after wave lapped over the embers. The ashes area less than five meters wide was covered with ashes half a meter deep and eleven deep trenches were plowed out by eleven giant ghost-striped soldier ants. They clumsily climbed up the hot city wall, howling in pain. But he refused to take a step back. The new queen behind the ant colony is just outside the range of the bed crossbow. Staring here with cold eyes, Andrew at the top of the city looked at Serdak. Thirty-five bed crossbows had begun to adjust their shooting angles. In addition to ordinary crossbow arrows, there were five unique crossbows on the top of each giant crossbow rack. Crossbow arrow. The blade of this crossbow arrow is printed with dense magic runes. And the crossbow arrow is also equipped with a small gem base with this thin piece of magic crystal inlaid on it. It is said that the price of such a magical giant crossbow arrow on the market is almost equivalent to 10 ordinary giant crossbow arrows. And its power is also quite amazing. After all, it has magical effects. Seeing that the giant ghost striped soldier ants had begun to climb the city wall, Andrew glanced at Serdek again. Wait a minute! Are the grappling hooks ready? Serdak asked the squadron leader of the city defense army. Commander, everything is ready. The city defense squadron leader replied immediately. Pass the order. Eleven bed crossbows are equipped with magic giant crossbow arrows aimed at the giant soldier ants. Serdak ordered. Recover these magic giant crossbow arrows as much as possible. Yes, Commander. The captain of the city defense squadron said. And then he ran quickly on the city wall ordering the opposing bed crossbows one by one to modify the magic giant crossbow arrows. Eleven giant ghost patterned soldier ants are at the forefront of the ant colony and have climbed to the middle of the city wall. The group of ghost marked soldier ants beside them could no longer contain their desire to kill. They wanted to surpass the slow crawling giant ghost marked soldier ants. But they didn't dare. A wave of arrows rained down from the top of the city. And almost half of the arrows were blocked by the giant ghost patterned soldier ants in front. Even so, there were still many ghost patterned worker ants on the city wall that fell to the bottom of the city. The ghost patterned worker ants behind quickly filled the gap until someone on the top of the city shouted, Bed crossbow ready. 35 bed crossbows were pushed out at the same time. Giant crossbow arrows stretched out from the wall stacks. And the sharp arrow tips reflected the cold light in the sun, aiming at the ant colony on the city wall. Chapter 769 Battle of the City Wall As if they sensed the dangerous aura on top of the city. The giant ghost patterned soldier ants suddenly stopped. They raised their heads almost at the same time and demonstrated towards the city with their sharp claws and let out a harsh hiss like metal friction. Voice. Almost at the same time, the ghost striped soldier ants crowded around the giant ghost striped soldier ants were almost stacked on top of each other like wild horses, surging towards the city head like a tide. They crawled very fast and in a blink of an eye, they had climbed through the middle of the city wall. The outer wall of the North City Wall is very uniquely designed. The designer set the front of the city wall with a gentle slope of 80 degrees. The top of the North City Wall is nearly 8 meters wide. But the thickness of the bottom of the city wall is 6 to 7 times that of the top. 
the length of the city gate hole below is almost more than 50 meters. Which is also the main reason why a huge fire wall 5 meters wide and 300 meters long burned under the city wall. And the city head was not completely reduced to a barbecue grill. This kind of city wall is completely built up with a huge stone base. And it looks more like a solid large dam. Although the tilt frame angle of the bed crossbow does not support the vertical downward design of the bed crossbow. During the war, in order to resist the tide of beasts, the city defense guards naturally used the city head as a big killer to the extreme. Therefore, according to the request of the Dark City Defense Army, the craftsmen used their brains. They fixed the bed crossbow on the huge door panel, installed a huge door shaft on the side near the wall stack, and installed a gantry-like structure on the tail of the bed crossbow. Using pulleys and the rope can directly lift the tail of the bed crossbow, which directly increases the pitch angle of the bed crossbow fixed on the giant door panel by 45 degrees. The bed crossbow itself also has a tilt frame that can be adjusted to 45 degrees. In this way, although it is still unable to shoot vertically, there is no problem in adjusting the 80 degree angle of view. The giant ghost striped soldier ants also felt the danger, so they rushed to the front as cannon fodder. Their bodies were a little clumsy. When their huge bodies climbed the city wall, each step their six legs took was deeper. Wedging deeply into the rock crevices can stabilize the heavy body. Fortunately, the base of this northern city wall is very strong. Otherwise it would probably be plowed into a deep groove by the sharp bone spurs on the abdomen of the giant ghost-striped soldier ants. Andrew raised his butcher's tomahawk and shouted, All stones are ready! The guards guarding the huge stone ball immediately put down their repeating crossbows. Seven or eight people gathered behind the rolling stone, shouting slogans and pushing the person-high rolling stone along the guide group to the edge of the city wall. These rolling stones are almost seven feet in diameter. There are coconut-sized iron rings embedded in the grooves on the sides. And there are iron rings on both sides. The iron rings are as thick as a thumb, as if growing out of the rolling stones, and are very strong. When the guards pushed the rolling stone to the edge of the city wall, other guards actually carried bundles of arm-thick hemp ropes from behind the city wall. The length of each hemp rope was almost fixed. And there were hooks on both ends. Two rolling stones on the city wall can be connected together in order to prevent the rope from hanging on the wall stacks. After the connection is completed, the guards will throw the part of the rope outside the city wall. In this way, the 350-meter North City Wall suddenly had a pearl necklace that only the Titans could use. Five, four, three, two, one release. Andrew saw that the ghost-striped soldier ants were about to rush forward and quickly issued instructions. The city defense guards moved the machinery and the bayonet at the end of the guide groove sank at the same time. With the help of the city defense guards behind, more than 50 rolling stones rolled down the city wall. Because the arm-thick hemp ropes are connected to each other, the rolling trajectory is very restricted, almost showing a linear crushing trend. A huge roar came from the top of the ghost-striped worker ants. Some rolling stones deviated from the track but were forcibly corrected by hemp ropes, causing them to make crunching and cracking sounds. They raised the giant pincers on their heads, and didn't see clearly what was going on. They just saw dozens of rolling stones falling. The ghost-striped worker ants in front of the rolling stones were directly crushed into meat patties by the rolling stones. The rest of the ghost-striped worker ants were being crushed. He was about to rush up through the gap between the rolling stones, but was pushed by a huge force and fell instantly off the city wall. A large number of ghost-striped worker ants were entangled together, rolling and falling towards the bottom of the city wall. The rope in the middle of them stirred up a large number of worker ants. And some of the ghost-striped worker ants also became fragmented during the rolling. The eleven giant ghost-patterned soldier ants in the middle of the city wall wedged their six legs deeply into the city wall almost at the same time, keeping their bodies just pressed against the city wall. They even tilted their huge tentacles against the city wall. Some rolling stones was past the giant ghost-patterned soldier ants. The ghost-patterned worker ants, which were stirred and entangled by the hemp rope, collided with the giant soldier ants, and instantly became fragmented. Sharp spikes appeared on the backs of the giant soldier ants. He directly cut off the thick hemp rope on his arm, and lost the restraint of the rope. The rolling stones immediately rolled down in twos and threes, and their power was much smaller. Some rolling stones rolled over the ghostly patterned soldier ants, but were resisted by the giant soldier ants' armor. The rolling stones bounced up instantly after hitting the giant soldier ants' body. The hard carapace of the giant soldier ant's body also made a cracking sound at the same time. But the giant soldier ant was not knocked off the city wall, and only suffered some damage caused by crushing. 
a round of rolling stones rushed down, and the upper half of the city wall seemed as clean as if it had been washed. The ghost-striped soldier ants were entangled in the rope, and the soldier ants with broken legs began to struggle in vain. And those giant soldier ants had already pulled out the legs inserted into the stone cracks and climbed back to the top of the city wall. The waves of ghost-patterned worker ants came up again behind them. Andrew on the top of the city shouted again, Bed crossbow ready. What came this time was the sound of the bow string being tightened. The final sound of the winch stopped abruptly, and all the crossbows were ready. Andrew stood on the wall, looking at the ants that continued to press up, and shouted, Three, two, one release. Eleven bed crossbows with a magical shimmer fired downwards with the sound of breaking wind. When the danger approached, the giant soldier ants almost simultaneously raised their tentacles, which were more than half a meter long. Before they could hiss, they saw eleven ants emitting a string of magic light from their tails. The giant crossbow arrow penetrated the body of the giant soldier ant. When the crossbow blade cut through the giant soldier ant's hard exoskeleton, it inserted almost without any hindrance. After these giant soldier ants fell from the city wall, their bodies became stiff, and juice kept gushing out from their bodies. When they fell under the city, there was a thunderous cheer from the top of the city. Only two giant soldier ants had better luck. A giant crossbow arrow cut off one of its tentacles and flew out close to its head, leaving only a long wound on its head. Another bed crossbow simply missed, and the giant crossbow arrow flew past the giant soldier ant's body. These two giant soldier ants led a group of ghost-striped red ants and continued to climb towards the top of the city. The city defense guards standing on the city wall quickly withdrew their crossbows and threw hook ropes towards the bottom of the city. Just before the corpses of the giant soldier ants were submerged by the ant tide, they hooked their bodies and hung the ropes on the gantry. On the pulley, everyone worked together to forcefully pull up these giant soldier ants that were almost submerged in the ant colony. Some nimble ghost-striped worker ants tried to climb up using ropes but were shot down by rows of arrows fired from the city. As the archer brigade fired a large number of arrows, the charge of the ghost-patterned worker, ants below the city was suppressed again. Looking at the giant soldier ants falling up with the hook, Andrew sighed on the city wall. These magic crossbow arrows are really useful. Serdek watched the hook stuck at the top of the city. Several city defense guards used long hooks to pull the giant soldier ants in from outside the city. Then he sighed and said, Such a giant crossbow requires 45 arrows. If you can kill a giant soldier ant every time you shoot one silver coin, it would be worth it. If you can still get it back, it will be even more cost-effective. Andrew also grinned and said, Two crossbow arrows are worth one gold coin. The price is really a bit expensive. Another round of arrow rain was fired from the city head. Two giant soldier ants finally climbed up to the top of the city despite the rain of arrows. As soon as the heads of the giant soldier ants were exposed from the city wall, they spit out a large amount of acid into the city wall. A group of heavy armored infantry quickly retreated towards both sides of the city wall with their shields raised. Half of the body of the giant soldier ant popped out, and the tentacles above its head began to pinch towards a heavy armored infantry. Seeing that they could not avoid it, two companions behind them, she desperately grabbed his shoulders and pulled him back. The ferocious sharp teeth sliced against his helmet, and the pincers cut a hole in his slightly bulging shoulder pads. I saw several corpses of the same kind lying flat on the top of the city. The giant soldier ants worked hard to climb over the city wall. The bed crossbow on the top of the city had to resist the ant colony below the city. I couldn't immediately turn around to deal with this big guy. But I didn't wait. It launched a second round of attacks. A huge axe covered with flames fell from the sky. And the axe hit the most vulnerable gap between its skull and sternum. The bones here are the most fragile. And the axe blade is extremely sharp. A gash was opened in an instant, and a large amount of light brown blood spurted out from the neck of the giant soldier Ant Queen. It didn't even see a human figure. It just felt someone stepping on its back. It wanted to knock that person to the ground. But unfortunately it wasn't ready yet, and felt that it couldn't control its body. It saw that the whole world was going on and on. Rotating. There was even a huge body spurting blood slowly falling down next to it. That body looked so much like its own that it wanted to lower its head to confirm but it could only let itself spin and roll around. Andrew jumped off the giant soldier ant's body and used an axe to chop off all the huge legs that Serdek needed. At the same time, Serdek also personally killed the giant soldier ant with its tentacles broken off. A large number of worker ants were killed by arrows at every moment under the city. More worker ants rushed up to the city wall. And ordinary ghost-striped soldier ants rushed up one after another. 
Soon the archers on the top of the city were unable to suppress the ant colony. Without the protection of the fire wall, the heavy armored infantry hoped that the archers would let in more ghost pattern soldier ants so that they could gain more merits on the battlefield. The archers were still willing to help with such a request. But unfortunately everyone actually underestimated the combat effectiveness of the ghost pattern soldier ants. So that the number of soldier ants that swarmed the city this time exceeded the capacity of the soldiers. In addition to the archers and giant crossbow shooters guarding the city wall in front of the arrow tower and the city wall. They still used platoon shooting to suppress the red ants under the city wall. Soon, the city fell into a melee. Although the scene was a bit messy, both Soldak and Andrew were on the city wall. And almost all the veterans who had reached level 1 in the cavalry battalion were following Andrew. These cavalrymen had rich combat experience and saw that the situation on the city was tense. Immediately relied on the bed crossbow and began to work hard to clean up these ordinary ghost mark soldier ants. The city wall was already full of acid rot. And from time to time a veteran would jump out with an ice rhinoceros knife in his hand. And several cavalry would follow him to fight against the ghost marked red ants. In the cavalry battalion, this kind of improvised combat team is very common. And they are also very handy in dealing with ghost pattern soldier ants. These ghost striped soldier ants are indeed extremely powerful. But due to their huge bodies, their movements are also very clumsy. A few cavalrymen only need to separate two of them to attract the attention of the ghost pattern soldier ants and the others take the opportunity to contain the ghost pattern soldier ants. The promoted veteran holds a single-edged axe and jumps directly to its back to kill the ghost pattern soldier. The ant's head was chopped off. It's just that there were too many ghost pattern soldier ants released this time, and the entire city wall was almost in a melee. Although the mercenaries who signed the temporary assistance agreement were all warriors of level 1 or above, they could only stand guard at the top of the city at this moment. Their defense is impossible to kill. Andrew ran left and right on the city wall to put out fires. Even if the situation on the city wall was in such a crisis, Serdak still did not ask the military camp to send reinforcements. The archers and crossbowmen on the city were almost all struggling to suppress the ghost pattern worker and climbing up from the city. The 35 bed crossbows did not turn the turntable, and they were fighting for the heavy armored infantry on the city. The cavalry and mercenaries relieve the pressure and are still constantly looking for the ghost-striped soldier ants hiding in the ant colony to prevent them from having the chance to climb the city. Following Andrew's order, the city defense guards once again pushed the prepared rolling stones from the back end of the city wall to the front along the guide trough, preparing to connect them to tough thick hemp ropes to plow away the ant colonies climbing up the city wall in one fell swoop. A halo of power flashed under Soldak's feet, holding a blood-red crescent moon and carrying a dwarf chain shield. Every time he wields the blood-red crescent, the power of the holy light lights up along a certain pattern on his chest. This power is instantly injected into the blood red crescent. And the sharp blood red crescent blade comes into contact with it. The ghost striped soldier ants were like red hot iron bars touching a candle. And their hard carapace completely melted away in an instant. The power of the holy light itself is very capable of restraining the ghost pattern red ants. Coupled with Serdak's new understanding of using dragon language to interpret the night seal. Each sword will easily cut through the hard carapace of the ghost pattern soldier ants. Probably seeing a large number of ghost striped soldier ants rushing up to the north city wall. The new queen ant swimming at low altitude in the canyon in the distance felt that the ant colony had a chance to invade the north city wall. So it made a series of piercing screams from behind. The kind of sound that would give people a headache. It urged the ant colony in the canyon to attack massively. The ghost striped red ants in the entire canyon were in a commotion. Forming a wave-like charging formation swarming towards the north wall one after another. Chapter 770 The Sorrow of the New Ant Queen The ants that climbed up the city wall encountered the most determined resistance from archers and repeating crossbowmen. Ordinary arrows can only effectively kill ghost-patterned worker ants, but are not enough to kill ghost-patterned soldier ants. Therefore, as long as there are larger ghost-patterned soldier ants in the ant colony, the continuous shooter crossbows of the city defense will out of action. At this time, the crossbow must be used to snipe and kill the ghost pattern soldier ants in the ant colony as soon as possible. The archers can cover them with arrows to completely cut off the ant colony's offensive. Apparently the new queen ant in the distance gave clear instructions to attack. There are a large number of soldier ants in the ant colony, ready to break through the northern wall in one fell swoop. Only in this way can the ant colony continue to move south. The order of the new ant queen was obviously very resolute. Even the hundreds of huge male ant bodyguards started to move from a distance and the new ant queen also slowly fell into the ant colony, under the guard of the bodyguards. Surrounded by people, they cautiously approached the northern city wall. 
since the sky is the territory of rocks. Although most of the time these rocks hardly fly over the thorny mountains, there is still a risk of being hunted if they fly too high in the canyons of the thorny mountains. It didn't dare to fly too high, and it didn't even dare to float its body within the range of the bed crossbow when it was close to the northern city wall, because it knew that in that case, the bed crossbow on the city wall would definitely shoot it immediately. Seeing the soldier ants rushing up the north city wall, the new ant queen decided to mobilize all the ant colonies in the canyon to attack the north city wall at all costs. There are nearly 200 giant ghost-marked male ants in its bodyguard group, and these powerful combat forces have to rush forward together. In order to absolutely control these ghost-marked male ants, it has to risk entering the range of the bed crossbow. It didn't dare to fly at all. It only dared to float its body at the lowest altitude, slowly flapping its wings and approaching forward. Serdak saw the scene in the hand-to-hand -hand combat and looked at Andrew on the other side. This is the moment you have been waiting for. Ten of the bed crossbows fired concentratedly, emptying all the giant crossbow arrows in the arrow troughs. The city defense guards cut off the rope hanging the tail of the bed crossbow on the gantry, and the thirty-five bed crossbows returned to their normal positions. The rolling stones connected by ropes were pushed down the city wall at the same time, clearing out all the ant colonies climbing on the wall. The city defense guard lifted the precious magic giant crossbow arrows from the top of the shelf and installed them in the arrow slot of the bed crossbow. At this moment, the phalanx of the male and guards had approached 600 meters away from the city wall. The queen ant was hiding in the ant colony and was blocked by the body of the male ants in front. The ghost pattern soldier ants on the top of the city seemed to have taken stimulants. Even if they were cut off in half, those soldier ants were still fighting to the death with the heavy armored infantry on the city wall with their last breath. The ants under the city wall surged up again, and not far away was the phalanx of the male ant personal guards. Under the pressure of the army, the guards on the city finally saw the bodyguards composed of ghost-striped male ants. If the size of the giant soldier ants is compared to a rhinoceros, then these ghost-striped male ants are war elephants. Each ghost-striped male ant is a war elephant. Male ants are almost five or six meters long. Not only do they have a pair of huge tentacles on their heads, but also, there are sharp bone sickles on the joints of each leg. Their bodies are also covered with gorgeous bone spurs. The armor is covered with black hard carapace, which is actually double armor. These ghost-striped male ants were like giant siege weapons. As they approached the northern city wall, they put tremendous psychological pressure on the city defenders. The herald on the arrow tower made a gesture to Serdek, and Serdek raised the blood-red crescent in his hand high. The herald immediately made continuous semaphores to the catapult camp inside the city wall. The soldiers guarding the cross catapult immediately stopped installing flints, lifted out a large wooden box from the warehouse, took out the round black iron ball inside, and carefully put it into the catapult. Then, the operator used a torch to move it. The fuse of the black iron ball was lit, and ten catapults almost simultaneously threw the black iron ball with the fuse in the basket outside the northern city wall. The new Ant Queen saw black stone balls being thrown from the North City Wall and thought they were the same flints that would roll and explode when hit on the ground. It has the four strongest ghost marked male and it's protecting it around its body. Even if flint falls, it will never hit itself. The black iron ball fell into the male and bodyguard group and only smashed the thick armor piece on the back of the ghost marked male ant. The hard carapace inside was not damaged at all. It was in the center of the guards camp preparing to continue approaching the northern city wall. At this moment, there was a violent explosion next to him. A huge impact was accompanied by a deafening explosion. At the same time as the fire burst out, a huge ghost-striped male and was blown into pieces with its entire body broken into three pieces. Son, this explosion also affected other ghost-striped male ants. The other two ghost-striped male ants were blown to pieces with three legs on one side completely shattered. Violent explosion sounded one after another, and the burly ghost striped male ants had nowhere to hide. And the male ant bodyguards were in chaos. The new queen ant was also in this wave of explosions. One of its wings was stabbed by a broken limb of a male ant, so that it could not maintain balance when flying at low altitude. It was frightened by these bursting flames. The ghost striped male ants in the bodyguard group crawled out from their broken limbs. Almost all the male ants blocked their bodies around the new queen. In the thick smoke, it was impossible to find the specific location of the new queen. The new queen is frightened out of fear of another explosion. The new queen dragged her slightly fat and stooped body, fluttered her wings and took off desperately, trying to escape quickly to the middle of the canyon. The moment it flew out of the protective wall of the male ant guards, 
The ten crossbows that had been waiting on the north wall adjusted their angles almost simultaneously. And then ten giant crossbow arrows were fired at the new queen in no particular order. Shoot away. Several giant crossbow arrows passed through the fat body of the new ant queen. And a touch of light brown juice burst out from the body. The wings of the queen ant, which looked like a big fly, were shattered and she fell into the smoke-filled battlefield. The moment the new ant queen fell from the arrow, several ghost-marked male ants from the guard group rushed up. They twisted their clumsy bodies, first surrounding the queen ant, protecting the queen among them. And two more the ghost-striped male ant used its tentacles to pick up the seriously injured queen and prepared to quickly leave the battlefield area in front of the northern city wall. They moved very quickly, but the explosion frightened the surrounding ghost-striped worker ants. They couldn't feel the message from the new queen, and they immediately fell into chaos. Countless ghost-marked worker ants gathered towards the explosion area like a death squad, and for a while, they blocked all the retreat routes of the ghost-marked male ants. The two ghost-striped male ants could only rely on the brute force of their bodies to forcefully use their bodies to open a path and keep moving towards the middle of Duodan Canyon. Just because countless ghost-striped worker ants blocked the road, the retreat speed was not very fast. And the most important thing is that the reloading speed of the catapult inside the city wall is not too slow. The whole process is four steps, positioning, loading, ignition, and launching. A new wave of black bombs was thrown. And ten black bombs detonated one by one outside the city. The corpses of the ghost-striped red ants exploded continuously. And the male ant bodyguard suffered another heavy blow. This time the queen ant was even worse. The bomb detonated directly on top of its head. Not only blowing the new queen to pieces, but also taking the new ants with it. The two ghost-striped male ants that fled later were also blown to pieces. And two layers of armor could not save their lives. The moment the new ant queen was killed on the battlefield, all the ghost-marked red ants in the canyon became sluggish. They felt that the king was dead. The ghost-striped red ants in the canyon have once again become a piece of loose sand. Without the instructions of the queen, they are no longer so active in attacking the city. The ant colonies under the city wall began to disperse into the canyon, and countless red ants were fleeing. Serdak did not expect that the gunpowder prepared last year to blast the river would be put to great use this time to guard the northern city wall of Doden Town. Twenty bombs were detonated at once, completely destroying the bodyguards of the ghost pattern soldier ants. The North City Gate had been sealed for five days, as the iron fence was opened by the city guards with nooses. Aung San led a group of aborigines and rushed into the gate hole of the North City Wall despite the stench. Removing the ghosts in the passage, the carcasses of the red ants were dragged away, and the road to the North Canyon was quickly opened. The city gate was still filled with the stench and the pungent smell of sour liquid. A group of cavalry endured the rush and rushed outside the North City. They were not going to hunt down the thousands of ghost-striped red ants in the canyon, but were trying to survive within a limited time. During the time, collect as many trophies as possible on the battlefield, such as the remains of the ghost-marked male ants that were killed. Of course, the most important trophy is the new queen ant, which is filled with magic giant crossbow arrows. Thirty-five crossbows on the top of the city began to attack the ant colonies gathered under the city wall. As long as they were within the effective range, these crossbowmen began to shoot and kill the ghost pattern soldier ants. Anyway, they were not worried about the giant ants they shot out. The crossbow arrow cannot be retrieved. Opening the gate of the North City Wall, a group of cavalry and a group of heavy infantry quickly formed a formation outside the city and then quickly pressed towards the canyon ant colony. The heavy armored infantry immediately collected the giant crossbows, ordinary arrows, and some huge rolling stones on the battlefield, followed by the ghost pattern soldier ants that died under the city. As long as they were of any value, they almost all were thrown into the carriage. Now it is a race against time to seize all the wealth. After the new queen ant was shot, the male ant bodyguards were instantly destroyed. Those male ants that were like giant chariots, as long as they were not killed by gunpowder, actually turned around and walked towards the north of Duodan Canyon, in addition to the huge crater left by the explosion. There were only some corpses of ghost-marked male ants left on the battlefield. And some male ants were seriously injured by the explosion and could only wait to die on the battlefield. The cavalry quickly rushed into the area, facing the ghost-marked male ants that were not completely dead. They were not even qualified to do a last-ditch attack. As long as a living ghost-marked male ant is found, the cavalry will say H, low to the city wall. Mobilize the crossbow to punch a few holes in them, and they will become completely honest. Serdak personally went out of the city this time and finally found the mutilated body of the new ant queen on the edge of the battlefield. 
when the mercenaries in the town saw the city gate open. They also began to organize people to prepare to enter the canyon to hunt the ghost-marked red ants. For a time, the cavalry in the garrison camp drove the ghost strike red ants to the middle of the canyon a few kilometers away. However, the cavalry did not dare to pursue them too deeply. They only dared to wander around the crossbow range of the bed on the north city wall. Aung San led an aboriginal team through the city gate hole and came to the foot of the city wall. These aborigines brought various tools and began to carefully clean the oil tank under the city wall to make adequate preparations for the next ant wave to attack the city. In fact, in addition to cleaning up the oil tank, Aung San also had to check the damage to the wall structure of the lower half of the city wall. Some of the completely broken cornerstones had to be pried out and a new piece put in. However, this this kind of work can only be done by skilled bricklayers. This commander is actually a ruthless man. He actually killed the queen ant. The old bricklayer squatted under the city wall and directed his two apprentices to carry a strip-shaped foundation stone and insert it into the gap. The young bricklayer was also very envious and said, I heard that the boys in the city defense army have made a fortune. If I had known that the bee's tide was so profitable, I would have joined the city defense army. If you want to go now, it's not too late said the companion. The young bricklayer snorted and said, Forget it. If you join now, you can only enter the reserve force. Chapter 771 Harvest The new queen ant died under the concentrated sniper fire of ten bed crossbows, four of which pierced the body of the new queen ant with magic giant crossbow arrows. It didn't even have time to release its innate magic. This method of death was probably the most undignified among level four monsters. The garrison camp in Duodan town was in a mess. As the ant colony retreated, almost all the garrison troops were dispatched outside the city to strive for greater victory. There were only a few injured warriors left, but they were trying to do what they could. The solid less roads in the camp were dug into deep grooves by the obviously overloaded four-wheel carriages. The wheels wrapped in gum had been somewhat deformed, and the number of ancient boli horses pulling the carriages increased from two to four. There were ten soldiers behind each carriage pushing the cart all the way so that the huge corpses of ghost-marked male ants on the battlefield outside the city could be transported back to the military camp. In particular, one of the four-wheeled carriages was surrounded by twenty cavalrymen. It was not until the carriage entered the military camp that the twenty cavalrymen turned around and returned to the battlefield outside the city. The carriage that drove into the military camp stopped directly at the door of the small building where Soldak lived. The outside of the small building was lined up with wounded people waiting for treatment. Everyone looked curiously at the new queen ant with six incomplete wings on the flatbed carriage. The faint pressure on the new queen had not completely dissipated. The soldiers felt with a strong sense of oppression brought by the high-level monsters. No one dared to approach. The coachman couldn't wait to jump out of the carriage. His whole body was still stained with a lot of mud and light brown blood from the ghost-striped red ants. He strode to the door of the small building. The wounded man waiting at the door consciously gave way, and the coachman knocked on the door several times. A little aboriginal girl opened the door from the house. She had a delicate face and a sweet smile. She was wearing a clean sarong and holding a roll of hemostatic bandage in her other hand. It was Nika. She followed Selena to the military camp today to help. And it happened that Serdak needed an assistant. Nika smiled and said to the coachman, What can you do? If you are injured, if it is not serious, you have to queue up at the back. If there is a serious injury, then bring it over quickly and you can give priority to treatment. No, no, no. Please inform the commander that the new queen ant has been safely transported to the camp. These important warcraft materials need to be received by him personally, said the coachman. Nika, facing this aborigine, the coachman showed him enough respect, because she is Commander Serdak's maid. Nika didn't even have time to close the door before she turned around and ran back into the house. Not long after, someone came out of the room. First, it was a heavy armored infantryman with one leg and a cane. During the battle on the city wall, his left calf was bitten off by ghost-striped soldier ants. Although the bone was completely bitten off. Luckily what's more, most of the tendons and blood vessels are still connected. And the skin is only half damaged. After Soldek's treatment, his broken left calf was successfully reattached. Now he possesses the blessed body. And after bandaging his wounds, he actually jumped out of the room on crutches. The two comrades waiting at the door looked at their companion in shock. No one knew better than them how seriously injured the companion was. At that time, they took turns carrying him back to the military camp. The broken calf was like it was an old leather boot hanging from his waist, swinging back and forth as he ran. They even thought that amputation might be the best outcome. 
But now they actually limped out of the house. This is sacred magic. Yes, it must be the power of magic. The two soldiers thought the same thing in their hearts. They saluted Serdak who followed him, then supported their companions, and quickly returned to the dormitory. The coachman responsible for escorting the new Ant Queen quickly stood up straight and reported to Soldak. Commander, all the new Ant Queens have been transported back. Please accept them. Serdak took Nika out and saw four giant crossbow arrows stuck on the carriage. The new Ant Queen, who had already cooled down, scratched her head a little. There were so many wounded waiting outside the small building, and she couldn't abandon them at this time. Ignore it here. However, if this new queen ant is not dealt with in time, the magic power on it will quickly disappear. And by then, the materials on this precious high-level magic beast will likely become worthless. I can clean their wounds first and then rebandage them. If there are special needs that need immediate treatment, I can contact you. Probably aware of Serdak's distress, Nika stood beside Serdak and suggested in a low voice. Commander, Miss Nika can help us bandage it. Our injuries are not serious. Wait until you have time to help us treat it. A veteran of the cavalry battalion echoed next to him. Since someone said this, even if the other wounded soldiers were reluctant, no one would raise objections at the risk of angering Commander Serdek. Although this kind of thing affected his prestige in the military camp. After all, the magic materials on the new Ant Queen were too precious. So he bit the bullet and said, I will deal with this queen as soon as possible. Please wait patiently. When the wounded soldiers saw that Commander Serdak was so polite, they repeatedly expressed that they could let Miss Nika help treat their wounds. Serdak stood next to the carriage and directed several infantry soldiers to carry the body of the new Ant Queen off the carriage. The new Queen Ant is nearly three meters long. The dark red head has only one extremely thin mouth part. The two dark red compound eyes are as big as a watermelon. Through the translucent red film, you can clearly see the six densely packed surfaces inside. Crystal, the huge head occupies almost one-third of the body. The chest is slender and narrow, and the three pairs of transparent wings grow from the back. The huge abdomen occupies almost three-fifths of the entire body. It is shaped like a fat fish hook and is covered with rings of light-colored veins. It can also be seen clearly on both sides of the abdomen. There is a row of round holes the size of oranges, and the thick fallopian tube at the end is like a sharp needle, covered with complicated and weird magic patterns. The new Ant Queen had four giant crossbow arrows stuck in her body, and light brown blood covered almost the entire carriage. When its body was carried down from the four-wheeled carriage by ten cavalrymen with knight's lances, Serdak could still feel the powerful magic flowing in his body. He didn't dare to wait too long. As the magic power on the new queen's body was dissipating with every passing second, the new queen ant is a bit big, so she can barely carry it from the back door of the small building to the kitchen counter. Her body almost fills up the three-meter-long counter. Normally, Serdak would also deal with Warcraft leather here, but this was the first time he dealt with the ants. Although Serdak has superb skinning skills, he is worried that the new queen ant has a tough hard skin that cannot be cut with a skinning knife in his hand. In fact, this worry is completely unnecessary, perhaps in order to be able to fly more flexibly. The hard armor on the new queen ant's body is very thin, and the fiery red body is covered with a dark fly green magic pattern, which contains powerful magic power. But its hard armor is not it is not hard, and has excellent magic conductivity. The peeling knife can cut through the hard skin of the queen ant. Through the eye of truth observation, Serdak discovered that this new queen ant also had a life magic pattern on its head. However, the form of this magic pattern was a little more complicated. It was not a single type of magic. It's more like a combination of several kinds of magic. There is a giant crossbow arrow that is almost close to the magic pattern of life, and penetrates the skull of the ghost pattern Ant Queen. Serdak needs to carefully cut through this part of the magic skin, relying on the ability of the Eye of Truth. Serdak could barely peel off the life magic pattern on his head. The magic core dug out from the center of the head of the new Ant Queen is only one size smaller than the magic core obtained from the Dragon Eagle given to him by the Red Dragon Iser. But the size of the magic core does not fully explain this. Only the level of Warcraft. The size of the magic core alone is not enough to determine that the Dragon Eagle must be of a higher level than the new Ant Queen. Soldak also found that the skull space of the new Queen Ant was very large, almost filled with a light green frozen brain. The magic patterns on the wrinkled leather peeled off from the head of the ghostly patterned Ant Queen are also quite complex and dense, in addition to a piece of life magic pattern removed from the head of the Queen Ant. He also obtained a large piece of hard armor with good magic conductivity, a magic core, 
and a slightly incomplete head of a magic beast. Serdak successfully dismembered the new queen ant, and put all the valuable magic materials into the magic sealing box. Then he began to prepare to continue treating the remaining injured soldiers. He pushed open the wooden door of the small building, and found Yulidum waiting quietly outside the small building. You didn't even need to look at his expression to know what he was thinking. Leaning against the doorframe, Serdak asked the ogre, Do you really want to taste that big fly? Gulidum showed a simple and honest smile and said to Serdak, It must be eaten. It contains powerful power in its body. Only by eating it can it become a tonic for me. Serdak opened the door, motioned for him to go into the kitchen and get it himself, and warned, Okay, make sure you wash it more often and cook it longer so you don't get a bad stomachache. When Gulidum heard what Serdak said, he immediately stood up energetically and said to Serdak very happily, I will save you the best part. Forget it. Listen, I am telling you very seriously. Take these things out, whether they are raw or cooked. Do not send them back to me. In addition, you must be responsible for cleaning the kitchen countertop. Serdak gave serious instructions to the ogre, who walked into the small building. The ogre turned and looked at Serdak in confusion. I think you seem to be a little prejudiced against eating ghost strike and queens. Serdak waved his hand and said, Hurry up and move away. I just don't like it. The ogre had a serious expression on his face. Standing in the corridor of the small building, his tall body had to be slightly hunched and his head lowered. He said to Soldak, To be honest, this queen ant may be what I became. A stronger opportunity. Serdak was stunned for a moment, then thought for a moment and called out to the ogre Gulitum. Gulitum, wait a moment. After speaking, he took out a magic sealing box from his magic pocket, opened the lid, and took out the mutilated head of the new Ant Queen. The entire head was almost filled with a large magic sealing box. From the hole in the back of the neck, you can clearly see the frozen light green brain inside. Serdak only said, Take this. The next step was to treat the wounded soldiers. Of course, Serdak could not feel any fatigue. If the heavy armored infantry and cavalry on the city wall had not resisted the attack of dozens of ghost patterned soldier ants this time, the new queen ant would not have been easily fooled, thinking that there was a chance to break through the northern city wall and lead the male ants. The guards regiment entered the striking range of catapults and bed crossbows. Although everyone has rich combat experience, unfortunately, there are too many ghost marked soldier ants on the city. So many soldiers were injured. Sardak continued to treat him until his mental strength was somewhat exhausted before he stopped. In order not to disappoint the lightly injured warriors waiting behind, Sardak gritted his teeth, took out some moon blade fire wolf heads from the demon ceiling box, and blessed them with a blessed body one by one before calling it a day. The entire treatment process. Originally, these lightly wounded people did not need to be blessed with the blessed body. But there is no way... The power of holy light and spiritual power in Serdak's body are almost exhausted. And he cannot use the holy light technique. At this time, the blessed body only needs to offer enough sacrifices. Nika has been following Soldak. She used to work as a maid in Baron Goss's manor for more than a year. And she seemed very comfortable doing these things. Occasionally when he looked at Serdak holding the holy light in his hand, he would occasionally stand aside in a daze. As the setting sun hid in the mountains on the west side of the Thorny Mountains, the mountains cast a huge shadow, which also meant that dusk was coming in Duodan Town. Duodan Town is a small town hidden in the southern section of the canyon. The south side of the town is connected to the large grassland in the southern part of the Thorny Mountains. At this time, most of the ant colony has retreated to the middle of the canyon. Although there are sporadic ghost-marked red ants in the area near the city wall, once these red ants cannot form a large scale, it is still easy for the cavalry in the cavalry battalion to clean them up. Of some mercenary groups in the town even took the opportunity to come out and hunt down some lonely ghost-marked soldier ants. So throughout the afternoon, the garrison in Duodan town regained control of the canyon near the north city wall. Not only did they collect recyclable military supplies outside the city wall, they also cleaned up the red ant corpses piled under the city wall. The ashes of red ants almost completely buried the oil tank under the city. When cleaning up the ashes, in addition to recovering a large number of burnt, and a kneel fine steel arrowheads from the bottom of the oil tank. Occasionally a black magic arrow could be found. Wow, this is an unexpected surprise. Being able to repel the ant colony, residents of the entire town ran to the streets to celebrate. They even naively thought that this beast tide would end like this. Chapter 772 Ogre Gulitum
The Ghost Strike Mail ants are so big that a complete Ghost Strike Mail ant basically occupies an entire four-wheeled carriage. Serdak could only dismember these large Ghost Strike Mail ants outside the small building. These male ants are much larger than the giant Ghost Strike Soldier ants, and their sizes are not at the same level. These Ghost Strike Mail ants have broad bodies and almost look like golden beetles. If it weren't for the head of a red ant hanging on its neck, it would be difficult to recognize that this is actually a type of Ghost Strike Red Ant. They seem to be born entirely for mating and fighting. Their abdomen looks like a small container, with thick giant legs supporting the entire body. The dark red hard carapace is covered with some thick armor sheets. If they stand upright at the front of their bodies, they can be estimated to be 4 meters high. This height can easily exceed the ogre ghoul item. Moreover, the hard armor on their bodies is similar to that of soldier ants, both of which are extremely hard. Serdak tried to hit the bone spurs growing near the joints with a hammer. They were very hard and difficult to break. Under the eye of truth, all the magic patterns on the body of the ghost patterned male ants are invisible. Although there are also life magic patterns on these ghost marked male ants. Most of the ghost marked male ants bodies were blown to pieces by gunpowder. And the life magic pattern located on the ghost marked male ants abdomens covers a very large area and is similar to the earth. There are earth protective magic patterns like a shield. And basically no male ant has a complete life magic pattern. This kind of life magic pattern that is born on the body of Warcraft cannot be repaired once it is damaged. However, the hard skin on the male ants is far harder than the hard skin on the giant soldier ants. Serdak couldn't cut it with an axe or saw, and he didn't want to waste the high-quality monsters on the male ants. Meat. Finally, Soldak thought of a way to extract some acid rot from the abdominal cavity of the ghost-striped male ants, and then applied it to the surface of the ghost-striped male ants' hard carapace with a small brush. Unfortunately, those brushes were made of pig hair. Just dip it in a little sour liquid, and it will slowly melt away. After trying it out, Serdak found that he could use a silver spoon to apply the pickling fluid to the hard skin of the ghost-striped male ant. But he had to endure the unpleasant smell of the pickling fluid. Serdak didn't have any good solution for this. Fortunately, he could completely dismember these ghost-striped male ants, pick out the translucent meat inside the legs, and cook them. As for those hard sh. L. Soldak, they are going to be soaked in the pit, and after they have completely softened, they will be cleaned, flattened, and dried. This kind of hard leather armor also has good magic conductivity, so the hard leather armor must be very good. The only pity is that among so many male ants with ghost patterns, not one has a complete life magic pattern. Moreover, the head is too huge, making it very inconvenient to store it in a magic sealing box. Tonight, Andrew and Samira need to continue to watch the night, so that atoms can be replaced during the day. Soldak is a little worried that these ghosts mark red, ants will quietly sneak into the North City Wall through the night to launch a surprise attack. Samira is given the blessing of insight by the senior god. Selina has been counting the supplies in the warehouse all day long. The daily consumption of military supplies is huge. Especially today. It was complicated. Not only did it consume a lot of military supplies, but it also recovered some materials including giant crossbow arrows, and fine steel arrowheads. In addition, a large amount of Warcraft materials on the ghost pattern red ants are also collected. The most conspicuous one is the magic core containing precious magic crystals. These need to be recorded and recorded. Each transaction has its corresponding merit. If you make a mistake, the merit exchange list is likely to collapse. Selena was responsible for tallying these accounts and was busy almost from morning till night. Nika became Serdak's little helper at noon, always helping him. Zygna also left the hut and ran to the military camp to watch the excitement. She looked like an exquisite little princess in a Lolita dress. This was probably Selena's new purchase. There was no such beautiful style of dress in Wall Village. She squatted quietly next to the ogre, staring with eyes as bright as obsidian. She was very curious about the ogre's cooking method and stared at the ogre as he roasted the brains of the queen ants. Surprisingly, the two of them still have something in common. Moreover, the ogre happily introduced this cooking method to Signa, and kept stirring the iron pot with a wooden spoon, and kept adding some ingredients into it. The two seemed to have a very good conversation. In order to facilitate the conversation, the ogre even let Zygna sit on his shoulders. For the ogre, this behavior is simply a rare form of recognition. Gulitam cooked a whole queen ant. He started eating almost before the sun went down. And he was still eating and drinking until it was completely dark. After it got dark, Signa sat on the wooden steps at the door of the cafeteria, silently watching the ogres eating. At this time, 
Nika finished what she was doing and ran to the cafeteria to find Signa. Serdak needed to stay at the military camp tonight. So Selena prepared a dinner in the small building of the military camp. Nika was responsible for the preparations. Selena came back from the logistics warehouse and was only responsible for the final cooking. Fortunately, at noon, the overgool item followed Serdak's request and rinsed the kitchen countertop with water and dumped out all the smelly monster entrails. So the kitchen no longer smelled like that. The taste of, during dinner time, soldiers wearing simple leather armor lined up at the entrance of the canteen, holding wooden plates in their hands. Tonight was still bacon, toasted wheat cakes and vegetable soup, although the Warcraft meat had already been cured during the marinating process. The last bit of magic has been lost, but the resulting bacon tastes pretty good. Signa quietly rolled up into a ball, hugging her knees with her hands, sitting on the steps without being disturbed. Nika walked up the steps, stood in front of Signa, stretched out her hand and said to her, Hey, Signa, we're going to the small building for dinner. Selena will take us both home after that. Signa came back from her days. She glanced at Nika, held Nika's hand, and stood up from the steps. Actually, I ate something else, and I'm not very hungry now. Zigna followed Nika and said as she walked. She hesitated for a moment, slowed down her pace, and turned to look at the ogre. Although Giladim's belly was already very bulging, he was still eating fiercely. Nika stopped, looked at Zigna behind her, and asked curiously, What are you looking at? Following Zigna's gaze, Nika saw the ogre Gulitim. She knew that Mr. Ogre was a follower of Baron Soldak. Zigna glanced at Nika and seemed to be saying to herself, After tonight, he may become different. Nika asked curiously, What changes will there be? Zigna closed her eyes. After a while, she didn't answer Nika's question. Instead, she took her hand and said lightly, Let's go! Gulitam rarely feels full when he eats. Even if his stomach is so bloated that he can't eat anything, he won't feel full. His belly is probably the toughest thing in the world and can digest almost anything even dirt, bark, roots and animal bones. As long as he can eat it, he can definitely digest it. Of course metal things are not enough. For example, daggers and the like. Once eaten into the stomach, the buttocks will bleed when defecating. He was very satisfied with his meal tonight. He almost drank up the queen ant brain in the iron pot in one go. The jelly-like substance became very soft and smooth after being boiled in the pot. And he almost had no feeling of swallowing. Flowed into the stomach. The queen ant didn't have much meat on her body, but she had a lot of internal organs, which he cooked out in one pot. There are a lot of these things. He ate for a long time, from dawn to dusk, before he finished it all. This time, not only was his stomach satisfied, but his spirit and soul were also satisfied in an indescribable way. He leaned lazily by the campfire, not wanting to move. But in the end, he relied on his own perseverance to extinguish the bonfire put the iron pot aside, and then ran to the bath wall to wash his body, then got into the wooden room that belonged to him, lay down on a big bed and screamed. Sleep. In his sleep, he couldn't feel the magic elements around his body slowly gathering. There was a natural magic circle condensing around him, as if totem patterns appeared on his body bit by bit, and those sign magic patterns appeared on the surface of his skin. Then it disappeared immediately. All night long, the ogre ghoul item had a long, long dream. He dreamed that he had not dared to look at his own shadow since he was a child, always feeling that it was another version of himself. Many times, he felt that he was missing something, that something was missing from his body. So he kept eating, eating hard, and eating different foods all over the world. The elders in the tribe thought that he was very talented, and he would probably eat in the future, to become a warrior of their ogre tribe. His parents encouraged him to leave the ogre tribe and venture into the outside world. Perhaps this would help him grow. So he walked out of the place next to the sea and walked into a jungle that seemed to never end. At one point, he even thought he was lost in the jungle. In the jungle of the Maka Plain. He lived a very leisurely life. Later he met Serdak. And he followed Serdak out of the Maka Plain. He not only feels the meaning of life, but also pursues the completeness that belongs to him. In the dream, he seemed to see another sleeping soul in his body waking up. He was absorbing enough nutrients in his belly and growing up rapidly. He could very clearly sense that the soul was his other self. He had been unable to wake up completely due to lack of strength. The brain flower of the ghost striped ant queen provided him with sufficient nutrients. Under the nourishment of this power, the other self also awakened. 
If the current one is a warrior born with divine power, then the other one is a wizard with a wise mind. He is extremely smart. And he also controls ice and fire. It is a part of himself and seems to be another independent individual. In the morning, he woke up to the sunshine. The sun shines through the open window of the work shed. Warming the body, he could hear the whistles of the cavalry and heavy armored infantry gathering in the military camp. A group of war horses ran out of the stables, causing the ground to shake violently. He touched his shriveled belly and felt very hungry this time. After eating so much last night, he sat up from the big wooden bed and looked outside sleepily. Suddenly, he felt his neck was itchy. He stretched out his hand and scratched his neck twice. He found that there was a huge fleshy bag on his left shoulder near his neck. What the H, L is that? He suddenly woke up. Opening his eyes, he carefully touched his bulging neck. If it were anyone else, he would definitely think that he was suffering from some kind of disease. But he was an ogre. He heard the elders of the tribe tell about this situation. And a feeling of joy instantly surged from the soles of his feet to the top of his head. He couldn't control his mood and jumped up from the shed. His strong body jumped several meters high and his bald head broke through the roof of the simple wooden house. Then he let out a deafening roar in the air. After falling down, he strode out of the camp. Adams, who was about to rush to the city to switch defenses with Andrew, saw Gulladam rushing out of the military camp like a madman. He thought something urgent had happened. So he quickly mounted a war horse and chased after him with his knights. Go up. Adams' cronies immediately went to find Soldak in the small building. Gulladam ran to the river in one breath. He squatted by the river and saw his reflection on the river through the quiet water. This is it. He had been waiting for so long just for this. That was when his other self finally woke up. Gulidam stood by the river, raised the bone-crushing stick in his hand, and roared with joy. His roar shook the river and the grass on the bank, causing waves of ripples centered around his body. Chapter 773 Businessmen in Duodan Town When Serdak woke up, he found that his good ogre brother Gulidam had not only grown a head without a face on his shoulders overnight. Moreover, he began to grow taller again, and his shoulders became much broader than before. The three-meter-long bone-crushing stick instantly turned into a one-handed weapon in his hand, which made Serdak feel a little envious. Jealousy is also a little sour, like a drop of lemon juice dropped into a wine glass. This morning, Serdak was awakened by the sound of hooves from dozens of war horses galloping out of the camp at the same time. As soon as he opened the window, he found Captain Adam's cronies standing outside the small building. When he saw him, he immediately reported the unusual reaction of the ogre Gulidam. Hearing that the ogre Gulidam was in trouble, Serdak quickly ran out, mounted his horse, and ran to the river outside the town. Then he saw Gulidam holding the big neat bag on his shoulder with one hand, standing by the river crying and laughing with joy. After he listened to Gulidam sitting by the river and talking about last night's dream, he took a closer look at the big neat bag on his shoulder. To be precise, this was no longer a big neat bag. Serdak could clearly see that the ogre's spine actually split into two forks at the back. One cervical vertebra was pressing against Gulidam's head, and the other was a cervical vertebra extends directly into the big neat bag. The collarbones in the middle of the ogre's two heads are connected together, making the entire chest look thicker. So are you completely awakened now? Serdak stood by the river, looking at the ogre standing in the stream and asked seriously, I haven't fully awakened yet. It can be said that another personality of me has been born. It's just that he is still sleeping. He needs more nutrients to wake up. Now my body has begun to become significantly stronger. Ogre Guli Temu walked out of the river, water drops dripping from his body. The skin on his body turned a light grayish white and had a marble sheen. It felt cool to the touch and as hard as rock. You mean you need to continue to supplement nutrition? Soldak slapped his forehead. He felt that this foodie was really not easy to take care of. When he was in Wazimra City, he felt that he could live on as long as he had enough wheat cakes and broth. Later, when he lived in Wiji Village, Serdak specially prepared hundreds of yellow sheep. Now he has arrived in Belan, in the Duodan town of the plain. This guy has already begun to taste the taste of level 4 monsters. It may take some time for him to wake up completely. It depends on how much I can eat every day and what kind of food I eat, the ogre said naggingly. He himself is an alternative among ogres. He is a very eloquent ogre. And he also likes to reason with people and convince them with virtue. Easy. How many monsters like Queen Ants do you have to eat? Serdak interrupted Gulidam's chatter. Two should be about the same. Gulidam paused and answered honestly. Serdak sat down on the grass by the river. If it were a second level monster, even if he could eat a hundred, 
it would only be a matter of time. With the current fighting power of the few people, it would be really hard to hunt down a second level monster. Very simple. It is not impossible for a third level monster. After all, Serdak has many other methods. But the powerful pressure released by this queen and should obviously be in the category of level 4 monsters. Although one was successfully hunted and killed in yesterday's battle, it was purely a fluke. It was the bomb package that stunned the male ant guards. The queen ant was shot in the body by an armor-piercing arrow as she fled in panic. I hope the battle yesterday did not scare the ant colonies in the canyon. Otherwise, it would be a bit troublesome for us to go out of the city to hunt the queen ant, Serdak said to Gulitem. Adams, who was waiting aside, saw that there was nothing going on here. So he led the horse up and said to Soldak, Commander, if nothing happens here, I will go to the north wall to change defenses. Seeing a group of knights waiting on the grass not far away, Soldak nodded and said to Adams, Oh, by the way, the merit exchange list will continue to be updated recently. If there are any special needs, you can bring it up first, and I can prepare some rewards accordingly. Adams was a smart man, and he immediately understood the meaning of Soldek's words. These people are all seconded by the great swordsman of Chester, since they participate in the city defense of Doden Town. The benefits cannot only be for the cavalry battalion, the heavy armored infantry, archers and cavalry they brought here need to be allocated some. Benefit. Serdak has some leather from second level monsters, which are the most basic base materials for making primary magic pattern structures. Adams thought for a while, and then said, Forget about the base material of the magic pattern structure. Finding an inscription master who doesn't waste materials these days is like finding a needle in a haystack. And the production cost of a tailor-made magic pattern structure may be as long as an ordinary person's lifetime. If I can't afford it, I can prepare some finished magic weapons. Enchanted weapons shouldn't be too expensive. And I might be ready to accumulate some more achievements and exchange them for a magic pattern. The second magic pattern in addition to the merits that may be multiplied several times, also requires you to be promoted to a second-level powerhouse, so that you may have enough carrying capacity. Serdak said to Adams. Adams took a deep breath, forced a smile, and waved his hand. Then just pretend I didn't say anything. In the morning in Duodan Town, when the sun shines, the whole town gradually becomes lively. Of course, among many places. The busiest places are inside the free market and at the door of the bakery. Residents living near the bakery like to get up early to buy the kind that has just been taken out of the oven. It tastes full of wheat flavor and has a crispy skin. Whole wheat bread. Wealthy families can also brush a layer of honey on the crispy skin, which tastes fragrant and sweet. Selena appears at the free market on time every morning to set the day's prices for the small variety of vegetables here. The vegetable vendors have become accustomed to setting prices, and they don't even care if they can sell out all the vegetables because even if they can't sell them all, they can all be sent to the garrison camp, and the camp will buy them all at a guaranteed price. Selena wants to spread dark teachings to the town. The people of the Green Empire believe in the Statue of Liberty. Even though the Statue of Liberty has abandoned them now, people still uphold this belief and look forward to the goddess's sacred glory shining on the world again. However, the aborigines of the Belan Plain do not have such deep feelings for the Statue of Liberty. So these aborigines are the next target of Selena's communication. Now is the time for her to establish a bright image in the town. She was wearing a black skirt made of wool. Her graceful figure, fair skin, blue eyes as deep as lake water, and sexy lips outlined an exquisite woman like a statue. When the residents of the town see her, no matter who they are, they will greet her, and the vendors will come out to salute respectfully and say some greetings. She behaved very proudly, saying little and only nodding slightly in greeting. Without the new ant queen as their commander, the ants retreated to the middle area of Doden Canyon, where they lingered, driven by the instinct in their memories. They gradually gathered towards the north wall, although they still had the consciousness to attack. But they no longer fight as a whole. They are like a plate of loose sand, scattered in the canyon. The mercenary group took the opportunity to go out of the city to hunt the soldier ants in the ant colony. Generally, if it is not absolutely necessary, they will avoid ghost strike worker ants that are of no use. In fact, ghost pattern worker ants also have a little effect. Ghost pattern worker ants are now purchased from butcher shops in Duodan Town. However, the price of a complete ghost pattern worker ant is only 30 copper coins. Very few mercenary groups will deal with these. Worker ants. The ghost striped soldier ants are much more valuable. 
not only is there a magic core hidden in the head, but the hard armor on the soldier ants is also one of the main commodities purchased by the merchants in Duodin town. In recent days, military supplies have been arriving in Duodin town one after another. The merchants have already cooperated closely with the military camp. The military camp has exchanged a large number of leathers from low-level monsters for military supplies. Currently, they can only trade these items. In this regard, the businessmen in Duodin town have a lot of complaints. The merchants complained that the military camp was not open to trade in hard armor, and everyone joined together to protest to the military camp. The merchants felt that having a large amount of military supplies in their hands gave them the capital to negotiate with the military camp. It's just that the military camp has been silent in the past few days, and no news has come. Of course, the town residents may not know the specific reasons why the garrison banned the sale of soldier and hard armor, but the merchants all know what is going on. But they hope to use these military supplies in their hands to force the military camp to relax sales restrictions. Conditions of the trade prospects created by these hard armors were so great that the merchants had to think carefully about what could impress the commander. Just when the merchants could try to talk about the hard armor trade of Ghostmark soldier ants again, Duodan Town actually ushered in a battle victory. And the Duodan Town garrison actually successfully sniped and killed a new ant queen. It is said that this time the garrison recovered a large number of fine steel arrowheads and giant crossbow arrowheads from outside the city. This news was like a bucket of cold water poured on everyone's heads. Moreover, some big merchants in Doden Town also received another news. That is, the fifth batch of military supplies has set off from Wilk City. It has to be said that the Wilk City Military Department has been fully prepared for this beast wave, at least in terms of military supplies. It has been continuously supplying the front lines. Moreover, the legion stationed in the Thorny Mountains is still the Lutheran Legion with numerous military exploits in the Bena province. The mercenaries in the town took this opportunity and ran out of the city in groups to hunt the ghost pattern soldier ants. In just one day, the merchants purchased more than a hundred complete ghost pattern soldier ants. Seeing the hard armor of ghost pattern soldier ants drying on the grass on the south side of the town, the merchants fell silent again. The entire hillside was covered with hard armor, and there was no way to count how many there were. The hearts of the merchants were filled with resentment again. If those few people who were greedy for small profits had not concealed the true price of the soldier ants hard armor and angered the commander, at least half of these hard armors could be sold in a town. Complete transaction on. In these four days, the garrison guarding the North City Wall killed too many ghost pattern soldier ants. In the morning, a group of businessmen blocked Selena at the door of the bakery. An older looking businessman with gray hair stood out from the crowd and looked up at Selena standing on the steps. In his hand, he held a bundle of feathered arrows wrapped in oil paper. There were exactly ten arrows in each bundle. It looks neat and tidy, and it also smells faintly of grease. The businessman squinted his eyes and said to Selena sincerely, Miss Selena, we are willing to trade with you for brand new arrows. In order to show the sincerity of our firm, we can give you an extremely low price. You also know, we actually don't just want to do this one business. We also want magic crystals. All I can take out are some magic crystals. Selena interrupted him and said firmly, You should probably know that there are so many magic beasts hunted here and there is no shortage of magic crystals. I would rather suffer some losses. One magic crystal can be exchanged for 10,000 fine steel arrows. If it is a complete arrow, it can be exchanged for 2,000. One magic crystal can buy almost 3,500 arrows in Wilk City. Arrow. After saying that, Selena lifted up her long skirt and prepared to walk down the steps. We don't want magic crystals. We want to trade hard armor. The old businessman stopped Selena and said hurriedly. Selena took the bundle of arrows, tore off the oil paper on the surface, with a faint smile on her face, and asked the old businessman, What are you trading with me for? Selena's tone was a bit aggressive. Just these arrows? Do you still need me to calculate the market price of this kind of hard armor? How many pieces of hard armor do you think can be exchanged for this carriage's arrows? Even if you buy ten, how much hard armor can be exchanged for chariot arrows? After saying that, she walked down a flight of steps, approached the old businessman, and continued to say to him, When our commander came to you, we talked about the trade issue of these hard armors, but you never gave a clear explanation, saying that the stuff was very cheap and almost no one wanted it in the market. But now we still have a backlog of it. I have bought some magic crystals, and there is no shortage of gold coins. I still say the same thing. What are you going to trade with us? 
The old businessman was left speechless by the questioning and subconsciously took a half step back. Selena put the bundle of arrows into the old businessman's hand, took another step closer, and continued, Of course, if you have materials such as magic pattern structures or magic crossbow arrows in your hands, it is not impossible to talk about it. The old businessman was a little dumbfounded by Selena's words. Of course, he couldn't get the magic pattern structure. Even supplies like magic giant crossbows were difficult for ordinary merchants to obtain. Selena said nothing more and took the opportunity to leave the bakery. The merchants did not catch up again, seeing Selena raising her neck proudly like a white swan and leaving. The old businessman stood there and sighed. The other merchants remained silent for a long time. After Selena left, everyone said in a hurry, It doesn't matter. Even if the military camp holds the hard armor and doesn't sell it, we can't buy it now. It's hard armor. The young businessman said. In fact, these mercenaries in the town hunted and killed more than a hundred ghost-striped soldier ants in just one day. Other businessmen echoed. That's right. The young businessman continued arrogantly. As long as we don't compete maliciously and don't drive up the purchase price of hard armor, we can still make money. Why do we have to buy those hard armor in the military camp? Chapter 774 The Army Presses the Territory The most dumbfounding thing for the merchants of Duodan Town was that the town had been peaceful for less than a day. Because of the return of the ghost-striped red ants, all the mercenary groups had to withdraw to the town. The hard armor trade of ghost-striped soldier ants was once again forced to interrupt. And this time the size of the ant colony was larger than before. News from the city wall said that four queens appeared in the ant colony this time. They should have the same status. But they all had their own male ant guards. And they formed four camps in the canyon. Crowded together in a mess. On the other hand, the soldier ants and worker ants seemed extremely excited. They seemed to have found the guidance of light again. The place where the ant army stopped for the first time was just outside the range of the bed crossbow. Perhaps it was because the ant queens joined forces to control the ant colony and were able to convey instructions to every ant clan. So they stood so neatly on the battlefield in the canyon. The worker ants and soldier ants at the front are crowded together, almost forming a straight dividing line. At the same time, more soldier ants appeared in the ant colony. At first, the ratio of soldier ants to worker ants was almost 120. Until the giant soldier ants appeared, there were not as many worker ants as before. But it was still about 110. But now the number of worker ants in the ant colony has further decreased. And at the same time, the number of advanced ants has increased significantly. The ratio of soldier ants to worker ants has almost reached about 1 to 5. In the dense ant colony, you can always see ghost patterns that are almost twice the size. Soldier ants. In addition, ghost-marked male ants also appeared at the rear of the battlefield, each one like a giant siege beast. Although the ants that gathered under the city wall this time did not have such a bloody scene when they rushed up, and there were no monsters all over the valley to slaughter them, the sense of oppression they brought was much stronger than the first time. The city defense guard standing on the top of the city have pushed the rolling stones tied with hemp ropes to the front end of the guide trough. At least half of all the rolling stones are exposed outside the city wall. The bed crossbows also had sharp giant crossbow arrows exposed from the wall stacks. And the brightly polished giant crossbow arrows reflected the cold blue light in the sun. Adams was also very speechless. It took him a long time to take the ship to guard the city wall during the day. After just one relaxing day, he once again welcomed the ant army. At a glance, he felt a little dizzy. The entire canyon was a sea of red. The ant swarm army pressed on the border. And the iron fence of the north city gate came down again. The siege was about to begin, and this time the four queen ants appeared to be more cautious, hiding in the center of the bodyguard group at the rear of the ant colony, far away from the north wall. Gallatin stood next to Adams. His face was a little pale, but he was in good spirits. The injury had not fully healed, but it did not affect his participation in the battle. After hearing from Adams, Commander Serdak is preparing to update the merit exchange list. Gallatin was as excited as chicken blood. As the captain of the Heavy Armored Infantry Brigade, Gallatin would gain nearly a hundred basic merit points every day as long as he participated in the battle. For every ghost pattern soldier ant hunted by his soldiers, he you can all get a little bit of it. If you kill a ghost marked red ant, you will gain even more. Now he is ready to pile up his achievements in exchange for a magic pattern. Of course, there is a small promise from Adams. He has no pursuit of achievements at the moment. So he promised his friend Gallatin that the achievements he gained can be temporarily lent to Gallatin. And he will pay back gold coins. 
magic crystals or other things in the future. Anything is fine. According to the market price, 100 points of merit will be repaid with one gold coin. For the Gallatin team, this was something he never expected. So he got up from his bed in the dormitory and joined the battle to defend the city. Come here quickly. Come here more. I really don't understand what they are still hesitating about. Oh my god. When did these ant tribes have brains? Gallatin stood at the top of the city with an exaggerated expression. It's the queen ants. These new queens have completely controlled these ant tribes. It can also be said that these ant tribes are already subjects of these four ant queens. Their kingdom has been established. And it is also an alliance-style kingdom. These worker ants know brains. But the queen behind them has at least rudimentary intelligence. Adams glanced outside the city, urging the soldiers on the wall to pile bundles of arrows on the top of the city. He felt that he was about to face the toughest battle. Barrels of kerosene have been piled on the wooden shelf behind the oil tank. It seems that as long as enough ant corpses are accumulated in this siege, the fire wall will be rekindled. Gallatin leaned against the wall, with his shield and sword leaning against the wall, and said to his friend, Adams, do you think those precious magic scrolls will be used in this siege of Sardak? Adam said with certainty. I will definitely do it. Now that I have taken it out, I will definitely use it. I say Commander Soldak is really generous this time. Gallatin sighed. Adams, how much does a magic scroll like this cost in the magic market of Bena City? Adams thought about it seriously and then said, If it is really a magic scroll made by the third level magic hell flame, if a scroll is thrown out, it will at least throw out a magic crystal. The fire magic scrolls are in groups of ten. Throwing out two groups at once is really a generous move. Gallatin once again looked at the ant colony outside the city and then whispered, Ten catapults are now equivalent to ten first-turn magicians guarding the city wall. No wonder they can win the favor of Miss Hathaway. Adams glared at Gallatin and whispered a warning. Be careful what you say. As low-level officers of the Luther Legion, they cannot discuss members of the Luther family under any circumstances. This is an extremely serious offense. Gallatin touched his mouth and found that the stubble on his chin was already very prickly. He took out a sharp dagger and scratched it twice casually, while saying, Do you think he will be able to take charge of Luther in the future? Legion? Adam said bluntly, It should be about the same. The two of them waited until the sun went down. Andrew and Samira led the team to the top of the city for rotation. There was no movement from the ghost Mark Red ants outside the city. This time, Samira still had the blessing of insight. When the sky darkened, she was not disturbed by the light. When she looked into the distance, it was clearer. She could see the four queen ants moving forward cautiously. Moving. The army of red ants under the city wall gradually crossed the range of the crossbows and then entered the range of the archers. Samira did not hesitate. She stood on the archery tower in the center of the northern city wall and ordered all the archers to shoot projectile arrows. This type of arrow is only equipped by longbow archers. It shoots the arrow into the sky with all its strength. When the fine steel arrow flies to the commanding heights in a parabola shape, it is then pulled by gravity and falls. The higher it is thrown, the more powerful it is when it falls. Two hundred archers fired projectile arrows at the same time. The arrows drew graceful arcs in the evening sky and then smashed into the ant colony like falling meteors. This kind of ordinary arrow cannot cause much damage to ghost-marked soldier ants, but it is fatal to ghost-marked worker ants. A hail of arrows fell and those who fell on the battlefield were almost all ghost stripe worker ants. Hundreds of ghost-patterned soldier ants with fine steel arrows stuck in their bodies stepped over the oil tank and began to climb the city wall. Chapter 775 Night Battle The wind in the canyon seemed to blow out the torches on the city wall. The flames on the grease-soaked twine were very tenacious, and the flames made a fierce sound in the wind. The ghost-striped red ants exude a sour smell, which becomes increasingly clear as the ant colony approaches the city wall. They are constantly opening and closing the giant pliers on their heads. And the bone-hard armor is constantly rubbing, making a crisp sound of clicking. When these sounds are connected together, it makes people feel a tremor coming from the joints of the bones. The sense of oppression brought by those giant ghost-striped soldier ants is far more terrifying than that of prairie lions and jungle tigers. They are numerous, omnipresent, and can overcome almost any obstacle. To them, the northern city wall is just a slightly steep hillside. More and more soldier ants rushed up the northern city wall, and Serdak felt as if the ground was shaking. There are only dense stars in the night sky. Samira had quickly jumped onto a bed crossbow, aimed at the ghostly patterned soldier ants climbing up the city wall directly below, 
and shot the giant crossbow arrows. Jiqua's touch felt very good, and Samira was temporarily unable to control the wind element in her body. Buzz! The crossbow string vibrated, and the sound was dull. The giant crossbow arrow completely blended into the dark night, leaving behind an afterimage and a wind element wrapped around the arrow shaft. The crossbow arrow instantly penetrated the body of the ghost pattern soldier ant. Not only did it shoot through the ordinary ghost pattern soldier ant, which was nearly three meters long, the tip of the arrow emerged from the tail of the ghost pattern soldier ant and penetrated the one behind again, in the head of the ghost pattern soldier ant. A crossbow arrow shot through two ghost pattern soldier ants, causing cheers to burst out from the city wall again. The ghost pattern soldier ants that had just climbed up the city wall immediately accelerated their pace and climbed up. 35 crossbows on the city wall fired a row of giant crossbow arrows almost simultaneously. Buzzing sound. This giant crossbow, which was slightly longer than an ordinary spear, suddenly fell under the city wall with ghost pattern soldier ants. However, it is quite laborious to reload this kind of bed crossbow with a new giant crossbow arrow. It requires at least two warriors to work for a while. One warrior needs to take out a giant crossbow arrow from the wooden frame and load it into the arrow slot. One warrior was responsible for pulling the crossbow string with a winch. It takes at least two minutes to load a giant crossbow arrow. So these bed crossbows alone cannot suppress the ghost marked red ants that are coming like a tide. The ghost patterned soldier ants who rushed at the front quickly climbed up the city. The heavy armored infantry and fully armored knights held long handled weapons in their hands. When the ghost pattern soldier ants emerged from the cracks in the walls of the city, the moment he hit his head, a group of tactics and mercenaries with first class strength thrust out with spears. The sharp spears accurately penetrated into the skull along the lower jaw. Immediately, these ghost striped soldier ants twitched a few times and then kicked their legs, with some acidic liquid pouring out of their mouths. The soldiers would never let these ghost pattern soldier ants fall into the city. They held iron hooks in their hands and dragged these ghost pattern soldier ants up to the top of the city. A large number of ghost pattern soldier ants followed behind. After rushing to the top of the city, they began to spit a large amount of acid at the soldiers on the wall. The city defense guards waiting on the archery tower were holding crossbows. By the light of the fire, they aimed at the mouths of the ghost marked soldier ants and fired a series of crossbow arrows. As long as they hit the mouth parts of the ghost marked soldier ants, the spitting of acid would stop abruptly. Some experienced first turn warriors rushed up along the path of the ghost striped soldier ants spitting acid and thrust the spears in their hands into the soldier ants jaws. There were also some heavily armored warriors holding shields, but they did not completely avoid the acid liquid. They were sprayed all over by the acid liquid and screamed on the top of the city. I saw at least 50 ghost pattern soldier ants climbing onto the city wall and engaging in a melee with the guards on the city wall. Andrew quickly ordered, Put down the rolling stone! The guards waiting by the rolling stone heard Andrew giving the order, and they couldn't wait to push down the rolling stone. Some ghost marked soldier ants even climbed onto the rolling stone. And at this moment, they fell down the city wall together with the rolling stone. These rolling stones were covered with a layer of linen soaked in grease, so that the fire would not be easily extinguished. The rolling stones formed a series, and swept down almost all the ghost marked red ants that were climbing the city wall. The ghost patterned red ants on the path of the fall were crushed to pulp by the rolling stones almost instantly. The pressure on the city wall suddenly decreased a lot. Serdak, Andrew, more than 20 first level veterans in the cavalry battalion, and a group of elite soldiers selected from the mercenary group blocked the ghost patterned soldier ants from the front. And more than 200 heavy armored infantry, the cavalrymen, and the fully armored cavalry swarmed forward. And everyone wasted no time in killing these ghost patterned soldier ants. As long as you are fighting, it is inevitable to get injured. However, Serdak possesses the holy light technique, which allows the warriors to have a lot less worries when fighting. As the rolling stone rolled under the city wall, countless ghost-marked red ants were mixed together, causing death and injury. Some ghost-striped soldier ants tried to climb out of the pile of corpses, but the ghost-striped red ants that came up from behind stepped on their bodies and continued to climb up the city wall. Another rain of arrows covered the area, and the number of ghost-striped worker ants in the ant colony decreased sharply. The bed crossbow at the head of the city completed the second installation of crossbow arrows. This group of ghost-marked soldier ants rushed up and swept out another row of giant crossbow arrows. Dozens of ghost-marked soldier ants immediately laid down. The ghost-patterned soldier ants behind continued to climb up. These burning rolling stones blocked their way forward, and they could only pass through the gaps where there was no fire, which immediately slowed down the ant colony's attack on the city wall. This time, 
There was no wall of fire under the city wall, but just a slight barrier with rolling stones that lit the fire. Perhaps, he heard the sound of fighting on the city wall. Not long after, the ogre appeared on the city wall, holding a bone-crushing stick in his hand, and stepped on the head of the ghost-patterned soldier ant. Looking from a distance, he felt like he kept tilting his head and smashed the bone-crushing stick in his hand. The ghost-patterned soldier ant made a hissing sound and raised his head almost with all his strength and clamped down on the ogre's thigh with a pair of pliers. The bone-crushing stick in the ogre's hand was smashed down again, and the giant pincer on his head was smashed open. Almost at the same moment, the catapult inside the city wall once again threw a black iron ball outside the city. These black iron balls exploded in the canyon, and dazzling fireworks appeared in the dark night. They landed less than 400 people outside the North City Wall. There was an explosion, and the roar echoed through the canyon. At the same time, the ant colony is completely isolated from the front and back. The queen ant at the back of the colony cannot give instructions to the ghost-striped soldier ants and worker ants in front. These ghost-striped soldier ants stopped in front of the rolling stone that ignited the fire. The ghost-patterned soldier ants rushing up the city wall were not as dense as before. The number of ghost-marked soldier ants attacking the city is insufficient. So the 35-bed crossbows on the top of the city can control the number of ghost-marked soldier ants on the city. The North City Wall at night is like a large slaughterhouse. Each soldier has a clear division of labor. As long as there are ghost-striped soldier ants climbing up, the treatment method is basically the same. In the end, the corpse will be pushed into the city wall by the city guards. During this period, the giant ghost-patterned soldier ants that occasionally rushed up did cause Soldak a lot of trouble. When encountering such big guys, he and Gulitem were basically the ones in front. And Andrew and Sammy looked for opportunities to kill the giant ghost-patterned soldier ants. On the other hand, those ghost-striped male ants did not appear until dawn. The soldiers on the North City Wall were fighting continuously all night long, and there were a large number of corpses of ghost-patterned soldier ants piled up outside the city. Although the ground on the city wall had washed away several times at night, there was still a flow of acid. The broken limbs and teeth of some ghost-striped soldier ants were scattered on the ground. When the sun shines into the valley and dissolves the thick fog in the mountains, the ant colony's siege finally calms down. The large battlefield outside the northern city wall has been smashed to pieces. The ghostly red ants retreated to the middle of the canyon, leaving the remains of many ant corpses on the battlefield. Serdak was still thinking about why he couldn't see the ghost-striped male ants during the siege last night. It was only at dawn that he discovered that the homemade bomb thrown by the catapult last night once again blew up a group of ghost-striped male ants. The huge body is still struggling on the battlefield and it seems that it is not completely dead. These dead and injured ghost marked red ants could not leave the battlefield in front of the North City Wall, and they all emerged when the thick fog cleared. In order to wash away the acid stain on his body, Andrew poured several buckets of water in succession, making his whole body wet. There are still some scattered corpses of ghost-patterned red ants hanging on the city wall. The red lizard leather armor on Serdak's body had a gash on his back during the battle. Fortunately, before the battle last night, he sacrificed several heads of ghost-patterned soldier ants, not only the blessed body, hegemonic body and insight, but also the blessed shield and sacred shield. On the city wall, the dwarf chain shield in Serdak's hand turned into a holy shield. As long as the ghost-patterned soldier ants got slightly closer to Serdak, they would be burned by the holy aura on the shield. Even though he had been blessed with so many blessings from the gods, Serdak's salamander leather armor was still torn open by soldier ants and was basically scrapped. Samira's condition seems to be relatively good. The thick fog has made her hair wet. The black gauze on her face is also translucent. And the wind attribute aura on her body is getting stronger and stronger. Serdak was using holy light to treat a puncture wound on a soldier's leg when he heard Andrew pointing to the outside of the city wall and asking, What to do with these big guys? He raised his head and saw the huge corpse of the ghost-marked male ants along the wall. There were only scattered ghost-marked red ants around the battlefield. So he said, of course. Grab them back. Don't waste any of them. Since they have withdrawn. Of course we must expand our results. I will lead people down from the city wall. And you will keep an eye on the top of the city. Andrew said to Samira. After saying that, he went to find a rope behind the city wall. Tied the hemp rope to the wooden frame behind the city wall. And threw the other end under the city wall. A group of veterans from the cavalry battalion followed Andrew. Each one tying the rope. Serdak told these people. Be careful when cleaning the battlefield later. Some ghost-marked red ants will pretend to be dead 
and will bite you when you get close. The bite will be more than a few ropes. Andrew grabbed the rope with both hands and slid directly down the city wall. Samira sat on the city wall and quietly watched Sardak treat the wounded soldiers. After a while, she said to Sardak, I found that these ghost striped red ants are making progress every day. If I retreat this time, I guess it won't be so simple to defend the northern city wall when they rush up again next time. Sardak raised his head and looked at the canyon outside the city. At this moment, the ant colony had retreated to the middle of the canyon. Adams led a group of his men up the city wall and saw that the city wall was piled with loot. The city guards used ropes to pull up the corpses of soldier ants from under the city. The scene seemed very lively. There was still light smoke on the battlefield outside the city. Andrew led a group of veterans to surround a ghost-striped male ant. Four of its legs were blown off, and the remaining two legs were unable to support it. That huge body lay on the battlefield unable to leave. When it saw a group of humans approaching, it began to struggle violently. Andrew couldn't pierce its outer armor with his spear, so he had to slowly approach it from the blind spot of its sight and chop off its last two intact legs. So it could only curl its body like a worm. Once Andrew and others got close, it would stretch out its body and spit acidic liquid everywhere. For a moment, Andrew could only ask someone to drop a long iron chain from the city wall. Several veterans stood far away and cooperated with each other to tie up the ghost-marked male ants and use the door-shaped hangers on the city wall to lift the living ghost-striped male ant, which weighs more than 2,000 pounds, directly to the top of the city. A warehouse keeper from the city defense brigade ran up the city wall out of breath and reported to Soldak. Commander Soldak. The fifth batch of supplies from Wilk City has arrived. Sardak stopped again and asked, Is there anything special this time? The warehouse keeper said excitedly, In addition to food and arrows, some kerosene has been transported this time. In the morning, Soldak personally met with a quartermaster who came from Wilk City to escort supplies and slept in the small building for a while. When I woke up, I found that almost all the valuable giant soldier ants and ghost strike male ants had been transported to an empty field in front of the small building. This ghost strike male ant will spit out a stream of acid from its mouth parts from time to time. It must have vomited all the acid in its stomach pouch and can only save a little before spitting it out, although it is tightly tied with chains. But the huge head can still twist slightly and its dark red crystal-like eyes are cold and cold. It didn't make some weak hissing sounds. The two giant pliers were wrapped with chains and could no longer be opened and closed normally. Many soldiers stood around the empty field, watching this ghost-marked male ant. A total of three ghost-marked male ants were harvested in this battle. The two dead ghost-marked male ants were far less valuable than the giant ghost-marked soldier ants. Although they also had life magic patterns on their bodies, they were completely destroyed. The magic materials that can be obtained are also very limited. Apart from a magic core, there is only the hard armor on the body. Far less valuable than giant ghost pattern soldier ants. The six legs of the giant ghost pattern soldier ants have life magic patterns growing on them. Although these life magic patterns are not complete. As long as you search carefully, you can always harvest some powerful life magic patterns. Fourteen giant ghost pattern soldier ants were hunted all night last night. In order to prevent the magic power on the leg of the soldier ants from dissipating naturally after death. Sirdak prioritized the treatment of these 14 dead giant ghost pattern soldier ants. With the help of the Eye of Truth, Sirdak successfully found 19 complete life magic patterns on the legs of 14 giant ghost pattern soldier ants. However, because many giant ghost pattern soldier ants' legs suffered different due to the degree of damage, Sirdak only succeeded in peeling off 13 complete life magic patterns. Two days ago, during the battle to hunt down the ghost pattern ant queen, he harvested 24 magic patterns from the giant ghost pattern soldier ants. In total, he has obtained 48 life magic patterns from the giant ghost pattern soldier ants. The magic patterns on these giant ghost pattern soldier ants were very difficult to peel off. And Serdak was busy almost until night before he could finish it. Chapter 776 Summoning Oneself Originally, he wanted to use the Eye of Truth to carefully examine the ghost pattern male ant, hoping to see its weaknesses. This ghost strike male ant with all its legs broken is still alive. With layers of chains tied around its body. It lay in front of the small building of the military camp. Occupying a large space. The iron ropes not only tied it tightly. But also pulled out several chains around it. Firmly fixing it in the empty field of the military camp. But what surprised Serdak the most was that in just half a day. The ghost strike male ant's broken leg joints had actually grown transparent calves. And these calves were still growing rapidly. By night. 
These three pairs of legs were nearly three feet long. But the carapace on the surface was still translucent. And it was actually soft when poked with a wooden stick. Moreover, it had sentience. And it would not stop when it felt that a wooden stick was poked into it. Keep shrinking inside. The body of this ghost-striped male and is very complete and has not suffered any damage. Under Sir X true eyes, the huge magic pattern of life on his abdomen is exuding vitality. Some torches were lit again around the small building. Serdex stood on the bee-like abdomen of the ghost-marked male ant. He stretched out his hand and touched along the meridians of the magic pattern of life. He could feel the ghost-marked male ant. Breathing became intense. No matter where his hand touches, the belly of the ghost-striped male ant will tremble. The soldiers watching on the sidelines were talking a lot. They asked the ogre, What is the ghost-striped male ant doing at the moment? The ogre strode to Serdex's side, holding a slightly burnt roasted soldier ant leg in his hand. He nonchalantly slapped a big hand like a cattail leaf fan on the abdomen of the ghost-striped male ant. The ghost-striped male ant hissed again, and after two violent contractions of its abdomen, a stream of dark green sticky matter emerged from the end of its tail. Run out. Suddenly the entire empty field became smelly. The ogre turned around proudly and shouted to the onlookers. He is afraid! There was actually a cheer from the soldiers around him. Serdak found that his day was very fragmented, and he was always busy. Every night when night came, thinking about it carefully, he actually didn't do anything. He was not in a hurry to kill this ghost-striped male ant. He wanted to find its most fatal weakness, figure out a way to deal with it, and then teach it to other garrison soldiers. Adams led his cavalry and infantry soldiers to guard the city wall for a whole day. Andrew and Samira led their troops to climb the city wall. And then, they withdrew from the city wall. During the day, the ghost-striped red ants are extremely quiet. At night, those ghost-striped red ants did not invade the territory in large numbers, but stayed outside the range of bed crossbows and catapults. Another group of people stood around the empty field, curiously watching the ghost-striped male ant, worried that it would escape after regaining its strength. Every time a new leg grew at the joint of the leg, it would be cut off by the guarding warrior as long as it exceeded three feet. Amidst the painful wails, the ghost-striped male ant continued to linger in the empty space of the camp. Unfortunately, its size is too huge, and any weak spots on its body are covered by a thick layer of armor. Even giant crossbow arrows cannot penetrate that layer of armor. Serdak wanted to know more about this ghost-marked male ant. But his eye of truth couldn't see through such a huge body. He called Aphrodite, crossed the gate of the void and ran into the lava mine. He saw Aphrodite squatting next to a stone platform, holding a magic engraving pen in her hand and writing on a hard sheet. The hard armor is engraved with magic patterns. Seeing how attentive she was, Serdak was waiting aside. It wasn't until she stopped writing, then breathed out and dried the magic ink on the hard armor, that she lazily straightened up, raised her head and stared at Soldak raised the corners of her sexy mouth slightly, and asked, Looking for what's wrong with me? Aphrodite, can you hypnotize a ghost-striped male ant? Serdak asked boldly. Without thinking, Aphrodite replied, Of course. Then she explained to Serdak, It is a magical beast from H. L. The succubus can be considered to be affiliated with the high-level demons. It has little power to suppress these magical beasts. Why do you ask? Serdak directly said that he captured a male ant with ghost patterns in the morning. He wanted to know more about the male ant with ghost patterns. If he could hypnotize the male ant with ghost patterns. Serdak wanted to further dismember it. Hey, Serdak sighed. And then said with great regret, It's a pity that you are still in the desolate land. It would be better if you were in the Bellan Plain. We can still hypnotize it. While it while it's still alive. Dismember it and see where its weak points are. This matter is easy to handle. Aphrodite said to Serdak with a smile, then picked up the hard piece of armor on the stone platform, handed it to Serdak and said, Here you are. Serdak took over the hard armor, looked at the pattern of the magic circle on it, and asked Aphrodite with a puzzled look on his face, What is this? A magic scroll? A little bit different. But it doesn't matter. I just want to know if it works. Aphrodite said proudly, You only need to learn the spell to summon the summoning magic circle, and then summon me come to you. Then she added, You can't learn those complicated magic patterns. So I thought of a simpler way. As long as you can memorize the spell. I think it shouldn't be too difficult for you. Serdak put the hard armor into the magic belt bag and followed Aphrodite to learn the short spell. After stepping out of the void gate, Serdak took out the piece of hard armor from the bedroom and placed it in the living room. 
Then he calmed down and recited the spell that Aphrodite had just taught him several times in his mind. After touching the hard armor with his hands, he whispered in the bedroom, Call to arms. I saw the magic patterns on the dark red hard armor light up little by little. As if there was an extremely bright light source under the hard armor. Those light sources showed beams of light through the magic patterns. And these lights were connected together. Many incomprehensible runes are mapped out. So the summoning magic circle that made Serdak feel very familiar actually appeared out of thin air. But this time it was not under Serdak's feet. But spread outwards with the hard armor as the center. Occupying most of the area. Room. A gate to the void opened in front of Serdak. And Aphrodite walked out of the gate with a faint smile and curiosity. Nodding and lowering her head. Then he looked at Serdak's room and asked him. Is this where you live? I usually stay here for one night occasionally. Serdak didn't hide anything and answered truthfully. Where is the ghost striped male and you mentioned? Aphrodite asked impatiently. Serdak walked to the window and opened the curtains. Although it was night, the torches in the yard illuminated the empty space brightly. The huge ghost striped male ant was tied in the center of the empty space. And its body occasionally a violent tremor. As if struck by lightning. Chapter 777 Colonization Costume In the dark night, the succubus Aphrodite and Soldak walked out of the small building one after another. The cavalry patrolled back and forth along the perimeter of the military camp. Since there was a ghost striped male and tied to the small building, the guard here was even tighter. And the guard captain had to take his saber every once in a while to cut off the new growth of the ghost striped male ant. Of Outriggers. The team leader on duty at night saw Soldak walking out of the small building with a lady. And quickly saluted with the five cavalrymen in the team. Aphrodite looked around with some curiosity. Even though it was night, it seemed that the night could not block her sight. Serdak waved to them and said, I'm going to look for weaknesses in this big guy later, which may irritate it, in order to prevent it from going crazy and hurting people. You guys remember to stay away later. The captain of the cavalry battalion quickly saluted Soldak again. The cavalrymen of these cavalry battalions obediently ran to stand in a row next to the torch, holding spears in their hands, swords hanging on their waists, and shields behind their backs. They looked at Serdak curiously. Aphrodite stood quietly beside Serdak, her body becoming a little blurry in the darkness. Although the succubus's flesh wings were chopped off by her companions, causing her to lose most of her magic power, Aphrodite was still an outstanding black magician. She took advantage of the darkness and slowly walked to the ghost-striped male ant. The body of the ghost-striped male ant trembles instinctively. Its eyes are on both sides of its head, so its field of vision is very wide except for the blind spot directly behind the body. It cannot be seen. Even if it stands behind the ghost-striped male ant, it can't escape. Not out of its sight. It just feels like this ghost-striped male ant has become a lot slower. In Soldak's eyes, this ghost-striped male ant is about the size of a six-meter box truck. Maybe it's because of exhaustion of physical strength. Now it's he didn't even bother to move his head. The cavalry of that team stood beside the ghost-striped male ant. No one dared to be in front of the ghost-striped male ant. It always wants to spit out acid. Once it is sprayed by the acid, even if it is cleaned immediately, the body will not be spared. It will be burned into a large red area. Once it is not washed for a long time, the situation will become very serious and the skin will soon erode. Aphrodite walked over, looked up at the huge body of the ghost-striped male ant, and showed a confident expression to Serdak. In the shocked eyes of the cavalry nearby, Aphrodite stepped in front of the head of the ghost-striped male ant. The tip of the nearly one meter long giant pincer was at Aphrodite's feet. She stood in the mud wearing long leather boots. In the sour liquid, there is no fear of the ghost striped male ants. The ghost striped male ant finally had some reaction at this time. It wanted to open its giant pincers towards Aphrodite. Its dark red compound eyes were filled with a reflection of Aphrodite. Its body finally began to twist slowly. Moved. Trying to attack Aphrodite with its giant pincers. The cavalrymen nearby took out their shields one after another as if they were planning to wait for Aphrodite to be bitten by the ghost-marked male ant, and then rush forward to rescue the woman. Naturally, these cavalrymen greatly admired Aphrodite's courage. These cavalry all followed Serdak out of the deserted land. Many people knew that there was such a mysterious magician beside Serdak. Aphrodite stretched out her slightly gray arms, just before the ghost-striped male ants raised their heads and attacked her. An endless darkness suddenly appeared in her eyes, and a shadow slowly appeared under her feet. A huge dark red magic pattern formation appeared on the ground, like a huge spider web, containing countless mysterious runes. The ghost-striped male ant made a rapid hissing sound, and it shook its huge head 
as if it wanted to retreat. Several chains were tied to the body, nailing it firmly in place. Countless dark elements seemed to condense on top of Aphrodite's head, and then a huge black sphere emerged. As Aphrodite chanted the spell, the sphere became clearer in everyone's field of vision. Slowly, the sphere took on the shape of an eyeball. The membrane in front actually had an eyelid, and countless blood vessels and nerves surrounded it. The outside of the eyeball is tangled and intertwined. When the spell ended, the dark red magic pattern array at Aphrodite's feet erupted into a foot-high red light. A moment later, the magic circle suddenly disappeared. Aphrodite opened her hand slightly, and the one-meter diameter eyeball on her head slowly opened her eyes. As if the eyeball had some mysterious power, the ghost-striped male ant was instantly attracted to the eyeball, and its head slowly adjusted with the eyeball. A beam of gray light emitted from its eyeballs, and the ghost-striped male ant fell into a deep sleep with almost no ability to struggle. It's asleep. Even if you split its head open with an axe, you can't wake it up. Aphrodite took a few steps forward and stood in an oval-shaped compound eye that was larger than a dinner plate. After observing it carefully, he said to Soldak. After hearing what Aphrodite said, Serdak couldn't wait to ask the cavalry to bring the ladder over, put it beside the ghost-striped male ant, climbed up the ladder to the back of the ghost-striped male ant, and stepped on the hard bones on the back. Carapace, looking for its fatal weakness near the head of the ghost-striped male ant. The back of the ghost-striped male ant is covered with all kinds of sharp thorns. When Serdak steps on it, he needs to be particularly careful to avoid those sharp thorns. Serdak discovered that the carapace on the head of the ghost-striped male ant was extremely hard. Even if the blood-red crescent moon was injected with a trace of holy light, it could not cut through the hard skull. Although he had expected this, Serdak still took a breath when he saw the sharp blood-red crescent barely leaving any traces on the hard armor. He then searched for weak points at the joints between the skull and thorax of the ghost-marked male ant. Unfortunately, the locations he found were almost always hidden deep in the gaps of the exoskeleton. Aphrodite walked along the ghost-marked male ant's giant pincers to the skull, squatted down next to a huge armor piece on the back of the ghost-marked male ant's head, stretched out his hand to lift up the somewhat flimsy armor piece, and said to Sue Erdek said, this is the biggest weakness of this male ant. After saying that, she took out a dark dagger. The edge of the armor piece looks no different from the surroundings. But the dagger can cut along the edge of the armor piece without any hindrance. She lifted the armor plate and asked Soldak to look inside. Serdak took out the holy light torch from his magic pocket. The flame core of the holy light torch emitted a blazing white light. And the situation inside the armor plate was also clearly visible. There was a big hole inside and it could be seen from the inside. A light gray brain-like substance was clearly seen. This is the central brain of the ghost-striped soldier ant, Aphrodite introduced to Serdek. Even if you don't kill it now, it may not live long. Losing the control of the queen is like tearing up the contract unilaterally. Its brain is already dying. This is the curse of the god of magic. Aphrodite pulled out Serdek's saber, thrust it in, and stirred it casually. The ghost-striped male ant's body began to tremble convulsively. And soon, he was completely paralyzed in the field. The vitality of the ghost-striped male and its body weakened little by little. The thick armor covering the body, as the breath of life weakened, also began to tremble. Fall off. Aphrodite took out a handkerchief and wiped the sticky stuff off the blood-red crescent blade before inserting it back into the scabbard on Serdek's waist. Then he wiped his hands in disgust and stood on the hard head of the ghost-striped male ant. Although this thing can be regarded as a peak-level second-level H, L monster, it is extremely bulky and has no destructive attack methods. It is easy to deal with alone. As long as you are careful not to let them get into the ground and slip away. The main body it's easy to deal with. Aphrodite bent down to hold the ladder and said as she walked down. These ghost strike male ants always hang out among the ant colonies and seldom move alone. They often gather around the queen and are the closest guards around the ghost strike ant queen. Aphrodite continued. Usually there are only generals only when the ants and worker Ants are dealt with can we have a chance to hunt them? Serdak followed Aphrodite and listened quietly. Aphrodite shook her dark purple hair when the night wind blew, walked back to the small building, and sat down on the sofa in the dark living room. Soldak conveniently lit the candle on the table next to him. Aphrodite said, In the age, L world, the underground demons like to eat this kind of ghost-marked red ants. Just like the people here raise cattle and sheep, they often raise ghost-marked red ants in captivity. When devils hunt ghost-striped red ants, they try to hunt down those soldier ants that have little value in the ant colony. Worker ants are the builders of the red ant empire, 
and soldier ants are the guardians of the Red Ant Empire. The biggest mission of the Ghost Strike male ants is it means mating with the queen ant. And after mating, the queen will absorb the body essence of the male ant, so that more high-quality fraternal eggs can be born. Once a Ghost Strike male ant grows up, he will basically follow the queen throughout his life. They usually hide in the deepest part of the ant nest. You can see Ghost Strike male ants and queen ants outside the ant nest, which means that the ant nest has reached a cycle point where it can expand outwards. There are a huge number of ghost-striped red ants in the ant nest. When ants are born, because the resources around the ant nest cannot satisfy these ghost-striped red ants, they need to rapidly expand outwards and establish a new red ant empire, which leads to the formation of such an ant tide. This situation is very common in H. L. Serdak asked seriously, How did you defeat this beast tide? Aphrodite thought for a while and then said, The easiest way is to kill the queen ants. Once the queen ants die, they will become a piece of loose sand. Until a new queen ant takes over, they will have no clear purpose and will only rely on instinct to survive. Serdak said in surprise, Kill the queen ants? They are protected by the ghost-striped male, ants around the clock. How can we kill them? Aphrodite frowned and thought for a moment, squinted her eyes and said, New queens are born with wings, but these wings will fall off when the queen mates and lays eggs, before a new red ant empire is established. The queen ant will never easily mate with male ants to lay eggs in order to maintain her ability to fly. The worker ants and soldier ants in the ant colony are born for the red ant empire. They usually obey the queen's instructions unconditionally, but they cannot tolerate the queen not reproducing for a long time. Since they have opened up a new empire of red ants, and since they have chosen to go south through this canyon, once they are unable to attack the duodin canyon for a long time, the queen ants will definitely make a desperate move to press the ant army up. When there is nothing behind them, we will sneak attack the best time. Sardak wanted to take a closer look to see if the queen ants were really what Aphrodite said. A series of explosions sounded from the north wall. This was a catapult throwing gunpowder outside the city. Since Andrew, Samira, and Gulitem were all guarding the city wall, Sardak was not in a hurry to inspect the city wall at night. He currently needed to peel off the life magic pattern from the ghostly patterned male ant. The body of the ghost striped male ant is too large and its hard carapace is difficult to process, which takes a lot of time. During the night, several more corpses of giant ghost-patterned soldier ants were delivered to the military camp one after another. The soldiers responsible for transporting the giant ghost-patterned soldier ants reported to Soldak. The current battle situation on the city wall is relatively stable. Serdak did not rush to the city wall to check the results of the battle. Aphrodite waited until the last moment before stepping through the gate of the void and returning to Pussy Mountain. This ghost-patterned male and was also very troublesome to deal with. Serdak had to deal with it until dawn before completely peeling off the life magic pattern. This piece of life magic pattern is very large, and the cut leather spread on the ground is as big as a double bed. Even if the leather with the life magic pattern is refined, it is not suitable for making magic pattern colonization clothing. Just before dawn, a group of wounded soldiers were pulled out from the city wall. Serdak had just finished processing the magic pattern of life on the body of the ghost-marked male ant and was squatting on the back of the ghost-marked male ant to remove the fallen armor pieces. When he heard two veterans rushing into the camp carrying a stretcher, a veteran was lying on a stretcher covered in blood. His left leg was cut off half an inch above the knee. Although the wound on the broken leg was strangled by a rope, blood still continued to spurt out. The drama, the veteran howled heartbrokenly under the pain. The broken leg was held under the armpit by the veteran carrying the stretcher. Soldak quickly jumped off the back of the ghost-striped male ant, pointed to the door of the small building and motioned to the veterans carrying the stretcher to carry the injured into the clinic room of the small building. Blood flowed all the way and Serdak followed behind. The pain made the veteran's face look a little distorted. But Serdak still recognized him. He is a veteran of the cavalry battalion. He was promoted to a first-level warrior a few days ago and became the captain of the first squadron of the third squadron of the cavalry battalion. Entering the treatment room transformed from the guest room. Serdak lit the holy light torch and placed it beside the bed. A ball of holy light condensed in the palm of his hand fell on the wound of the veteran's broken leg. The wound was stained with some acid and rotten liquid. Judging from the stubble of the wound, it was obviously cut by giant red ant pliers. Soldak ordered two other veterans carrying a stretcher to tie him to the bed and then let the two veterans leave. He opened the sacrificial altar and then sacrificed the head of a moon blade fire wolf allowing the veteran to first have the divine blessing of the divine blessed body. Then he held the pale-colored broken leg in his hand, bowed his head, and thought for a while. 
thinking about how to reconnect the broken leg. The cross-section of the broken leg wound is a bit large. Even if the broken leg is resutured to the left leg, it will probably be difficult to heal. Soldak patted the veteran's cheek hard and asked him, Do you want to save your leg? The veteran endured the severe pain and nodded vigorously. Serdak directly pulled out a magic sealing box from his magic pocket, threw it on the floor with a bang, took out a power-type life magic pattern from it, shook it in front of the veteran, and said to him, Then we will if you make a bet. You will owe me a large amount of money whether it succeeds or not. And I estimate that you may have to pay it back for a long time. This time is considered a bold attempt by Soldak, because he knew that even with the blessing effect of the blessed body, it would be difficult to reattach the veteran's broken leg. He thought of the ritual of implanting the magic pattern into the colonization clothing. Although that ceremony allowed the colonization clothing to perfectly integrate with the body of the person being cast, it could also be regarded as another form of treatment. And it also required the use of the magic pattern of life as a treatment. Bridges, connecting broken legs together. The ceremony went on for nearly an hour. The veteran was tied to the hospital bed and woke up from the pain and then passed out. This repeated several times until someone finally lifted him off the hospital bed. Nika, who arrived at the small building in the morning, was responsible for bandaging the veteran's injured leg. Soldak had no time to deal with such a trivial matter. There were many injured soldiers outside waiting for his treatment. Before the veteran was carried out of the ward, Soldak asked him, Whether it will succeed or not depends on how well the recovery and integration are in the past three days. What is your name? My name is Hudson. Commander. The veteran said weakly. Chapter 778 Trend Recently something has spread rapidly in the military camp. Hudson, who broke a leg on the battlefield, was not only revived by Commander Soldak, but his broken left leg was also reattached. Not only that, veteran Hudson was able to get out of bed and walk with crutches in just three days. I heard that all this seems to be attributed to a magical magic pattern on the merit exchange list. And that magic pattern requires 30,000 merits to exchange. It ranks among the top three on the merit list of the military camp. Serdak commanded in order to save Hudson's left leg. The official allowed him to owe a huge debt. Now, Hudson is carrying a huge debt and can't wait to return to the battlefield to earn merit. The four ghost-striped ant queens in Duoden Canyon have joined forces to control the ant colonies in the canyon, allowing them to move forward and retreat freely. The tide-like ant colonies are becoming more and more impactful. However, because Serdak's holy light technique can quickly heal injured warriors, the warriors guarding the northern city wall performed very bravely and blocked hundreds of thousands of ant troops from the northern city wall. Within a week, the corpses of the ghost patterned worker ants were reduced to ashes outside the city. And the ghost patterned worker ants became the most basic warcraft materials, which were transported in batches by Serdak to Halansa City. He gave them to Halansa. The first order placed by the Seiching Leather Workshop was to customize 500 sets of full covered hardskin armor from the ancient Bolai horse. There are not many giant ghost pattern soldier ants in the ant colony. But these ghost pattern soldier ants have evolved into monsters with the strength of second level monsters. At the same time, you can find a coexistence of strength and tenacity from their legs. The life magic pattern is currently the most valuable ant clan. Recently, 12 ghost marked male ants have been hunted and killed one after another. Half of them were killed by explosives thrown by catapults. This kind of ghost marked male ants have extremely thick armor. Even if they are used magical crossbow arrows cannot penetrate their hard armor. Since Soldak found the armor piece under the connection between the back shoulder and the head of the ghost striped male ant, which can directly stab the brain of the ghost striped male ant, the threat of this giant red ant to the northern city wall has been greatly reduced. It's just that this kind of ghost marked male ant has nothing precious except that it contains a magic core in its body. The hard armor itself is too thick and is not suitable for making. But if it is used in siege equipment, it is still a good choice. As for the queen ant, only one has been successfully hunted so far. In addition to obtaining a piece of precious high-grade leather, she also obtained a high-level magic pattern of life. This magic pattern of life may be Serdak's biggest gain so far. The only regret is that the head was not left behind. Ten catapults take turns throwing explosives out of the city every day. But even this can't stop the ant colony's onslaught. The ant colony has begun to master the rhythm of the attack. After a wave of explosives explodes, they will launch a wave of rapid counterattacks. In just a few days, the green grass carpet outside the city had already turned into scorched earth, with the remains of red ant skin and limbs everywhere. The attack of the ant colony is becoming more and more fierce day by day, and the soldier ants responsible for the charge are becoming more and more crazy. 
Andrew and the Ogre Ghoulitem have been guarding the North Wall in recent days. And they even eat and sleep on the wall. Samira thought that the two of them were in better condition. At least they knew that after the fog dissipated in the early morning. They could return to the camp to take a bath. And then sleep until noon before returning to the city wall. In view of the fighting situation on the city wall. Adams and Gallatin would not walk down the city wall until after midnight in the past few days. The number of mercenaries guarding the city wall increased from 20 to 40. At this time, those who could stand at the top of the city were almost all veterans with rich combat experience. Except for first-level warriors. Even so, on the 11th night, when the ant swarm attacked the northern city wall, he saw that the city was crowded with black and dense ghost-patterned soldier ants. After repelling 17 waves of attacks by the ant swarm, Serdek decided to light the wall of fire under the city again. With a fire wall, the two captains took turns on the city wall again. During this period, he had been trying to find opportunities to assassinate the ant queen. But looking at the tidal swarm of ants under the city wall, even if he wanted to secretly sneak into the canyon below the city, it would be difficult to do so. Aphrodite used the summoning scroll in the past few days and came to the military camp in Doden Town at night to find a solution with Zerdak and others. This time the fire wall burned for a whole week, with the pressure of defending the city greatly reduced. A lot of achievements were accumulated. The leather armor made of the second level Warcraft leather stored in the station warehouse has been exchanged. Everyone is eager to improve. Own strength. In this case, the stronger the warrior's personal combat power, the more achievements he will obtain. In addition, Serdak also took out a large number of magic crystals as rewards. The mercenaries on the city wall have also gained a lot in the past few days. Every time they kill a ghostmarked soldier ant, they can take away the magic core inside the skull. Almost each of these mercenaries wears half a set of magic pattern structures, and they are extremely powerful. Almost all of them are in groups of three or four guarding the east and west sides of the north city wall, responsible for blocking the ghost-patterned red ants that climb up the city wall. In these 16 days, the mercenary team that gained the most harvested almost 90 magic cores and cut out 50 magic crystals and hundreds of magic crystal fragments. Such income was almost this is more than most mercenary groups earn in a year. All the mercenaries in the town were extremely jealous, and almost all of them wanted to squeeze onto the city wall to gain benefits. For this reason, the president of the mercenary union stayed at the door of the small building where the military camp was located every day. But in the end, he finally persuaded Sue. Erdak, the magicians in the mercenary team are not subject to quota restrictions. As a result, there would be almost seven or eight magicians standing on the arrow tower on the city wall every day. From time to time, they would throw fireballs at the bottom of the city wall. The fireballs would explode in the faces of the ghostly patterned soldier ants and they could still blow them off the city wall. What I have to say is that since these magicians have been stationed on the city wall in turns, the consumption of fire-scale bullets has been greatly reduced. The mercenaries directly took out the magic cores from the heads of the killed ghost-patterned worker ants, and everything else had to be handed over to the military camp. Therefore, the mercenaries could not enjoy the merit points in the military camp. During the battle, six more veterans with first-level strength were accidentally injured one after another. After owing a huge debt to the cavalry battalion, Serdak successively colonized the magic patterns of life for these veterans. Their wounds healed very quickly, and they returned to the battlefield. Several veterans with the blessing of the divine blessing body and the magic pattern of life of strength and tenacity broke out with powerful combat power in the battle of the city wall. They held the tower shield and carried a heavy weapon in the other hand. S. Flail. Almost always taking the lead and rushing to the front. Under the surge of power. These first-level veterans can almost smash the heads of ghostmarked soldier ants with flails and directly jam them on the wall stacks with tower shields, allowing the spearmen behind to complete the kill. Seeing the surge and strength of the veterans in the cavalry battalion, the soldiers in other combat regiments became very jealous. However, soldiers in other battle groups do not have such preferential treatment because they are second to troops, unless they have 30,000 merit points. Otherwise, Serdak will not implant magic pattern breeding equipment on their bodies. In just half a month, Gallatin finally collected 30,000 merit points. But half of these merit points belonged to Adams. Gallatin chose the card that had been enhanced by the Moon Blade Fire Wolf King. Explosive Life Magic Pattern. Gallatin and Adams were graduates of the Bena Advanced Knight Academy at the same time. And they had similar fighting styles before. But now their fighting styles have taken two completely different paths Adams, who has the magic pattern of life that enhances resilience. 
focuses more on the one-handed heavy sword and knight's heavy shield. While Gallatin, who has the magic pattern of life that enhances explosive power, is extremely he radically chose a double-edged sword. It is said that Gallatin could cut off the head of a ghostmarked soldier and with one full blow. Gallatin had no idea that just adding a simple magic pattern to his body would actually increase his combat effectiveness so much. I heard Baron Soldak say that if you can break through level 20 and become a second level powerhouse, you can implant a stronger magic pattern on your body. However, after becoming a second level powerhouse, you only have a few choices. There will be more. And when we have fighting spirit, we can also choose to have the inscription master draw the magic pattern structure on our body. Adam stood at the top of the city, holding up a shield with one hand to block a ghost pattern soldier ant. While it was opening its tentacles, he slashed it with his sword. Suddenly, a crack appeared in the ghost pattern soldier ant's tentacles. The ghost pattern soldier ant's body poked out from under the city wall. In severe pain, he wanted to spray acid and rot at Adams. But he didn't notice that a knight holding a double-edged sword came up beside him. And the big sword penetrated diagonally from below. He found the gap in the jaw of the skull of the ghost pattern soldier ant. And just pushed forward gently with both hands. And the head of the ghost pattern soldier ant immediately hung down. Gallatin was very proud. He stepped on the skull of the ghost-striped soldier ant, which was still flowing with brown blood, and said next to Adams, This is your idea. I think if this beast tide lasts for a long time, at some point, I might even mix up a set of magic patterns for myself. Recently, the wind circle on Samira's body is no longer a thin round line under her feet, but a wind wall with a spiral shape and constantly rotating around her lower body. The energy she feels is not pure, nor pure. It is not about being close to the water and nature that the elves are familiar with, but being able to feel the presence of wind in the breath of contact. After possessing the powerful life magic pattern of the great demon ape, Samira's journey to promotion in the first round was almost smooth. A few days ago, there was a second level strongman like Weilu guiding her, which actually made her take a completely different path. Elves are naturally good at bows and arrows, so it is not surprising that she has extremely high bow and arrow talents. But now she has begun to try to understand the wind element and can gather it around her body. This is a good start. To be promoted from a first level magician to a second level magician. Two conditions need to be met. The first point is to allow oneself to possess an elemental body. And the second point is that the elemental affinity can reach a certain height. And one can enter the elemental world for a short period of time and interact with the elements. The elemental creatures in the world have reached some kind of magical contract. Only in this way can one be promoted to a second-level magician. After becoming a second-level magician, one can be exposed to fourth-level magic. Many fourth-level magics belong to group magic. The magic pool in the magician's body has limited magic power. After possessing the elemental body, the magician's body can become a bridge to summon elemental contract partners. The elemental contract partners will draw magic power from the elemental world, inject it into the magician's body to assist the magician in casting level 4 magic. There are two conditions for a first-class warrior to be promoted to a second-class warrior. Many first-level warriors can always reach the peak of level 19 through hard training. However, if they want to break through level 20 and become a strong second-level warrior, two conditions must be met. The first point is that the warriors need to improve their perception. Fighters need to feel the chi that exists around them. Possessing fighting chi is one of the prerequisites for them to enter the second-level strong level. The second step is to rely on their own strong physique and strength to forcibly break through that level. She accepted Vera's guidance before. But now she seems to be on Vera's path again. However, Wary used the searing bow to sense the fire element in this world. But what Samira now senses is the wind element. Every arrow she shoots now carries a little bit of wind element. But just this little bit of wind element increases the arrow's range by 20%. Which is something Samira didn't expect. The current Samira is not lacking in strength and explosiveness. And her coordination and balance are also excellent. So as long as she exercises step by step, she has a great chance of breaking through to the second level. During her time stationed on the North City Wall, she also benefited a lot from her insights on the battlefield. She stood on the high archery tower of the city wall, looking down at the ghost marked red and climbing on the battlefield below her feet, and felt an indescribable feeling in her heart. The ogre Gulitum is standing next to the arrow tower. As long as he raises his head slightly, he can chat with Samira. Gulitum's second head has now completely grown out. His neck and most of his face are clearly visible. But his facial features are blurry, and there are no ears. Sometimes, Gulitum would reach out and touch his second head. There are some feelings. 
if the hand is too heavy. You can feel the pain. But it seems that it does not require any instructions from Gulitum. The head that currently does not seem to have a clear face can actually make evasive movements naturally. Obviously he has independent control. Gulitum is a little looking forward to it. But also a little entangled. He was worried that his other self would not be easy to get along with. Samira raised her hand and shot through the head of a soldier and who sneaked up the city wall in the distance. The fine steel arrow accurately penetrated one eye of the soldier ant, and the arrow tip came out of the other eye. The guard on the city wall the warrior immediately gave her a thumbs up. Although she couldn't remember how many ghost marked soldier ants she had killed in this way, she could feel that the magic patterns on her arms were already slightly hot. This meant that her right arm needed to rest. So she put down the hunting bow in her hand on the archery tower and asked Gulitum next to her. Gulitum, how long do you think this kind of life will continue? Gulitum was using his fingers thicker than a carrot to try to pull out the tender meat from the thigh of a ghost-striped male ant. His fingers were too thick, and the meat was still too tender. So he couldn't pull it out at all. He used another, he swung his mouth twice. But it was of no use. I had no choice but to patiently smash the hard carapace with an axe. Throw the tender and juicy leg meat into my mouth. And then ask vaguely, Isn't it good like this now? Samuel S. Mira needed it gently, she stretched her arms to relax the arm muscles as much as possible. Her eyes fell on the ghost-striped red ants outside the city. And she said with a worried look, I'm worried that the battle behind will become more and more difficult. Gulitum, however, did not have so many thoughts and comforted Samira. I heard that the leader has been discussing countermeasures these past two days. I think it won't be long before the war here will have a result. After hearing what Gulitum said, Samira felt much better. Her light red eyes fell on Gulitum's other head. And she said to him semi-ridiculously, Hey, if you wake up in the future, do you need to hit me twice when I say H, low to you? Probably not necessary. Gulitum hesitated and said, Chapter 779 I am a succubus. The flatbed truck parked precariously at the entrance of the courtyard. Several half-year-old aboriginal children quickly unloaded the bundles of arrows from the truck and piled them under the courtyard door. Nika carefully counted the number of arrows, and after confirming that they were correct, he gave each person 15 copper coins. The half-grown children politely put their right hands on their left shoulders and saluted to Nika very seriously. Okay, go and exchange some bread and wheat cakes to take home. Don't spend the extra money carelessly. Be sure to save it. I can exchange it for a standard dagger at the military camp. If you want it, you can save enough money first. Switch with me again. Nika, like a big sister, kept urging them. I know. The half-grown child agreed casually and immediately dispersed, ran into the alley and disappeared. After watching the half-grown children walk away, Nika breathed out softly. Today she received a message from her mother. Thinking about her mother's words, she couldn't calm down in her heart. He stood with his back against the courtyard gate for a long time, adjusted his mood, and then walked into the courtyard. Nick opened the door and walked into the front yard, and saw Cigna sitting in the shadow of the steps outside the small building, flipping through the magic notebook. Nick could see the shadow of Miss Celia. She just didn't like books a little bit. That woman in there. Signa looked at it very seriously. She seemed to feel Nika's gaze and looked up at Nika at the door of the courtyard. Then he pointed to the room, indicating that there were guests in the small building. Nika knew that Serdak was at the small building. Otherwise, she would still be helping out at the military camp as Serdak's assistant. It must be said that she is now very skilled in applying hemostatic bandages. However, since the fire broke out again outside the North City Wall, the number of wounded soldiers at the military camp has decreased significantly. Serdak did not need to stay at the military camp around the clock. He only needed to gather the wounded soldiers for treatment in the morning. Nika went to the military camp to help in the morning and continued to organize the children in the town to make arrows in the afternoon. She would distribute the arrows and feathers in advance and then collect the arrows at the center the next afternoon. Now these half-grown children among the aborigines in Duodan town can each make almost 40 or 50 arrows every day, and the quality seems to be very good. Nika felt that there might be help from some adults, but she still paid according to the pre-agreed remuneration. It is estimated that this money has gradually made many aboriginal families better off. Nika sat down next to Zigna, and neither of them said anything. Just sit quietly at the door together. Zerdak looked at the map on the wall and circled the town of Doden with charcoal. Selina stood behind him, with her hands folded in front of her chest, and looked at the position of the queen, ants marked with red dye on the map without saying a word. 
These queens are currently staying in the middle of the canyon. And they appear to be very cautious. Only at night. Surrounded by the guards. Would they get slightly closer to the north city wall? A large number of ghost marked red ants die every day in Duodan Canyon. But the number of ghost marked red ants on the north city wall still does not decrease. Selena's long, shiny hair was braided and hung softly behind her back. And she listened carefully to Soldak's explanation. Aphrodite was much more lazy. She almost occupied the entire couch by herself. She was lying on the sofa on her side, supporting her chin with one hand, slightly pursed her sexy lips, and stared at the map with great interest. The queen ants have very strong senses. It may be a bit difficult to avoid their senses. After finishing speaking, Serdek picked up the teacup on the table and took a sip of water. He was thinking about how to get around to the middle of the canyon and kill four ghost-striped ant queens in one fell swoop. Don't worry. Even if you are in danger, I can summon you back to the lava mine in Pudu Mountain in time. Aphrodite pretended to be indifferent. Serdek spread his hands and said helplessly, Well, what if you can bring me back safely? The entire assassination team has been wiped out. When the summoning time limit reaches the limit, I will not be alone. If you return to the ant colony, your death will probably be even worse. Selena pursed her lips slightly, thought for a moment and said, If you are traveling at night, you can take me with you. I have a way to avoid the queen's keen senses. Don't forget that I am favored by the goddess of darkness. Then at night, anyway, they only launch large-scale attacks at night. In the past few days, I feel that those ghost strike red ants are going to attack again. Soldak nodded immediately and said, He came here. That is I want Selena to help me. When the time comes, I will form an assassination group of 50 people. Soldak explained the battle plan he had formulated in the past few days. After Selena listened carefully to Serdak's battle plan, she hesitated and asked, If you remove all the main forces on the city wall, what will happen to the north wall? Serdak then explained, I'm going to take out all the fire scale bullets in the warehouse. Besides, there are a group of mercenaries and magicians on the north wall, with the addition of crossbows and rolling stones. It shouldn't be possible to block half the night. It's too difficult to calculate. Aphrodite sat up from the sofa and said to Serdek, Someone needs to stay on this side of the city wall to deal with the giant ghost pattern soldier ants. Then keep Adams and Gallatin. Soldak crossed out the names of the two people from the assassination team's list. Serdak, Selena and Aphrodite discussed in this small building until dark before finalizing the plan. Then he took out the life magic pattern of the ghost pattern and queen from the magic ceiling box and spread it on the coffee table in the living room. Serdak said to the succubus Aphrodite, This magic skin has a complete magic pattern of life. I tried it several times and felt that this magic pattern may be a magic pattern that enhances spiritual perception. Aphrodite D. Do you want to try this form of magic pattern? After being extracted, this life magic pattern is only one foot long and is in the shape of a T-shape. It is placed on the coffee table and looks very delicate under the flow of magic power. Aphrodite stretched out her hand to touch the magic skin. Feeling the magic power flowing on it, she flirted with Soldak with her charming eyes. Are you really willing to give it to me? This thing was peeled off from a level 4 monster. This will probably increase the success rate of our assassination operation. Soldak glanced at Selena and said, if Selena hadn't been unable to carry enough capacity, she wouldn't have taken advantage of you. Aphrodite held Soldek's arm, glanced at Selena seriously, snorted and said, Can't you be more tactful? Do you need to be so direct? In the living room of the small building, Aphrodite was lying on the single bed, looking at the magic pattern of life on the bedside. There were ten candles burning in the room, illuminating almost every corner, seeing Serdak habitually taking out the holy light torch from his magic belt bag. Aphrodite asked nervously. You won't use holy light on me. Will you? Are you questioning my expertise? Serdak said. But he still put the holy light torch into his magic pocket. Aphrodite glanced at Serdak, rolled around on the bed, and made a provocative gesture with a hum. I'm just reminding you. Don't forget my identity. I am a charm. Magic. Chapter 780 Spiritual Reproduction Equipment. Through the glass windows, you can see the sky-high flames coming out of the North City Wall and the ghost striped red, and crawling up the mountain walls on both sides of the city wall. Under the hail of arrows, the ghost patterned red ants that charged towards the city wall fell off the mountain wall one after another. The residents of Doden Town seem to have become accustomed to this kind of life. They can even go up to the roof calmly, set up a grill, and discuss the war situation in the past two days while eating dinner. They occasionally drink some wine, 
The room is very warmly decorated. Perhaps because the owner of this small building is the owner of a tailor shop. There is a fabric mosaic on the wall of the room, which shows the thorny mountains and vast grasslands of the white forest plain. With green, the grass paved with velvet is dotted with some white leek flowers. There are five supports on the ring-shaped copper chandelier on the roof. Each support can place a trident-style candlestick. The white candle on the candlestick is burning and continuously pours into the copper bowl at the base of the candlestick. Strings of wax dripped. There is also a light brown blanket on the floor. It can be seen that the owner of the tailor shop is a person who understands life and likes to be streamlined and frugal. The carpet is made of some scraps of blankets, but with his dexterous hands and fine cutting. The carpet is spliced. The fragment pattern is almost completely symmetrical. The magic pattern of life was placed on the small table beside the bed, and the single bed was also covered with thick cushions. Aphrodite was wearing a black robe, lying sideways on the bed, silently watching Serdak prepare the items needed for the sacrificial ceremony. Soldak brought in a small bed table from outside and placed four pottery bowls on it. As the faint blue flames rose, Soldak's chiseled face was also stained, applying a little blue. He placed the head of a moon blade fire wolf in the center of the altar, half kneeling in front of the altar, and recited the incantation devoutly. A large amount of spiritual power floated out from the blue flames. These specks of spiritual power seemed to be attracted by the vortex in the center of the square table, and slowly condensed into the double-faced four-armed demon statue in the room. The head of the statue was almost it reached the roof. Aphrodite looked at the demon statue in front of her and seemed a little unconfident. She looked at Soldak hesitantly and asked, Do you think I can do this kind of ritual? Although Sardak didn't know much about it, he had enough primary sacrifices. So he wanted to try something boldly. You'll know after you try it. Sardak smiled at Aphrodite and said, Then he held up the primary sacrifice in his hand and murmured in the back of his mind, Anu Anu Tasimat Tasimat, resisting the discomfort. Sardak handed the sacrifice to the face of God, seeing that the sacrifice floating in the air seemed to disappear out of thin air. Sardak then chose the God for Aphrodite. Blessings of God. A ray of light fell on Aphrodite. Soldak immediately asked her, Are you feeling uncomfortable? Aphrodite's eyes widened, and she saw that the skin on her arm seemed to be lighter in color. She smiled sweetly at Sardak and said, This feels really good. It looks like there's nothing wrong with it. Sardak breathed a sigh of relief, then took out the head of a moon blade fire wolf from the demon ceiling box and placed it in the center of the altar picked up the magic pattern of life and spread it on Aphrodite's arm. The front end of the T-shaped magic pattern formed a beautiful ring on Aphrodite's slender wrist. The remaining slender part extended back along her arm, all the way to her elbow. Serdak felt that this place was pretty good, but he still wanted to know what Aphrodite thought. So he asked, The shape of this magic pattern looks pretty good. It can be implanted in any part. Off, Rody. Where do you want the tattoo to be? Aphrodite leaned towards Serdak and used sharp black nails to cut open the black robe on her right arm, revealing the dark and round arm wrapped inside. She raised her arm with a magic pattern in front of Serdak's eyes, looked at Soldak with a flirtatious look, and asked with a lazy tone in his voice, What do you think is good? Serdak obviously couldn't stop a succubus from showing off his charm unintentionally. While he was still awake, he quickly avoided Aphrodite's eyes and said, The arm should be fine. Aphrodite stared at Soldak with a half-smile and paused before asking him. Want to see the wound on my back? Soldak didn't react at first. Well, what? Aphrodite narrowed her eyes and said boldly, The place where her wings were cut off. Hearing what she said, Serdak thought that Aphrodite's wings must have been cut off, leaving a wound on her back. If this life magic pattern was implanted into her back, it could just cover the scar on her back. Serdak asked Aphrodite somewhat unexpectedly. Aphrodite, do you have magic marks on your body? Yes. Those magic patterns on the night are the origin of my magic. The most complicated magic patterns are usually distributed on the wings. But it is a pity that they were cut off. Aphrodite glanced back, seeming to be nostalgic for her previous pair of wings. The succubus stood on the carpet with bare feet, turned her back to Serdek, and took off her black robe. The silk cloth was piled at the succubus' feet, revealing her beautiful and uneven body. Just seeing the succubus' back made Serdek's heart beat faster. His bulging breasts slender waist that couldn't be grasped, and peach-shaped plump buttocks. He was no longer the kind of young boy who didn't understand anything. He endured the strong shot that his heart was about to jump out of his throat, glanced at the double-faced four-armed demon statue and the life-magic pattern in his hand, 
and gave himself after some psychological hints and repeated reminders that he was performing a ritual of colonizing the demon pattern. The flame in his heart slowly extinguished, and he looked at the succubus back seriously. Serdak still remembered that when he first saw Aphrodite, there were two bulging wing roots on her back, which were bandaged with blood. Now the succubus's back is as flat as a human's, extending from the shoulder blades to the shoulder and neck. The two very clear dark purple scars look a bit shocking. Each scar is a foot long and looks symmetrical. At this time, Aphrodite's body lit up with orange flame-shaped patterns all over her body. Only the two scars on the back of her back did not have any flame-shaped patterns. And her dark purple skin also completely dimmed. Serdak mustered up the courage, tried his best to keep his hands from shaking, and spread the T-shaped magic pattern of life over the scar on one side. Unexpectedly, he could completely cover the scar on one side. Okay, let's go here. After the wings are broken, even the magic patterns are useless here. It would be good if new magic patterns can be implanted. Serdak motioned for Aphrodite to lie down on the bed. Then he covered her body with the sheet, exposing only a section of her lightly bony back. Looking at the two scars on Aphrodite's back, Serdak asked, Where are the two bones? It fell off when we were in the deserted land. Aphrodite replied calmly, not feeling disappointed at all. Serdak sacrificed a Warcraft head again, and then used the power of the altar to completely peel off the life magic pattern from the Warcraft leather and covered it bit by bit on the scar on Aphrodite's right shoulder. Watching those magic lines blend into Aphrodite's skin, the magic lines around Aphrodite's skin also lit up. The process of fusion of the magic patterns was somewhat beyond Serdak's expectations. Aphrodite's muscles all over her body were tense, as if she was suffering from some great pain. She raised her head as hard as she could and shouted, but no sound came out of her throat. After a while, a strong mental shock erupted from Aphrodite's body and spread around. All the glassware in the room, as well as the glass in the entire building, exploded instantly and shattered into countless powders. Serdak directly withstood the strong impact. He felt dizzy and his eyes went dark. It took him a few seconds to recover. At this time, I just felt a little sticky under my nose. I reached out and wiped it, but my hands were actually covered with blood. Aphrodite stood up wrapped in sheets and looked at Serdak quietly. The life magic pattern of the queen and seemed to be reborn on Aphrodite's back, and a transparent cicada-like shadow appeared behind her. The phantom of such a transparent cicada's wings looked extremely out of place to her. Serdak took out his handkerchief and wiped it around his mouth. After wiping away the blood, he asked Aphrodite, How do you feel? As you may have guessed, this life magic pattern mainly enhances mental power. In addition to these, it also has the ability just now, which can burn mental power to cause impact on the surroundings. Aphrodite gently touched the surroundings with one hand, rubbing his forehead. He explained to Soldak. Soldak held Aphrodite's shoulders, pushed her in front of the bronze mirror in the bathroom, asked her to turn her head sideways to look at the brand new magic pattern on her back, and said to her, It's very successful, isn't it? Selena stood at the door of the room holding a silver tray, pointed to the panicked neighbors outside, and said to Soldak, I think maybe I should explain to them that this was a complete accident. Serdak touched his forehead and said, Well, go and tell them that I will pay for all the losses caused this time. Serdak walked downstairs and found that the living room was also in a mess. And all the glassware had exploded. Signa and Nika were sitting in the restaurant. The dinner plate in front of them was broken. And the corn cream soup on the plate flowed all over the table. Nika was carefully collecting the porcelain fragments on the table and wiped the soup on the tablecloth with a rag. Dry the juice. However, Zygna was chewing a piece of whole wheat bread with her head down. There was a silver plate in front of her with some soup in it. When he saw Soldak coming downstairs, he pouted and complained to Soldak dissatisfied. Dak, you ruined our dinner. Well, I'm sorry. If you're not full, let Selena take you out to eat something. Soldak made an apologetic gesture to Zygna, then hurriedly walked out, walked through the courtyard gate and walked to the street. Many residents had gathered on the street, and everyone seemed very flustered. They gathered together and were talking about the strange incident that just happened. Who would have thought that one second it was fine? And the next second all the glassware in the house exploded in an instant. Serdak walked to the street corner. Someone immediately recognized his identity. The residents of the town had mixed praise and criticism for the commander of the garrison camp. However, he was recognized by the town residents as one of the top ten most untouchable people in Duodan town. Seeing him approaching, everyone shut up and all complaints stopped. Everyone, 
I am responsible for the accident that just happened. Saldak stood at the street corner and said to the surrounding residents. Then he ordered Nika who was following behind. As for the losses caused to everyone. Nika, you will make a statistics tomorrow and we will compensate you tomorrow. Got it. Nika replied softly. He stood there for a while, not daring to speak in front of him. So he took the war horse from the yard and rushed to the north wall to check the situation of the battle under the cover of night. There was no way anyone could live in the attic on the second floor tonight. A carriage drove Selena, Aphrodite, Cigna, and Nika to the military camp. As soon as Suldek left, these residents complained about the losses to their homes. On the north wall, the attack pace of the ant colony accelerated significantly. Almost all the ghost-marked red ants in the canyon gathered under the north wall. As a wall of fire was ignited under the city wall, almost all the 35-bed crossbows were aimed at the densely packed ghost-patterned red ants on the mountain walls on both sides. In addition to rounds of arrow rain, the guards on the city wall had begun to use fire skillfully. The scale bullets ignited flames on the mountain wall, stopping the attack of the ghost-marked red ants. After so many days of fighting, the fighting methods of the ghost-striped red ants have also made great progress. They also understand that the worker ants should hide behind the soldier ants to avoid the arrows fired from the city. They are now also the terminal of the queen's will and can complete the queen's orders without any need of life or death. As long as a fire scale bomb explodes on the mountain wall and the kerosene burns fiercely on the mountain wall, some fearless worker ants will immediately rush up from everywhere, first covering the burning kerosene with acid and then throw themselves into the flames. One ghost striped worker ant may be of no use, but dozens of ghost striped worker ants pounced on it at the same time, and together with the kerosene stained on the mountain wall, they fell into the pile of corpses at the foot of the mountain. The fire formed by the fire scale bullets on the mountain wall could no longer be maintained for long. Andrew and the ogres were guarding the east side of the city wall. Behind them were dozens of first turn cavalrymen from the cavalry battalion. Adams and Gallatin were guarding the west side of the city wall. Behind them, in addition to a group of cronies, there were four ten first-level mercenaries. As for the dozen or so archery towers distributed on the city wall, Samira and two hundred archers are distributed among them. Together with the one hundred consecutive crossbowmen from the city defense brigade, these people are already too many. The strongest combat force in Dan Town. If giant ghost-striped soldier ants rush along the mountain wall, Adams and Gulitam will rush up immediately to block them. Serdak climbed onto the city wall, and saw a group of city guards looking out through the wall of fire, with a look of horror on their faces. He walked over and looked out of the city following the gazes of the guards, reflecting the light of the fire. I saw thirty ghost-striped male ants at the front of the ant colony under the city wall. They were crowded together, like a row of behemoth siege beasts, slowly approaching the northern city wall, the bed crossbows on the city wall. The giant crossbow arrows fired could not penetrate the thick and hard armor of the ghost-striped male ants. They lined up in a row and did not stop even if they rushed to the fire wall. Their huge bodies were inserted into the fire wall and their heads were directly pressed against the city wall. The body of the ghost-striped male ant is like a bridge. Standing on the wall of fire, groups of ghost-striped worker ants endured the scorching heat waves, spitting acid at the side of the ghost-striped male ants in an attempt to extinguish the fire. Countless ghost-striped soldier ants followed the bridge built by the ghost-striped male ants, quickly crossed the fire wall climbed up the hot city wall, and came to cover up the killing. Chapter 781 The Goddess Arrives Ghost-patterned soldier ants climbed up the city wall like a tide, and the sudden wave caught the garrison guarding the city wall by surprise. The fire wall under the city wall did not go out. The flame surging out of the oil tank burned the ghost-striped male ants until they squeaked. The thirty ghost-striped male ants were like the most devout believers. Enduring the burning of the flames. Burning. The hard armor on their legs and abdomen had even ignited with flames. But they still lay motionless on the wall of fire. The superstar tentacles on their heads were deeply inserted into the city wall. And countless ghost-patterned soldier ants came from them. Stepped on his back. Andrew yelled. Get ready to roll the rocks! Almost at the same moment, a large number of ghost-patterned soldier ants had rushed up the city wall. Some rolling stones rolled down the city wall together with the ghost-patterned soldier ants. There were still a few rolling stones that had not had time to trigger the action. And the ghost-patterned soldier ants had already rushed up, threw down the city defense guard next to the rolling stone. Screens accompanied by blood splattering everywhere, without forming a chain of rolling stones. The damage to the ghost-patterned soldier ants on the city wall is very limited. 
a group of ghost pattern soldier ants rushed to the top of the North City Wall. The main combat forces on the North City Wall were located on both sides of the wall. Even the bed crossbows were placed at an angle facing the mountain walls on the east and west sides. Samira stood on the archery tower with one leg on the wall of the archery tower. The wind circle almost completely wrapped her lower body. Behind her suddenly appeared the shadow of a silver moon elf carrying a phantom bow. I heard that it was an elf. The windrunner of the clan is also the best archer of the elf clan. The shadow and Samira assumed the same posture, aiming their long bows at the ghost marked soldier ant on the north wall that had bitten a guard at the waist. The arrow wrapped in a white spiral wind belt flew out and shot through the ghost pattern. The skull of the soldier ant and the arrow could actually come out of the body and penetrated into the body of a ghost pattern soldier ant behind in the dark night. However, a ghost marked soldier ant had just been shot here and before Samira could take a breath, five ghost marked soldier ants immediately emerged from under the city wall. Samira could only take a deep breath and continued to draw the hunting bow in her hand. Gulitam swung the bone crushing stick in his hand rushed to the front to clear the way, and smashed the ghost pattern soldier ants on the city wall. Andrew followed behind him, holding a butcher's axe in his hand, his arms burning with flames, and beheaded these ghost pattern soldier ants one after another. However, they had just killed the ghost pattern soldier ants that rushed to the top of the city, and then crawled under the city. More soldier ants came up. In fact, they didn't rush very far. A giant ghost striped soldier ant poked its head out from under the city wall, and sprayed a mouthful of acid liquid at the north wall, immediately blocking Andrew and preventing him from rushing to the middle. Gilladam jumped over angrily, relying on his rough skin and thick flesh. Not afraid of the acid rot at all, he picked up the bone-crushing stick and smashed it on the claws of the ghost pattern soldier ant, and even used brute force to smash the giant ghost pattern soldier. Ejin took two steps back. Andrew's flaming axe then struck the giant ghostly pattern soldier ant's head. The originally sharp axe failed to split the soldier ant's skull directly this time. However, this Nanai warrior had already expected it. He turned his wrist with one hand and slashed at the same position of the ghost marked soldier ant. Still not cutting down the giant ghost pattern soldier ant, Andrew was lifted up by the giant ghost pattern soldier ant's giant pincers. He quickly adjusted his posture in midair and supported the giant ghost pattern soldier with one hand. On the hard armor of the ant with countless spikes, he stepped on the back of the giant ghost pattern soldier ant, half crouched on the back of the ghost pattern soldier ant, and the butcher's axe cut hard into the bones of the giant ghost pattern soldier ant's back neck. Seam. Adams and Gallatin on the west side of the city wall also led people to rush towards the middle section of the city wall. Serdak had just climbed onto the city wall when such a big change happened. He stood in the crowd of city defenders, and the halo of power suddenly lit up under his feet. Unexpectedly, Two city defenders in the crowd were bitten in two by the claws of the ghost pattern soldier ants. Serdak held up the dwarf chain shield. Since he had been blessed with two divine blessings, the blessed shield and the holy shield, Serdak's shield was like a magic shield coated with a layer of mithril. Conspicuous, a magic pattern formation appeared out of thin air in front of the blood red crescent moon in his hand. Ethral were tell. For magic pattern arrays overlapped in an orderly manner. The moment it struck down, the blood-red crescent moon erupted with a burst of incandescent thunder and lightning. This was not a zigzag arc of lightning, but a real burst of lightning. The three ghost pattern soldier ants in front of Serdak's body were instantly penetrated by a beam of lightning. Their bodies froze in place, and their whole bodies were filled with countless arcs of electricity. The city defense guards standing with Serdak thrust out their spears, and they knocked three ghost pattern soldier ants to the ground at the same time. A giant ghost pattern soldier ant climbed to the top of the city, and sprayed out a stream of thick acidic rot. The shield in Serdak's hand took the initiative to meet him. At the same time, a dozen more ghost pattern soldier ants emerged from behind the giant ghost pattern soldier ant. They climbed up to the top of the city, jumped over the wall, and rushed into the crowd of defenders. Seeing a large number of city defense guards being knocked down by ghost pattern soldier ants, the sound of chewing almost made the guards on the city wall collapse several times. Serdak fended off the giant ghost pattern soldier ants alone and was instantly surrounded, huddled together with the remaining city defenders. The situation on the northern city wall was precarious, with a large number of city defense troops scattered in the middle of the city wall. The moment the ghost pattern soldier ants rushed up, a group of city guards fell down in an instant, and killings and wails spread all over the middle of the northern city wall. No one in the cavalry battalion planned to abandon the northern city wall. Almost everyone followed Andrew, and charged tenaciously towards the middle of the city wall. 
The mercenaries who originally saw that the situation was not good and wanted to escape as soon as possible saw that the garrison refused to retreat. They all stopped and guarded the east and west sides of the city wall to prevent the ghost pattern soldier ants on the mountain wall from rushing up the city wall. The eight magicians in the mercenary group quickly boarded the arrow towers on the east and west sides. They held a wand in one hand and a fireball in the other. They kept throwing scorching fireballs towards the middle of the city wall. The top of his head exploded. But a large number of ghost pattern soldier ants continued to rush up the city wall. The giant ghost pattern soldier ant in front of him almost completely suppressed Soldek. Behind him, a large group of ordinary ghost pattern soldier ants rushed to the top of the city and killed the city guards around him one by one. Even with the aura of power and the holy seal of night, Serdak felt unable to turn the tide of the battle. At this moment, the catapults in the city once again threw a bunch of gunpowder, and the black bombs flew over Soldek's head. And then continuous explosions came from outside the city. The huge earthquake outside the city caused the entire city wall to shake violently. A dark tide continued to surge behind the city wall, conveying a strong sense. Serdak felt that all the ghost pattern soldier ants in front of him paused. When they started to move again, they suddenly lost their ability. Attack rhythm. They no longer operate together. Many ghost pattern soldier ants only tore the city guards in front of them into pieces and actually squatted on the top of the city to guard the flesh and chew the flesh. They had no desire to fight before, as if all their perceptions were blocked. Serdak looked back and saw Selena and Aphrodite, wearing long black dresses, walking up the city wall side by side. Behind Selena, a shadow of a dungeon patio appeared. Under the phantom light, there was a vague figure standing in the center of the patio, extending his hand to the sky. Even if it was a phantom, Serdak could still feel the powerful aura emanating from the phantom through the air. She is the goddess of darkness. Chapter 782 The Arrival of the Goddess 2 In this world, everything is immersed in darkness. It's like being in a heavy fog, unable to peek further. Everyone's field of vision is only a space less than 5 meters in diameter, and beyond that is endless darkness. The ghost-striped soldier ants became a little confused. They wanted to listen to the instructions from the ghost-striped ant queen. But after waiting for a long time, they got nothing. So the ghost-striped soldier ants on the battlefield became extremely disordered for a while and they rush to the city wall. The ghost-striped soldier ants fight out of instinct. They no longer consider leaving enough space for the soldier ants rushing up from behind, nor do they desperately open up the battle situation on the city wall. Almost all ghost-striped soldier ants are fighting for their own survival. For war. For the city defense defenders. They can finally take a breather. Selena and Aphrodite walked quickly behind Serdek, and a large group of city guards surrounded them. Serdek was at the front of the team, and the dwarf chain shield in his hand burst into pieces of sacred flames. Aphrodite quickly squeezed to the front of the crowd, and a bloody magic circle appeared under her feet again, like a spider web. It was covered with unfamiliar and incomprehensible magic patterns. As the spell sounded, a huge eyeball appeared again on top of Aphrodite's head. The eyeball carried an aura of evil and chaos. The moment he opened his eyes, his gaze fell on the giant ghost pattern soldier ant. The ghost pattern soldier and seemed to be under the spell of slowness. All its movements became extremely slow, as if all the joints in its body were rusty, and its huge tentacles stopped in front of Serdek. Soldek held up the dwarf chain shield and stepped away from the claws of the ghost pattern soldier ant. He looked at Aphrodite and saw that she nodded slightly to him. He couldn't help but jump to the length of the ghost pattern soldier ant. On the back covered with black spines, the blood red crescent pierced along the bone seam into the back skull of the giant ghost pattern soldier ant. The body of the giant ghost pattern soldier ant shook violently. Serdak took the opportunity to jump down from the top of the ghost pattern soldier ant, stood in front of Aphrodite and Selena, and asked softly, Why are you here? Selena closed her eyes, with no expression on her face, as if she was sleeping. But she held her hands in front of her chest, and there was a black ball of light condensed in her palms, which was the ball of darkness. The shadow behind her did not disappear for so long as if there was another person controlling her body. The ball of darkness emits black ripples in circles. It is this dark aura that blocks the perception of everyone around the city wall and the ants. Aphrodite glanced at Serdak and recited a spell. A five-pointed star pattern appeared under her feet, and a huge vampire bat fluttered its wings and flew out from the magic circle. Vampires embrace. A huge shadow fell on a ghost pattern soldier ant, immediately covering its head. A ball of brown blood spurted out from the ghost pattern soldier ant's head. The entire ghost pattern soldier ant looked like a soulless creature. 
the body quickly fell to the top of the city. Serdak knew that he couldn't say much at this time. So he rushed forward and rescued a city defense guard, who was caught by the ghost pattern soldier Ant's tentacles. At this time, Andrew and Gulitam had already rushed over with more than 20 first level veterans to suppress the offensive of the ghost pattern soldier ants. Some of the ghost pattern soldier ants that rushed to the city wall were quickly killed by these people. And some ghost pattern soldier ants that climbed the city wall behind were blown off the top of the city again by some fire scale bombs thrown out. 30 ghost striped male ants lying on the fire wall hissed in pain. Their bodies straddling the flames and twitching constantly. Their legs had been quickly scorched in the flames and the flames spread out from between the ghost-striped male ants. In the gap, it burned again. Without the queen's instructions, the ghost-striped soldier ants under the city stopped stepping on the bodies of the ghost-striped male ants, enduring the burning of the flames and continuing to attack the city. They stayed away from the thirty ghost-striped male ants one after another, seeing that the thick armor on their bodies exploded under the high temperature, and balls of flames burst out from inside. These ghost-striped soldier ants did not dare to cross the fire wall and rush to the city. On the head, the ghost-patterned soldier ants at the top of the city could not be replenished. Basically, one was killed and one was lost, and the situation was brought under control. The cavalry began to rescue the group of city guards on the city wall who were controlled by bed crossbows and pushed rolling stones, which were besieged by ghost-patterned soldier ants. Several ghost-patterned soldier ants climbed up the arrow tower, and were shot through the head mercilessly by Samira. Their bodies just stood leaning against the wall of the arrow tower. Serdak fought side by side with Gulitam and Andrew. And with the assistance of Aphrodite's control magic, he successively killed several giant ghost pattern soldier ants that were raging on the city. As the situation gradually stabilized, the feeling of being enveloped in darkness quickly receded. The shadow of the goddess trapped in the patio behind Selena disappeared into the darkness. And she fell asleep with a pale face. Serdak asked Aphrodite to stay behind the city to take care of Selena. Adams and Gallatin on the other side also rushed to the middle of the city. And everyone began to strangle the ghost pattern soldier ants on the city. Darkness recedes. The ghost striped soldier ants below the city once again felt the call of the queen. They became orderly again and prepared to cross the bridge built by the ghost striped male ants again. It's just that these male ants were completely burned. The group of ghost striped soldier ants rushing in front rushed into the flames without hesitation. Their bodies were instantly ignited. They just managed to climb a few steps on the city wall and twitched all over. He fell into the wall of fire below the city. Catapults have continued to throw more than 50 packets of explosives from the north city wall. The continuous explosions have made the canyon outside the city wall littered with corpses. Probably because the queen ants felt that this attack method had the possibility of success. They then organized 30 male ghost striped ants to advance together, dragging their bulky bodies through the fire wall and directly inserted the huge tentacles into the stone crevices of the city wall. The huge bodies were connected together again, forming a wide bridge. This time, the people guarding the city wall had already been prepared. Gulitam raised an oak barrel filled with kerosene and threw it directly from the city wall. The oak barrel shattered when it was thrown on the body of the ghost-marked male ant, and a flame suddenly burst out. More than 20 barrels of kerosene were thrown out one after another, and finally 30 male ghost-marked ants were completely ignited. Another sea of fire formed under the city. The battle on the northern city wall continued for another whole night. And the explosions finally calmed down before dawn. In the early morning, businessmen got out of their caravans on the edge of the town and squatted by a clear river to wash up. They watched helplessly as the city guards under the northern city wall cleaned up the mountains of loot. The corpses of those ghost-striped soldier ants were almost throw it casually next to the work shed, waiting for the leather craftsmen to dismember the body. The head will be sent to the military camp, and the body will be thrown into the pit to be softened. A group of mercenaries retreated from the city wall tiredly. Occasionally, they would bring some private possessions and sell them secretly to the merchants here. But there seemed to be nothing this time. They walked directly into the mercenary union along the long street of the town. Another team of mercenaries was already ready to go, and they greeted each other familiarly. Hey Jack, how was the harvest last night? It's okay, but I almost died on it. The mercenaries, who have just come down from the city wall, will not rest immediately. They all have to gather in the hall of the mercenary union, eating a simple breakfast and throwing all the gains from last night on the table. There is a dedicated person responsible for keeping accounts. Check with them and calculate how much each person can get at the end of the day. The leather workers in the mercenary union also began to use this break to check the magic patterns on the mercenaries one by one. The leather worker found that the leather armor on many mercenaries had some damage. 
and couldn't help but frown and said, What on earth did you go through last night? The structure is so badly worn. Mercenaries like to buy some single-piece magic pattern structures. Mainly four categories, helmets, breastplates, trousers, and boots. Basically, if you are lucky in the magic market, you can buy them. Generally speaking, single-piece elementary ones, the price of the magic pattern structure generally ranges from 10 magic crystals to 40 magic crystals. The quality of the materials used, the production process, the properties of the magic pattern, etc. determine the real price of the magic pattern structure. If you calculate it this way, the cheapest one costs 70 gold coins. Once the magic pattern structure is damaged, the maintenance cost will be extremely expensive. Such a battle would cause extensive damage to the leather armor, which would be a bit more than worth the loss. The leader of the mercenary captain held a silver spoon in his hand and scooped out a spoonful of milky white mushroom soup. The hand holding the spoon kept shaking. When he heard the leather worker's question, he could only smile slightly and said, I thought I was going to die on it. When the surroundings became quiet, he said proudly, But the ending is not bad. I finally climbed down alive. This kind of battle always makes people's blood boil. I need a glass of sweet milk to calm down the excitement. The person in charge of accounting picked up the list in his hand, shook it at everyone present and said, Look what we got last night. After speaking, he glanced at the list and said to the five people present, Oh, the harvest this time is really good. Sixteen magic cores. These words caused the mercenary teams and other booths to look at each other with suspicion. The leather worker looked at the mercenary team leader in surprise and asked in a low voice, You guys fought all night? The look in his eyes became very complicated, with envy and jealousy at the same time. When the morning fog cleared and the sun shone into the canyon, the people guarding the city realized that the ant colony in the canyon had retreated to the middle of the canyon again. The wall of fire under the city wall continued to burn, and billowing heat waves rolled up from below. The auxiliary soldiers of the city defense brigade were hoisting clean water from the bottom of the city to continuously wash the city wall. They not only had to wash away the sour and stinky rotten liquid, but also mainly cooled the city wall. Otherwise, the temperature on the city wall would almost drop. People are roasted until their flesh is dry. The mountain walls on both sides are full of mottled marks and thick smoke billows from the pile of corpses below the mountain wall. In addition to some corpses and broken limbs of ghost-marked red ants, there are also some arrows and supplies on the battlefield. Seeing the ants retreating, the guards on the top of the city quickly shot out ropes. In the gaps on both sides of the mountain wall that were not affected by the fire wall, city guards continue to slip down the city wall. They mainly collect the giant crossbows and ordinary arrows on the battlefield. Unfortunately, those rolling stones are now being burned in the wall of fire. Many of the stone balls have exploded into waste rocks under the high temperature. Don't even think about being able to escape from the fire at this time. Pull out. However, six large ghost strike male ants were destroyed by explosives. Although they are still surviving on the battlefield, they still cannot escape in the end. The guards climbed on their backs and used their long swords to trace the brains of the ghost strike male ants. The last weakness makes it easy to kill. Because of the obstruction of the fire wall, these ghost marked male ants could not drag them back to the North City Wall. The only thing they could take away was the fist sized magic core. The battlefield was covered with acid and stumps. The city guards collected the heads of some soldier ants, but they could still be taken back. The battle last night caused a lot of casualties. 42 city guards died on the city's head. The injured city defense guards were carried to the military camp. Later, during the treatment process, 14 more seriously injured city defense guards died one after another. There were more injured city defense guards. Soldek started busy treatment work from the morning. I didn't get much rest all night. And after a series of treatments, I inevitably felt a little top-heavy and dizzy. Nika went out early to deal with the trivial matter of the neighbor's broken glass and failed to become Soldak's assistant. Now Selena is at his side to help. Selena did not go to the free market to negotiate prices in the morning. The vendors habitually used the prices set the day before as a reference. And no one took the opportunity to disrupt the market. Zigna was lying in Samira's attic. There was only a single bed in the attic. Her petite body hugged the quilt and sat on the bed. She looked at the half-elf archer very curiously. Samira held a dagger in her hand and was carefully sharpening the arrow shaft. In her eyes, those arrows were all substandard. There was no good balance. And the arrow shaft was not smooth at all. She carefully repaired the arrows in the arrow pot with meticulous movements. The time has come to summon the succubus. And she has returned to the lava mines of Pussy Mountain. 
Andrew and Gulitam did not come down from the city. They had already lived on the city wall. Serdak stopped. His hands were stained with blood, washed them in the basin, and shouted in a hoarse voice, Your injury has been treated. Try not to touch the water when you go back. Next one inch. Selina held up the teacup and put it to his mouth, giving him a sip of water. Why did you and Aphrodite run to the north wall last night? Soldek suddenly remembered and asked Selina. Selina leaned against the door and watched a wounded man push open the door and walk into the small building. She pursed her lips and whispered, You just implanted such a magic pattern of life into Aphrodite. Why did you forget to ask her if she had any? What effect? Sernak asked in surprise. You mean her perception has expanded to the point where she can sense the battle situation on the northern city wall from the military camp? I don't know about this. You should ask her. Selina said as she walked towards the wounded soldier and began to check the wound. Sardak sat on the chair, quietly closing his eyes and resting, trying to regain some mental strength. Chapter 783 Assassination The ant colony retreated to the middle section of Doden Canyon, nearly five kilometers away from the northern city wall. The guards on the city wall finally breathed a sigh of relief. At least during the day, they could lean against the warm wall stacks and close their eyes to rest. While the city guards were cleaning the battlefield, they were transporting military supplies from the warehouse to the city wall, including arrows, kerosene, rolling stones, etc. Except for the city guards on duty on the city wall, everyone else walked down the city wall to rest. At the entrance of the small building where the military camp is located, Adams and Gallatin pushed open the wooden door and walked into the living room of the small building. They found that the room was full of people. Without exception, these knights were all officers of the cavalry battalion of Baron Soldak. Everyone, including several squadron leaders, were present. Andrew, Samira, Gulitam, Selina, and a woman in black robe with a mithril mask on her face stood behind Serdak. Serdak was wearing casual clothes and looked up at the wall. The map of Duodan Canyon is telling everyone the approximate distribution of ant colonies in detail. Andrew, Samira, and Gulitam, as followers of Serdak, have firm and fiery eyes. Having experienced more than a dozen battles on the city wall these days, Adams and Gallatin were already very familiar with them, and they also knew the fighting styles of these three people very well. When Adams met Aphrodite for the first time, he saw a mithril mask on her face and a black robe and guessed that she might be a mage. Selina actually stood beside her, which surprised Adam slightly, as the person in charge of managing logistics supplies at the military camp. Adams was no stranger to her. His first impression was that she was a beautiful and shrewd woman. Regarding Selina, Adams also heard some rumors in the military camp. He heard that she was the lover of Commander Serdek, in addition to being in charge of logistics supplies for Serdek. She was also a very mysterious person. Black magician. There are a large number of black magicians in many places in the Green Empire. And even necromancers and wizards live in some places. Although the Magic Union regards these people as heretics, the Magic Union has even set up a law enforcement group to investigate and eliminate them. These magical heretics. But in fact, as long as these people have not done anything outrageous and are hiding in the territories of noble lords, the law enforcement team of the Magic Union will have no way of investigating them. This kind of thing is not uncommon in the Green Empire. So Adams didn't pay much attention to it. Now these people are all gathered together. Adams and Gallatin looked at each other, suppressing the doubts in their hearts. Some things are not so clear, which is a good thing for them. Adams just didn't expect that Baron Serdak's last trump card was actually two women. Judging from their delicate bodies, they obviously had some attainments in magic. The six squadron leaders in the cavalry battalion stood on one side of the room wall, staring at the map silently. Everyone had a serious look on their face. And it was obvious that Serdak was introducing them to the situation in the canyon. Seeing Adams and Gallatin walking in, Soldak quickly motioned for them to come closer. He held a riding crop in his hand and said to the two of them, You came just in time, and the next part happens to be yours. I'll try to keep it simple. We have a plan to sneak attack on the back of the ant colony. This time we plan to sneak to the middle of the canyon to kill their queen ants and take some initiative in the War of Beast Tides in Doden Canyon pointing to the long and narrow Doden on the map canyon. Serdak said, as he stood by the wall, Adams thought he heard wrongly, and didn't pay much attention at first. It took him five seconds to react and asked Soldek, Commander, do you want to organize people to go to the back of the ant colony to assassinate the queen? That's almost it. But this time, the personnel have been decided. You stay in Doden town. 
Serdak said to the two of them. You two need to continue to hold on to the city wall until we come back. During this period, you must stay on the wall, because I don't have anyone left to replace you. Adams opened his mouth, but no words came out. His eyes fell on the map filled with thin lines on the wall. He didn't expect that Serdak would have such a bold plan and actually wanted to lead a group of people to assassinate the Ant Queen. Sir Commander, in fact, we have been guarding the city wall all this time, consuming their troops like this. If we hold on for a while, they will naturally disperse. It is too risky for you to do this. Adams felt that since the north wall could block the ants, there is really no need to venture out of the city. Soldak shook his head firmly. The map that Marquis Luther gave him originally included the large area of Invercargill Forest, the two mines there, and the rich ironwood resources in the forest. These were all he needs to at least control the Warcraft Forest around Doden Canyon. Now that the ant colony has almost taken over the entire Invercargill Forest, Soldak wants to at least take back that land from them. Soldak used his riding crop to draw a large circle on the vast grassland in the southern part of Doden Town, and said to Adams, I don't want my army to be restrained in this canyon by this group of red ants. The news came from the logistics supply group yesterday that some ghost-striped red ants have climbed over the thorny mountains and sneaked into the place behind us. Although we don't know where they got in from now. In the coming time, we may have to search the grassland behind us on a large scale to clean up the ghost-striped red ants in the occupied area. Adams wanted to say that every small town in the northern area of Wilk City had a Lutheran army garrison. These ghosts marked red ants that leaked and could not gather into a group and would soon be hunted down by the adventure group. Soldek walked up to Adams, reached out and patted Adams on the shoulder and said, I'll leave you a lot of fire scale bombs and explosives. Any questions? Seeing Soldak's resolute attitude, Adams immediately gave Soldak a military salute and said firmly, I will go all out. Very good. Adams and Gallatin walked out of the small building and ran non-stop to the City Defense Brigade Supply Warehouse to arrange for tonight's defense supplies. By this time, the sun had already set behind the mountains of the Thorn Mountains. Although the sky has not yet darkened safely, the ant colonies hiding in the Duodin Canyon have begun to move around again. A squadron leader knocked on the door and came in, reporting to Soldak. Sir Commander, all the first-level soldiers of the Cavalry Battalion are here. Serdak nodded and walked out of the small building first. These veterans in the cavalry camp were all direct descendants who followed him from the deserted land. He stood on the steps of the small building, holding one hand on the railing, and said loudly to the cavalry in front of him, Everyone follow me out this time. I don't know how many people will come back alive. I don't have many benefits for going. Tell me, the rewards at the top of the merit exchange list will no longer be a luxury for you. Is anyone willing to fight with me? The cavalrymen stood in front of the small building and looked at each other. No one spoke, and the scene became very quiet. Andrew stared at the veterans in front of him and couldn't help but want to yell. You eggless cowards should hide in the mountains in the desert and eat dirt. Before he could speak, the squad leader named Hudson in the cavalry battalion raised his hand and asked weakly, Commander, if I die, can I keep the merit points I saved? Exchange it for gold coins for my family? Serdak said to him seriously. Of course. The Warcraft materials we harvested here should have arrived in Wall Village and the achievements of every warrior will be fulfilled. I remember you. You exchanged a piece of Warcraft for your leg injury. Pattern. Yes. Commander. Hudson shouted loudly. Then I am willing to join. I'm willing to join too. And I. Almost all the veterans in the cavalry battalion stood up. This time, Serdak selected the veterans who had been implanted with magic pattern breeding equipment because their combat effectiveness was obviously higher than others. Serdak together with eight squadron leaders, selected a total of 20 cavalry to join the assassination plan. Other cavalrymen also had to take turns guarding the northern city wall. Next, Serdak sacrificed 630 heads of ghost pattern soldier ants, allowing all members of the assassination team to possess the blessed body, blessed shield, overlord body, and sacred shield. For the blessing of the sea god, the first two primary blessings only consumed 30 primary sacrifices and the latter high-level blessing almost swallowed up all of Serdek's inventory in recent days. Samira, Aphrodite, Andrew, and others gained additional insight. The sacrificial ceremony lasted until dusk. When a group of people walked out of the small building, Serdek felt that it was really necessary to build an altar in the military camp. Samira stood on the control platform of a bed crossbow on the west side of the North City Wall. There was a giant crossbow arrow 
with a rope tied to its tail in the bed crossbow arrow slot. The half-elf archer aimed at a raised rock at the bottom of the mountain wall 200 meters away and shot the crossbow with a rope. The crossbow arrow with the long rope was firmly nailed to the raised rock. The rope was gradually tightened. Samira took the lead in taking out a hook and hanging it on the rope. She stepped on the wall and jumped, and her dexterous body slid down the rope. In the dusk, only a faint figure can be seen crossing the shadow of the mountain wall, sliding in front of the boulder. Samira jumped up, like an agile female leopard leaping into the grass. After a few steps, she stood on the boulder and made all normal gestures to Serdek. Serdek stood at the head of the city. Although the ant colonies in the middle of the canyon had gathered under the northern city wall, the soldier ants at the front were still at least one kilometer away. A group of veterans from the cavalry battalion slid down from the top of the city one by one under the extremely respectful eyes of the city defenders. They skillfully occupied the favorable terrain beside the boulders and hid their bodies in the grass. The setting sun has completely set, and the surrounding light has quickly dimmed. Selena lay on Soldek's back, holding her arms tightly around his neck, feeling the excitement of the zipline descent, the whistling of the wind in her ears, and the excitement filled her body. There was an inexplicable numbness. Smelling the familiar scent of Soldak brought a blush to Selena's fair face. Serdak landed firmly on the grass. Selena jumped off Soldak's back. She squatted in the grass next to Soldak, trying to calm down the surging emotions in her body. She was a little ashamed. She didn't expect that when she was nervous, she would get so exciting. Aphrodite followed Serdak and landed steadily on the grass. Samira with clairvoyance can see in the dark. She walked in front, quietly shot a ghost-striped soldier ant that was wandering around and led the team successfully into the dense forest at the foot of the mountain not far away. At this time, a large number of ant colonies have gathered under the North City Wall, and many ghost-striped worker ants have penetrated into the woods. Selena knelt on the forest clearing. She clasped her hands and prayed in a low voice. The magic pattern array under her feet was actually black. As the prayer she recited ended, a beam of darkness enveloped Selena's body. A powerful dark element poured into Selena's body. When she opened her eyes, they became extremely dark. She stood up slowly, stretched out her hands, and stared at the back of her hands, as if feeling her body. Her eyes became extremely cold and emotionless. Looking at the surrounding trees, when his eyes fell on Serdek, there was a slight fluctuation in his eyes. Then he closed his eyes again, lowered his head, clasped his hands in front of his chest, and the phantom of the patio and the goddess of darkness appeared again, appear behind Selena. The dark tide surged out from all around, like a thick black mist surrounding the team. Samira and Aphrodite were at the front of the team. Soldak and Selena were in the middle, and Andrew and Gulitam were at the back of the team. There were a total of 26 people in this team. People. Almost every cavalryman wears thick heavy armor. The group of people walked forward for a while, and encountered pairs of ghost-striped worker ants running into the mist along the way. Even if they took a detour, they would avoid the group. These ghost-striped red, and scrawl forward on the ground. Their bodies are dark red and very inconspicuous in the dark, and their abdomens are bulging like ticks. After walking like this for more than half an hour, the northern city wall in Duodan Canyon almost disappeared from sight, and the number of ghost striped red ants gradually decreased. Hidden in the darkness, Samira carefully searched for the ghost striped ant queen in the canyon. There was a rumbling sound in the distance. Samira retreated into the black mist alertly, ran to Serdak, pointed to the direction of the rumbling sound and said to Serdak, They are over there. From now on, I will be surrounded by ghost strike male ants, and I won't be able to see how many of them there are. One, I can feel it. Aphrodite standing next to Samira said, They seem to have discovered something and are coming towards us. Serdak did not expect to encounter a queen ant so soon, and immediately led the team towards the dead forest on the right side of the canyon. In the desolate and scorched land, a path continues towards the dead woods. Chapter 780 for the Second Queen Ant The Queen Ant becomes a member of the Queen Ant Alliance. They have a very clear division of labor. They are the ghost-striped red ants who are responsible for controlling this area and strive to drive all the red ants to the north wall to join the battle. The Queen Ants have stayed in this canyon long enough and have swallowed all the edible things in the canyon. If they stay any longer, their subordinates will only be able to chew wood. The Queen Ants need to climb over that wall as soon as possible. The area overseen by this queen ant is a little different tonight. In the past, this area was a long and narrow passage, and it could also be in contact with the senses of other queens. In this narrow area, 
a blank area suddenly appeared, and all sensory explorations were blocked, like a stone sinking into the sea. There was no response. This queen ant immediately had a sense of crisis. But when the problem appeared here, she could not warn other queen ants. This abnormality made it very uncomfortable. And it couldn't wait to run over and take a look. It's a pity that it was at night, and you couldn't see anything from a little further away. So a group of ghost-striped male ants rushed into the black mist, surrounded by a queen ant. The darkness has blocked all the senses of the ghost-striped red ants. They were originally most sensitive to smells and light, but now they have nothing. Originally, this queen ant was in contact with nearly 80 ghost-striped male ants at the same time. When she broke into the darkness, she suddenly felt that the number of ghost-striped male ants around her decreased sharply, and all of them lost contact. It began to panic, letting all the ghost-striped male ants that could still contact it tightly surround it. It wants to retreat and leave this endless darkness. Unfortunately, in the darkness, this area is controlled by Selena. No matter where they go, darkness follows them. And there is also a little bit of misdirection in perception. So they can only circle in the area near the edge of the woods. At the same time, the lost ghost mark male ants in the darkness are not so lucky. They almost always fight alone in areas without any sense. These ghost strike male ants rushed into the darkness. As if someone had blindfolded their eyes, covered their ears, and pinched their noses. The cavalry must get very close before the ghost strike male ants will notice the enemy in front of them. Aphrodite, hidden in the darkness, is almost invincible when facing these lonely ghost mark male ants. There is an eyeball about one meter in diameter on her head, and there is an orange red magic pattern array under her feet. Whichever ghost strike male ant the eyeballs fixate on, that ghost strike male ant will fall into a deep sleep. This is purely a battle of mental strength. Aphrodite is also blessed by the magic pattern of life peeled off from the queen ant so that she can easily put a ghost pattern male and into a deep sleep. The veterans of the cavalry battalion wore heavy full coverage armor. They had to climb on the backs of ghost pattern male and more than three meters high, pull out the long swords at their waists, and cut off the hard armor on the back of the neck, and then insert the long swords into it to stir up the ants. The brain inside was shattered, and the ghost striped male and trembled all over and died in his sleep. Wherever the black mist swept, the ghost marked male ants there died one after another. The battle progressed very quickly, since the wounds were hidden on the backs of the necks. These dead ghost striped male ants were completely intact. If you didn't look carefully, you wouldn't be able to find any scars. The queen ant was very panicked, surrounded by more than 20 ghost striped male ants. She kept circling in the black mist. She saw many dead ghost striped male ants along the way. The ghost striped male ants of the bodyguard group disappeared one by one, and the queen ant could not find a way out. The fear before death made it very irritable and kept sending out similar mental shocks. Unfortunately, under the black mist, under this condition, mental power cannot be transmitted very far at all. It spread its six-winged wings and wanted to fly high to escape the black mist. Symbols lit up on the huge abdomen, and these lines flashed with dim light. The transparent wings vibrated violently, pulling the extremely fat body upwards. It hopes that those allies can sense the abnormality here. The ghost striped male ants on the ground saw the queen rising continuously. All the ghost striped male ants tried hard to lift their bodies, trying to retain the queen in the air. The body of the queen ant is hunched, like a curled fish hook. Clear magic patterns appeared all over its body, and an arrow silently cut through the black mist, passing through its transparent wings. Caw. It was a crisp sound that probably only it could hear. Thumb-sized holes appeared on its wings. It realized the danger and vibrated its wings more violently. Unfortunately, its body is too fat and it has absorbed too many nutrients recently. A crack appeared, and as the wings vibrated, the crack spread. Kakacha. Several more arrows wrapped in the wind element accurately shot through the transparent wings. The queen ant didn't even know where the arrows came from. Each wing was damaged, and its body fell downwards involuntarily. With ghost patterns, the male ants opened their giant pincers on their heads to greet the queen. But he found a figure flashing through the black mist. The two ghost striped male ants hissed angrily. They abandoned the queen and desperately chased the figure in the black mist. The ghost striped male ants disappeared into the black mist and were no longer visible in the blink of an eye. The queen ant could not maintain its flying state and landed on the back of a ghost striped male ant. The other ghost striped male ants seemed to be going crazy and moved towards the queen. They were dominated by their body instincts and wanted to fight with this male ant. Only queens that are unable to continue flying mate. The queen ant wanted to appease the emotions of these ghost-striped male ants. 
but only the ghost striped male ants beneath her gave some feedback. The queen ant urged the ghost striped male ants under her to run, trying to get rid of these ghost striped male ants that were in a state of frenzy. At this moment, it saw a group of human knights standing in front of it through the dark mist. The ghost striped queen ant lets out a shrill scream. Selena's hands were almost as pale as paper, and she was half kneeling on the grass, her hands still clasped in front of her chest in a prayer posture. The huge magic pattern emerging from under her body was boundless. This magic pattern seemed to be supporting the entire dark mist. And the phantom of the goddess behind her had become very blurry. Countless dark auras were poured into her body. But she still could not replenish her own consumption of dark elements. Serdak could feel that Selena's life breath was slowly weakening. The trace of spiritual thought that came to Selena's body wanted to leave Selena's body. But it was imprisoned by the consciousness in the body. Maintaining the dark fog around her body. Serdak led the veterans to kill two more ghost-marked male ants. He was going to deal with all the male ants before dealing with the queen. But when I returned, I found that Selena's condition seemed to suddenly become very bad. Serdak quickly asked Aphrodite beside him. What's wrong with her? Aphrodite moved closer to Selena, pulled open her sleeves, and saw that the blood vessels all over her body had turned as black as ink. So she frowned and said to Soldak, Maybe her body can't tolerate so much dark breath, but she plans to forcibly maintain the dark fog. And the dark breath is burning her body. And she may not be able to sustain it for too long if this continues. Soldak rushed to Selena. Reached out and gently patted Selena's cheek. Calling to her softly. Selena! Wake up quickly! Wake up quickly! Selena, who was praying, reluctantly opened her eyes and said extremely weakly, Get rid of the queen ant quickly! I won't be able to hold on for much longer. Soldak only felt anger burning throughout his body. What a stupid woman! He picked up the shield, and the dwarf chain shield bloomed with divine brilliance. He took out the holy light torch from the magic belt bag with his other hand, and shouted to Andrew and Gulitam behind him. Follow me! Let's go kill that queen ant! Serdak stepped on the aura of power and rushed to the front, followed closely by Andrew and Gulitam with two teams of veterans, fighting out of the darkness. The ghost-striped queen ant lay on the back of a ghost-striped male ant. Sensing danger, it let out a scream but saw Serdak raise the shield in his hand. A holy shield appeared in front of Soldak, completely cancelling out the mental impact. The huge ghost pattern male and under the queen opened its giant pincers and bit towards Serdak. Aphrodite, who followed closely behind, recited a series of incantations, stretched out her hands forward, and the ghost strike male ant was directly imprisoned in place. Serdak kicked the ground hard, passed through the gap between the giant pincers, swung his shield, and hit the forehead of the ghost-marked male ant. With this force, his body rose up again, and the holy light torch in his hand suddenly a dazzling holy light burst out. The ghost-striped ant queen faced the holy light in front of her. Black smoke emitted from her body, and she let out a hysterical scream. The queen ant's usual mental shock could not hurt Serdek, and it was unable to fly. The legs of its body had completely degraded, and it was unable to parry the holy light torch thrown at it by Serdek. The torch wrapped in a ball of holy light burst out with intense light and hit the head of the ghost-striped ant queen hard. The queen's wrinkled head suddenly sunk. The ghost-striped male ant that caught up from behind pounced on Serdek. But Gulitam who caught up from behind smashed a giant pincer with a bone-crushing stick. Andrew's hands were burning with flames. And the butcher in his hand struck the queen ant's head hard, causing the queen's head to be dismembered immediately. The ghost-marked male ants behind them desperately surrounded Serdek, hissing continuously from their mouths. Serdak quickly raised his shield and blocked the attack of a giant pincer. His body seemed to be broken. It fell backwards, like a kite on a string. A group of veterans of the cavalry battalion also arrived one after another, fighting with these giant ghost-striped male ants. After losing the queen, the last eleven ghost-striped male ants went completely berserk. Chapter 785 Night Battle in the Canyon In the darkness, several veterans of the cavalry battalion who were running behind came out of the fog and slashed at the side legs of the ghost-marked male ant with their cold glow knight swords. The joints of the legs were covered with thorns, and not so easy to cut off. However, these veterans all have first-level strength, and they also know that the armor of the ghost-striped male ants is extremely thick, and the spines at the joints are very hard. When they pounce on them, they release their own momentum behind them. Almost all of them are phantoms of crusader swordsmen holding big swords. These veterans have basically learned basic swordsmanship, when they served in the military camp. Moreover, the province of Bina is also the hometown of swordsmen. They are very familiar with fighting. Most of his insights are the routines of heavy swordsmen, 
so the power of his insights is also that of a crusader swordsman covered in silver armor. The power of these veterans can improve their long sword proficiency in a short time. With one sword strike, it is obvious that the leg joints of the ghost mark male ants are covered with bone spurs. But the long sword in their hands is like a fish swimming in the water. Avoid the bone spurs and chop hard at the weakest part of the hard armor. Although it is impossible to cut off the legs of the ghost mark male ant with a single sword, it can still make a cut and sever the muscles inside. The crazy ghost strike male ants twisted their bodies and bit at these veterans. When it feels like it's about to bite them, the veterans will pounce into the thick fog and disappear in the blink of an eye. When Serdak fell to the ground, he fell badly. When he got up from the ground, the holy light torch in his hand pushed back the surrounding fog, and the dwarf chain shield hanging on his other arm also the light of the sacred shield lit up, and he was like a channel lighthouse in the fog. The ghost strike male ants dragged their heavy bodies and rushed toward him like crazy. The two huge tentacles on the head are fully opened because their bodies are too heavy. Once one of the legs is injured, the huge body will be dragged on the grass. The male ants are extremely powerful, and their rough abdomens plow a deep furrow into the ground. The grass roots in the soil exude a rotten smell. Andrew's arms were burning with blazing flames. The butcher's battle axe in his hand was very sharp. He struck the thick armor of the ghost strike male ant. Almost every axe hit could cut into the flesh layer. The ghost striked male ant was not afraid of the pain at all. The pincers on the head clamped up against Andrew. Andrew didn't even want to hide, but a glaring face appeared behind him. The male ant with ghost stripes in front of Andrew was startled. Andrew took the opportunity to jump up, stepped on one of the tentacles with his left foot, and flew into the air. He stood up and struck the forehead of the ghost-marked male ant with a sharp axe in his hand, immediately creating a deep crack in the dark red hind carapace. And the butcher's axe was deeply embedded in the bone seam. The ghost striped male ant shook his head violently trying to throw away Andrew who was hanging on his forehead. But Andrew was holding on to the axe handle with one hand. And with the other hand, he pulled out a military stab dagger from his waist and aimed it at the male ant. The oval compound eye on the left side of the ant was pierced. The compound eye was about the size of a honeydew melon. The bayonet seemed to have shattered a layer of hard glass. Inside was a pocket of bodily fluids, which suddenly sprayed out along the gap of the bayonet. Andrew hugged the butcher's axe to prevent the ghost strike male ant from throwing him away. He crawled to the back of Ta's neck little by little, and the military thorn directly penetrated the ghost strike male ant's brain. The whole body of this ghost strike male ant twitched violently. Its legs kept kicking on the soil on the grass, and the vitality in the body quickly disappeared. Gulitum seemed to have only the ghost striped ant queen in his eyes. It rushed forward with great strides. In fact, it wanted to rush forward and snatch the queen's body back. Although there are two heads on his shoulders now, the facial features of one of them are extremely blurred. The mouth, nose, eyes, and ears are almost indistinguishable from behind. And the development of that head has also stalled. Although he eats a lot of monster meat every day, apart from being physically strong, his other half shows no signs of awakening. Gulitum knew that the body of this ghost-striped ant queen contained the nutrients he needed. So he rushed forward in stride, not even seeing the ghost-striped male ants. Two violent ghost-striped male ants attacked the ogre from the left and right sides. They opened their tentacles and bit at Gulitum at the same time. Dark brown magic lines appeared on the surface of the ogre's marble-like skin. These magic lines were like vines, growing on its skin. A wild power emanated from these vine-like magic lines. The bone-crushing stick in Gulitum's hand was raised high. He didn't even think twice and pounced directly on the ghost-striped male ant on the left. The bone-crushing stick in his hand hit the ghost strike male ant's tentacles hard, and the huge force smashed the ghost strike male ant's head slightly to the right. The bone crushing stick in the ogre's hand whirled round again. Turning back, he hit the male ant's other tentacle and tilted the ghost strike male ant's head to the left. Before the ghost marked male ant could react, the bone crushing stick accumulated powerful force and poured it into the ghost marked male ant's head, smashing its head directly into the soft soil. Just when Gulitum wanted to smash the forehead of the ghost strike male, and directly into the soil. Another ghost striped male and stabbed the tentacles directly towards him. The ogre jumped up instinctively and avoided this attack. One stab. The ghost striped male and suddenly raised its head and pursued it. Its huge tentacles failed to pick up Gulitum, but it picked up the ogre. The ogre stepped on the giant pincers and was a little unsteady, and one leg fell into the gap of the pincers. The claws of the ghost striped male and struggled to close, trying to twist the ogre Gulitum into two pieces or at least bite off this leg. Only then did Gulitum wake up a little. 
he quickly threw away the bone-crushing stick in his hand and used both hands to support the tentacles of the ghost-marked male ant. Under the huge power, countless black waves appeared all over the ogre's body. When the magic patterns came, even some totem patterns appeared on his face. Those black magic patterns were like weeds with tenacious vitality, releasing this strong wild power outwards. The ghost strike male and tried its best to close the tentacles. For a moment, Gulitum and the ghost strike male and were in a stalemate. Two cutter-like teeth appeared on both sides of the mouth parts between the tentacles. The two cutters kept rubbing together, making a harsh cha-cha sound. With a sound, for smaller tentacles poked out from the mouth parts, as if they wanted to slice up Gulitum and eat them directly. An arrow wrapped in the wind element passed through the layers of black mist and shot through the compound eye of the ghost-marked male ant. A stream of dark brown juice poured out along the arrow. The ghost-marked male ant hissed, and its head suddenly shook. With a flick, the mouth parts in the middle of the claws quickly retracted. Gulitum forcibly opened the contact pincer, and after the extreme cracking, there was a crisp sound of bone cracking. Looking at the mouth parts of the ghost-striped male ant that kept closing, Gulitum landed on the grass with his feet picked up the broken bone stick on the ground, and poured it directly into the mouth of the ghost strike male ant. Samira stayed by Selena's side, watching the surrounding dark elements continue to pour into Selena's body. However, because her body could not transform them all, more and more dark elements condensed in her body. She at this time, her body was like a container, without enough affinity to the dark elements. Her skin gradually turned dark. Selena had already fallen into coma, and only a faint shadow of the dark goddess behind her remained. But she still refused to give up. Samira could see that the queen ant had been killed by Suldak's men, and she shot an arrow at Gulitum's critical moment to help him resolve the crisis. Feeling that even if there was no darkness and mist, the remaining ghost strike male ants might not be a concern. So he hurriedly squatted in front of Selina and said softly to Selina, Selina! Selina! Wake up quickly, wake up! We won this battle! Her fingers accidentally touched the skin of Selena's shoulder. The dark aura surrounding Selena's body was like countless little snakes that chose to devour others. They were entangled crazily with Samira's slender fingers and bit them quickly. Samira was so frightened that she quickly retracted her hand. A trace of wind element quickly dispersed those dark elements. The moment she came into contact with Selena, Samira already felt that there seemed to be a cold and hateful spirit hidden in Selena's body. She didn't know why she felt this way. She just felt that the soul is holding Selena's original soul, preparing to devour it bit by bit, and then take over her body. Samira felt darkness in front of her eyes. A trace of fear rushed up the half-elf archer's back, and she broke out in a cold sweat. At this moment, Aphrodite actually walked out of the dark mist. Her body was burning with rich demonic energy. The succubus body was covered with complex demonic patterns. A transparent winged shadow appeared on her. On her shoulder, she held the mithril mask in her hand. Two tear-like magic lines appeared on her face, and a black tail like an arrow even appeared behind her. The eye floating above her head was no longer a ball with a diameter of one meter. Countless tentacles actually grew from the eyeball, hanging down and falling on Aphrodite's body. Those tentacles continued to absorb the blood from Aphrodite's body. Of demonic energy, the pupil of each eye also turned blood red. At this time, Aphrodite's face was arrogant and fierce, and she made a sharp voice towards the unconscious Alina. She seemed to be speaking a devilish language that Samira had never heard before. Get out, you disgusting guy. If you don't get out, I will seal you here. While Avra was speaking, the eyeball above her head actually opened, and the light blue light turned into extremely thin chains and surrounded Selena's body. Selena's dark eyes suddenly opened, and the endless resentment and anger in her eyes finally turned into horror. A black shadow-like aura quickly left Selena's body, and dissipated in the surrounding dark elemental aura in a blink of an eye. At this time, Selena seemed to have lost all her strength and fell into Samira's arms. The devouring dark aura also disappeared without a trace. Samira found that Selena barely opened her eyes. Her completely blackened lips slowly faded away, as if she was reciting some kind of prayer. A black crescent appeared between her hands, and countless dark breaths came towards her, gathering inside the crescent moon. It was like opening a door to a dark world. The dark elements in her body quickly receded, and the surrounding dark elements were quickly drawn into the door. With her last bit of consciousness, Selena smiled at Samira and Aphrodite before she completely passed out. Serdak jumped between the two veterans and the ghost striped male ant, helping the two veterans block the ghost striped male ant's tentacles. The silver light on the dwarf's chain shield exploded again, 
The ghost marked male ant was a little afraid of the sacred light. When the light flame approached the ghost marked male ant, the ghost marked male ant began to burn. The huge body retreated crazily, spitting out a large amount of acid liquid from its mouth. Serdak rolled along the spitting trajectory, narrowly avoiding the acid liquid. There were more veterans around to reinforce this side. Serdak recited four rune words, and the runes of light lit up again. The moment the holy light torch in his hand was struck down, a huge bolt of lightning rushed into the ghost-marked hero in the ant's body. The huge torrent of lightning actually opened a big hole in the head of the ghost-marked male ant. The entire ghost-striped male ant was flashing with countless arcs of mixed colors and collapsed instantly. The holy thunder is the most lethal to these ghost-marked red ants, almost melting upon contact. At this time, the black mist began to dissipate like the ebbing tide of the sea, and everything in the black mist emerged. Alongside the canyon which shrouded in darkness, corpses of ghost-striped male ants are everywhere. There are almost no living ghost-striped male ants here. The six-meter-long ghost-striped male ants are much larger than expected, about the size of like a long-distance covered magic caravan. There were no living ghost-marked male ants around. And Soldak quickly walked to Selena's side. Her face was as pale as paper. Her breathing was extremely weak. And a black crescent appeared between her left shoulder and collarbone. Serdak squatted next to Selena, reached out, and touched her forehead. His touch was cold. Aphrodite said that her body was eroded by the infusion of dark elements. But for a believer of the dark goddess like her, she only needs to practice for a period of time to recover. Samira whispered to Serdak. Serdak breathed a sigh of relief and sat down on the grass next to Samira. At this time, Aphrodite was facing a ghost-marked male ant, and the light from the huge eyeball completely covered the ghost-marked male ant. The ghost-striped male ant kept trying to resist and retreated frequently, its anger gradually weakening, like a trapped beast unable to resist. Aphrodite kept approaching the ghost-striped male ant, and finally pressed one of her hands on the prone head of the ghost-striped male ant. The head was covered with protruding bone spurs, and Aphrodite stood there, the two giant tentacles didn't worry at all that the surrendered ghost-striped male ant would turn back and cut her into two pieces. The ghost-striped male ant finally surrendered. It lowered its head and allowed Aphrodite to step on the huge tentacles and walk to the top of its head. It raised its head and held up Aphrodite, like a huge mount, carrying Aphrodite and slowly walked towards the place where the battle was fiercest. This ghost-striped male ant walked very smoothly. At this time, the eyeball on Aphrodite's head slowly dissipated in the magic pattern array. Gulitem found the queen ant that looked like a giant fly among the corpses of the ghost-striped male ants and picked up its shriveled head. Chapter 786 Booby Trap From a distance, I saw a fierce battle breaking out on the other side of the city wall. In front of the city wall, flames shot into the sky and a series of explosions were heard from time to time. On the battlefield next to the dead forest, the corpses of nearly 80 ghost-striped male ants were lying in random directions. Each ghost striped male ant required at least a four-wheel truck to transport it. The team led by Serdak could not after taking away so many ghost-marked male ants. We can only take out the most precious magic core from the skull of the ghost-marked male ants. Even the heads of the ghost-marked male ants couldn't be taken away. Although there was an empty space behind the ghost-marked red ants. A large number of ghost-marked red ants still rushed here from the north of the canyon in response to the summons of the unlucky queen. Serdak stood on the back of the ghost-striped male ant. After possessing insight, he could see very far at night. A group of ghost-striped worker ants came from the north of the canyon. But there were not many ghost-striped worker ants in these ant colonies. With these first-turn veterans, it was not too difficult to block these ghost-striped worker ants. Fifteen veterans of the cavalry battalion, led by Andrew, formed a battle formation around the ghost-striped male ants controlled by Aphrodite. The veterans waved the knight's swords in their hands, and strangled them vigorously. Although these ghost-striped worker ants could spray acid, a pair of pincers are quite powerful, but they are no match for the veterans. There is almost nothing they can do against the knight's light shield in the hands of the veterans. They just pounce on them based on instinct. In the past three weeks, these first-turn veterans didn't know how many ghost-marked red ants they had killed in the city. At this time, the physique and strength of the veterans, who have been blessed by many gods, have almost reached an unprecedented state. These one-meter-long ghost-patterned soldier ants are like a group of hungry wolves rushing towards them. They don't even have any fear. He just rushed forward non-stop, opened his tentacles, and bit them. The hard armor on their bodies is not that hard. And the knight's long sword can easily cut off the joints of the ghost-striped worker ants. Serdak even set up a marching tent on the back of the ghost-striped male ant. And Selena lay unconscious in the tent. 
Aphrodite stood on top of the ghost striped male ant, controlling the ghost striped male ant to walk deep into the dead forest. Fifteen veterans, led by Andrew, were responsible for breaking up and following behind the ghost striped male ant. Fight and retreat at the same time. The dead forest here has been eaten away by ghost striped red ants. This dry forest is located at the foot of the mountain on the east side of the canyon. It belongs to a long and narrow forest belt. Walking through the dead forest towards the mountainside, the terrain suddenly rises to an extremely steep slope. In fact, this is not the main problem. Climb less than a hundred meters along the steep mountain wall of the canyon, and you will see thorny stone pillars clustered on the mountainside. These stone pillars are completely grown out of the mountain. Longer stone pillars can reach dozens meters long. Shorter stone pillars are only a few meters long. These thorn-shaped stone pillars are so densely packed together that neither humans nor beasts can pass through this area. Aphrodite controlled the ghost-striped male ant and climbed straight up the mountainside. A large group of ghost-striped worker ants were chasing behind them, while the veterans of the cavalry battalion fought and retreated. Further away, a ghost-striped queen ant and more than 50 ghost-striped male ants were also chasing here. They were originally troops coming for reinforcements but they moved a little slower. When they arrived at the battlefield, they only saw the corpses of ghost-marked male ants everywhere. I saw a group of humans retreating towards the edge of the canyon wall from a distance. The queen continued to gather the ghost-striped red ants in the canyon, and then the army of red ants chased after her from behind. Aphrodite stood on top of the ghost-marked male ants, and under the guidance of a veteran of the cavalry battalion, drove the ghost-marked male ants towards the halfway up the thorny mountains. The hillside is extremely steep, and it is very difficult for the ghost-striped male ants to walk on it. Rolling stones often slide down the hillside. The terrain here is extremely steep. If this ghost-striped male ant causes a large landslide, not many people in Sir cavalry team will survive. Moreover, the rugged mountain roads are very unsuitable for the ghost-striped male ants to climb. There are ghost-striped worker ants all over the mountains behind. The worker ants are not very big, and the slope of the mountain wall does not hinder them in any way. In such a dark night, the gravel on the hillside often makes a rolling sound. Gulitum held the skull of the queen ant in his arms. He could not wait to sit on the back of the ghost-striped male ant, ready to eat the frozen brain inside the skull. Although Serdak believed that the ogre's habit of eating raw food should be completely changed, he did not have that condition now. The ogre held the ant queen's head, licked his lips, wiped the saliva from the corners of his mouth with his hands, and made a difficult decision. He said to Serdak, who was standing aside, Boss! This is better to be put in a seal. In the magic box. I think it would be more delicious if baked before eating. Serdak lowered the curtain of the marching tent, looked at the hesitant Gulitum, and asked him with a smile, Isn't your brother about to wake up? Gulitum scratched his head vigorously and said to Soldak a little embarrassedly, I guess I won't be able to wake up after eating the brain of this queen ant. I will at least eat another queen. If we follow us into the mountain call, I think I will have hope this time. Boss, am I good at eating? Gulitum asked Serdak again. Gulitum sat where he was, and Serdak took out a large magic sealing box, threw it in front of Gulitum, put his arm on his shoulders, and said, It's okay. Eat. How much food is not important. What is important is how much sanity you can retain under the dual temptation of hunger and delicious food. For an ogre, I value this more. The ogre opened the lid of the box, placed the queen's head in the magic sealing box, and said, Um, Boss, do you think we can kill the queen ant behind you? Serdak nodded and said, There is great hope. Although she is a little timid and suspicious by nature, she is now considered the king of this alliance. Even if it is to consolidate her position, she will try to attack us. Samira stood on the buttocks of the ghost-marked male ant, staring at the canyon behind. A large number of ghost-marked red ants gathered from all directions. Especially a large number of ghost-marked soldier ants from the direction of the North City Wall almost completely blocking the retreat of everyone in Serdak. If you want to return to Duodan Town behind the northern city wall, you will inevitably encounter those ghost-patterned soldier ants head-on. The veterans of the cavalry battalion came out without riding horses this time, and they were unable to use the heavy cavalry's drilling tactics to break through the encirclement. Therefore, Serdak could only lure the ghost-marked red ants up the hillside. The cavalry battalion has not been in Duodan Town for a long time, and is not very familiar with Duodan Canyon. When the cavalry battalion first arrived in Doden Town, they walked out of the Doden Canyon almost every day and patrolled the border between hills and mountains. They only had a certain understanding of some of the special terrain in the canyon. 
This is a very special place. It is located on the east side of the mountainside in the middle section of Doden Canyon. There is a mountain depression surrounded by many thorny stone pillars. The entrance there is very narrow. And although there is no escape route inside, the entrance can be defended with very few troops. This was also part of the assassination plan. Serdak had never thought about killing a ghost-striped ant and then returning to Doden Town. His appetite was much bigger than this. Serdak stood at the entrance of the call on the mountainside. If you hadn't walked close, you would never have imagined that there was such a narrow path less than three meters wide hidden in the mountainside densely covered with thorny stone pillars. It could only accommodate a ghost-striped male ant and crawl through it carefully. When you met the turning point, also be extra careful. An endless stream of ghost-patterned worker ants followed behind. And Andrew led ten veterans to block the entrance to the road. They wore bulky full-coverage armor and had the blessing of God like the blessed body. Physical strength recovers quickly. And due to the suppression of weapons and equipment, fighting the ghost-patterned worker, ants becomes very simple. In just a quarter of an hour, corpses of ghost-striped worker, ants appeared one meter high at the intersection. The ghost-patterned worker ants behind stepped on the corpses of their companions and rushed forward, spitting acid and rot at the veterans. The veterans could only hold up their shields to block them. Although the attack speed of the ghost-striped worker ants was slow, they still broke into the narrow passage step by step. Seeing that this attack method was very effective, the ghost-striped worker ants almost completely used acid to open the way, forcing the cavalry team to retreat little by little, leaving a pile of corpses of ghost-striped worker ants on the narrow mountain road. The ghost-striped red ants are not able to climb over the thorn stone pillars, so they can only chase Andrew and the cavalry team along this narrow mountain road. Aphrodite controlled the ghost-striped male ant to continue walking inside. The rugged thorns and stone thorns on the left and right sides of the path were like the most tangled trees. This road covered with thorny stone pillars extends horizontally along the mountain. It is only about 150 meters long. When you enter it, you can see an open space as big as half a football field. Serdek did not expect that there was such a large space inside the call. The terrain in the mountain call is also all sloping, like a gully washed out by rain. Andrew led a group of veterans out of the mountain road and into the mountain call. A large number of ghost-striped worker ants were crawling out of the mountain road in a steady stream and more and more of them were gathering in the mountain kernel. The ogre Gulitum also jumped off the back of the ghost-striped male ants with a bone-crushing stick, and stood on Andrew's side. Beside him, the big stick in his hand was swept out horizontally, and he could hit several ghost-striped worker ants at the same time. Andrew followed Suldak's footsteps to the deepest part of the mountain kernel. There was no way forward. There is a thick stone beam running across the middle. It is probably because of this stone beam that the empty mountain call below is formed. There is a small gap under the stone beam. It cannot be considered a cave. At most it can only be regarded as a horizontal stone gap. Serdak asked Aphrodite to control the ghost mark male and to lie outside the stone cracks, which could just block the stone cracks for about 6 meters. For the Serdak team, it is a perfectly located shelter. As long as Andrew and Gulitum take turns taking the veterans to guard the entrance of the cave, they can block the attack of the ghost striped red ants. Serdak pulled out two large wooden boxes, and placed them on the edge of the hole. He opened the lids of the boxes. Inside were a row of neatly arranged explosive bags wrapped in linen. Each explosive bag contained very long fuse. He asked Gulitum to guard the entrance to the stone crevice, and under the protection of Samira and Andrew. He placed these explosives one by one at the roots of the thorny stone pillars on the mountainside on both sides of the stone beam. He was worried that the power of these explosive packets was not enough. Two boxes of explosives were thrown in and the spare box was spread out. At the beginning, Serdak used black gunpowder to blast some limestone and dredged a drainage channel in a deserted land. He was naturally very skilled in the use of explosives. At this time, a large number of ghost-patterned soldier ants were already attacking the mountain call. Andrew fought back to the entrance of the stone crevice and joined Gulitum. With their excellent physique, the two of them regained a precarious entrance. The ghost-striped male ant lying between the cracks in the rocks is actually a natural barrier against attack, by the ghost striped red ants. This big guy is blocked here. And the ghost striped soldier ants will not attack it at all. The veterans guarding the entrance of the cave would occasionally throw one or two fire scale bombs towards the colonel. The fire scale bombs exploded among the ghost marked red ants, often killing and injuring everyone. This kind of fighting lasted until dawn. The corpses of ghost marked red ants at the entrance of the stone crevices had piled up like a mountain. Andrew and Gulitum both had some scars on their bodies after the long battle and acid rot was flowing everywhere. 
Serdak almost felt that this booby trap plan was going to fail. Standing high on the stone beam, Salmira shouted to Serdak. The group of ghosts marked male ants and the queen ant have come in. Serdak quickly emerged from the crack in the stone, climbed up the corpse pile of ghost-striped red ants, and chopped down a ghost-striped soldier ant that climbed up. He saw that a large number of ghost-striped male ants appeared at the entrance of the mountain colonel. These ghost-marked male ants are rushing towards this side quickly. However, more than a dozen ghost-striped male ants surrounded the queen, but they just stayed near the exit of the mountain call, not daring to get even half a step closer. Let them come closer, Serdak said after spitting and applying it. Enduring the sour and unpleasant smell, Salmira continued, They are still approaching, and the queen ant has also come in. Then let's start our welcome ceremony now. Serdak bent down and picked up a burning torch and said loudly, Everyone get into the cave! Andrew held a torch, jumped onto a raised rock, and shouted to the veterans around him. Serdak and Andrew lit the extended fuse almost at the same time. This fuse made of cotton rolled with gunpowder burned very fast. In the sound of Shishi, the fire was like a dancing silver snake. Serdak and Andrew jumped into the crevice at the same time. More than thirty ghost striped male ants also climbed up from the bottom of the hillside. The ghost striped ant queen was more than two hundred meters away. Samira stood on the high stone beam and shot a projectile arrow at it. The wind element carried the fine steel arrow and drew a graceful arc in the air, accurately shooting towards the ghost patterned ant queen. The queen ant sensed the danger and was so frightened that she contracted her wings and landed downwards. Several ghost striped male ants raised their forelimbs at the same time. One of the male ants firmly blocked the falling arrow. Samira took this opportunity and jumped into the crevice of the stone nimbly. Gulitum quickly blocked several prepared corpses of ghost patterned soldier ants outside, and a large number of ghost patterned soldier ants swarmed onto the pile of corpses outside the cave. Just as Serdak's countdown sounded. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The explosion of landslides and ground crack sounded from above everyone's heads, and the entire stone beam was crumbling. During the violent shaking, nearly half of the stone cracks collapsed. The ghost striped male ant squeezed outside moved nearly two meters into the stone crevice. The narrow gap squeezed its body and completely distorted it. In the rumbling sound, countless smashed thorny stone pillars collapsed from the mountainside like a turbulent current, instantly submerging the entire mountain call. Chapter 787 Ogre Advances the gap under the stone beam was instantly buried by countless thorny stone pillars that collapsed. It's just that this shelter is very strong. Although countless collapsed rubbles flowed down, trapping Soldak and the veterans of the cavalry battalion. This stone gap still withstood the impact of the landslide and did not completely collapse. The violent vibration lasted for nearly a quarter of an hour, which felt like a century. The last crack in the stone was completely filled with gravel, and everyone entered a claustrophobic space. The blasting point chosen by Serdak is located on both sides of the gap in the stone beam. Although some thorny stone pillars fell down above the stone beam, it only affected the gap in this stone beam. Instead, the entire mountain call was filled with stalagmites. The cave is filled with a lot of dust. Recently, these veterans in the cavalry camp have skillfully covered their mouths and noses with masks. In the deserted land, this kind of mask to prevent volcanic ash from being inhaled into the lungs has almost become a must-have item for the cavalry. Serdak raised the holy light torch and stepped on the loose gravel under his feet to inspect the damage to the cave. The veterans were about to light the torches, but were stopped by Soldak. Then Serdak discovered that a stalagmite was inserted diagonally from the outside. But this stalagmite just passed through the body of the ghost-striped male and blocking the outside. There were still some orders hanging on the tip of the stalagmite that came through. Disgusting male ant guts. Selena's tent was still safely placed in the deepest part of the rock crevice and was not affected by the huge earthquake. But she was still in a coma. After the huge earthquake outside subsided, Andrew wanted to climb up the rocks at the entrance of the cave, intending to find a passage out. But the gravel was very loose. After peeling some of it off, the gravel on top continued to flow down, and all his efforts were wasted. Just as Guaidam was about to help Andrew clean the entrance of the cave, Serdak came from inside and said to Aphrodite, Aphrodite, take out the secret weapon you have prepared. The secret weapon here is the space is not very big. If we don't dig out a passage quickly, the rest of us may suffocate to death here. Okay, don't worry. I'll let them open a channel as soon as possible. After saying that, she moved her body away, and five ghost-striped worker and slowly crawled out from the depths of the rock crevice behind her as if they were drunk. None of these five ghost-striped worker ants were injured, and they seemed to be controlled by Aphrodite. 
Soldak held the holy light torch and came closer. Looking carefully, he saw that the tentacles in front of the heads of these ghost-striped worker ants were more like two shovels. They were not only convenient for digging soil, but also could hold some gravel and dig. Things like underground caves seemed to be their instinct. They did not rush blindly to the entrance of the cave and dig casually. Instead, they searched around the entire entrance of the cave and explored all around before starting. Five ghost-striped worker ants chose to dig diagonally upwards against the mountain wall. Several ghost-striped worker ants moved some gravel into the cave in an orderly manner and even erected several huge rocks while digging, causing the cave entrance to collapse. Support the place to prevent the gravel chips from sliding down again and fill the dug hole. Although they walk a little unnaturally, they are still very professional at digging burrows. During the excavation process, you will inevitably encounter some stalagmites lying in front of you. These stalagmites are all buried, and only a small part is exposed, which cannot be removed at all. The ghost strike worker, ants will usually choose to avoid it as much as possible. If they can't avoid it, they will start spitting acid towards the stalagmites and wait until the rocks once it softens. Use giant pliers to bite it off bit by bit. At this time, Serdak arranged for the veterans, who had fought hard all night to eat something and rest where they were. Then he checked the casualties of the veterans of the cavalry battalion. In addition to one who had his leg broken by a boulder, two veterans were bitten by ghost-striped soldier ants last night. Serdak quickly began to clean their wounds. The one with a broken leg could only clamp the leg on a wooden board to fix it, and then use the holy light technique to speed up the healing. The injuries of the other two veterans were even simpler to deal with. They just cleaned the wounds and didn't even need to sew them up. They already had the blessed body in their bodies. Coupled with the effect of holy light, the wounds were almost as large as heals quickly and visibly. The other veterans were all normal, with almost all minor injuries on their bodies. Almost all of them were burned by the acid of the ghost-striped red ants. Of course, this kind of thing is always unavoidable in battle. Even the three injured veterans had not completely lost their combat effectiveness, but were just a little depressed. After the treatment, Serdak let them lie down in the sleeping bag and sleep for a while. In the dark cave, there are only five tireless ghost-striped worker ants that are constantly digging out the passage. Andrew sat cross-legged on a stone wall. He placed the butcher's axe flat on his legs. He touched the handle of the axe with one hand and the pattern engraved on the blade with one hand. The surging fighting spirit steamed out of his body. It is like a burning flame. This kind of fighting spirit overflowing from the body shows that he has completely mastered the fighting spirit. It is enough to show that the Nanai indigenous warrior with the berserker soul is only one step away from the second transformation. Remote. In just two hours. Five ghost-striped worker and dug a passage from the rubble accumulated in front of the gap in the stone beam. The sun shines in from outside, and the dark space is filled with dust. Fresh air was blown into the closed stone room by the wind, and the veterans of the cavalry battalion trapped in the cracks of the stone let out an uncontrollable cheer. The ghost-striped soldier ants cleaned up the surroundings of the cave wall a little, and Samira crawled out along the cave. She looked around at the entrance of the cave before carefully climbing out. Then she poked her head into the cave and stretched out her hand to pull Soldak behind her out of the cave. Serdak discovered that a large area of the mountain wall had collapsed. After the large thorny stone pillars collapsed by the explosives filled the cult, the remaining stone pillars rolled into the valley below the mountain wall, forming an obvious landslide. Countless broken thorn stone pillars are scattered in the landslide. Just like a ruin, there were many corpses of ghost-striped worker ants mixed in the ruins and even some light brown blood stains emerged from many rock crevices. Those large ghost-striped male ants were basically buried in them. Some ghost-marked male ants were not completely buried, and some parts of their bodies were in the ruins. Some ghost-marked male ant limbs were broken into several sections by the impact of stone pillars, and some sharp stone pillars pierced the hard armor of ghost-marked male ants. Many ghost-striped male ants are extremely tenacious in their lives. The ghost-striped male ants that have not died are still struggling feebly among the ruins. Some ghost strike male and still try to crawl out from under the ruins with brute force. Andrew climbed out with a group of veterans. At this time, the veterans, regardless of themselves being covered in dust, dispersed around to be on guard. The ogre Gulitum was the last to crawl out. The exit dug by the ghost striped worker, Ants, was a bit narrow for him. The tall ogre spent a little more effort to crawl out of the cave. When Gulitum also crawled out, the five ghost-striped worker ants responsible for digging the cave wall exploded and died one by one under the control of Aphrodite. Light brown blood spattered on the gravel nearby, making the veterans resting next to them tremble all over. They didn't know Aphrodite's true identity, 
but they were frightened and frightened by Aphrodite's various methods. There are many ghost-striped red ants in the canyon gathered at the foot of the canyon, trying to climb up the soil slope. The veterans of the cavalry battalion quickly dispersed and began to clear the battlefield, as long as some of the ghostly patterned male ants that were buried under the boulders were exposed. The veterans would get close to them and take away as many magic cores from their bodies as possible. As for the biggest gain from this battle, the queen was surrounded by a group of ghost-marked male ants. Even at the last moment when the rubble collapsed, the group of ghost-marked male ants did not give up on the queen, using their huge bodies to, to protect the queen ant from the impact of the rock flow. The queen also struggled to get into the air with all her strength. Unfortunately, at the last moment, she was penetrated by a stalagmite that shot out. Her body was hung on a tree near the entrance of the mountain colonel, on top of the broken stone pillar. When the ogre found the remains of the ghost-striped ant queen, the queen's body was gone. Andrew helped him cut off the queen's head, and finally obtained the brain of the third ghost-striped ant queen. He didn't even pay attention to the large number of ghost-striped red ants gathered at the foot of the mountain. He ran to the cave entrance with the head of the ghost-striped ant queen, groaned and raised a large iron pot, pouring out the frozen matcha-colored brains. The sticky brain filled most of the pot. During this period, Gulitum also fished out a fist-sized magic core and threw it to Serdak next to him. Underneath the iron pot was a magic scroll that focused on fire. The flame shot up and just wrapped the iron pot in it. The ogre waited happily. The veterans quickly dug up the ghost-striped male and buried in the rubble before the ghost-striped red ants rushed up. Standing on the top of a stalagmite, Serdak could see the queen ant in the ant colony at the foot of the mountain from a distance. She was flying at a low altitude, suspended at a height beyond the reach of the ghost-striped male ants, commanding a group of ants from the north. The ghost-patterned soldier ants that came back from the city wall began to climb the steep slope formed by the flow of rocks. These ghost-striped soldier ants tried to rush up along the landslide mountain, but the foot of the mountain was almost full of floating gravel. When they first started climbing, these ghost-striped soldier ants did not encounter any problems. They just waited until the number increased and the hillside the floating gravel was stepped loose. And these loose gravel continued to slide downward with the ghost-striped soldier ants. A small rock slide even formed, burying some climbing red ants. Although there were no casualties, this immediately slowed down the attack rhythm of the ghost-striped red ants. Some ghost-striped soldier ants gathered at the foot of the mountain, circling back and forth, but refused to climb up the mountainside. Some of the ghost-striped soldier ants tried to take a detour from both sides of the mountain wall. Soon some soldier ants discovered a mountain path covered with thorny stone pillars. Many soldier ants crowded at the door, intending to use the mountain path to enter the mountain that was filled by the rock flow. Call. But this section of the road is not easy to walk. The ghost-striped red ants that were hiding in the mountain road were frightened by the collapsed thorn stone pillars. They initially accepted the control of the dead ghost-striped ant queen. The queen ant at the foot of the mountain has not yet had time to take over these minions. So they are hiding in the mountain path and shivering. The ghost-striped red ants who wanted to pass through this mountain road were blocked behind them. Some ghost-striped soldier ants stepped on the bodies of the red ants in front. But they aroused the dissatisfaction of the ghost-striped red ants. And a commotion broke out in the mountain road. A group of ghost-striped male ants surrounded the queen and slowly caught up from behind. The queen spread out three pairs of cicada wings in front of these ghost-striped red ants, revealing her scarlet abdomen like a hook, which immediately made the surroundings the ghost-patterned red ants all surrendered to it. The surrounding ghost striped male and squeezed over desperately, stretching out their two searchlight like tentacles, trying to touch the queen ant. The queen subconsciously raised her flying height to avoid being touched by the ghost striped male ants. The entire ant colony was worshipping this queen. In the canyon, another queen ant was also rushing towards this side, surrounded by a group of ghost striped male ants. Saldak checked Selena's condition. Although her face had recovered, she was still asleep. Samira is always paying attention to the movements of the ghost-striped red ants below. But it is not so easy for these ghost-striped soldier ants to climb into the mountain call. However, some of the ghost-patterned worker ants that were lucky enough to survive were now pouring out of the mountain path again. A small-scale battle had already begun with the battle team led by Andrew on the rocky slope. These worker ants were no match for these veterans who had gained strength. The knight swords in the hands of the veterans were almost soaked with light brown blood and they were still there as a steady stream of red ants with ghost stripes approaching upwards. Since there was a large group of ghost striped red and staring at this side eagerly, Andrew was not willing to fight. After seeing that the demon cores on the ghost striped male ants were almost collected, he threw two fire scale bombs towards the exit of the mountain road. With the fire, 
With the explosion of scale bombs, several ghost patterned worker ants were immediately splashed with flesh and blood. Andrew took the opportunity to retreat back with the veterans. After the explosion subsided, the ghost marked red ants in the mountain road emerged again. The big iron pot in front of Gulitum had already boiled the frozen brain inside. The ogre Gulitum quickly took back the fire gathering magic scroll. He was not afraid of being burned. So he sat in front of the big iron pot and took out a wooden spoon, scooped out the hot paste inside, and stuffed it into his mouth without any explanation. When he ate the food, he almost closed his eyes. The moment the ant paste entered his throat, his shoulders shook twice, as if he was enjoying extremely delicious food. He swallowed the ant paste into his stomach almost like a storm. And then the ogre's body became hot, and his marble skin became red and white for a while, and his body swelled up like an inflated balloon. And his shoulders, the second head finally had very obvious changes. Although the facial features on the second head have not yet been fully formed, there are already some expressions of joy, anger, sorrow and joy on the face. Then the head seemed to be breaking free from some kind of restraint, struggling continuously under a thin layer of skin. Black sun patterns appeared on the chest of the ogre Gulitum, and those patterns erupted with huge mana fluctuations. He stood at a high place, reached out, and pulled hard on the second head, and a thin piece of skin was pulled off by him like a rubber sheath. Then an equally young face appeared next to him, pulling Gully's head hard. Temi was startled. The same nose, mouth, and ears, but those eyes are a little special. One eye is like cold eyes and snow, showing an icy blue color. The other eye is like a burning flame, glowing red. Chapter 788 High Brother A group of ghost-striped red ants followed behind Andrew, and the veterans retreated while fighting. The ghost-striped worker ants died all the way, and only some stronger ghost-striped soldier ants survived tenaciously. These soldier ants gathered more and more, biting tightly behind Andrew's group. The hard armor on the soldier ants was relatively strong. If they want to pierce the hard armor of the ghostly patterned soldier ants, these veterans must use all their strength. Fighting like this, it is easy to be surrounded by ghost-striped soldier ants in succession. Andrew could only stand at the back of the team and frequently swing the butcher's axe. Only the butcher's battle axe with bleeding properties in his hand could cut through the hard armor of the ghostly patterned soldier ants with one stroke. Samira stood on a high place, with faint red magic patterns emerging from her arms. She quickly opened her bow and fired arrows, frequently shooting the ghost patterned soldier ants that rushed up to the ground. The battle started again, seeing the ghost-striped red ants pouring out from the bottom of the canyon. Even Soldak felt a little numb. He ignored the changes in the ogre's body and looked around, looking for new terrain suitable for creating landslides. Hi! Brother! The ogre who had removed a layer of dead skin from his face had a face full of joy. Although he was also bald on the top of his head, his face was a bit round. His nose was also round. And he had a round face on both sides of his mouth. It has two reverse fangs and a pair of eyes full of curiosity about the new world. Two minimalist magic symbols clearly appeared on his bald head. When Gulitum saw him for the first time, he felt an indescribable kindness towards him. His mood was a bit complicated, but mostly he was happy. Since the greeting was preempted by the other party, Gulitum decided to say a few more words, because he is an ogre who likes to reason with people. Hi, brother, my name is Gulitum, and I think you should have a new name. But before he finished speaking, he was interrupted by the other party. An exaggerated smile appeared on the ogre magician's face. And he said to Gulitum, Perhaps we can split the names. You are called Guli, and I am called Tem. Because people used to call you Gulitum. Now they call us. And they will still call Gulitum Dot. Uh-huh. Do you think it's funny? Gulitum touched his head and said naively, You are indeed smarter than me, Tim. The ogre magician covered his face with one hand with helplessness written all over his face, and complained, Well, I really admire you. You actually take it seriously. Your name is unique. And of course mine is too. I there must be a name that is closer to my identity. What do you think of Ice Fire Eye? Maybe I can think of something better, such as using the name of this food. What do you think of Nailware? Is it very memorable? At this time, Gulitum saw those marked red and submerging from the bottom of the canyon. The ogre magician looked at the hillside in astonishment and murmured, Brother, I think you are still a little too gentle with these crawling bugs. We can be more aggressive and violent. We must let them know that they are just an appetizer on the ogre family's recipe. Gulitum grinned and said loudly, What a great idea. The ogre magician shouted, Then let's start our battle. Ice armor. 
he recited a magic spell, and a light blue magic pattern appeared at the ogre's feet. A layer of cold blue ice armor appeared on the ogre's body. The ice armor carried countless ice skates. It looks like a snowman walking out of a world of ice and snow. Path of Fire Immediately after he recited another magic spell, a light red magic circle appeared again at the ogre's feet. Ghoulitem saw a layer of flame igniting under his feet. But he couldn't feel any heat. It felt very strange. The ogre magician was about to recite the spell again. But at the critical moment, the small fireball suddenly went out. He said with some embarrassment, I'm a little dizzy with the fireball. Let me catch my breath. Ghoulitem didn't notice the fireball at this time. He just looked at the ghost striped red and it's rushing up from the hillside. His eyes were already bloodshot and his skin was covered with black tattoos. He roared fiercely. Voice. Roar. With this war cry, all the veterans in the cavalry battalion felt an inexplicable courage. Then I saw the ogre waving a big stick. When he ran forward, a path of flames appeared behind his butt. The bone-crushing big stick in his hand felt one size smaller. The ogre magician was so excited by this lightning feeling that he screamed. Facing those ghost-striped soldier ants, it was like a big stupid elephant rushing into a pack of wolves. The bone-crushing big stick in its hand turned around and immediately smashed the heads of the ghost-striped soldier ants in front of them to pieces. And the burning bones under their feet where the flames made those ghost-striped red and stare not chase after the ogre. The battle situation changed at this moment. Andrew and the 17 veterans suddenly felt that this battle with a huge disparity in power could be won. Then why run? He didn't even notice the retreat signal from Serdak and turned around and rushed towards the ant colony again. The power of the ogre that appeared with the second head almost underwent a qualitative change. He ran rampant in the ant colony, and almost no ghost striped red and could stop him. In the end, a giant ogre emerged from behind the ant colony. Ghost patterned soldier and stopped ghoul item. But when Samira shot an arrow through the compound eye of the giant ghost patterned soldier ant, the giant ghost patterned soldier ant was unable to stop ghoul item. It wasn't until the ghost marked male ants from behind the ant colony entered the battlefield one after another that Serdak called on the frenzy warriors and retreated southward along the edge of the thorny stone pillar, halfway up the mountain. The ghost striped red ants were naturally unwilling to let Serdak and his party leave so easily, and the ants rushed up one after another. This kind of steep mountainous terrain greatly limits the crawling speed of ghost striped male ants, and they can only follow behind and eat ashes for a while. The mountain wall was a bit steep, so Serdak and his group walked very carefully. Soldak carried Selina on his back and walked at the front of the team. While Andrew and Gulitem were responsible for breaking up the rear, the team walked out of the mountain call for almost a kilometer when more than 20 ghost striped male ants clung to the thorny stone pillars on the mountainside and crawled forward in a neat row. The queen ant was among them. At this time, Soldak looked back at Andrew. Andrew understood immediately, tore off the hemp rope-like fuse in his hand, connected the end of the explosive, and said to the ogre magician, Hey, borrow a fire. The ogre magician immediately needed a fireball, lit the fuse in Andrew's hand casually, and threw the fireball back, causing two ghost-striped soldier ants to roll down the hillside. The fuse has been burning rapidly, until the last moment. A series of loud noises sounded again from the mountain wall. The mountain collapsed again, with a momentum like thousands of horses galloping. The thorny stone pillars shattered from the mountainside with countless earth and rocks, burying all the ghost-marked male ants and the queen ant. The entire mountain was shaking violently. The Zerdak team could only hold on tightly to the thorny stone pillars to prevent them from rolling down the hillside under the huge earthquake. Chapter 789 Return The stone pillars on the mountain that were detonated were more than a hundred meters long. The collapse of the mountain wall just happened to bury the queen ant and a group of male and guards hanging far behind under the rubble. The rock flow isolated most of the chasing red ants from behind. There were only more than 200 ghost marked soldier ants left in the rock flow. And they were still biting behind Serdak and his group. Serdak, Aphrodite, Samira, Gulitem and Andrew were in front, leading a group of veterans to rely on the complex terrain of the mountain wall. They first attacked the four giant ghost patterned soldier ants headed by General after killing them. The remaining 200 or so ordinary ghost marked red ants did not pose much of a threat in front of everyone. The battle continued until noon and more than 200 ghost-striped soldier ants were slaughtered by Serdak and his party. Among them, the two-headed ogre slaughtered nearly half of the ghost-patterned soldier ants. Due to the strong suppression of power, the two-headed ogre could almost crush a ghost-patterned soldier ant using the thunder combo. The head of the ghost-marked soldier ant died miserably. 
smashed to pieces, and the scene was almost too horrible to watch. If it weren't for the precious magic cores inside the skulls of these ghost-marked soldier ants, and the hard armor of the soldier ants also had a certain value, Serdak would probably have lost a lot this time. Once Giladim's ferocity breaks out during a battle, no one else can stop the two-headed ogre. Serdak felt that Gulinum and his brother, the ogre magician, were still in the initial running-in period, and fighting would help the two of them become more understanding. However, how to transport these soldier ant corpses back to Doden Town was a big problem. In the end, Serdak could only make a temporary decision to pile all the ghost-marked soldier ant corpses together, and first separate the magic cores and intact soldier ants. After the heads are taken away, the hard armor can only be piled here temporarily, and these materials can be transported back when there is a chance. Everyone was fighting on the mountainside on the east side of the canyon, but the ants in the canyon did not continue to pursue them. Sammy climbed to the top of a sloping stone pillar and looked down the mountain. She pointed to the other side of the rubble flow and said to Soldek, Boss, the last queen ant is evacuating to the north of the canyon with her bodyguards and ant colony. What should we do? Serdak saw that the red ants in the canyon were in a state of chaos. Apparently the third queen was trapped under the rock slide, and the large number of red ants in the middle of the canyon had lost their ruler. The fourth queen ant is timid and fearful, probably because she is not strong enough. And even the number of male ant guards she controls is at least one. When it realized that the three alliance ghost striped ant queens were dying one after another, it was so frightened that it immediately began to retreat. With all its bodyguards, it actually began to retreat to the north of the canyon, and also gave up its plan to climb over the northern city wall from the Doden Canyon to expand its territory to the south. Plan. The fourth queen obviously did not have the ability to rule the entire ant colony. In addition to a group of male ant guards, only more than 10,000 ghost striped red ants were affected by it and returned north together. There are still a lot of ghost striped red ants scattered in the canyon. There are at least tens of thousands of them in the middle of the canyon alone. However, most of these ghost striped red ants are workers with little strength. The number of ghost striped soldier ants is relatively small compared to the ghost striped worker ants. Said, not even one out of ten. As for the giant ghost pattern soldier ants, they are even rarer. However, there is still a large group of ghost marked red ants gathered near the rock flow. And Soldak gave up the bold idea of returning to the rock flow to find the body of the queen. Although this group of first level veterans were blessed by God, they had experienced high intensity fighting day and night. Soldak was worried that their bodies would be exhausted. So he decided to continue walking south along the east mountain wall. People finally returned to Duodan town before the sun set. The moment the sun set, the shadows of the mountains once again enveloped the Doden Canyon. Selina, who had been sleeping for nearly a day, lay on Serdak's back and slowly opened her eyes. The city defense guard stood at the top of the city. When they saw Serdak and his party returning safely, they immediately burst into cheers and kept waving the flags of the Luther Legion. The guards cleared out the city gate as the heavy iron fence at the main entrance slowly rose. The passage to the city gate opened. The smell of blood and decay filled the entire passage. Two rows of city defense guards lined up on the left and right sides of the city gate. Serdak and his party came in. The guards were so excited that they sang a song of triumph when they saw the group returning to the town of Doden almost intact. Aphrodite had already passed through the gate of the void and returned to the lava mine in Pussy Mountain. Selina had just woken up and twisted her body slightly on Soldak's back. And Serdak felt it immediately. Surrounded by a group of people, he quickly carried Selina into the small building where the military camp was located. Nika and Zygna were waiting at the small building. When they saw Selina being carried back by Soldak, Nika turned pale with fright, and tears kept rolling down her cheeks like broken beads. When she came down, she couldn't stop it no matter what, and she didn't dare to cry out. She could only cover her mouth with one hand and staggered behind Soldak, helping to hold Selina's legs. Although Selina looked very bad, she was still conscious and said to Nika weakly, Nika, why are you crying? Am I not fine? Nika nodded vigorously. But the tears just couldn't stop. Signa followed beside him, looking very calm. But her face was also tense, and she remained silent. Serdak asked Selina to lie flat on the bed. The neckline of the black devil's robe was slightly open. A hollow crescent moon tattoo appeared on the fair skin on her chest. The hook under the crescent moon extended to Selina's right side. The upper part of the breasts looks extremely delicate. Signa has brought a bowl of hot soup, which has a fragrant meat flavor, and feeds Selina to drink it spoon by spoon. After drinking something, 
Selena looked much better. At this time, Serdek sat beside the bed and asked, What happened? Selena was lying on the big soft bed. This was Soldek's bedroom. Not a guest room that had been reduced to a treatment room. She stretched out her hand and rubbed her forehead, squinting her lake blue eyes, which glowed with a magnificent light like gems. With a faint smile, his eyes were rippling, and he calmly said to Soldek, When I helped you last night, I asked the goddess to send down a trace of divine will. With the divine will's understanding of the laws of darkness, I temporarily possess the body of darkness. The body of darkness is a type of elemental body. With the body of darkness, the body can accept the dark elements from the outside world. Selena glanced at Nika and pulled Signa to her side. The soft candlelight in the room exudes a sense of warmth, and the surroundings are quiet. Selena continued, It's just that my body's affinity for the dark elements is not enough after all. The body of darkness relies entirely on the understanding of the dark laws by the divine mind. To maintain the dark mist, I have to use it. The body extracts a large amount of dark elements from the outside world. These dark elements are not like the other four elements of water, fire, earth and wind. The four series elements make up the entire world. They will exist in a state of titanium in our world. But elements such as dark elements and holy light elements exist in another form. Just like night and day, dark elements are particularly powerful at night. But these dark elements are not as pure as titanium. The laws in the dark world always follow the law of the jungle. The dark elements I extracted from the dark world mixed in a dark nightmare. It is a parasite in the form of darkness. It originally wandered in the dark world and devoured other weak dark creatures. Unexpectedly, it would be forcibly absorbed by the magic pattern array. And my body is much weaker than it. What she is good at is creating dreams. And in its dream, it is almost invincible. Even if I have a trace of the goddess's divine will, she pulled me into the dream. So I had a long dream. Selena's voice was soft, as if she was telling a story. Soldak held Selena's slender white hand and asked curiously, Then how did you defeat that dark nightmare? Selena smiled, held Soldak's hand with her backhand, and said, I just remember that I couldn't hold on any longer. Suddenly I heard a sharp shout coming from outside. With the last moment of clarity, my mind, my dream was also pulled in for fusion. And she probably knew she couldn't take over my body. So she quickly left. Serdak didn't expect it to be like this. When he thought of Aphrodite walking into the void gate, the eyes under the mithril mask were still so dull. As if he had done some trivial things, the succubus always looked lazy. Man, with a charming and evil smile, could only bite the bullet and say to Selena, I'm afraid you have to thank Aphrodite for this. She's helping me. Selena was also a little surprised. Aphrodite is the most unusual of the four followers around Serdak. Especially because of her sensitive identity. She couldn't show her true face to others and could only hide in the dark. Which made Selena fall into thinking. After Selena fell asleep, Soldak left the small building. The half-elf archer immediately followed behind him. She had a faint soap set on her body. Her broken hair was still a little damp. And her salamander leather armor had also been carefully scrubbed. At least, there was no sour smell on it. She was carrying the painting of Withering's hunting bow, with a pot of arrows hanging on the waist, swinging on the ground when walking, making the slender figure look very enchanting. Samira has established prestige in the garrison camp with her excellent archery skills. Along the way, the soldiers in the camp saluted the two. Seeing that everything was normal in the camp, Soldak took Samir to the North City Wall. Adams and Gallatin had been guarding the city for a day and night, and had just climbed out of the marching tent on the city wall. When they came out, it seemed that they took advantage of the fact that there was no fighting in the city in the afternoon. So they each slept in the marching tent for a while. The setting sun had almost fallen into the mountains, and the canyon was completely dark. At this time in the past, the ants had begun to invade the territory in large numbers. But tonight, there was no movement. The scorched earth under the city wall was covered with the stumps and broken legs of ghost-marked red ants but no ghost marked red ants could be seen. The fire wall in front of the city wall had been disconnected in several places. The city defenders applied to Adams for a few barrels of kerosene to relight the extinguished section of the fire wall. Zerdak waved his hand to the city defense guard and said to the city defense guard, There is a high probability that the ghost marked red ants will not attack the city tonight. It doesn't matter even if the fire wall under the city wall goes out. It is just convenient for us to attack the city. Collect the magic core inside the ashes. The city defense guard looked happy, said okay, and ran away with a military salute. 
It didn't take long for the news to spread around the city. And the nervous city guards relaxed. The ghost marked red ants in the canyon have turned into a pile of loose sand. Even if some of the ghost marked red ants want to attack the city, they will not pose any threat to the northern city wall. Adams and Gallatin accompanied Soldak on a tour of the city wall. Soldak just ordered the city guards to collect the giant crossbow arrows on the mountain walls on both sides of the city wall. The mountain walls on both sides have been shot to pieces. And some giant crossbow arrows are still stuck with the corpses of ghost marked soldier ants. At night, under the light of the fire, the mountain walls on both sides are as scary as H. L. It is easy to scare yourself. Own. The clean ghost striped soldier ants can also be soaked in the pit. At this time, a burst of war horses neighed from under the northern city wall. Serdak looked down from the city wall and saw that Andrew was running out of the garrison camp with a cavalry battalion. A well-dressed cavalry was waiting at the foot of the city, and in the team was the big ogre ghoul item. Andrew climbed up to the top of the city in three steps and two steps, found Soldak on the wall, and shouted, Report. Andrew was unwilling to give up the corpses of more than 200 ghost-patterned soldier and piled up on the mountain wall. He returned to the garrison camp and discussed with his eight squadron leaders. Everyone felt that it was very necessary to transport the corpses of those ghost-patterned soldier ants. Come back, no matter what. These Warcraft materials are also a big fortune. Since everyone has earned merit points, it is necessary to transport this wealth back. Now Andrew climbed up the city wall and asked Soldak to leave the cavalry overnight to transport those Warcraft materials back. Serdak thought for a moment and then agreed. As the iron fence of the city gate was raised again, a group of cavalry entered the Doden Canyon in a mighty manner, followed by 54 wheeled carriages. After receiving this news, the mercenary union could not sit still. When the city gate was opened a few times before, the brave mercenaries ran outside the city and basically made a lot of money. This time, the president of the mercenary union did not want to miss such an opportunity and hurriedly chased the city defense brigade. At the material warehouse, he made an application to Serdak, who was checking the loss of military supplies in the material warehouse, hoping that the mercenary group could also take this opportunity to go out of the city to hunt. In view of the recent strong support of the mercenary group for the defense of the northern city wall, Serdak agreed to the application submitted by the president of the mercenary union. Even at night, Doden Town becomes particularly lively. Teams of mercenaries quickly organized, passed through the alleys of the town, and gathered under the north city wall. Everyone was checking the equipment they carried and showed great excitement. Not long afterward, these mercenaries disappeared into the night outside the northern city wall. Chapter 790 Caravan Serdak stayed in the military camp to treat the soldiers who were injured while defending the city last night. Last night, the battle on this side of the city wall was very fierce. Adams and Gallatin tried their best to prevent the ghost strike red ants from breaking through the northern city wall. However, due to the frequent use of fire scale bombs, almost all the fire scale bombs in the city defense brigade warehouse have been emptied. Of course, the final result was also very rich. Just looking at the piles of hard armor next to the work shed under the city wall, one knew that the heavy armored infantry and mercenaries on the city wall must have been fighting fiercely all night. These hard armors are also accumulated in large quantities near the military camp. Serdak plans to transport these hard armors to Benna City through the carriage house in Doden Town and hand them over to the trading firm in Wilk City that specializes in crossing the teleportation gate so that they can be sent to Benna City and handed over to them. The Brunine manager of the Goffalo family continues to support the Goffalo family's leather business. Soldak lost track of time as soon as he got busy. When he heard the rumble of horse hooves outside the military camp, he realized that it was probably Andrew and Gulitam who had brought people back. Pushing open the window and looking outside, he happened to see Andrew leading a group of cavalry passing in front of his small building. The cavalrymen showed excitement on their horses, and it seemed that they had gained a lot this time. Boom. 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 Serdak was awakened by a loud muffled sound. Every time there was a sound, it felt like the small building was shaking. But the sound was very rhythmic and slow. Selena was lying next to her, her long chestnut hair covering her soft and pretty face. She was wearing a set of suspender pajamas, and large areas of her white skin were exposed. Serdak jumped out of bed and walked to the window to check the specific situation. At this time, a flash of fish belly white just lit up on the horizon and the brightest star in the sky had not completely disappeared. Selena got up from the bed, put her bare feet on the floor, 
and helped him put the leather armor on his body. Serdak pressed his fingers on the hollow moon tattoo on her chest and was about to ask Selina how it felt to have such a tattoo appear out of thin air. A guard ran outside the small building and reported to Soldek. Commander, the material transport team from the logistics department of the military headquarters in Wilk City has just arrived in Doden Town. Soldek pushed open the window and said to the guard, I know. I'll be there right away. In the early morning, the sixth batch of military supplies arrived in Doden Town. What Serdak didn't expect was that the person responsible for transporting supplies was not the military's logistics team, but the largest business team hired from Wilk City. This business team had a total of 14 Thunderbolts. Rhino can transport nearly 100 tons of cargo at the same time. From a distance, I saw Quartermaster Handel striding through Doden Town and walking quickly towards the military camp. Those Thunder Rhinoceros could not pass through the streets of Duodan Town and could only go around the side of the town. From a distance, they looked like a row of moving mounds. Serdak quickly led a group of men to greet them. At present, the military department's supply of materials to the border town is still very sufficient. Obviously, the military department still has high hopes for the Luther Legion. These Thunder Rhinoceros are almost 7 or 8 meters tall. They have wooden shelves on both sides of their bodies. Now the shelves are almost filled with all kinds of supplies. There is also a small wooden house built on the back of each Thunder Rhinoceros. And the driver sits on it the top of Thunder Rhino's head. Serdak had seen this behemoth in Handanar County, but he was not shocked that time. Now that these Thunder Rhinoceros are loaded with cargo, he feels that one Thunder Rhinoceros is really big enough. Hi! Handel! You guys came so fast this time! Soldak walked up and hugged the quartermaster. Baron Soldak! You look good! It seems that the situation in Doden Town must be okay too! Handel said with a laugh. Why did the military use such a big guy to transport supplies this time? Serdak asked as he looked at the Thunder Rhinoceros slowly walking in. As the twelve Thunder Rhinoceros slowly approached, the feeling of shock became stronger and stronger. Quartermaster Handel touched his almost bald head and told Soldak. Recently, there have been many small groups of ghost striped red ants on the grassland. The convoys from the military headquarters no longer dare to cross the grassland casually and head north to transport supplies across the border. We hired the Thunder Rhino Caravan at a huge price. Only caravans with Thunder Rhinoceros can continue to pass through this grassland. The Ghost Stripe Red and Stare not approach Thunder Rhinoceros easily. In fact, Serdak has never understood why there are no magic airships in the Belan Plain. This time he just asked, Why doesn't the military prepare a few magic airships? Handel pointed to the northern sky and said to Soldak, What else can we do? In the Belan Plain, we do not have control of the air so far. Serdak and Handel walked towards the Thunder Rhinoceros together and asked, Are they those rhinoceros birds in the north? Handel shook his head, surprised that the commander of the Luther Legion seemed to be ignorant of many common senses of the Belan Plain. But he patiently explained, That's not the case here. Here is the Hippogriff. Their territory is much larger than our occupied area, and they usually fly so high that we don't even notice them. Standing under the Thunder Rhino, Handel said to Soldak, this time we have almost emptied the military warehouse in Wilk City. But now there are still many supplies of materials constantly being transported from Bena City. It is said that Bena, the supplies in the city are enough for us to hold on until the beast tide is victorious. The Thunder Rhino parked in the empty field in front of the military camp. Immediately, an indigenous herdsman ran out and prepared a whole bundle of fodder to place in front of the Thunder Rhino. The 14 Thunder Rhinoceros belonged to the private caravan of a noble lord in the Belan Plain. The scope of this caravan's activities is basically in the southwest area of Wilk City. This time, it is also at the request of the foreign consul. A Thunder Rhino caravan is coming to transport military supplies to the garrison in the northern region. A businessman was directing his followers to unload the shelves of supplies from the Thunder Rhinoceros and drove 14 Thunder Rhinoceros to the river to drink water. The heavy footsteps of the Thunder Rhino almost woke up the residents of the entire town and everyone rushed to the entrance of the military camp to watch these behemoths. Quartermaster Handel took out a list of military supplies and asked Serdak to choose from it. Of course, each town has a certain quota of kerosene and fire scale bombs. Without thinking, Serdak selected three items, fire scale bombs, kerosene, and wheat flour, and then threw the detailed list to Handel. Are you going to stock up more here? Quartermaster Handel asked Serdak, a little surprised. Soldak shook his head and said, At present, the reserve materials in the warehouse are relatively sufficient. You probably have to go to other towns. 
Those talents are also stationed by our Luther army. I will take less. There's the quota can be increased accordingly. Serdak thought for a while before saying, Almost half of the arrows I have here can be recovered. So there is no gap for the time being. How is the situation in other border towns? Quartermaster Handel looked at Serdak again. He didn't expect that Baron Serdak could still be so rational in the current situation. Handel frowned and then said, It's not that good. I just came from Nanta Town. The situation there is much worse than yours. There are many casualties, and the loss of materials is very serious. The military has promised to send more reinforcements. Now, I have to go to Plinto's town next. Quartermaster Handel then talked about the situation in other small towns, and Soldak felt that Doden Town was really the town with the best situation. Looking at the huge shells carried by Thunder Rhinoceros, there was a lot of space. Soldak suddenly thought of one thing. It was time to provide leather to the Goffaro family's leather trading house. He ordered his men to let the canteen of the military camp while preparing breakfast for 50 people. He faced Quartermaster Handel and said, Handel, can I ask you to bring a batch of hard armor back to Wilkes City? Quartermaster Handel actually saw the hard armor stacked at the entrance of the military camp, which made him have an illusion. When did this kind of hard armor actually become as abundant as the wood in the lumber yard? Of course, even if it is transported to Benna City, it will only take about 10 days to take the route of military supplies. If the hard armor cannot be processed, it can also be handed over to the logistics department. Military merit or other matters can be discussed. Quartermaster Handel said cheerfully, Can we still use the military supplies route? Sernak asked in surprise. Quartermaster Handel patted his chest hard and said, Of course there is no problem. Our Luther army is resisting the beast tide in the Belan Plain. What else is more urgent than us? Then Quartermaster Handel called the caravan leader over and introduced him to Soldak. This is the caravan director, Jorg. He is a very trustworthy businessman. He can help you transport these supplies to wherever you want it delivered. Can it be sent to Benna City? Soldak asked the young supervisor. He must be a Benna. Although he is a businessman, he actually has a sword hanging on his waist. He looked young, with neatly trimmed hair and beard. He acted modestly and said to Serdak, Yes, sir. These, Serdak pointed to all the stacks outside the military camp. Although the horses in his cavalry camp also need a lot of protective gear made of hard armor. There are too many of them. This is really a big deal, Director Yurg said in a low voice. Supervisor Yorg secretly sighed in surprise at being able to transport so many ghost patterned soldier and hard armors. Serdak invited the people brought by the caravan and Quartermaster Handel to the canteen and treated them to a sumptuous breakfast. Quartermaster Handel was going to rest for a day in Doden Town and set off for Plento's town at night. News of the victory in Duo Dan Canyon quickly spread to the town. During the day, more mercenary groups went out of the city to hunt ghost striped soldier ants. The good days of the merchants in Duo Dan Town were coming again. The merchants in Doden Town were helpless as Commander Serdak handed over a large amount of hard armor to the Thunder Rhino Caravan. In the evening of that day, Quartermaster Handel followed Director Yurg on the road, and 14 Thunder Rhinoceros rushed to Plento's town overnight. In fact, this kind of large transportation vehicle is very convenient. The wooden cabins on their backs can provide enough rest space. Only 14 drivers are needed to drive the Thunder Rhino on the road. Others can sit comfortably on the back of the Thunder Rhino and do whatever they want. Just order anything. Serdak personally sent Handel and his party outside the town. Chapter 791 War Horse Duo Dan Town in the distance is immersed in the night, and only the lanterns hanging on the arrow towers on the North City Wall can be seen in the distance. Even the thorny mountains were hidden under the night, leaving only a dirt road extending into the distance on the grass. A row of thunder rhinoceros marched towards the town of Plentos with heavy steps. A row of deep giant footprints were left on the soft grass. The thunder rhinoceros occasionally makes a low, grunting sound, which is extremely oppressive. The caravan moved along the dirt road, and not long after, two thunder rhinoceros broke away from the group and stopped on the grass slope. The two thunder rhinoceros made a long low cry. Director York quickly asked his thunder rhino to rush ahead. Two drivers were already standing next to the front legs of a thunder rhinoceros to check the situation. Behind them were two assistants holding lanterns, and several people were whispering. Director Jorg and Quartermaster Handel came down from the ladder and hurried over. The two drivers quickly whispered a few words to Director Jorg, and then led him around the two front legs of the Thunder Rhinoceros. Not long after, Director Jorg came back with a frown on his face and said to the Quartermaster with an ugly face, Sir Handel, we have two Thunder Rhinoceros with ulcerated toes. 
They were probably bitten by red ants the last time they encountered a colony of ghost strike red ants. Handel took a deep breath. Since Director Yoder took the initiative to come over and talk about this matter, it meant something had happened. He asked, Is it troublesome? Director Yurg nodded and said, We have treated the wound, but the ulcer has not been cured. And now the situation has worsened. Need to find a potion master? Quartermaster Handel asked. Director Yurg shook his head and said, No need for the time being. We have already sent a message to Wilk City, and there will be dedicated animal trainers and therapists coming. Can you hold on to Plato's town? Quartermaster Handel frowned and looked at the dark grassland again and asked. Director Yurg said with some worry, The injury to the toe will make the Thunder Rhino become very irritable, and problems may arise. Quartermaster Handel thought for a moment and then said, Then load the goods from these two Thunder Rhinos onto the other Thunder Rhinos and take them back to Doden Town, while the other Thunder Rhinos continue to Plato's town. Yes, Lord Handel. Director Yurg breathed a sigh of relief secretly thinking that the logistics director of the military department was really good at communicating as the youngest manager of the Thunder Rhino Caravan. This time, he led the team to the towns in the north of Wilk City. It was actually quite stressful. This transportation task was done. From now on, he will be in charge of the Thunder Rhino Caravan. The position will be stable. If he doesn't do well, he may have to go back to other caravans as his deputy in despair because these two Thunder Rhinoceros were injured. The cargo on them was not much. Director York asked the two handlers to return to Doden Town and wait for the animal trainers and therapists arriving from Wilk City. The caravan still needs to continue its journey. Before leaving, Quartermaster Handel took out a piece of parchment letter and handed it to Director Jorg and said to him, I have a good relationship with the commander of the garrison in Doden Town. This is what I wrote to Commander Soldak. I wrote a letter and asked your people to give this letter to him when they return to Doden Town. I believe he will take care of your people. You're quickly thank you. Thank you so much. Lord Handel. Not long after, the two drivers took the letter and drove the two Thunder Rhinos back to Doden Town, while the other Thunder Rhinos continued towards Plunto's town. Andrew returned to the military camp from the Doden Gorge very late with a group of cavalry from the cavalry battalion. Almost all the cavalry were stained with acid. After returning to the station, a group of cavalry wearing full heavy armor rushed under the bathing wall to wash away the acid on their bodies, and then took off their armors while shouting. The knights were almost covered with acid. The acid corrosion caused the skin to turn red, and many skins suffered from severe ulcers. The war horses gathered next to the stables and kept neighing. They were obviously injured to varying degrees. The native herdsmen in the military camp quickly ran out of the dormitory and took over the horses. According to past practice, they first removed the heavy armor from the horses. Then the war horses shaved, given water, fed with fodder, and finally led into the stable. But this time, these aboriginal herdsmen ran to Andrew and talked to the shirtless Andrew for a long time next to the bathing wall. After returning from this battle, these war horses were all exhausted. Even if they could recover from their hidden injuries, they might not be able to charge on the battlefield. Although they have lost weight several times, these ancient Bolai horses still cannot bear the weight of cavalry and full armor. After several charges, the hamstrings of these ancient Bolai horses were damaged. Even if they train now, they may not be able to return to their previous condition. Andrew did not expect that the matter would be so serious. Although he knew that these war horses were not the first choice of heavy cavalry before, he never thought that this matter would be so serious. A war horse worth 20 gold pieces may only be used for pulling horses in the future. Che. This is really unacceptable. The cavalrymen who were taking a bath also gathered around. Everyone was dumbfounded when they heard the complaints of the indigenous herdsmen. When I think about it, after all, I have not received formal night training, and I am not very proficient in formal riding skills. One time I went out to fight in the city. My horses were disabled. In the future, the cavalry will be converted into infantry. And then I will be really embarrassed. Serdak was still at the small building preparing to use holy light to treat the knights who had returned from the Doden Canyon. From a distance, he saw that many knights had large areas of skin corroded by acid and ulcerated. Seeing the cavalry surrounding the stables, I walked over and found a group of honest and dutiful native herdsmen in a frenzy. After listening carefully for a while, I realized that Andrew was a little too greedy for merit this time in the canyon battle, so that these the physical strength of the war horse cannot withstand the high-intensity charge. When the ogre heard about this, he ran to the stable. At this moment, his eyes on the horses became much more ferocious, and he did not hide the strong appetite in his heart. 
just like a lion wandering in the grassland. When the native herdsmen saw Serdak and the half-elf archer Samira approaching, they all stepped forward to greet them. They expressed their inner thoughts to Serdak, hoping that the cavalry in the cavalry battalion should wear hard leather. In battle, the heavy armor on the horses is also discarded, so that the horses can run. Serdak didn't want his heavy cavalry battalion to suddenly turn into light cavalry. The Green Empire's most advantageous unit was the constructed knights, followed by the heavy cavalry regiment. The light cavalry was not as good as the heavy armored infantry regiment. What is it for? He thought twice and decided to go to the stables to see if those war horses still had a chance to be cured. At this time, a group of four-wheeled carriages drove into the military camp. These carriages were loaded with the corpses of some ghost-striped male ants and giant soldier ants. The ordinary soldier ants had been thrown into the pit to initially soften their hard armor. The carriage stopped in the open space in front of the small building. The native people in the town jumped out of the carriage and began to unload the goods in a hurry. Unexpectedly, Andrew led the cavalry to the middle of the canyon, drove away the ant colonies there, and hired a group of aborigines from the town to dig out all the ghost-striped mail and buried under the rubble. Basically, all the gains from the battle were transported back to the garrison camp. But these gains were probably more valuable than these Gubo war horses. Serdak could only comfort these aboriginal herdsmen. Those abandoned war horses could be incorporated into the logistics group. There were large ranches everywhere in the Belan Plain. And it was easy to buy some war horses. The only problem is that the newly purchased Gubo Lai horses still cannot carry the heavy cavalry. And the new war horses need to re-establish a close partnership with the cavalry. The group of people walked to the stables. And Serdak suddenly saw his old companion. This ancient Bolai horse was brought back from Handanar County. After Serdak became a knight, it also faced the problem of not being able to afford Serdak's weight. This may be a problem that all heavy cavalry regiments need to face. Unless they can buy stronger green scale horses, they will have to find ways to face the more popular ancient Bolai horses. Serdak stood in front of the stable, reaching out and gently stroking the old man's silky mane. The native herdsman had taken good care of it, and the coat had become shiny recently. When the ancient Bolai horse saw Serdak, he meekly licked Serdak's palm with his wet tongue. Serdak remembered that he had obtained a strengthening scroll from Scholar Ferdinand, so that his war horse body had enough carrying capacity. Although I don't have the strengthening scroll in my hand now. The life magic pattern strength and tenacity I obtained from the giant ghost pattern soldier ants is so much that the magic sealing box can hardly contain it. The veterans in the cavalry battalion had this kind of magic pattern implanted almost as soon as they reached their first turn. After all, there are only a few dozen veterans who can successfully advance to the first rank, and the remaining magic patterns of life cannot be sold publicly. Once this thing is noticed by the magic union, they may be treated as heretics. Now, if it could be implanted into the bodies of these ancient Bolai horses, perhaps the problem of insufficient carrying capacity could be solved. Although Serdak wanted to try it, he was in no hurry to do it right away. He first asked Andrew to check the injuries of the cavalry. Those with serious injuries should be treated first. The cavalry with minor injuries should go to the canteen to have dinner first, and then come back for treatment. The local area is rich in a kind of wild grass with thick oval leaves. Although it is not a magic herb, it has a unique curative effect on burns caused by the acid rot of red ants. Recently, more and more cavalrymen have been injured and burned by acid in the military camp. Nika heard from the local aborigines that this kind of weed is very effective. So he took some aboriginal children to the wild to collect some, and then ground it with a stone mill. It was broken into a green juice and stored in a clay pot. Now this group of cavalry came here to heal their wounds. As long as their bodies were burned by sour liquid, they would apply this green grass juice directly to their skin after cleaning it. It is said that it is very effective. Although Selena looked haggard as if she had just recovered from a serious illness, she still had to count the seized supplies in the military camp. She was holding a sheepskin account book, covering her mouth and nose and leading people to count the ghost-striped male ants in the empty field in front of the small building. There is no way. There are too few people in the military camp who can do material statistics. Zigna squatted in the kitchen to boil water and reboiled the hemostatic bandage so that it could still be used. Serdak concentrated on treating the injured cavalry. After sending away the last wounded soldier, Soldak leaned against the railing in front of the house, looking at the northern city wall not far away hidden in the night, and took a sip from a glass of golden cider. Feeling indescribably relaxed, the fourth queen ant took the ant colony in the canyon out of Doden Canyon, and the garrison camp could be more relaxed. Just as he was about to return to Pussy Mountain through the void gate to see the red dragon Iser, he saw Adams and Gallatin walking over from the dormitory. 
Commander Sardak, Adams, wearing mithril-plated armor and a bright red cloak, walked up to Sardak with his chest puffed out, looking very heroic. Seeing the expressions on their faces, Sardak guessed what they were thinking. What? Do you want to try to clean up Ghost Stripe Red Ants outside the city tomorrow? Soldek asked with a smile. We have this plan. There is no need for Gallatin and I to take turns guarding the city wall during the day tomorrow. So we applied to clean up those Ghost Stripe Red Ants in the canyon, Adam said. Sardak agreed casually. Yes. Tomorrow I will arrange for Samira to guard the north wall during the day. But you must also pay attention to safety and try not to go too deep. Seeing that Soldek agreed, Adams and Gallatin left the small building with satisfaction. As soon as Soldak put down the wine glass in his hand, the guards at the gate of the camp ran in and reported to him. Commander, two drivers from the Thunder Rhino Caravan sent a letter. Soldak frowned, took the letter into his hand, and saw what was written on it. Baron Soldak, sorry to bother you again at this time. When I saw this letter, the caravan had already left Odin Town and was on its way to Plento's town. However, when we set off, we found that the two Thunder Rhinoceros had minor injuries and needed to stay with you for the time being. We have sent people back to Wilk City to ask for the support of the animal trainer. Please look after it until the animal trainer arrives. Your friend Handel. Sardak folded the letter again, put it in his arms, and then asked, Where are the two Thunder Rhino Riders? Are they still at the door? Yes. Commander, replied the guard at the gate of the camp. Soldek nodded and said, Okay, please invite them both in and I will arrange this matter. I originally wanted to invite the two drivers to live in the military camp, but I didn't expect that the two drivers could live directly in the wooden house on the back of Thunder Rhinoceros. They just hoped to obtain Serdak during their stay in Doden Town, Baron's Asylum. As long as you don't violate any laws in Doden Town, no one can do anything to you, Soldak said. The two drivers left the military camp with great gratitude. In fact, Serdak originally wanted to ask what kind of injury the Thunder Rhino suffered. It's a pity that the two drivers walk so fast that he didn't have time to ask. Chapter 792 War Horse 2 The mercenary union has recently had two elite mercenary groups actively participating in the defense of the northern city wall. These two mercenary groups were originally not well known in the mercenary union in Doden Town. However, the two mercenary captains had some connections with the local aborigines. In the early stages of the formation of the Beast Tide, they took the initiative to offer to Serdak the local garrison provided some support. For example, you can participate in city wall defense. At the beginning, other colleagues laughed at me because I could easily lose my life if I don't do it right. However, as the beast tide really appeared, the benefits that came with it were enough to shut up all the mercenary groups in Duo in town. The daily defense work was indeed very hard, but the rewards also made everyone jealous. A batch of magic cores were brought back from the city wall and the probability of these magic cores producing magic crystals was almost 50 to 50. Even if no magic crystals were formed, the worst they could be were fragments of magic crystals. Not only that, the mercenary group participated in the defense of the northern city wall, and also deepened the connection with the military camp. During this period, some outstanding mercenaries gradually left the original mercenary groups and joined in. In 20 days, the strength of these two mercenary groups nearly tripled becoming the strongest mercenary union in Duodan Town. Two mercenary regiments. Although the foreign business group organization in Duodan Town made some small moves at the beginning of the Beast Tide, the business group lost the qualification to trade hard armor. But then, the business group immediately changed its approach. The hunting team organized by the business group has also done some things in Duodan Town recently. At least in the eyes of the residents of the town. The foreign business group is quite good. Although the northern city wall runs across the southern section of Duodan Canyon, it blocks almost all ghost-marked red ants. But in fact, it still can't stop some ghost-marked red ants from infiltrating. Recently, some ghost-striped red ants often appear around the town. They usually appear in the surrounding mountain forests, lumber camps, and quarries. They will also crawl into the farms at night, causing the town to be in a state of panic. Panic. Although Mrs. Luna repeatedly submitted processing applications to the garrison. During the ant colony's siege, Serdak did not have much energy to deal with these matters. The hunting team of the merchant group took up the matter during this period, running around the town investigating the traces of ghost-striped red ants and actively handling the matter. Although the harvest was not much, it won the favor of the residents of Duodan town. Soldak didn't say anything. 
but these things were sent to his desk in written form from the town hall. Since you have done something for Duo in town, you should be rewarded. That's what Serdak thinks. This time the North City Wall Gate is opened. The mercenary union and the merchant hunting team have obtained the permission to go to the Duodan Canyon and can take advantage of this time to enter the Duodan Canyon to hunt ghost pattern soldier ants. There are still a lot of ant colonies in Duodan Canyon, but these red and seem to have forgotten the purpose of entering the canyon in the first place. Without a queen to control them, they began to wander around the canyon at will. Only some of the red ants are still approaching the north wall. It's a pity that the hunting team of the merchant group and the mercenary group in the town have been idle for too long recently. They rushed out from the passage of the North City Wall like hungry wolves. Even if they encountered some ghost-striped worker ants along the way, they were unwilling to let them go. For weeks after the outbreak of the animal tide in Doden Town, an action broke out where the entire town wanted to participate in hunting red ants. However, as a military and political officer in the garrison camp, Soldak was relatively rational and did not release the permit for the Northern City Wall. Only some capable teams would be allowed to enter the Duodan Canyon. Despite this, some people still walked out happily in the past two days, only to be lying on stretchers when they came back. Sadness and joy are sometimes just a thought. A heaven. A H L. Ever since Mrs. Luna became the acting mayor, there have been no major disputes in Duodan Town, and it has been very peaceful for more than a month. The Imperial immigrants and the Bellan Aborigines have been divided into two living circles in the town recently. Everyone deliberately avoids disputes, mainly because of the approaching beast tide. Whoever makes some small moves at this time will first face the wrath of the local garrison. Commander Serdak was obviously more partial to the civilians of the Empire and the Belan Aborigines. As a noble lord of the Green Empire, he did not take into account the interests of the nobles first. This made the nobles in Doden Town very dissatisfied. But there was nothing they could do. The military has the absolute right to speak in such a border town. The Butra Tax Collector's tax collection has gradually been on track recently. Many business groups have come to the town, and each transaction needs to pay a tax. Recently, there has also been some tax collection in the free market in the town. The position of the town tax collector has been from a sinecure to a plum job. The trading houses in the small town are also much more honest. Baron Josie Golding has finally learned to behave with his tail between his legs. At least, he will be more honest during Soldex tenure. After losing the support of his uncle, the Wilkes City Councilman, Josh Golding discovered that he couldn't change anything. Serdak didn't mind if the mercenary group traded what they got in the canyon with the business group. In fact, as long as this kind of transaction is more formal, it can promote the development of Duodan Town. He is not an old stubborn and will not keep all the benefits in his own pocket. Serdak planned to try to implant the magic pattern of life into the war horse to enhance the strength and endurance of the ancient Bolai horse. He set up a separate wooden house next to the stables and let the two-headed ogre guard the door. Then he carefully observed the legs of Gubo Lai's war horse and found that the front legs of the war horse were about the same size as the legs of the giant ghost pattern soldier ants. This way, he didn't have to do anything when extracting these life magic patterns from the leather of Warcraft. It is so fine to reduce the coverage of the life magic pattern. Serdak then built a sacrificial altar in the wooden house and decisively tried to implant the strength and tenacity magic pattern on the front legs of an ancient bolai horse. The ancient bolai horse did not explode and die on the spot due to insufficient carrying capacity. Instead, its eyes were bloodshot, and it appeared to be very excited. The effect of injecting magic patterns was also very obvious. A unique cloud pattern appeared on one of the legs of the ancient bolai horse. This ancient bolai horse became extremely strong and violent. Saldak asked Andrew to put on a full suit. Using the Earth Shield magic pattern construct. Ride a horse around Doden Town. Andrew equipped almost all the armor weapons that could be put on the horse. And then ran around the town of Doden five times. During this period, they carried out more than a dozen charges in a row. When they returned to the military camp, the ancient bow lie horse was steaming with a trace of heat from its body. Snoring relaxedly. And walked into the stable in high spirits. He also used his steaming head to hump the other Maras in the stable very coquettishly. Chapter 793 News from Alanza City Serdak stepped through the void gate and walked into the warm and dry lava mine. The cave was filled with a faint smell of sulfur, which made him slow down his breathing immediately. He ignored Aphrodite sitting by the lava pool and ran to the red crystal cluster, knocked out a few red crystals and put them in his pocket, prepared to bring it to Israel later. Aphrodite wore a long black silk dress and lay elegantly on a wicker chair, feeling like she was sunbathing on the beach. What makes Serdak feel like this is not a hot 
and smelly lava mine at all, but a tropical island full of sunshine, sandy beaches and sea. There were two cobalt female slaves squatting next to them, wearing rough linen skirts. It was difficult to tell the gender of the cobalts from their faces, but the female cobalts had a pair of exaggerated food bags on their chests, and their hips swayed very much when they walked. Exaggerate. The legs of the cobalt slave girl are very short. Carrot-shaped and bow-legged. They are not good at cutting fabrics. So the clothes they wear are basically modified with grain bags. They only need to cut three holes at the bottom of the grain bags and put them on to become a tube skirt. A cobalt female slave squatted in front of a wicker chair and was squeezing Aphrodite's legs. It was squatting there because it was covered by the long skirt. If you didn't distinguish it carefully, you couldn't tell whether it was squatting or standing. It was too short. Another cobalt female slave was beside the sulfur pool. A barbecue grill was set up there. There was a row of worker and legs placed on the shelf. The grease was left along the hard skin, dripping into the lava pool below, and suddenly exploded. A spark comes. The cobalt slave girl is not afraid of being burned at all. She turns the ant legs over skillfully to ensure even heating. The smell of the food made the two cobalt female slaves salivate. From time to time, they would stick out their long tongues to lick their noses and furry faces, which looked a bit funny. When Aphrodite saw Serdak walking out of the void gate, she sat up from the wicker chair, pointed at the roasted crispy ant legs and said, Would you like to try it? Serdak killed too many ghost-marked red ants on the battlefield. Every time, the sour and rotten odor filled the battlefield. The disgusting smell was a test of one's endurance. Now whenever I see this kind of hard sh. L food, I feel that there is a rancid smell all around. And I can't eat it anymore. I've had dinner. This thing is not uncommon in Doden Town. It seems that you are in good condition. Serdak walked to the lava pool and said to the succubus, who was in a good mood. Aphrodite stood up from the wicker chair, lightly lifted the hem of her skirt with both hands, turned around in front of Serdak, and said with a proud look on her face, Yes, I have benefited a lot from the gift from that queen ant. It feels like a wing has grown behind me. When you are free, can you implant a magic pattern here? Serdak looked stunned. You must know that if two life magic patterns are implanted at the same time, for humans, it must reach at least the second level. You still want the one on the queen ant's head? Is your carrying capacity okay? Serdak asked. The succubus Aphrodite glanced at Serdak, without hiding her strength, and said, Of course, I just had my wings cut off, which caused me to lose the source of my body's power. It's not that I don't have enough strength. There's nothing wrong with getting a tattoo like this. Serdak knew very little about succubi, but since Aphrodite said so, he saw no reason to refuse. Instead of hesitating and being forced to agree in the end, it would be better to agree happily. Well, there's no need for another time. I just have two more here. I was originally worried that this kind of high-level magic pattern would dissipate over time, even if it was hidden in the magic ceiling box. Now I can use the most powerful magic pattern. Okay, it's quiet enough here. So let's start now. Serdak asked cheerfully. Aphrodite covered her sexy lips with her slender fingers, stared at Soldak with a pair of dark purple eyes, and confirmed in surprise. Are you promising me? She swooped up like a bird in the forest and gave Soldak a big hug. Although Serdak and Aphrodite were contractual partners, they had never had such close contact. His face felt a little hot, so he had to be more gentlemanly and hold Aphrodite's smooth shoulders and whispered to her, You have to let me go. I'll take out the magic pattern of life and prepare the sacrificial altar. Aphrodite opened her arms and threw herself happily on the wicker chair. She ordered the cobalt slave girl to get a pillow and just lay there watching Serdak busy beside the lava pool. A bubble emerged from the lava pool and made a ripple sound. As the two-faced, four-armed demon on the altar gradually dissipated in the holy light, Serdak let out a sigh of relief and put his hands into the basin to wash. Then he patted Aphrodite whose body was burning with orange magic patterns. The flame-shaped magic pattern seemed to carry the power of destruction. So hot that Serdak quickly retracted his hand. Aphrodite was lying on the wicker chair, stretching her body. Her lips were slightly open. Her eyes seemed to be still wandering in some kind of spiritual world. And she had no idea that she was done here. The second spiritual life magic pattern is quite symmetrical. Like two relatively slightly curved T's, starting from the back of the neck along the edge of the shoulder blades completely cutting off the scars left by the fleshy wings on the back. Covered. It did not damage other natural magic patterns on her body. But the color of the implanted magic patterns was dark green. 
which was incompatible with the color of other magic patterns on Aphrodite's body. Aphrodite sighed softly, and then woke up. She once again accepted the magic pattern implantation from the ghost pattern Ant Queen. And the magic load she endured increased several times, which was also a considerable burden for her. Aphrodite pulled up the suspenders of her long skirt, and then climbed up from the wicker chair with a grin on her face. She no longer felt the ease of having the magic pattern implanted for the first time. But as she stood up straight, she waved her hands in front of her chest. A faint magic pattern appeared, and a complete pair of wings actually appeared behind her, instantly stimulating the potential of Sher. Her purple eyes were filled with magic, and they actually looked like two a moonstone filled with magical power. A ball of black fire burned on her body, and as she wiped away the magic marks in front of her, she slowly returned to normal. Two cobalt female slaves were hiding against the wall, trembling with fear at the power shown by Aphrodite. Seeing Aphrodite standing up again, she immediately fell to the ground, not even daring to raise her head. Serdak recovered the magic sealing box and put it back into the magic belt bag. He then removed the water-gathering rune board from the wall and poured out the water in the basin. By the way, Selena also asked me to express her gratitude to you on her behalf. If you hadn't helped me last time, it might have been very bad. Serdek said while sorting out his belongings. Actually, I should think more about it. Aphrodite lowered her head in confusion and looked at the figure she had always been proud of. She twisted her waist and felt that there was no flaw in her figure. Her eyes fell behind Soldak's busy figure. She couldn't help but purse her sexy lips and made a face quietly, with a look in her eyes. A little bit of resentment that can't be concealed. But he said, as a fighting partner, this is what I should do. With such a powerful dark domain, and the ability to instantly increase the power to the level of a strong person. Of course, I have the right to receive special care. If there's nothing else going on here, I'll go see Yissel. Sardak put the pocket on his side into the magic waste bag and prepared to walk deeper into the mine. Aphrodite had returned to her original appearance. She sat down on the wicker chair again and said leisurely to Sardak, By the way, I heard from Dada that people from Wall Village have been waiting for news about you in the sulfur mine. Dada was the cobalt slave girl of Aphrodite. Only then did Soldak stop, turn around and asked in surprise, Is Luke back? The cobalt slave girl ran out and spoke a strange language to Soldak. Percent you in a hashtag. Well, she said Luke was in Camp Sulphur. Aphrodite crossed her arms on her chest and replied to Soldak. You actually know cobalt language? Soldak felt that she really had a wide range of interests. Aphrodite glanced at him and said in a soft voice, I learned it when I was bored. It's not that difficult. Okay, I'll go find him. Serdak turned around and walked toward the entrance of the lava cave. He passed through the rock passage under the lava waterfall and walked out of Pudu Mountain. He found that the surrounding areas of Pudu Mountain were filled with volcanic ash. On Pussy Mountain at night, the lava rivers flowing halfway up the mountain are like thin orange lines. Probably because it was the dry season in the barren land. Even Mount Pudu began to rain volcanic ash all over the sky. Put the mask over your face and walk down the river of lava. Serdak met Luke at the sulfur camp at the foot of the mountain. This time Luke brought back a batch of hard skin armor that was rushed out from the city of Holanza. There are actually more than 70 sets. These hard skin armors were tailor-made for the ancient Bolai horses. The workmanship is very simple. Just cut the hard skin armor into pieces. Then soften the plastic. Harden again. Then use copper strips to seal the edges and knock on some copper. The rivets and copper locks retain many stacked buckles. As long as these buckles are connected together, a complete set of war horse protective gear can be formed. This kind of armor made of hard leather has far more coverage than armor. Luke cut open the coarse linen wrapping, revealing the dark red hard armor protective gear neatly stacked inside, and said excitedly, They are still working hard to make new protective gear. Master Yelani also said that if you find any inconvenience on the battlefield, you must communicate in time, and the leather workshop will make changes in time. Luke, thank Master Elin for me. Serdak did not expect that Elinsa's city would be able to provide him with all its support. And of course, there was help from Carl and Lance. Luke looked at Soldak with envy in his eyes, and he said smugly, I heard that the city of Holanza has not harvested the spoils of plain battles for a long time. Most of the noble lord's armies are trapped in the Warsaw Plain. You are simply the pride of Holanza now. I don't know how many people talk about your deeds. Is it that exaggerated? Serdak didn't expect that he was already famous. Luke puffed up his chest and said with certainty. Of course. Baron Karl said that Alensa's city needs an exciting victory. Then he knocked his head hard and said, 
By the way, Dark, Lance Magician received the piece of Warcraft leather you sent him. What kind of leather is yours? Lance Magician got that piece after taking the leather. He said that he would immediately organize people to rush to the Bylin Plain. Are Lance going to Belan? Serdak didn't expect that a piece of leather from the Queen Ant would actually make Lance want to go to Belan in person. Well, there are a group of six magicians. I drove them to the airport terminal. Luke followed Soldak with his eyes. Soldak came up, patted Luke on the shoulder, and said, I know. Luke, you have worked hard during this period, and you may have to work hard for a while longer. Is everything okay with everyone in the village? Luke chuckled. Fortunately, I heard that some people saw traces of desert bandits north of the Great Rift Valley. But now the people in the deserted land have moved to the south. They just wandered around the abandoned villages. He left in a hurry. Oh, remember, if there's anything going on in the village, come to me at Pudu Mountain. Soldek solemnly told him. Got it, Luke said, puffing up his chest. Serdak stuffed these 70 sets of hard-armored leather armor into his magic belt. He didn't stay at the mining camp for long, as he had to rush to see the Red Dragon Izer. In recent times, Israel has to come back with a little injury every time, as its strength continues to increase. Izer's range of activities begins to gradually expand, so it often provokes some powerful monsters with strong territorial awareness. I'll complain to Serdak when I get back. Serdak could only remind it to be calm. Occasionally, when Israel suffered a loss outside, Serdak would also give the Red Dragon some comfort, such as asking it to be patient until he was able to rush to Istanbul. Plain, two people worked together to find trouble for those Warcraft lords. The Red Dragon was looking forward to Soldak's proposal. In fact, it also tried to let Serdak pass through the wall covered with war reliefs. Serdak tried it repeatedly several times. The relief wall felt cold and hard. To Serdak, that walls do exist. Seeing the red dragon clicking as it ate up all the red crystals like finger biscuits. Serdak quickly exchanged the rune language with it. Then, he hurried back to Duodan town. After crossing the void gate, Serdak returned to the study in this small building. Walking out of the study, opening the bedroom door and walking in. She saw Selina lying on the big bed wearing a nightgown. Maybe it was because the weather was a little hot. The thin blanket covering her body was lifted to one side. And the nightgown was slightly lifted up revealing a round, snow-white stripe. Her long legs were particularly dazzling in the dark bedroom. Chapter 794 Magic Pattern War Horse The rising sun emerged from the ridge on the east side, and the dazzling sunlight dispersed the thick fog in the canyon. A group of city defense guards on the city wall had their armor wetted by the thick fog. Although ghost-striped red ants have been wandering in the middle of the canyon in the past two days, the city defense brigade and the garrison still stood at the top of the city. The blood stains on the model city wall have not yet been cleaned. It is clean, and there are still some limbs of ghost striped red ants hanging on the cliffs on both sides. There are light white ashes piled under the city wall, which are left after the corpses of ghost marked red ants were burned. Occasionally, you can find some large bones and precious magic cores inside. Of course, these magic cores belong to the local garrisons. So the infantry in these garrison camps sit almost all the ashes, and cleaned out the oil collection tanks to prevent fire from happening next time the ant colony attacks the city. Oil cannot flow into the oil tank unimpeded. Many wounded soldiers return to the military barracks to recuperate. The tombstones of those soldiers who died in battle at the top of the city were buried on the high hills outside the town. It was the only cemetery in Duodan town, and the residents of the town were accustomed to bury their dead there. Serdak climbed to the top of the city. Under the cover of the rising sun, he could still see some withered bouquets of flowers in front of some simple tombstones in the distance. Samira sat quietly on the arrow tower. Her fine and messy hair wet with dew. Her light red eyes with a cold smile. And even the smile contained the unique pride of the elves. Her hunting bow imitating the painting of withering was hung in the corner. The wind blew over, and the ironwood bow blades with carved patterns swung back and forth. There was an arrow pod hanging on Samira's waist. Hanging just outside the wall stacks of the arrow tower. The feathers of every arrow inside were carefully trimmed. The fire has been completely extinguished under the city wall. The ashes of the ghost mark red and accumulated under the city wall will be scattered on the vast grassland on the south side of the town. The farmers of the town have taken the initiative to take on the task of transporting the remaining ashes. Starting from the morning, these the farmers drove their carriages and began a hard day's work. Under the organization of the Duodan Town Hall, many residents of the town transported the long fire-resistant foundation stones out of the city. 
a group of craftsmen were digging out some broken foundation stones, filling them with new ones, and then fill the gaps with something as thick as clay. Don't think that the beast tide is over. In fact, only two days have passed. The ghost striped red ants in Duoden Canyon have shown signs of gathering again, although there is no queen ant to command remotely from behind. Relying on the survival instinct, they have gathered in Doden Canyon. There are more than 100,000 ghost striped red ants in Dan Canyon, and they are gradually showing signs of moving south. Although the town's mercenary group and business group hunting team have hunted as many of these red ants as possible, and there are some casualties every day, they still cannot stop the large group of ghost marked red ants from migrating south. Serdak stood at the top of the city, looking at the rolling red clouds in the distance of the canyon, and said to Samira, I plan to implant those magic patterns into the ancient Bolai horse, so that the cavalry can enter the Doden Canyon fully armed. Samira grabbed the hunting bow, jumped down from the archery tower nimbly, stood next to Soldek and said, Are you going to buy a batch of blue-scaled horses? We harvest so many magic crystals every day. Obviously, it's more cost-effective to change horses. Serdek held one hand on the city wall, looked into the distance where the fog had cleared, and said, Almost all of the best war horses in the empire are in the western provinces of the empire. The province of Bena belongs to the central provinces and can be regarded as two major regions of the empire. Nowadays, heavily armored war horses will almost never appear on the market. This kind of good thing will never happen to us. Instead of waiting for illusory opportunities, it is better to seize those that can be realized. Samira looked at her white and slender fingers, turned to look at Suldek's side face, and asked, a life magic pattern worth 300 gold coins is used on these ancient Bolai war horses. Is it worth it? It should probably be okay. Soldek said. Samira smiled and said in a relaxed tone. Then do it. At worst, you can fight out of Doden Canyon and earn back in a short time. It's a pity that you can't take these bed crossbows with you. Yes, the worst case scenario is to fight out of the canyon. Anyway, I collected it in the past few weeks. If I use it up, I can still earn it back. Serdak's voice was loud. And after speaking, he strode down the city wall. Samira was left standing on the city wall with a puzzled look on her face. Serdak decided to colonize a large number of the ancient Bolai horses with the life magic patterns obtained from the soldier ants. This thing can only be done by him alone. In the past three weeks, the garrison has killed nearly a hundred giant ghost pattern soldier ants. A little more than the ghost pattern male ants. This kind of life demon with strength and resilience patterns are found on almost every ghost pattern soldier ant. And the yield is quite high. Serdak took out a total of 46 magic patterns and implanted them into the bodies of the veterans of the cavalry battalion. Now he still had 117 in stock. He decided to use them all to transform the ancient Bolai horses in the stable. He worked in the stables of the military camp for nearly a week before instilling the magic patterns of life on the bodies of 100 war horses. 100 ancient Bolai horses were fully armed with full metal armor. The knights on the horses also wore full heavy armor. Knight lances, flails, knight long swords and knight shields. They brought a full set of equipment. And there was also a hanging hanging on the back of the saddle. Even with seven days of marching rations, these war horses can still stand where they are. In addition, there are 70 ancient Bolai horses covered in hard leather protective gear. The cavalry wear half armor, leather trousers and riding boots. The only weapons they carry are spears and knight swords. After such weight reduction. Next. These 70 batches of war horses can be considered as accompanying the army on the expedition. This time. A total of 170 formal cavalry were gathered. The rest of the cavalry in the cavalry battalion can still only be regarded as horse infantry. That is. They ride horses when they are on the road. Once they reach the battlefield. They can still only dismount and fight on foot. On the eighth day after the weekly Ant Queen evacuated the Duodan Canyon, a group of heavy cavalry led by Andrew appeared in the Duodan Canyon, right in front of a group of mercenaries and merchant hunting teams. Line up, holding a gun, raise your shield, charge. Fortunately, the Duodan Canyon is not too wide. One hundred fully armed heavy cavalry were arranged in two rows and launched a wave of charges towards the Ant Colony amid deafening shouts of killing. However, the brilliance of these heavy cavalry was completely overshadowed by the gorgeous fighting style of the two-headed ogre wearing iron armor on the battlefield. When Guaidam and his mage brother Nailware ran on the battlefield, their bodies were covered with a thick layer of ice armor. When the ogre ran, he also threw out a big fireball. Although there was only one fireball, 
The moment, the fireball exploded in the ant colony. The atmosphere on the battlefield was completely ignited. In his eyes, those ghostly patterned soldier ants were as non-existent as the air. The bone-crushing stick in his hand was always beating the ghostly patterned soldier ants in the ant colony. In such a narrow canyon, the heavy cavalry only needs to increase the speed of the charge and hit them with a strong armor. In an instant, the southernmost ant colony will be rushed to pieces. Chapter 795 Victory in the Battle of the Canyon Relying on the charge, the cavalry can pierce the five-meter-long knight's spear fiercely into the ghost-patterned soldier ants' bodies covered with hard armor. The ghost-striped soldier ants, with a body length of about three meters, look like a bad-tempered one-horned bison. But they are stronger and have a worse temper than the one-horned bison. And they can also spit acidic liquid. Even if he was half-lying on the battlefield with a knight's spear stuck in his body, he would still attack the cavalry with half of his immobile body. But waiting to bring them was another knight's spear that came later. They will be firmly pinned to the ground by their spears. And even if they still have room to struggle, they will be killed by the cavalry following them. The large number of ghost-striped worker ants became dead souls under the iron hoofs of war horses. Led by Andrew, the 170 cavalry did not plan to penetrate the entire Doden Gorge. They just washed away a large group of red ants that were preparing to move towards the north wall, and then walked in a circle in the canyon clearing. He widened the charging distance again and launched a second charge towards these tenacious red ants. They were like bayonets, and their purpose was to use this penetration tactic to break up the ant colony. Under the attack of 170 cavalry, the nearly 10,000 ant colony was successfully cut into seven isolated islands, large and small. In a colony of nearly 10,000 ghost-striped red ants, there are less than a thousand ghost-striped soldier ants. There are no high-level monsters, like giant chariots, like ghost-marked male ants. These soldier ants are not a big threat to the ogres. The ogre Gulitum entered the ant colony and refused to come out again. After he had his brothers, his body entered a second stage of development. His powerful physique gave him the power to completely suppress the ghost-patterned soldier ants. Standing in the dense ant colony, his lower body was almost covered with acid rot but most of the acid rot was blocked by the ice armor on his body. It looked extremely miserable. But in fact, the acid rot liquid did not touch his body. The bone-crushing stick in his hand smashed the heads of countless ghost-patterned soldier ants. And occasionally, he would throw a fireball from his body. The fireball exploded around the ogre, like a brilliant firework. As the cavalry cut through a group on the battlefield, the horse infantry behind them entered. With the cooperation of 200 archers, Serdak led 800 infantry soldiers to concentrate their efforts on clearing out the ant colony separated from the easternmost side. There were probably nearly 2,000 ghost-striped red ants here. But under the attack of the cavalry, the number of ghost-striped soldier ants was reduced to more than 100. For ordinary heavy-armored infantry warriors, ghost-patterned soldier ants are still very threatening. But with proper tactics, it only takes three people to work together to block a ghost-patterned soldier ant. As long as you are careful to avoid the acid of the ghost-striped worker ants. The strength of ordinary infantry and worker ants is about the same. Adams and Gallatin followed Soldek. The two of them mainly stared at the giant ghost-patterned soldier ants that suddenly appeared from the ant colony. This kind of giant ghost-patterned red ants are the biggest killers in the ant colony. They are extremely powerful. And their hard armor is very strong. When they are killed from the ant colony, without the suppression of the crossbow, even ordinary warriors can possess it. Serdak's aura of power also couldn't stop those giant soldier ants. Samira stood at the front of the archer group. She stood on top of a wooden frame similar to a siege vehicle. There were four wheels under the wooden frame, and it was drawn into the battlefield by six Kuba horses. She is specifically responsible for being on the battlefield. Once the soldiers encounter danger on the battlefield, Samira will use her superb bow skills to shoot down the ghostly red ants and minimize the casualties of the heavy armored infantry. An army formation of nearly a thousand people can quickly deal with this divided ant colony. Andrew's giant axe pointed in the direction in which the cavalry charged. The fierce fighting turned the entire battlefield into chaos. Serdak stood in the front row of the heavy armored infantry. He was more accustomed to this infantry fighting style. The battle lasted from morning to night. As the entire ant colony was eaten by the Duodan town garrison, the larger ant colony in the canyon did not even approach the battlefield. This ant colony was driven to the northern section of the canyon by cavalry and archers. They were large in number but extremely loosely organized. Under the rain of arrows, ghost-striped worker ants were left dead and injured, and the rest of the red ants continued to attack. The ground was forced to retreat. 
The mercenary group and caravan hunting group in the town saw the cavalry battalion fighting in the field for the first time. They saw a group of cavalry overturning a huge ant colony, which made all the mercenaries a little dumbfounded. Although these mercenaries have been cooperating with the garrison to fight at the top of the city, they still retain this pride in their hearts. The mercenaries believe that the reason why the garrison was able to defend the northern city wall was not because of their own strength, but because the high northern wall blocked the footsteps of the ghost-striped red ants. The garrison used sufficient ordnance supplies, and they kept setting fires, throwing fire scale bombs, and relying on bed crossbows and rolling stones. The ghost-marked red ants were blocked. In terms of real combat effectiveness, a single powerful mercenary can throw away these garrison cavalry for several blocks. The mercenaries believe that as long as they are given a set of magic pattern constructs and powerful war horses, they will be the reserve force of a construct knights. No matter what, they are definitely stronger than ordinary cavalry. In fact, many people in the business hunting team also have this view. But what they saw now completely changed the mercenaries' perceptions. When they looked at the cavalry coming down from the battlefield again, their eyes became a little more respectful. When the cavalry charged in the front, the infantry behind them cleaned up the separated red ants. The battlefield was filled with the corpses of large and small ghost-striped red ants. At dusk, some carriages passed through the North City Gate and entered the rear of the battlefield in Duodan Canyon. The soldiers piled the harvested red ant carcasses into categories, and many carriages loaded with various supplies returned to Duodan Town one after another. Serdak led the main force of the garrison back to Doden Town. The residents of the town crowded into the open space behind the northern city wall, leaving only a narrow passage. Amidst cheers, buckets of diluted ant grass juice were poured out. Clean water poured out from both sides. When the cavalrymen passed through the passage, the sour liquid on their bodies was quickly washed away by the clear water. No matter where you are, the admiration for warriors will never change. The girls in the town stood at the front of the crowd, holding basins of light green juice in their hands, and poured water on the cavalry on horseback. The brave cavalry would even lean down on horseback, hook one hand around the passionate girl's slender waist, and enjoy a brief passionate kiss. Some businessmen also took the opportunity to get caught in the crowd, stretching their necks from time to time, trying to seduce some cavalry and buy their private goods in private. When the cavalry entered the garrison camp, they were all soaked in the rain. Although everyone's face is tired, there's a kind of excitement. Serdak immediately visited the wounded soldiers in the camp. Under the bath wall, Andrew and the ogre were comparing the scars on their bodies. When the two men fought, they had a life-threatening ferocity. Even though Andrew was wearing the Earth Shield magic pattern structure, he was still covered in wounds. The injury made Serdak unavoidably worried. Andrew could still wear this set of magic pattern armor for a few days. As long as there is a war, soldiers will inevitably die on the battlefield. No matter how busy he is, Serdak will still attend the funeral, where he will announce the achievements and private property of the deceased soldiers, and publicly announce the subsequent placement of their families. Of course, these are what the other cavalry want to know most. At this time, the merit exchange list in the military camp becomes the most shining thing, because those achievements are like golden coins, magic crystals, or precious pieces of Warcraft leather. The cavalry battalion was stationed in Doden Town for more than a month. Many veterans gained wealth that was almost unprecedented in their lives. The next day Soldak announced a decision to expand the garrison camp. The camp currently has a garrison of 1,500 troops. Although some new wooden dormitories have been built in the camp, the camp seems particularly crowded with so many people living there at once. With a stroke of his pen on the town map of Doden Town, Serdak expanded the entire narrow strip of land between the northern city wall and the military camp, and connected it with the city defense brigade into a large area. According to Serdak's plan, this the land will completely separate the cavalry, infantry and archers. Each troop type has a separate camp to avoid the increasing number of minor frictions. Soldak has the final say in Doden Town now. And of course, Mrs. Luna will not refuse this. Therefore, he submitted the proposal to the town hall, and it was approved immediately. Since this land is the town's reserve land, the town has the right to decide to use rights. That morning, the wood and stone from the lumberyard and quarry were transported to the gate of the station. Selina personally went to the town to hire a group of craftsmen, and first built the wall according to the area divided by Serdak on the town map. The midday sun cast a small shadow on the ground on the gray tiles of the small military camp building. Cygna stood on the wooden bench in front of the railing of the small building and hung the washed bandages on the clothesline. She was so short that even if she was stepping on a wooden stool, 
she had to stand on tiptoes to reach the clothesline. Nika walked in and out of the small building with a basin in her hand, almost trotting all the way. Yesterday's battle in the canyon left the military camp full of wounded soldiers. The seriously wounded were treated overnight yesterday. And the soldiers with minor injuries will be treated together today. After being busy all morning, Serdak paused the treatment until his mental power was exhausted. There was no need to start the sacrificial ceremony. The remaining wounded soldiers would probably have to wait until the evening, when his mental power recovered to some extent, before they could receive treatment with a holy light technique. He wiped the sweat from his forehead and planned to use his free time in the afternoon after lunch to peel off the complete life magic pattern from the giant ghost marked red ant captured yesterday. The ghost striped red ants in the canyon retreated to the northern section. The garrison camp did not mobilize again. They just opened the gate of the north city wall. The mercenary group and the merchant hunting team hunted the ghost striped red ants in the canyon. Selena walked in from the small building wearing a headscarf and carrying a food box. There was quite a bit of sunshine in the morning. And she spent the whole morning outside instructing the craftsmen to build the fence. The bright sunshine made her face a little red. As long as she ate in the military camp. She would bring her lunch back to the small building and usually would not eat it in the cafeteria. Nika and Zigna helped clear the table and put the plates on the table. As soon as Serdak took a bite of the fried steak, the guard at the door ran outside the small building and informed Serdak that the owner of the Thunder Rhino Caravan, Malakam, was outside the military camp and wanted to visit Serdak. At this time, Serdak remembered that there were two Thunder Rhinoceros recuperating in Doden Town, and Quartermaster Handel asked him to help take care of them. As a result, there were too many things going on recently, and he didn't even go to see them once, and he didn't know what the current situation was. What is the condition of the two injured thunder rhinoceros? He put down the knife in his hand and asked Selena if she knew about the situation of the thunder rhinoceros in the town. Selena shook her head, but Nika was sitting at the dining table beside her and whispered, The toes of those two thunder rhinoceros were ulcerated after being corroded by red ant acid. They have been recuperating in the town for the past few days. The local aboriginals used Chow she helped the two charioteers clean the thunder rhinoceros wound several times, and it was almost healed now. The two big guys were quite docile, but they were too voracious and kept eating grass almost all day long. Serdak nodded, thinking that nothing happened. Otherwise, he would not be able to give an explanation to handle Quartermaster. I didn't expect that the boss of the Thunder Rhino Caravan would come to Doden Town in person. He thought that he still had a large number of fur goods that he had entrusted this business group to transport to Benes City. Now that the boss of the business group was here, he really needed it. Meet him. He asked the guards to go to the entrance of the military camp and invite the owner of the Thunder Rhino Caravan in. After thinking about it, I put down the lunch in front of me and walked out of the small building to greet him. Malakam has been running the Thunder Rhino Caravan for 26 years. He took over the business group from his father, old Malakam. At the time, his father ran the Thunder Rhino Caravan and almost monopolized by Lin for all the transportation business in the plane. The Thunder Rhinoceros Caravan also expanded to 12. But now, the caravan has been in his hands for more than 20 years and has almost lost all the business in the northern area of the Belen Plain. There are only eight Thunder Rhino caravans still operating in the southern region. Even so, three of these eight Thunder Rhino caravans are not fully staffed. Of course, there are many reasons for the decline of the business group. But the most important one is that Malakon wants to transfer part of the industry in the Belen Plain to the province of Bena. After all, plane wars have broken out frequently in recent years with all his family property on the plane like him. Once the Dark Legion of Hell invades by Lin, it is likely that everything will be lost overnight. Originally, the two Thunder Rhinoceros were slightly injured, and they only needed to send a trainer to solve the problem. Even though the local garrison entrusted the transportation business of a large number of leather goods, the Thunder Rhino Caravan handled an unknown amount of this kind of business every year, and there was no need for him to come to negotiate the business in person. When Malakom came to Doden Town in person this time, he actually had some plans of his own. In view of the possibility of a plane war breaking out at any time, Malakom hopes to make friends with some Belan military forces, so that he can at least obtain military protection in the early stages of a plane war. At present, almost all of his connections are in the southern Wilkes region. Now, an animal tide has broken out once every ten years in the northern region. With a keen sense of smell of a businessman, Malakam immediately smelled some opportunities. So he came to Doden Town himself. He had actually arrived in Doden Town yesterday and happened to see the local garrison win a great victory. 
the entire town's residents lined the streets to welcome the victorious warriors. Seeing that the garrison commander was such a radical, I wanted to make friends even more. Chapter 796 Thunder Rhinoceros The first time Soldak saw Malakam, the owner of the Thunder Rhino Merchant Group, he felt that this old guy must have a very extravagant life. Because he looked absolutely terrible. He is not tall. But he wears tight leg breeches and riding boots. He is obviously very fat. With a round belly. But he wears a tights cut from an unknown material. With a wide belt tied below his navel. It perfectly brings out his belly. Of course. These are not the things that Serdak thinks are bad about him. The main reason was that his eye sockets were sunken. And his face seemed to be smeared with a layer of white ash. As if he had overindulged in sex and lacked sleep. Even standing there from a distance. Showing a friendly smile seems a bit fake. Entering the small building. He immediately took a sneak glance at Selena's chest. Which almost touched Soldak's bottom line. However. As the big boss of the Thunder Rhinoceros Merchant Group. Soldak still has a batch of leather goods in his hands. So he can't fall out at the first meeting. I can only ask him to sit down on the sofa. In the living room of the small building. Nika brought two cups of tea. And Malakam's eyes fell on Nika again. Serdak was thinking about how to dismiss the business group boss with just a few words. Malakam walked into the military camp. The entire military camp was still in an atmosphere of elation after just winning a battle. Walking in the military camp. You can always hear some soldiers whispering and discussing. They all go to the small town to buy some local products and prepare to mail them to their homes. As a businessman, Malakam knew what winning a war meant. We also know that the real value of Ghost Strike Red ants is the hard armor. He thought that Commander Serdak had consigned a large amount of leather goods before this. I made some calculations in my mind and took a breath. The garrison commander has gained a lot these days. In that case, it is estimated that he was too weak to pick up magic cores on the battlefield. So how could he get less magic crystals? Commander Soldak must not be short of money. Even if he takes out a pocket of gold coins, he may not be able to make the garrison commander take a high look. Malakam then sighed in his heart. This victory comes at an unexpected time. For Malakam, he would rather the town of Doden suffer a defeat. At least so that he could provide a batch of emergency supplies to gain the favor of the garrison commander. Then I thought about it. If the garrison commander really lost the battle, I had no idea whether I would invest in him. He followed Soldak to the small building inside the military camp and saw the graceful Selena. Malakam's eyes suddenly lit up. And at this moment, he felt that he should have found a breakthrough. This garrison commander actually brought a woman into the military camp. You are really brave enough. Then he saw Nika again and thought to himself. He actually hired aborigines locally to serve as maids. How much he likes women. However, having hobbies is a good thing. Malakam sat on the sofa in the living room. Looking at the small building casually. Thinking about how to change the topic to the female slave. Now that the Green Empire has established an alliance with the Elf Dynasty. Elves are rarely seen in the slave market. The Orc tribe has many land walkers and spell weavers traveling around the world. No one dares to blatantly treat orcs as slaves. Doing so would definitely be disgraceful to themselves. Living too long. Half-elf girls and half-orc girls are very common in the Green Empire. They can be found in the slave market in Wilk City. You can buy them if you have money. As for Janna female slaves, they are relatively rare. The living conditions of Janna female slaves are relatively harsh. Not only do they need to build a large swimming pool, but they also need to change the seawater every day. As long as they do not live by the sea. The cost of raising Janna female slaves is very high. When Malakam came to Doden Town this time. He was a little hasty in his preparations. And didn't have any suitable gifts around him. He and Commander Serdak had just met. And it was impossible for him to force a female slave into the other party. As soon as they met. Even if Malakam could provide it. The other commander might not accept it. According to his experience. This kind of thing must establish a certain amount of trust before there is room for operation. Sitting in the living room, Malakam thought about it for a moment, then put his thoughts away and smiled at Soldak and said, Sir Commander, thank you for taking care of our business group in the past week. I have to say that your town of Duodan has the best security among the many small towns nearby. Soldak nodded quickly and asked, Um, Sir Malakam, when will your caravan return to Wilk City? I want to know how long it will take for those for goods to arrive in Benis City. The third caravan should return to Wilk City within three to five days. Within a week, these for goods will be sent to Benis City. Malakam glanced at the assistant beside him and said, Please you must rest assured that once the leather goods arrive in Benis City, our people will deliver the receipt to you. 
hearing that the supplies would arrive in Benna City within a week. Soldak was slightly relieved and said happily, Did your caravan return to Wilk City so soon? I thought your caravan would somewhere. I'll join up with these two Thunder Rhinoceros and return to Wilk City together. Boss Malakom shook his head slightly and said truthfully, Although these two Thunder Rhinos can still live for 20 years, the hidden wounds and siltation on their bodies are too serious. I plan to put them in the pasture to let them recover. And then the breeding Thunder Rhinoceros will be sent to the trading market. Cernak was slightly startled. And he asked Malakom, Isn't your Thunder Rhino caravan ready to accept those two Thunder Rhinos? Malakom nodded and said with a hint of bitterness on his face, The cost of raising Thunder Rhinoceros is too high now. And business in the White Forest Plain is getting harder and harder. In the past few years, our business group has been in the southern region. Activities. To be honest, the North District Market in Wilk City has been completely abandoned. Now the Thunder Rhino caravans in my hands have been reduced to eight. And the business I can receive is still not full. So retiring these two Thunder Rhinoceros can also reduce the operating costs of some trading companies. Although it is a little premature. This is also decided after careful consideration of the current operating conditions of the Thunder Rhinoceros business group. I will take them back to Wilkes tomorrow. If you need goods to be shipped to Wilk City, I can help you carry them back. Serdak didn't expect that Malakom would be quite frank when chatting. And his words would be very pleasing. Which could at least make people feel good. These two Thunder Rhinos are going to retire? Serdak had no idea that Malakom wanted these two Thunder Rhinos to be eliminated. He thought that the cavalry battalion did not have its own logistics supply group. If there were such two Thunder Rhinos, how much supplies can you bring? Yes. Malakom said truthfully, Thunder Rhinoceros is also very rare in the Green Empire. The biggest problem faced by many business groups now is that the Thunder Rhinoceros is gradually aging. Later breeding will also require huge expenses. It's better to sell it as soon as possible. Serdak thought for a moment and said with some emotion, If you haven't found a suitable buyer for these two Thunder Rhinos, you can sell them to me. Malakom opened his mouth wide and stared at Soldak with a pair of brown eyes. It hesitated for a moment and finally made up its mind and said truthfully, The two Thunder Rhinoceros have many hidden injuries on their bodies. This kind of accident of abandoning the goods and recuperating in place has happened three times in the recent period. Each time, it caused considerable losses to the business group. It is no longer suitable for transporting materials. Well, if you want to buy Thunder Rhinoceros, they are not the best choice. If you really want to buy one, you should at least choose two Thunder Rhinoceros that are under five years old. Serdak rubbed his forehead and said to Malakom, I don't really care about this. Chapter 797 Thunder Rhino 2 Are you rich and willful? Businessman Malakom was a little confused about Commander Serdak's thoughts. Although he wanted to sell these two Thunder Rhinos, he was more worried about Commander Serdak's purchase. If he was not satisfied, he would if you want to return it. How dare you refuse? Malakom guessed that it was very possible that the commander had made a fortune recently in Doden Town. Once the money was too much. I didn't know how to spend it. So I insisted on buying these two Thunder Rhinos. Malakom felt that he should remind the commander. So the businessman Malakom said to Serdak, If you keep these two Thunder Rhinos and just want to keep them in a pen for viewing, then there is no problem. These two Thunder Rhinos are indeed not bad. You can also enjoy a good travel experience if you travel on them occasionally. After saying that, he lowered his voice and whispered, especially the cabin on the back of Thunder Rhinoceros. These two cabins are simplified versions, with only basic functions. Later, you can also renovate this cabin into your own according to your preferences. The way you want it. During the trip. With the blue sky. White clouds and meadows surrounded by beauties in your arms. It is definitely the ultimate enjoyment. After saying that, he smiled obscenely, which made the little good impression that had just arisen in Suldak's heart fade away. Then Malakom added, But if you buy them for long-distance transportation, I'm afraid it may not be possible. The businessman Malakom said the last few words very seriously, hoping that Commander Serdak would consume wisely. Of course, Serdak could hear the meaning of Malakom's words. He thought for a while and then said, The cavalry battalion will occasionally go out to fight. I need to establish a supply team. Obviously these two Thunder Rhinoceros are good. Choose. I will be stationed here all the time in the recent period. As a garrison army. I basically won't go out frequently to perform tasks. When Serdak said this, businessman Malakom felt a little more at ease. If you don't care about their occasional minor problems, the Thunder Rhinoceros can supply a cavalry battalion. 
but the premise is that the supply line is not too far away. Malakom said. Zerdak talked for so long and didn't even know the price of Thunder Rhinoceros. This kind of giant beast, which is larger than the ancient Yellow River Elephant, cannot be as cheap as the ancient Bolai Horse. So Zerdak asked. Then, if you want to sell it, please make a price. Malakom saw that Zerdak did have the idea of purchasing the Thunder Rhinoceros. He sat back on the sofa, held his big belly with both hands, and moved his position slightly. A pile of fat on his body almost pressed his bones. It has to click. Entering the familiar part of the businessman, Malakom seemed much calmer. He paused and then slowly said, It is difficult to buy an adult thunder rhinoceros in the market, but there is still a clearly marked price on the market, and the usual transaction price is at about 35 magic crystals. Although these two thunder rhinoceros are in some minor health conditions, there is still no problem in raising them in the animal pen for breeding. Therefore, this kind of thunder rhinoceros that has been retired from the caravan is worth $3 in the trading market. 10 magic crystals and 2 thunder rhinoceros are discounted. And you only need to pay 50 magic crystals to the business group. Zerdak didn't expect that a thunder rhino would be so expensive. Calculating it this way. For thunder rhinos could probably be exchanged for a set of primary magic pattern structures. Thinking about it on the other hand, it doesn't seem to be very expensive. If converted into gold coins, it is only more than 200 pieces, which is about the same price as 10 gubwa horses. However, it seems to be more valuable than 10 gubwa horses. Some. In addition, I hope that the business group can establish a material transfer office in Duodin Town and do transportation business in Duodin Town. Malakom offered a very favorable price for his two Thunder Rhinos, also thinking they get some compensation in other ways. That's no problem. Soldak didn't see any shops like the carriage shop in Doden Town. So he agreed decisively. The businessman Malakom awkwardly leaned forward, rubbed his hands, and asked Serdak with some embarrassment. Commander Serdak, I would like to ask, how can I get this from the garrison? The trading rights of Ghost Strike Red Ants? He also heard from others that the trading rights of Ghost Mark Red Ants in the military camp have always been in the hands of Commander Serdak. So he asked this question. Serdak hesitated for a moment and then said, I have almost all used the magic cores of these ghostly red ants to open magic crystals. The probability that these magic cores can open magic crystals is quite high. If I say that these magic cores are for sale, each one must be exchanged for a magic crystal, which is obviously unrealistic. Except for the magic core. What's left is the hard armor of the ghost pattern soldier ants. This part is indeed in my hands. It's not that I want to hold these hard armors in my hands. I plan to use these hard armors. I will use the armor to create 500 sets of lightweight and strong war horse armor. In addition, I will also send part of it to Benna City. I have some trade dealings with the Gofalo family in Benna City and will provide it to Benna City at an agreed price. They have some Warcraft leather. Excluding these two items, there is nothing left. After Soldak finished speaking, he glanced at Malakom indifferently, realizing that he looked disappointed. He added, But in addition to these, I also retained a part of the hard armor. The main purpose is to maintain the merit exchange list in the military camp. I probably need to raise part of the rewards here. Originally, I want to take out some gold coins, magic crystals, and some Warcraft leathers as merit rewards. And now I can also use the hard armor skins of these red ants to do this kind of barter transaction. Whether we can establish trade relations in this area depends on whether you can purchase the goods we need. Soldak said to Malakom, Malakom asked curiously. For example, Soldak said, Some single piece magic pattern structures for knights. Of course, it would be better to purchase a complete set of magic pattern suits. Seeing that there was no expression on Malakom's face, Soldak added, Exquisite magic weapons. I don't want those flashy magic weapons. I need ones that can be used on the battlefield. Strong, sharp. In short, it just has to be practical. Of course, if you can get epic weapons, you can also talk about them. Malakom took a long breath and said, I know. I dare not boast about other businesses. But I can really find purchase channels for this kind of magic pattern structures and magic weapons. This time I return to Wilk City. I will send someone to send you a detailed list with basic introduction and market price. You can make your choice on it. When the time comes, I can take you to choose magic pattern structures and magic weapons. Everyone, sit down. Let's talk together in person. Serdak did not expect that the merchant Malakom could actually obtain these goods, and immediately said, 
Of course, this is best. The businessman Malakom stretched out a wet and cold hand, shook it with Sernak, and then said confidently, Then we've settled. There were two thunder rhinoceros standing in a large empty field outside the military camp. Each thunder rhinoceros looked like a small two-story house with an attic. They stood gnawing on a square bundle of alfalfa fodder. On the ground, the mouth is always chewing. There are two large gantry-style wooden racks beside them. There are many grills on both sides of the wooden rack, which can hold some wooden boxes and luggage rolls, as well as some food and daily necessities. Usually this wooden frame will always be placed in the open space. Thunder Rhino will only carry this frame when setting off. There are no goods on these two wooden shelves now. The two drivers leisurely set up a tent under the wooden frame. They didn't know where they got half of the dried meat of the Moon Blade Fire Wolf. So they set up a bonfire outside the tent and talked happily about the beast. Chow! And the dried meat of the Warcraft in front of me. Both of them were holding a glass of ale in their hands. And occasionally laugh while talking. And the atmosphere seemed extremely harmonious. Malakom came over with Serdak followed by two followers, and walked directly to the feet of the Thunder Rhino to observe the two Thunder Rhinos at close range and check their physical condition. The businessman Malakom said to an aboriginal follower behind him, who was wearing an animal skin robe, Horn, come and introduce the situation of these two Thunder Rhinos to the commander, and what you need to pay attention to at ordinary times. Yes, boss. The aborigine who had been following the two quietly came out and agreed casually. Then, right under the neck of the Thunder Rhino. He introduced the two Thunder Rhinos' load, food intake and other information to Serdak in a somewhat stiff imperial language. Serdak listened carefully and occasionally nodded. The two charioteers who were sitting aside to rest saw the boss of the business group chatting happily with the commander of the garrison camp nearby. They hurriedly came over and followed the boss's side. Seeing the two drivers with grease on their lips, Malakom patted his forehead, smiled at the two drivers and ordered, these two Thunder Rhinoceros already belong to Commander Serdak. You guys, one of the two of you must stay and help Commander Serdak train two qualified drivers. Let's see which one of you wants to stay. The two drivers were already ready to return to Wilk City and were a little dumbfounded when their boss said this. The two of them looked at the northern city wall and the sounds of fighting could still be heard outside the city. Almost at the same time, the two pointed at each other and said loudly, He wants to stay. After he finished speaking, he was completely dumbfounded. He retracted his fingers, and the two exchanged glances. One of them stood up and said to the businessman Malakom, Boss, it's not that we don't want to stay here. It's not like you don't know what the situation is here now. The ghosts strike red, and may climb over the wall and kill us at any time. Although I am not afraid of death, and am willing to stay and help the garrison commander train the charioteers. When I think of my wife and children at home, my longing for them makes me want to drop everything in my hands, and returned to them immediately. Malakom looked at the other driver. The driver looked sad and said, Veteran, my little son was just one month old. You must not know how eager I am to see them. Boss, can I not stay? Okay. Of course. As long as you are willing. I guarantee that you two will be able to see your families in a week. Malakom stretched out his hand and patted the two of them on the shoulders. The two drivers looked happy. Malakom continued expressionlessly. When you two go back, Go to Muya to settle this month's salary. And then get out of here. I support you to work. If you don't want to do anything, then what else are you using? Then he ignored the two stunned drivers and turned to the entourage in leather robes and said, Horn, you stay to help Commander Serdak train the two drivers. Make sure they are familiar with each other. Control these two Thunder Rhinoceros. Yes, boss. The aboriginal attendant named Horn agreed. That night, Serdak hosted a banquet in the town for businessman Malakom and handed 50 magic crystals to Malakom. There was no procrastination or taking advantage of the situation to lower the price. During the dinner, Malakom also saw a half-elf archer with his face covered. So I became even more certain that the military and political officer from Duodan town had similar hobbies to me. But then I became a little worried, worried about whether I could find a suitable gift. Malakom, the owner of the Thunder Rhinoceros Merchant Group, left Doden town the next day, and Serdak personally went outside the town to see him off. After seeing off the business group boss, Soldak found a carpenter in the town and asked him to conduct preliminary work on the wooden frame of Thunder Rhinoceros. The renovation project of the wooden house must be done. Previously, in order for Thunder Rhinoceros to maximize the carrying cargo, this cabin is as simple as a toilet, according to Soldak's preliminary idea. 
It should be at least a flat roof wooden house with two bedrooms and one living room. A kitchen, bathroom and utility room. And an awning on the roof. On sunny days, this roof is a 360 degree viewing platform. In addition, two stable platforms must be built at the front and rear of the wooden house. And he planned to install two bed crossbows on the platforms. A ladder with safety handrails was also built on the wooden frame, making the two Thunder Rhinoceros a more practical mobile turret. When the Aboriginal man named Horn was training drivers for Serdek, he took the initiative to ask for two more people. And he was very conscientious. Horn is also an animal trainer. This time he came to Doden Town with the businessman Malakon to save two Thunder Rhinoceros. The news that businessman Malakon received in Wilkes City was that the two Thunder Rhinos were seriously ill and were unable to transport goods with the team. But he didn't know until businessman Malakon took him to Doden Town. These two Thunder Rhinoceros were just ordinary rotten toes. At most, they were stained with acid and rot. And the ulceration was more serious. Serdak guessed that Malakon might have used the topic to fire the two lazy drivers. On the third day, Horn saw the wooden house and platform built by the carpenters on the top of the wooden frame, and then took the initiative to find Soldak and told him, Thunder Rhinoceros, although this big guy looks huge, he has rough skin and thick flesh, are actually not World of Warcraft. Once they appear on the battlefield, they will become the target of enemy attacks due to their huge size. They have no problem as logistics transportation. But if they go to the battlefield to participate in a battle, they are very fragile. Serdak implanted the life magic pattern obtained from the ghost pattern male and into the body of Thunder Rhinoceros that night. Chapter 798 Believers Two Thunder Rhinoceros stood quietly in the empty field of the military camp, with some alfalfa and soaked black beans piled in front of them. The body shape of Thunder Rhinoceros is very similar to that of ordinary rhinoceros. There are two thick rhino horns that are more than one meter long between the facial bones and forehead. However, because the skeleton of Thunder Rhinoceros is relatively large, this also causes them to want to eat grass on the ground. The head needs to be closer to the ground. Serdak has successfully implanted an Earth-type life magic pattern on the left ribs of the two Thunder Rhinoceros. This life magic pattern is 2 meters long and more than 1 meter wide. It is the largest life magic pattern that Serdak has obtained so far. This life magic pattern originally grew on the body of the ghost-marked male ant. It is currently Serdak successfully peeled off only five of them. This is an Earth-type life magic pattern. Although Serdak could not figure out the power contained in the runes. He also guessed that it was an Earth-type life magic pattern that enhanced armor. The process of implanting the magic patterns was relatively smooth. Since there was enough space, Serdak could easily implant two life magic patterns. The magic pattern emits a dim glow on the Thunder Rhino's body. And then the skin on the Thunder Rhino's body begins to transform at a speed visible to the naked eye. More cracks appear on the surface of its body, and mottled stone marks appear on the thick skin. There is actually an extra layer of thick armor on the Thunder Rhinoceros. When they stood there, it was not clear whether their strength had increased. But the two novice drivers in the military camp led them out of the camp, and Serdak obviously found that their pace became much easier. Moreover, the color of the long and short rhino horns on the head seems to have become much darker. Every time it pointed its rhinoceros horn at Serdak, it always gave him an inexplicable sense of oppression. Since the size of the Thunder Rhinoceros is much larger than that of the Ghost Strike Male Ant, the life magic pattern on the Ghost Strike Male Ant does not need to be condensed at all, and is completely implanted in the left rib of the Thunder Rhinoceros. Although the workload is a bit heavy, the entire implant is still intact. I thought the process would be much simpler. Now this life magic pattern is integrated with the Thunder Rhinoceros, continuously providing it with hard and thick armor so that the appearance of the Thunder Rhinoceros has changed significantly. The two charioteers led the Thunder Rhinoceros out of the military camp and placed a giant gantry on them in the open field outside the camp. After four days of transformation on the two wooden frames, the wooden house had already taken its initial shape. The platform has also been built, but there are no facilities inside the wooden house. The platform at the front and back of the wooden house is only pre-embedded with the base of the bed crossbow. When installing the bed crossbow, the Thunder Rhinoceros needs to be led under the North City Wall. Only there is a high enough cantilever crane. In the future, the bed crossbow will have to remove the four-wheel base below and fix it on the platform. Now that it has just taken shape, many residents in Duodan Town often come over to watch. On the merit exchange list at the entrance to the canteen of the military camp, most of the materials that can be redeemed have been crossed out. And the magic patterns in the first three rows have all been erased which means that most of the rewards have been used by the soldiers. Redeemed out? 
There are only two options on the merit exchange list. Magic crystal and gold coins. Without specific amounts marked. However, some rumors have spread that Commander Serdak has ordered some magic weapons and single-piece magic pattern structures from the business group. As long as he endures for two more days, a batch of new rewards will arrive at the military camp. At that time, you must have enough achievements to get some high-quality weapons and structures from it. Recently, the veterans in the cavalry battalion have been working hard to accumulate merit. Not for these magical weapons and protective gear, but for the life magic pattern implanted after their transformation. Each of these veterans owes Serdak 30,000 merit. It is not easy for them to earn back so much merit. This group of veterans not only went to the canyon to hunt ghost striped red ants every day, but also took the time to mentor the new recruits in their team. In fact, you can also earn some merit points by giving guidance to new recruits. Only by constantly training in battles and experiencing life and death situations can the new recruits unleash the potential in their bodies. Everyone knows that as an ordinary warrior, you must not only maintain a strong body, but also have a strong heart. Only in this way can you realize the power. Once you successfully understand the potential, a turn will be just around the corner. The beast tide in the middle section of Duodan Canyon has been cleared away. So during this period, the cavalry battalion was fighting in the canyon without even seeing a single queen ant. There are several powerful hunting teams in the town. In the past few days, the ghost-striped red ants have been driven to the northernmost part of the Duoden Canyon several times. Many people stood at the exit of the canyon and could see the red and circling back and forth in the sky. Bird. They seemed to be bound by some kind of restraint. Even if there were no boundaries in the sky, they still refused to fly over the thorny mountains. Many people in the town know how good the benefits of the garrison are. Everyone is envious of the fact that they can get cheap magic weapons in the military camp. Some mercenaries in the town are interested in this and some even ask privately about what conditions are required. Join the garrison, then hunt red ants to earn merit, and redeem those good things on the merit exchange list. At this time, none of the soldiers stationed in the military camp wanted to say anything. They were also worried that once this opening was opened, more people would compete for these benefits, and they would have to rob them if they wanted to get soup. Not good. In fact, the other reinforcements in the camp also hoped to join Serdak's direct cavalry battalion. They firmly believe that only in this way can they obtain better benefits. The window glass of the attic that Selena rented from the tailor shop owner has been repaired, and the compensation from the surrounding neighbors has also been completed. With Mrs. Luna's personal coordination, the Duodan Town Hall has provided certain financial compensation. Selena, Signa, and Nika return to the town to live. Selena's life is still the same every day, but recently she has a lot of power. Whether it is the expansion of the military camp, the statistics of warehouse materials, or the selling price of goods in the small town's free market. She has to do it herself. When recruiting workers for military camp expansion and city wall maintenance, Selena targeted a large number of Aboriginal people first. In addition, Selena also encouraged Aboriginal women to learn more crafts such as tailoring and leather making at home. Only by mastering some skills can the lives of these Aborigines gradually change. Under the leadership of Nika, the children also helped with household chores all day long. These changes in the town have completely changed the living conditions of the indigenous people. Selena took the opportunity to spread the teachings of the dark goddess in the small town in a subtle way, secretly changing some concepts and making many aborigines think that these are gifts from the goddess. When the world came to an end, a group of believers of the dark goddess developed. It's just that Selena feels that the goddess has appeared a lot recently, and sometimes the timing of her appearance is not so appropriate. Chapter 799 Recruitment Order Selena lay on her side on the bed, not even daring to open her eyes. She was worried that Suldak would peek into the secrets in her pupils. Goddess Selene seems to be full of curiosity about everything here. As long as she wants to understand the world, she will use the goddess arrival to send a trace of spiritual thought into her body. And she will not fight for control of the body. It's like a second personality sharing the same body. However, this occasionally makes Selena feel a little ashamed that someone is watching her. Selena has dedicated her life to the goddess Selene. So naturally, she will not have any resistance to the goddess. Serdak hugged him gently from behind. His breathing was slow and even. He must have been fast asleep. Sometimes Selena even secretly uses the power of the dark goddess to enter Serdak's dreams. But she basically only dares to touch those dreams that have some shadow of her. Which can help him restore some mental strength. But this time she didn't enter his dream. Selena opened her eyes. The curtains blocked the moonlight outside the window. 
for Selena. The biggest benefit of the frequent arrival of divine thoughts is that her affinity for dark elements has improved a lot in the past half month. And her body has almost reached the state of a body of darkness. Serdak turned over in his sleep. And the blanket slid to one side. His naked upper body was covered with scars, which would be shocking just by looking at them. A trace of the goddess's spiritual thoughts was still attached to her body, which prevented her from feeling sleepy at all. She sat up from the bed wrapped in a blanket, walked to the window with bare feet, and looked up at the blood-red crescent moon in the night sky. The soft night breeze caressed her long, smooth chestnut hair, making her back itch. In fact, Selena knows that when the goddess comes, it is best for her divine thoughts to fall on Zygna, because Zygna's body and mind are relatively pure and can better integrate with her divine thoughts. Zygna's physique is also relatively pure. Especially, there is no loss when accepting spiritual thoughts. But recently, Selene seemed to particularly like to come directly to her body, and even spent some of her divine power to lay a sign on her chest, stretching out her arms, which were as white as lotus roots. She opened the curtain a little and felt a little sweaty all over her body. Walking into the separate bathroom of the master bedroom, there is still half a tank of water in the bathtub. The hard life in Wall Village made her accustomed to using cold water when bathing. The tattoo on her chest felt a little hot. She felt that the trace of spiritual energy began to slowly withdraw from her body when she sat in the bathtub. It was like an invisible mist floating overhead. Then an extremely pure dark beam shined into the room through the rubble on the ridge. The beams and the wooden ceiling. That divine thought quickly rose into the sky along with this beam of dark light. And under this pure black beam, her body seemed to be in a state of nourishment. She felt that her skin was full of vitality. And every tiny pore was breathing. In the darkness, her skin was as white as a strand. The smooth ivory, the faint eye bands and nasolabial folds that appeared a few days ago are all disappearing. There is a feeling of going against the flow of time. While her body was absorbing this dark element, the shadow of the patio and the goddess emerged again behind her. She just leaned in the bathtub quietly, and countless dark auras around her formed a vortex and poured into her body. When it was almost dawn, Selena lay back on the bed, resting her head on that intoxicating strong arm, closing her eyes and pressing her head against his chest, quietly listening to the strong heartbeat. In the morning, I have to go to the market to inspect the transaction prices. Those ghost pattern soldier and hard leather armors that have not yet been counted must continue to be counted, checked and packed into the warehouse. In the past few days, the merit points of the cavalry in the cavalry camp have increased a bit. Come on! Some soldiers have already tried to exchange some gold coins. Every day, many people gather around the merit exchange list and look forward to the new round of rewards being updated soon. She also hopes that the magic weapons and single-piece magic pattern structures ordered by Serdak will arrive soon, so that everyone's merit points will be reduced. Dark doctrines can only be preached to the indigenous people in the afternoon. These indigenous people can be said to be blind and disordered about their current life. She felt that she needed to use the hand of the goddess to make them have a more positive attitude towards life. The vast majority of the indigenous people in the town have no assets and live in the slums where the indigenous people gather in the town. Everyone lives a leisurely and simple life. The local aborigines in Dudwa live in poverty and hardship. There are of course many reasons for this. Of course. It is not just the exploitation by the imperial merchants, but also the laziness of the aborigines themselves. They like to muddle along and always eat this meal. I will consider raising money for the next meal. They have both hands and feet, but they have a lazy personality. They spend the money they earn immediately and don't like to save money. Many aborigines don't even have the concept of family. Two people who like each other will want to live together, but they don't want to face the future together. They need someone to guide them, so that they can be exposed to more colorful lives. People believe in the glory of darkness and become believers in darkness. Selena closed her eyes and slowly fell asleep. In the morning, as soon as Soldak returned to the military camp, he heard Andrew's report that some scattered ghost striped red ants had appeared near the forest farm in the town. A hunting team from the business group had rushed over to deal with these ghost striped red ants. Ant, he inspected the military camp, looked at the expansion progress of the military camp, and asked the craftsmen to demolish and rebuild several unreasonable places. Before he could sit down and drink a glass of water, he heard the town's correspondent rushing over and reported to him that some ghost-striped red ants were also found in a pasture in the south of the town. Obviously the ghost-striped red ants in Duoden Canyon have been driven to the northernmost section by the cavalry battalion. But now ghost-striped red ants appear frequently in the outer areas of Duoden town. 
which gives Serdak some bad premonitions. Originally, Andrew was going to lead the cavalry battalion to clean up the ant colonies in the northern section of the canyon again in the morning. But this time the operation to eliminate red ants was cancelled by Soldek. He asked all the cavalrymen in the cavalry camp to rest in the camp for two days to adjust their current status. The wooden house customized for the two thunder rhinoceros has been completely completed. And the bed crossbow will be installed on the platform in the morning. Samira had already led several city guards, who were familiar with the structure of bed crossbows to the city wall dismantled four bed crossbows, and used a hanging tower to hoist the upper part of the heavy bed crossbows, together with a tilting frame, to the platform, and then connecting the bed crossbow to the base in the center of the platform. These two thunder rhinoceros have the appearance of a war beast. There were originally some simple shelves on both sides of the wooden platform that Thunder Rhino carried, in order to be able to carry a large amount of goods. These shelves were made very simple. Now Serdak has also made some modifications to the shelves carrying goods. Archer positions have been added to the shelves. In addition to the two bed crossbows at the front and rear, the entire Thunder Rhino can also carry six archers on the shelves on both sides of the body. When Serdak checked the two Thunder Rhinoceros in the afternoon, his hunch was finally fulfilled. A letter asking for help from Plento's town was delivered to Soldak. There was almost no extra text on it, but it was scrawled, All soldiers of the 13th Cavalry Regiment of the Luther Army and the 19th Heavy Armored Infantry Regiment were killed. The independent cavalry battalion stationed in Turingdon town immediately rushed to Plento's town and must reach the mouth of the canyon on the night of April 23rd to prevent the ant colony from entering the northern occupied area. Apart from this sentence, only the scarlet seal of the military department was stamped on it. Soldak did not expect that the situation in Plento's town had become so serious. He had just arrived at the Luther Legion and was not familiar with other troops in the Legion. He basically had no private contact with the surrounding garrison commanders and he was even less familiar with the garrison situation in the surrounding towns. Soldak did not see the autograph of the Great Swordsman Chester on it. It seemed that this transfer order was not issued by the Great Swordsman Chester. This kind of recruitment order lacks the signature of the Great Swordsman Chester, which can only mean that the matter is urgent and there is no time to pass this transfer order from level to level. In this case, Serdak has a lot more options. He could simply stand still and wait for the recruitment order signed by Deputy Commander Luther the supreme commander of the Lutheran army in the Belan Plain. And it would be impossible for the military to hold him accountable by then. You can also immediately send troops and enter Plento's town with this recruitment order. You will not be accused of leaving your post without permission and leave the station at will. A large number of ghost-striped red ants invaded Plento's town. And the situation in Doden Canyon was relatively stable. Soldak immediately decided to send troops to Plento's town. But the northern wall of Doden Canyon also needed to be garrisoned. The 500 heavy armored infantry and 200 archers brought by the great swordsman ST to reinforce Duodan Town. And the city defense brigade will stay in Duodan Town to guard the northern city wall. Adams and the ogres stayed in the town of Doden, while Soldak led the three captains Andrew, Samira, and Gallatin and 800 cavalry to set off before dusk. This time, I can bring these two newly armed Thunder Rhinos with me. When the cavalry team was summoned, they discovered that more than half of the 300 cavalrymen who came to Duodan Town as reinforcements took advantage of their rotation to run out of the North City Wall privately and went to Duodan Canyon to hunt ghost-striped red ants to earn merit. Adams was a little dumbfounded after receiving the order to assemble the cavalry and immediately sent his cronies to recall the cavalry in the Duodan Canyon. The mountain ridge on the west side blocked all the sunlight in the valley. Soldek raised the holy light torch in his hand and the burning flame although he only waited for less than 700 cavalry. Serdak still decided to set off according to the scheduled time. Across the northern city wall passage across the town, some cavalry squads were running desperately towards the gathering point in the southern part of the town. But the horn to set off at the southern exit of the town had already sounded. The residents of the town gathered from all over the place with puzzled faces and watched with some dumbfounded eyes as the columns of cavalry left. All the cavalry entered a state of rapid march leaving the two Thunder Rhinos behind as soon as they started. The two Thunder Rhinos not only carried four crossbows, but also 24 of the best archers, as well as fully loaded arrow rations and other supplies. In just half a day, more ghost-patterned red ants appeared around Duodan town. After hearing the news, some mercenary groups and business hunting teams withdrew from the canyon and joined the army of cleaning up the ghost-patterned red ants around the town. Middle, the 700 cavalrymen ignored the ghost-striped red Ants they met along the way. Under the leadership of Soldak, 
they rushed eastward to the town of Plentos. What troubles Serdak a bit is that he doesn't know how many queen ants have broken in at the moment. It seems that the number of queen ants should be insufficient. Otherwise, there should not be so many scattered ghost striped red ants. These queens need to restrain all the subjects in their kingdom and continue to look south for suitable land where the red and empire can be established. Just after midnight, the ghost striped red ants that appeared around them had already made it impossible for the cavalry to continue their rapid march. Some ghost striped red ants appeared in groups. They have a very strong sense of attack and will attack whenever they find any noise. Gathered together, without even needing the guide brought from Doden Town, Soldak already knew that this should be entering the territory of Plento's town. Unable to get rid of these oncoming ghost marked red ants, the cavalrymen could only form sharp arrow shaped formations to fight against small groups of ghost marked red ants and kill them inside. The war horses implanted with a life magic pattern rushed to the front. This group of war horses was full of physical strength, and half of the knights were veterans, who had reached the first level of strength. They continued to fight until dawn, and the two thunder rhinoceros behind them had already followed. The mountain range that the cavalry were looking for was covered with broadleaf forests. Soldek had two thunder rhinoceros block the foot of the mountain, and 700 cavalrymen set up camp halfway up the mountain. Since the cavalry had been marching in a hurry all night, although there was a group of magic patterned horses leading the way, all the horses were basically exhausted after marching all night. They didn't even have time to set up camp. So they first gave the horses water and beans. In the cavalry camp, the horses always came first when resting in the field. After all the horses were fed, the cavalry took out the small iron pot, next to the big iron pot that was burned in the open space. I beat some sticky marching rations. The taste of this kind of marching ration is very simple. It is not bad if you eat it once in a while. If you eat it several times in a row, you need to mix some wild vegetables into it. The rising sun shines on the land in front of us. The morning fog dissipates, and a large grassland under the mountains comes into view. Ghostly red, ants appeared in waves on the grass. Looking in the direction in which these red ants came out, a huge gap appeared in the mountains in the distance. But this gap was very different from the Duodan Canyon. This is not a canyon fissure, but a pass between two high mountains. The town of Plentos was built on this pass halfway up the mountain. But now looking over, this pass and the town are still filled with smoke. And from a distance, there is nothing but dark red dots that are constantly moving. Serdak could not even see any fleeing townspeople on the grassland below the mountains. The number of ghost striped red ants is really too large. And the town of Plentos was breached the day before yesterday. For such a long time, it will be difficult for the residents of the town to survive the impact of the ant tide unless they can find some shelter. Andrew stood next to Soldak, looking solemnly at the ruins of the ruined town on the mountains in the distance, and spat fiercely at the tree stump next to him. Chapter 800 The Horn of War Escape Pushing through the weeds, Marwa crawled forward cautiously. The linen clothes on her body were torn while running, and one of her boots was lost along the way. The vine scratched her arms and face, and the wounds were burning. It hurt so much that the children following behind looked at the woods dozens of meters away with despairing expressions. Everyone could no longer run. Mother said that by rushing over this hill, we could leave Plento's town. The red ants followed from behind again, killing countless people in the town with their cold eyes and tentacles. Her younger brother was lying behind her and had fallen asleep. Marva felt her throat was burning. She didn't know how long it had been since she had drank water. Pursing her chapped lips, Marva whispered to the frightened and tired children behind her. There is a forest ahead. When we get inside, we will spread out and run away. As long as we climb over this hill, we will leave Plentos. That night, many relatives and friends died one after another. I just feel that there are fewer and fewer companions around me. She knew that she and these children couldn't run very far. But should she just sit there and wait for death? The ghost striped worker ants chasing behind were getting closer and closer. Marwa tripped over a vine. And a thin, squeaking sound could be heard from behind. As their bodies passed through the grass, they cut off the young grass leaves. It will make such a sound. The children behind them were so frightened that their legs were weak and they no longer had the strength to crawl. Overnight, the town is filled with these horrific monsters. The father lifted himself and his brother out of bed and threw them on the carriage. I left Plento's town in a hurry before I woke up. My mother secretly said with tears in her eyes that her home would be gone from now on. A group of ghost marked red ants surrounded them. And those adults who could take up arms to fight turned around and rushed forward to fight. The woman and child continued to run away. And then the mother and sister also stayed behind. Turned around and rushed into the ant colony behind them. 
Marwa even felt that this was also his fate. Without them, his children could not run very far at all. Several children were looking at him eagerly. Mawa gritted his teeth and crawled forward. There were woods in front of him. A dozen ghost striped red ants caught up with them based on the scent they left along the way. And they rushed out of the grass. Just in front of a forest. I saw those prey. They were a group of prey full of vitality. They can clearly feel the sound of the prey's heart pacing. The warm breath emanating from the body. And the sweet smell emanating from the body. The ghost striped worker ants crawling at the front chased after them. Their powerful front legs parted the grass and they opened their sharp tentacles, trying to cut off the living life so close in front of them. Almost at the moment when the tentacles opened, a sharp arrow flew over against the grass. The tip of the sharp arrow cut off countless young grass leaves and passed through the head of the ghost-striped worker ant silently. The arrow brought up a touch of light brown blood, and the body of the ghost-striped worker ant was pushed backwards by the remaining force of the arrow. It fell hard into the grass, and even hit another ghost-striped worker ant following behind on ants. Marva was simply dumbfounded at this moment. The ghost-striped worker ant's pincers almost touched his clothes, and then he fell straight on his back. Blood spurted out from his head, and the six legs covered with barbs kept coming. The ground was twitching, and he saw that he would not live long. A group of ghost-striped red ants chased after him. The sound of horse hooves suddenly reached his ears, and he felt a brown war horse crossing over his head. The soil brought up by the horse's hooves fell on his face, smelling of grass. Before Marwa could react, he saw the armored cavalry on horseback swinging the knight's sword in his hand and cutting off the heads of several ghostly patterned worker ants. There were many cavalry behind him, and those cavalry killed the group of ghost marked red ants behind him almost instantly. A group of teenagers were sitting on the grass. Everyone sat there blankly, watching the knights killing the ghost marked red ants. A child suddenly let out heart piercing cry, and almost all the children were crying loudly. A warhorse covered with thick iron skin stopped in front of Mawa. A pair of exquisite leather boots appeared in front of her eyes. The warhorse sprayed hot air on the top of her head and stamped on the grass with some irritability. From time to time, some grass blades flew up. Marva felt that the horse was going to step on her in the next second. She quickly got up from the ground and heard a thick voice coming into her ears. Put away your tears. You have two ways now. Follow us and fight back. Or continue to flee south along this road. Marva looked at the noble knight wearing red leather armor. Although he was not wearing a helmet or visor, the sullen look on his face made her mute. She didn't even dare to cry. She could only sob and wipe the tears on her face. Stood up with difficulty from the grass. It seemed that Marva was not given much time to choose. The noble knight was about to ride forward. At this time, Marva hurriedly said loudly, I will follow you and fight back. I know the way to Plentos. We both know it. She didn't want to be left behind. Besides being eaten by ghost-striped red ants, what else could the result be? Serdak looked at Marva, stretched out his hand towards her, with a confident smile on his face, and said, Then we are comrades in arms, and we will avenge all those who died in Plentos. We also want revenge. Twelve-year-old Marva said forcefully to Serdak, carrying her sleeping brother on her back. At this time, she didn't even know who the noble knight in front of her was. There was a roaring sound and two thunder rhinos as tall as hills walked out of the dense broadleaf forest. Serdak pointed at the two thunder rhinos and said to Mawa, You can rest in the cabin for a while. I will need you to point me in the direction later. Wherever Serdak needs these children to guide him. The town of Plentos has long appeared in his sight. But he couldn't send cavalry to escort the children away. Nor could he abandon them. The only way was to take them with him. Fortunately, there were two huge thunder rhinos. Samira strode out through the grass. She looked heroic with a hunting bow on her back. Marva looked at Samira with admiration. Come with me. Don't tell me that you don't even have the strength to walk. Samira brought the six children to the thunder rhinoceros and told them. Climb up and drink water when you get to the top. We don't have time. Stay here. Perhaps it was her hard years in the Wazimara city shelter that gave her a unique temperament of a big sister. She always easily gained the children's trust. The six children climbed up the wooden ladder step by step. The thunder rhinoceros. The team continued to move towards Plano's town, and the ghost-striped red ants in front became increasingly dense. Fortunately, no trace of the queen ant was found along the way, although the soldier ants were a certain threat to the cavalry. Everyone had been fighting for so long and already knew how to win. Finally, I saw cavalry teams coming from other areas in the distance, but they were not as neatly formed as the cavalry battalion led by Soldak. Andrew led 51st-level veterans, 
and charge back and forth to the left and right of the team in a wild goose-shaped formation, ensuring that the large group of people advanced slowly. The ghost-patterned soldier ant's hard armor became like that in front of this Nanai warrior, as fragile as cardboard.